Yes, welcome back to Copenhagen for PGL's inaugural CS2 Major. We've been having a great time here. We have got down to 16 teams, and this is the week that the big boys turn up. A big boy myself, I'm your host, Richard Lewis, and I'm really looking forward to today's desk. It's a first for me, because this time, although we still have Blair here, our international jet-setting expert, we've also got Pimp, who, in his heyday, he was one of the best players in Denmark, so much so, NA flew him in to teach them how to play. So, Jacob, great to have you on the desk. And let's just get right into it. I said the big boys are here. Mm. Uh, let's start talking about the teams. A lot of uh, teams here uh, that really want to get that first major under their belt. Yeah, of course. You know, uh, all the, the big boys are coming in now. You're looking at mm -hmm. your face, you're looking at your T2s, you're looking at your vitalities for that matter as well. Obviously, Team Spirit, another one who is instantly becoming one of the fan favorites out there and one of the favorites for the entire tournament. You said, uh, Richard, right here, that certain players, certain teams want to win a major. I'm looking towards G2 straight away. I'm looking yeah, at a player sure. like Nico. I'm looking at a team who's been around for a long, long time, having had one of the biggest budgets in the game, yet they always seem to fail when it comes to the major. I know they've been in a final before, but we saw mm -hmm. what happened in Paris last year against yep. Fnatic when it crumbled. So for my money, that's one of the teams I'm zoning in on from the get-go. How well is G2 going to fear here in Kobe? I'm looking at all these teams, right? I'm looking at all the stories we've had amongst all these teams. We're looking at FaZe, for example, We're talking Vitality, yep. current defending champions as well. Look, there are going to be some crumblings happening. We know mm. it's going to happen, right? It's all the drama. It's all I want to see. It, eventually, one team's going to be the one standing tall. I'm looking at these names. Some of the names we saw the past four days, they had to battle their way to qualify over here. Mm. And some of these guys, you know, the big favorites are also going to be starting a little bit cold as well. So, you know, it, it's just a non-stop, exciting drama that is the major. Yeah, indeed. And also, as well, at the other end of the spectrum, uh, you know, some of the smaller teams really blessed to be even in this stage at this point. You know, we've talked about it's in Copenhagen. Astralis weren't here. I don't want to keep harping on about that. But now Ecstatic find themselves really being the home team. And you sort of wonder how far they can go. Obviously, tough game for them today, but they've continued to impress. Yeah, it's, it's one of the teams obviously being on home soil. The only full Danish roster we have left in the media and, and the only full Danish roster we even had being part of the media thanks to uh, <laughs> thanks to Astralis. You may not want to keep hounding on it. I would like to because it's a disaster for Danish Counter-Strike. The good thing is that these boys <laughs> on your screen right here, they're making up for it. They are, I would say, overperforming. They're exceeding everyone's expectations and they're coming into the States as well with nothing to lose whatsoever. If they can avoid going 0-3, if they can maybe even get to a 2-2 game where we can dream and hope about seeing them in the major, in the arena, then that in itself would be a massive victory. Right I'm, now, they got nothing to lose. I'm, I'm looking at, you know, some of the results they had over there, that Cloud9 game opening and comes to mind mm -hmm. where it was a very close affair. But well, they like, should have won that one. They should have won that like one, but it was a veteran team from Cloud9 yeah. pulling them through. And sure, they beat Linvision and then Mongols right there. And you're looking at the results and being like, ah, oh, they didn't beat the best the teams. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, listen, listen, man, the Mongols are here. I don't care anymore, yeah, right? Yeah, but all, but, but they didn't now. lose initially but sorry they got those wins and the thing is look you can only play what's in front of you right they got the job done was it uh, the most exciting counter -star? i don't really think so but it was a pretty solid well, season overall. Well, what I, I was feeling it after last night's show, and uh, I did that thing where I forget, oh yeah, we don't get a break. So I went out and I had a few scotches, mm -hmm. and I was sat down with the guys, yeah. and I said, you know what? I think it's, I could beat Mouse tomorrow. I'll buy a dinner for you, and a dinner for you, and a dinner for you, and vice versa, Yeah. if not. So I, I, like, I've got a lot riding on this, guys. It's like, I mean, dinner in Denmark. It's like, I've got to, <laughs> it's pretty got to remortgage the house, Dude, you know? <laughs> it's, it's like my rent back home. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'm hoping that they do well. Uh, also, I guess we can talk a little little bit about, you know, just uh, FaZe. I, I saw Carrigan in the lobby. He just turned up and I sort of shouted at him, this is the legacy definer, you know, because yeah. I always do this storyline about how, you know, Glaive is widely regarded as the best IGL because he's got the trophies, had the tenure, had the time, had the run. But I think Carrigan has proven he has done something Glaive hasn't in his career, and that is be successful with teams he has essentially built. He's done it across multiple mm. teams, yeah. multiple eras. And I think if he was to get a second major under his belt with this his lineup, I think he's not just in the conversation for greatest IGL of all time, I think you can make a compelling argument to say he is. I think that's the statement I want to say. If, if Kerrigan can win a major at home Sol, his second major as well with Faceclan, I agree we can reopen that conversation whether or not he is the greatest of all time. One thing you have to know about Kerrigan as well in his career is that when he's coming into tournaments motivated, he always finds a way to, to I guess, you know, take that motivation and use it not only for himself but also mm. for his teammates. When he's coming into a tournament like this one in Copenhagen, where obviously this is potentially his last and first ever chance of winning a major on home Sol, sure. you bet he's motivated. You bet his team is motivated. You bet they've been working really 
coming into the tournament. And we've seen that with all his different teams. When he was in Maus, even when he was in, what are they called, Envios, you know, a team yeah, with yeah. no talent, no nothing, he still made them somewhat decent, somewhat competitive. So I would be a, I would be a fool to write off Face right here coming into the major. Yeah, I think Kerrigan is motivated, I think Face is motivated, and that's a Face you gotta be scared. I actually uh, had the opportunity to catch Kerrigan in the lobby last night, pretty late after you went to bed, Richard. And uh, <laughs> I was uh, having a quick chat with them, like, how are you feeling, right? And they've been at a boot camp in Oslo uh, for a week, I've heard. So they're putting all the work, they're putting all the work. Also, what's with Brokey, this ball buff thing happening? Everyone's just going ball nowadays. He's, uh, he's got hair. Dude, it's not like uh, you or Jason. I didn't get a buff. <laughs> I can tell you that, no buff whatsoever. Uh, but no, I, I, I agree with all of that. I think um, I think it's a very important one. Um, we talked a little bit about G2. I guess we can get into the weeds now. Uh, I'm a known hater, right? Like mm. people are, are gonna go, oh, here, here's the cringe. It's the G2 segment. So just turn it off for a little bit if you need to, if you're a G2 fan. But I, 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 the thing that frustrates me about this team, I think they should be one of the favorites for this major, but I don't think anyone genuinely feels that because they've fallen so many times in the past. And I look at this lineup and I go, why haven't you had an era? Why haven't you won every trophy? Sure. Why didn't you clean up at the end of CSGO? And I could point a few fingers, which uh, I'll let you do. Uh, you let me point the fingers. Yeah, Absolutely. I think there's a, a lot of different reasons for that. You know, I think the composition of, of players you have within the team, it justifies them being a, a title contender. It justifies mm -hmm. them winning trophies. And they have done, you know, if there's one thing I want to say and, and one narrative I want to follow with G2 is that every time we write them off, every time we're ready to say this team is going to die now, this team is not going to be together anymore, then they come into Cologne, they come into Katowice and they end up winning the tournament out of nowhere. I had the same feeling for this major. You said it so perfectly right here. No one really expects them to win it. No, no. one have any expectations to them. I would even argue that if they were to fail making the playoff, I think that's the end of that G2. I think there's players looking elsewhere. You know, Manisi could go to Cloud9. They would need a player like his. We know Nico's contract is potentially running out soon. There were some rumors with him and Falcon. So I think mm -hmm. the entire yep. team could implode. So it, it does feel like whenever, you know, Bax is against the wall, they find a way to come up. I'm not sure whether or not that's going to happen here in Copenhagen. And if you want to point fingers, you know, the in game leading situation with Hooksy as well, the lack of individual output. If you're Nico, if you're Manisi sitting next to him, you may think that's part of the reason why you're not winning enough and I think that's a fair argument to make. Yeah, it, it's really strange, the Hooksy situation, because look, I, you know, obviously I'm on record. I don't, I, I, I think with the team he's got, he should have done more. That's essentially the argument in a, in a nutshell. Yet everyone I talk to mm. says, you know, he's amazing. He's, he's the cat's pajamas. You don't know. Mm. You would never know. You don't work at the org. Um, you know, Taz is telling me he's like a really solid IGL. I trust Taz's judgment. Nico says that. You know, all the interviews are kind of bigging him up. I just don't see it. And I and I don't think they've done I, enough to convince me of that. I, I think he's been kind of like this, this lightning rod for criticism for this team, so to speak, that right? And, and that I feel... I feel it's not as black and white as sometimes we look at things. I think he's got decent understanding of the game and whatnot, but adding on to what Pim just said, if this team does implode, I think it would be a travesty, it would be a tragedy when you have someone like Nico, the GOAT rifler on his lineup, and someone like Monacy, uh, this prodigious, uh, almost phenomenal talent coming in. Mm. Uh, you, with these two combined, you should be making something happen. Mm. But I feel just the streakiness coming in comes from some decision-making, which I am not a fan of, I'm not sure either. I know there's an entire conversation about, you know, Nexa coming in with JKS. JKS getting removed, I'm okay with that. You know, if you want to have to cut a player to make a move, that's fine. It's who they added in, right? With Nexa coming in, we were expecting to see Hunter getting even more activated. We we're expecting to see Nico finally just completely sure on the server. We haven't seen that. And sure, yeah, they won Cattle last year. Sure, they won Cologne last year. But when it comes to majors, you need to have some consistency. Look at FaZe. Yep. Finals of every single bloody tournament. Yep. That is what I need to see from team like G2. And we haven't seen that yet. But that being said, from what we saw from them at the RMR, they were looking sharp. They I, were looking good. I Can they continue though? Yeah. See, it's every single time they fail after a good tournament. For my money, it's the, the nuances with, with Hooksy as well. I think he's the in-game leader G2 wants him to be, right? If he was a big personality, if he was a, a bigger character than he is within the team, let's say he was a Glaive, let's say it was a Kerrigan, do you think that would work with the players he had got around him? That's that's yeah. my issue. I also would argue that if they implode, let's say they don't make the playoff, let's say the money is going somewhere else, let's say the Nico's contract is running out, etc. etc. Hooksy's not gonna find another team at this level. He's not gonna find another team to play for where they can win Katowice, win Cologne and have realistic shots at winning a major. So I buy into your argument that right now he's probably in the best possible scenario he can be in. He needs to maximize that potential but I also think he's constricted and restrained a little bit given who he's playing with and what kind of tools he has to work with. Yeah and that worrying number there the 0 0.99 on Hunter as well he's mm. the guy that 
definitely didn't get the CS2 buff. Uh, but we must move on. Let's talk about Vitality. Yeah. Uh, another one of the favorites. Obviously, the game is here. The Z game Wu, is there. The game yeah. is here. And, um, and I think, you know, honestly, uh, whatever happens in CSGO happens, you can kind of tie it off. But I mean, I think they're right up there. I think they're one of the favorites, right? They, should, they are 100% one of the favorites. Uh, I'm looking at, obviously, you know, Zai Wu, just this preternatural pre talent that we have in the game, and he's not really tapered off. He's still in imperious form. Mm -hmm. uh, they are the defending champions after all. You can't yep. forget it. Sure, the, the, the competition they had over in, in Paris might not have been the strongest, but this is your chance. <laughs> Definitely not. But no. this is your chance to cement it and show that, sure. no, 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 no. It was just because we had to play those teams and win. It doesn't take it away from how good we are as a team. When they cut uh, Dupree to make the change coming in for Flames, I liked it. I'm like, you're looking into the future. You're not thinking short term. There is going to be a bit of a, you know, a, a deadline to us how long or how, how you know, uh, efficient or how effective uh, uh, Dupree is going to be on that lineup. I like that move coming in. Then you lose Majisk, one of the greatest anchors we've mm. ever had in this game. Sure. You lose Zonic, and then they make these changes. Mezzi comes in, right? And then suddenly they win. They win the Blast World Finals. They win the Blast World Finals. And you're like, holy hell, you know, they're just starting off strong. They're hitting the ground running. And then we start to see the struggle to the beginning of the year. They need to shake it off because this is a golden opportunity for Apex, for the organization, for Zyber to be like, we are the best. Just because we won that major last time under some different circumstances with the easier opposition, we can get it done when we have teams like FaZe, like G2 and all these guys in the server as well. I'll have to go on record and say I have Vitality as my main favorite to win the entire thing. And I think okay. for, for the reasons that we, we spoke about right here, the consistency they showed at the end of last year, winning the two Blast tournaments in a row, having Saibu on your team as well, having a team where every single player within their role makes sense. It's not like we're questioning Messi in the role that he's in. It's not like we're questioning whether or not Flame C is made to be the entry fragger or whether or not Apex is a great in-game leader. You look at the team, you have five players who all fit into the role. The big question mark for me though is Messi's individual level. We saw it in Copenhagen, we saw it the World Finals, two yeah. completely different faces. If he's there, if he's showing up, if the support cast to Saibu and Spinks is ready and willing, Vitality can definitely win the Major. However, if Messi is not showing up and he's not the magics that he was supposed to be, mm. then they could struggle against the likes of Face, Spirit, you name it. Yeah, well, we'll talk more about the teams in a moment, but this is going to be today's schedule. This is the secondary stream that we've got, so you won't get our analysis over there, but uh, you're going to have some straight fire games. Uh, it's going to end with G2 Esports versus Furia. Furia looked uh, lost. They were dead and gone on day one and then clawed their way back in. And here's your reward. G2, enjoy. Have fun. Uh, yeah, have fun <laughs> with that one. Then you've got Complexity versus Pain Gaming. Lots of interesting stories mm -hmm. around that one. Obviously, the Pain Gaming story, great in and of itself. But the Complexity one propelled through here after their NA performance and the world rankings. Kind of, I would say, a snafu, it, but if it benefits you, who I cares? think it's <laughs> very cool in a way that they are literally the only reps of Northern American, yes. North American Counter-Strike here. And they're going up against a Pain who have surprised everyone down all the way down from South America. So I think a great interesting storyline yeah. in and of itself for sure and then virtus pro versus imperial <laughs> there uh i mean imperial another cool story got through yesterday i feel bad for imperial but yeah, I feel yeah, bad for anyone another, who's open up against vp another crazy reward with the virtus pro notorious attritional style of counter-strike uh i'm not a fan but it works so what <laughs> do i know and then they're going to be opening up with navi versus mongols also another team that just got a, a dreadful reward for success yeah, I, I feel that's an ex more exciting matchup, honestly. Though. Sure, well, you yeah. think that could go either way? I, I I think, you know, if Na'Vi have a cold start, a little bit of ring rust coming no, in, no. right? And Hell Mongols, no. you know, Mizzenia, okay, I'm just... I'm just the way the Mongols were here. playing, you know, yesterday, the way they were playing in the opening stage, if mm. they face any decent team who are actually they, they, shut they down, would probably get shut relentless down. aggression, then they're going to lose all but I, but I still feel like it, 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 they're more fun to watch. Yeah, sure, not, they're not a great team to correct watch. Correct Counter-Strike, it's sure. like VP, I'll not tell VP, you that. No, that's yeah. uh, this is going to be the main schedule. This is what we're going to be analyzing and talking about. Initially, uh, you can see hmm. Team Spirit versus Cloud9. I thought people were joking about that when when they told me in the lobby oh the team spirit playing cloud nine i was like no that can't happen can it and it did so he, that game is insane bunch of all sorts of uh you know important context around that one Shiro. Cloud nine. yeah exactly Shiro Shiro against coming his old back. Team. cloud nine we, who's gonna op today do you think <laughs> against their old orper you know put the Depends name in the, the map chat. yeah, yeah. On the map. nobody knows not even them it's actually so psychotic they have different operas <laughs> of different maps like what are you doing guys <laughs> jesus uh, FaZe Clan versus Heroic, a tough start, I would say. Heroic looked very good, went 3-0 in the previous mm, yes. round. Uh, Vitality versus Eternal Fire, less scary. 
But uh, it's obviously a good opportunity for Major to remind the French scene uh, what he's been up to. Yep. And then uh, the game we will do most of the talking about, Mouse versus Ecstatic. Uh, lots to talk about there. I do just quickly, before we get into analyzing Mouse versus Ecstatic, because we didn't have time to talk about them, and we, and we must, I think, Team Spirit. A new contender has emerged. It's not the same old names. And suddenly Team Spirit, uh, with the emergence of Donk, a absolute phenom, very much all proven now. Yep. When he was doing it online, they said, can he do it at LAN? Then he did it at LAN and they said, can he do it at a big LAN? And then he won a big yeah. LAN. And so all the questions that you ask of this kid, he's answering them all the time. Um, so how far can Team Spirit go here? And are we right to think they're a favorite, Jacob? They are definitely one of the favorites. They can go all the way. Yes. And, and it comes down to Donk, you know. Obviously what he did in Katowice, it was probably the greatest esports performance of any athlete you know I've ever seen and I've ever followed. I'm not sure if there's any other games where someone has come out and, and had a breakout tournament like that. But in the context of Counter Strike, it was absolutely absurd what we were witnessing. He's been continuing on that level, you know. So for my money, of course, if this guy can continue posting a 1.5. 55 rating over the past three months. <laughs> you're looking at that a team, so you're looking stupid. at a player that can carry you all the way to the final. They have some flaws in their map pool. We've yeah. seen Vertigo being one of the maps that you yes. could pick into against yes. Spirit. So when we come into the best of three and into the playoff, that could be a point of conversation. But I'd be surprised if they're not in a semi-final at the very least. I know so a few people have spoken about you know, the, the rating 2.0 is being a little inflated for uh, for CS2 because of MR12, I suppose MR15. But you know, even if you take that out of the equation, a 1.02 KPR, 103 ADR across three months, really. Richard. That's yeah. That's just uh, it's absurd. I think that's that's Funny the right. Funny how word. the 2.0 rating doesn't work for some players, but works. For yeah, I know, right? Yeah, like, right. If it, was, yeah. if it was inflated, what's what's it with Hunter that we yeah, just exactly. talked about, right? <laughs> yeah. So no, but I mean, obviously the the outliers are more mm. extreme. And Dunk, Dunk, I'm dunk. thinking of Dunk. <laughs> He's dunk. <laughs> dunk. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Uh, dunk uh, is uh, obviously uh, just such a prodigious talent. It, like he, I agree. I, I don't think I've seen many kids. With I this think. Kind of ability. Uh, I think his just his preternatural ins insanity of what he's doing the server is a little is overshadowing a little bit of what the team that Chopper is built is actually mm. doing as well. Sure. I think Chopper has built a very very solid team. The pieces fit. There's some very good Counter Strike being played all together. But then whenever they start to play, everyone's like donk donk donk, and they kind of forget that Chopper actually is calling yeah. great. It's hard when you play with stars, you know. Um, you, you, Jacob's done it, and uh, <laughs> various points, and it, it's tough, you know. What's they the team do you played in again? Team Liquid. Oh, yeah. You yeah. may have heard of them. Yeah, yeah. Heard of them. pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Quite good back. Um, so, look, we can start with Mouse Ecstatic yeah. analysis. Let's get, into I think. It. Let's get into it, right? So, um, we'll start with Mouse. I am another, again, the classic Richard Lewis. Bit okay. of a hater on this team. I, I, yeah. I think they're the one that I suspect in that you know, world ranking. I think they're the ones that might go down a little bit. I think they're kind of a bit artificially inflated at the moment. Tell me why I'm wrong. Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not sure you are wrong, uh, okay. to, to be completely honest. You know, you look at the world ranking, they're currently number four in the world, and, and that does seem quite high for a team of the caliber of Mouse. However, the way they've been playing in 2024, the way they did during the r as well, mm. it gave you more confidence that this is a team that is building up to becoming together. Brolin coming into the lineup, you know, mm. I thought that was... Uh, I wasn't sure that was a great signing, but they've been speaking highly of him. They love playing with him. He's yep. uh, apparently smiling again for the first time in years yeah, after being rare. stuck in Swedish Counter-Strike. So <laughs> I do understand why there's some some positive energy coming out of the mouse camp. Yeah. But are they a team I put at the same pedigree as Vitality, Face, Spirit? No. Not at all. So the number four spot in the world right now, I think they're borrowing that for now. I feel, yeah. uh, I mean, you look at the results as well. You know, it was pretty, they had a very close game against Guild Eagles and then they just got business done. They did have Spirit's number though. That was well, uh, a great. Uh, sure, great. and we need to talk about why, right? Because Shuhei just put on a masterclass yes. for homework. They put, they put in the work that Vertigo, uh, when they had over uh, over the side of Spirit, was just beautiful counter strike being played by Mouse. And now I agree with Jacob in the fact that they are not a top three team right now. I might even say a top four team because when I feel like when they go up against likes of a phase of a G2 or Vitality, they will fail a little bit. But that being said, are they teams going to make it to the playoffs? For me personally, absolutely. I think they're going to make it to the playoffs. And depending on which team they go up against. If they go up against a face, then I'm like, yeah, probably not going to work out, right? But maybe some of the other teams in the top eight, if they face off against them in the playoffs in front of an arena, I think they have what it takes to win. I think they have it. Yeah, well, okay, let's talk a little bit about Shuhei, the, the IGL for Mouse. Uh, obviously, a lot of people, uh, I think they've got a bit carried away because they're talking about like he is already the Glaive or Carrigan. But I will say out of all of the young upcoming IGLs, he's certainly got the pedigree where if you were to place a bet and say, who's going to be the next great, you would you would go for him, I think. 
Yeah, one hundred percent. I think it's between him and and Cookson from Heroic right now. Yep. Those two are the emerging in-game leaders, you know, yep. from the new generation. I'd also argue the second Kerrigan decides to step down from Face Clan, you bring in Shuhei into that lineup. I think he's a perfect fit for that. You can even make the same case for Hooksy in in G two. He could be a guy that could replace him and go in and make them a better team instantly. Mm -hmm. He understands Counter Strike at a high level. He has a fine way of of setting up his players, especially when you watch him on the server. He's from the old school in-game leading duties, just like the MSLs, the Glaves of the old days, where he's the one going first in creating the space for his players around him, making sure that his stats are not necessarily always the best, even yeah. though he has a decent individual skill, his mechanics is all right on the server, but he makes it damn easy for the Brolins, for the gym fats, etc., etc., to perform on the server. Mm. So he elevates players around him, and that's one of the greatest attributes you can have. I mean, you, you can just talk about how Torshi just you know, went from being in a situation where, like, we need to kick this guy from the team because his opening just really struggling, and then I'm, he suddenly I'm, just elevated I think he might still be in that situation, <laughs> I brother. I, 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 I feel like want to be real with you. I feel like he really hasn't been needed to really step up with the AWP so far recently. Mm. And when the stress test comes in, that's when I'll probably start gauging that. For me, when it comes to this team, it's Brolan. Let's talk about Brolan a little bit. Let's okay. go a little bit more in-depth about Brolan. Yeah, sure. Right? The Cause, Renaissance. Because like, like, like Pim said, he's smiling now. He's having a good time. And I actually publicly stated when he joined his team on Mouse, I'm like, guys, don't you just have some other player in the academy team to just pick up the Brolan? <laughs> I, I kind of feel like I completely agree that he was, he struggled in a nip lineup. Anyone would struggle in that lip li nip lineup, to be honest. But I thought like maybe the magic is gone. Maybe yeah. he's kind of been de depleted. And then I look him hitting the ground, running with Mouse. When I think he was playing the Blast World Finals, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Looking so much happier so much comfortable and is continuing that trend. They signed him recently as well and he has been just lights out. It's day and night. Look at yeah. the numbers. That is on NIP back in 2023, the entire year, 1.03. And ever since he joined Mouse, I know it's a smaller sample size, I agree, mm. but the impact he's finding, how happy he's looking, he doesn't look, he never I looks mean, happy. I mean, yeah, I was gonna say, we, that, that, it's still, it's more of a smile than <laughs> and the this is a glow. Era. There's a you bit can... of a glow up on his face. I mean, that I'll is just that. like, get me out of here. I don't, can't <laughs> handle it on the right, like, but that's fair enough. I even argue having a 103 rating in NIP is pretty goddamn impressive, <laughs> you know, in, in retrospective. That team is, uh, yeah, exactly. is uh, a place where players go to die. But yeah. he was supposed <laughs> to be a star, and sure. Mouse have said, him up to be a star. You got young Jimmy, you got Exertion, you got Broland. This is a exciting young team, man. Yeah, oh, and look, here you go. You've, look at the results. Done this. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, I, I've got to say, the, the Mouse team it has done incredible work with the pieces it's got. Yeah. Uh, and I think they are cooking in the kitchen over in Mouse because remember, these are like former academy players. These are players that were like yeah. cast out. These are players that are meant to have careers. These, these are, you know, an, an academy IGL that's sure. even come yeah. through the ranks. So. Th they're really doing great work over there. And listen, that's one of the things I, I like to highlight when we're doing this desk, right? Not all teams are working with the same budgets. Not all no. teams are working with the same resources. Mouse is not a team that is going out there and blowing off the bank account to get a player like Saivu or to buy a device or anything like that. If anything, they sell those kind of players to different teams. So for my money, yeah. I fully agree with you. When you look at what they have in terms of player material, in terms of resources, in terms of how much they invest into the team, you can't ask for anything more. They're currently ranked number four in the world. They have arguably one of the greatest in-game leading prospects in the world right now, they could sell for big money if they wanted to. So if you're Mouse right now, and if you're the CEO of that team, you're happy. You're, you're very mm -hmm. unsatisfied. Yeah, and we, we must talk about Ecstatic, obviously. Patty there going through the uh, the metal detection <laughs> process. It's TSA. They've come the major. Uh, but uh, I, I've really been impressed with Ecstatic. I know yes. people are saying, oh, but who have they really played? But here's the thing. Nobody was talking about Ecstatic at all until the RMR. Even, people and were, they look like they belong here. Dude, even at the RMR, people are like, yeah, they're not going to make it to the major. When they yeah. actually made this is quietly got it done, right? That's the thing with this team. They quietly just get it done. And that's that's high praise from me. Their opening stage right there, the Cloud9 game, I thought when they lost in the fashion they did, it mm. would really sting. They would be mentally a little bit rough. The Mongols game was actually very close. The Mongols made a lot of mistakes, but Ecstatic, they were calm, they were composed, they got a job done, easy game against Lin Vision. And against Imperial, one and one, and then in the final map, they just woke up and just closed that. And Imperial were playing very good CS, by the way, mind you, right now. So, so sure, Ecstatic, are they... Should they be happy and you know very you know comfortable to be here? They should be happy, but not comfortable. They're like, it's always the next step. You've got here so far. Don't do an apex. You got here. No push further. Go a yeah. little bit more. Yeah. I think I think it's a fair argument to to look at the results and say, listen, they haven't beaten anyone within the top ten. Right? They've beaten a, a lot of decent teams on their own level, yep. and they've done better than we expected. You know, exceeded expectations in that regard. But it's still a team that we need that one big win before we can start having a conversation about them being a potential sure. candidate for the playoff. But a, a best of one is the best arena for. Against Mouse as well, it's yeah. not too shabby. You have a map coming up like Overpass as well. That's a map we know Mouse love to play. It's a map that Aesthetic have played quite a lot.
spot as well recently, so it's not a bad map pick as well for Aesthetic. And there's a, a world where they may get to start on that CT side. I'm not quite sure which one of the two will, but looks like Mouse will get to, to start yeah. on the CT side on that. So that's going to be a tough T side to start for Aesthetic. What I will say though, that can they beat Mouse right here? Then we can start opening up the conversation whether or not they are a potential underdog for the playoff contention. But for now, they still remain one of the favorites to go. Over. And then this is the same map that Ecstatic and Mouse played each other at the RMR in the in the second in a 1-0 stage, which was Mouse running away, but overall a very com comfortable win, right? It was 13-8, mm -hmm. the scoreline right there. For Ecstatic, uh, the T side was a bit lacking. But I feel yeah. like this team, I've been watching them grow and starting to grow right in front of me, like, you know, just like a bamboo sprout, boom, just, you know, real fast right there. I think Paddy's calling has been phenomenal. I think he's a very selfless leader. We are praising Shuhei as someone getting his lot of space. Mm -hmm. Paddy is one of the highest rated T-sided openers so far in the opening stage, even yeah. the RMR as well. He gets a lot of work The done. entry frag and not the entry frag. Yes. And the one person who I not a lot of us have spoken about so far is Kragen. Man, mm. this guy, he is the architect and the reason as to why Ecstatic are in the elimination stage right now. He has consistently performed ever since they started playing at the RMR. He's Spe been phenomenal. Specifically for Orpaz, there's one issue with this man right here. His CT side rating is by far the best within the team. His T side rating is by far the worst within the team. So it's a player that finds an awful lot of impact on the defensive side, where obviously they have to rack up some rounds, but you want to see him activated a little bit more on that T side. You can't go from being the best CT sided player on your team to the worst T side player if you're supposed to be the star. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think as well, look, uh, you know, you, you, I'm glad you bring that up because it generally has been the T sides that have been a bit lackluster when Ecstatic are playing. Yep. Um, uh, you know, what, what, where are we at with Salazar? Because I, 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 hmm. I enjoy watching him. I think he's got, he passes the eye test. Put it I, I think for, for me, the biggest problem with Salazar is he's very clutch, he has his moments, hmm. but sometimes he just disappears. When you're the opera, the primary opera of your team right now, playing in the elimination stage, you need to be more consistent. If it disappears right here, Mouse is running away with this and you're going to have to buy me a dinner. Yeah, well, yeah, God, God help me. You already that, owe me a drink? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, cheers, throw me under the bus. Anyway, with that said, it is time for the first game of the day, Mouse versus Ecstatic. Take it away, guys. Thank you so very much, Richard. Yes, I, I feel like the scene's been set wonderfully by our panel as we get ready for our next stage of competition. Chatty B with me, how are you feeling today? Yeah, excited to get this one underway. Uh, last time Mouse played Overpass was against Ecstatic at their victory at the RMR. Wherever uh, you look at Ecstatic, they've played it six times since and most recently against Linvision in the opening stage of the Major. So one's got a little bit more recent tape than oh, the other. That's enough information. Brolin's going to get run down. He's got Torshi and his teammate Yimpak towards Long and pushing. This whole five-man unit pushing towards the A site now. Can be flanked very quickly, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, and like the fast flank, it's Torshi that's going to be behind them. The other lingers on long, but it's Patty's responsibility. Throws the flash, covers the back, two frags, and the bomb going down. Ecstatic, starting as they mean to go on. And an near impossible retake. Don't see Kit, I do see a smoke, but Yimpat would have to be finding impact immediately. And that's not what he was looking for. Just a couple of body shots onto Patty. Queenix there for trade potential. The rest coming in from the other side. Yeah, stunted already. Oh, nice find. Must have expected something. Uh, not going to get anything else. Salazar and Kragen will also hit the scoreboard. And now Jimmy just having to try and save his Kevlar. If we return to the head-to-head -head between these two teams, three rounds on the T side for Ecstatic last time they met. And that came with a pistol and conversion. So on par to do the same, if not better, as Paddy will finish things off. Jimmy goes down. That felt very, I mean, like quite a simple pistol call, right? Yeah, and I don't think that Mouse were ready for that type of a pace. I think something that's a bit of an interesting conversation for a lot of the teams today, we'll make it eight of them, is being warm, right? Already having played under these tournament conditions, playing throughout the opening stage, whereas teams like Mouse, teams like Na'Vi, who are taking on the Mongols on that secondary stream, they're coming in cold. They uh, qualified straight through to the elimination stage from the RMRs. Mm. Is that going to hamper them in best of ones where we know it can be streaky? We know that pistols, a couple of clutches and momentum can work swiftly against you. It is going to be an eco for Mouse going into round number two. So that conversation is one that we can probably open up, right? If, if you're Mouse and you lose the first gun round, you can get snowballed upon and it won't even feel like you're in the game. Whereas Ecstatic, you've played a best of three to get to this point. I see where you're going with that. I think that's going to be a very interesting observation at the end of today as to how many of those quote-unquote cold teams uh, can come in hot. And uh, I've been doing my skin research, Alex. I know that you're, you're big into that. Sure. Uh, I watched an owner pixel stream and he was saying that uh, Zipple's hooked up his boys in ecstatic. Look at their gloves. They all have the same gloves. 
Same oh, colour schemes. Matching. They've all got yellow knives, but different varieties. And I've also learned that the cool kids these days when things go wrong are saying jeepers. So uh, I'm okay. learning a lot from Owner Pixel. Nice. Yeah, he's always got the vocab that is own it. Like a fake zoomer. I don't know how old he is. No, neither do I, but he definitely... Uh, he's playing the part. He's playing the role. Oh, looking clean with it. Beautiful round. Yeah. Nobody going down. And the key for that is there's no MAC-10s. It was five rifles. So really positive signs for Ecstatic going into gun round number one. Yeah, they're not messing around here, are they? And, and you're going to start to feel it if you uh, are on that Mao's side. The first gun round slips away, and then you really are going to be in hot water. This uh, MR12 CT economy is a conversation we've been having. A lot of people feeling like that may be the only kind of uh, discrepancy in the current uh, shift away from MR15. That 1400 loss bonus can be quite a condemnation. Here we go. Alex, I want to keep our eyes on Salazar. Double mollies straight out of the gate. Okay, eyes on Salazar. How Last come? Last time they went toe-to-toe -to -toe and they managed five kills. Oh, uh, Jimmy's just <laughs> had a miraculous one through the smoke. So there's an opener on a patty. Continues to be the only one fragging the fin so far for Mouse. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, Salazar, last time they met on Overpass, only five kills. And we were discussing yesterday with Acor, this should be an Orpah's paradise. Wow, we witnessed that uh, once he got over to the CT side. In the same way, Acor perhaps not going to see too much from Salazar on the AWP on the T side. However, this one is Patty. His playtime cancelled and Kragan and Salazar walking up long. Info play right now for Mal's out short, so they're continuing to search. Well highlighted. So they will have information that frees Shui up to rotate, but there's a fight at long. Oh, missed jump from Kragan. Yeah, he's going for a jump spot now. This is uh, enough information. You could lose the round right here if you're not careful. Kragan trying to clear out that close corner with a molly. And How's he gotten combo. out? In fact, Brolin dipped all the way back after being spotted. That is a long way back. Oh my god, this re-aggression though. Look at this, Brolin for the re-clear. Queenix wins out on the engagement. No trade available. Shui was right there. Should be able to find one, if not two. He's backing away now as the pressure's applied. It's good work for TK. Oh, TK. Torji's found him. It's be a great round to win. This would be huge, especially now Kraken's gone. It's all on to Salazar. The desk discussing. Suden mentions the clutches of Salazar and he's going for it again in the 1v2. Yimpat and Exertion. And already Yimpat's done some significant damage. Two body shots connect. Salazar. Just dancing around, trying to isolate these jewels, gets the first dances with them both and sends them straight to the Shadow Realm. A big smile on his face and high impact. Salazar the Undying. I like the way that one feels and that is immediately going to change the tune between how the last one went down between the two teams. It's going to force Cycron into a bit of a tactical timeout immediately. CT side of overpass and currently blanked 3-0, likely to be 4-0 as it will just have to be a partial investment. Did you say four frags was it all he got last time? Uh, no, five, five. Five. Okay, well, he's up there now already. So he's, he's matched it with a lovely little clutch in the third round of play. Yeah, and this is where the differences can come in, right? The little details. Castle as well being allowed to, to come and coach the team for the major. Got let off, uh, I don't want to say got let off the hook, but uh, got a reduction in penalty, I do believe. Nice. So, uh, once upon a time, the Astralis coach, now behind the only full Danish representation of the Major. And here's some other issues, Alex, that you talk about. You know, not in terms of just being warm in terms of the aim, that's mm -hmm. one thing, but in terms of the communication. This is your first official for Mouse since the RMRs. Yeah, these best of ones and the CT side start. Losing that first gun round into a clutch, no less. Yeah, pull up your socks. Try and remain threatening. It's K5-7s, even a CZ. And they are jumping up, spotted and boosting. So Bit of a classic. Yeah, I like the idea. However, I do think some information may have flowed. No, Dios, his mouth was moving. Right, I think he got caught a glimpse maybe from the lighting effects. Well, spreading into the long space, I like this. It's basic, but they know they're up against pistols most likely. So taking the longer jewels that are available. Smart. Come on, Salazar will join the parties. This time, Kragan will make the boost. And the AWP out to play. Set themselves up for an execute through long, and the tail of Nodios and Queenix are cleaning out connector and through the bathrooms late. But the initial hit, sub a minute, is being lined up now. Jimmy has a chance. Quite disruptive, but he doesn't really want to fling open the door unprovoked. Yeah, the util sails through. It's everything you need. Double molly, double smoke, and now Brolat. Trying to find a safe haven for that 5-7. Yeah, Kraga takes the first engagement. Good one from Torji back. Shui being baited in here. Doesn't take a fight. Just lets Torji go solo. Now the trade comes through. Mao's remaining threatening. No 
However, that frag from Nodios gives them the edge. Resmoke stairs. The impact might want to push that. They're not rushing the plant. Salazar gets it down with the confidence in his teammates on the cover. Another smoke bank. I really have to admire the way Ecstatic have approached this. It's been risk averse. Double molly towards truck and dice. A second layering of smokes to uh, facilitate the safe plant. It's, uh, it's convincing. Yeah, nice understanding of how to finish the round, and especially against the pesky pistols. Well, they heard the 5.7, and they heard Jimmy's MP9, and that meant they had a great understanding of where this round will finish. Now just looking to hold onto the Kevlar. It's Jimmy in exertion. Lost bonus into the next. You guessed it, maxed out. Need to start seeing a few of these names getting on the board. Brolin yet to frag. The same for exertion. Bomb goes off. Jimmy... We'll step the mark, looking for a five. It will be felled. Queenix with one and done, as there it is. Exertion will get his first on the board. Didn't get his hand on the weapon. Well, you hear that from Shuey. Nice damage. Happy to uh, take three kills in the round and limit the T's economy getting too far out of control. But there's already starting to be a little bit of a bank established for the likes of Salazar, as well as Nodios, the two that survived. The three will need to invest. Everybody takes a sip in what appears to be a technical timeout. Yeah, I think you I'm should do the same at home. I'm going to do the same. I'll be RB. Get yourself hydrated. It's going to be a long day of Counter-Strike ahead. We've got two streams as we kick off the elimination stage. And if you joined us for the opening, well, we do it once more. We've done it for back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back stages, it seems, with the RMRs that took place in Bucharest about a month ago. Groups A, Groups B for Europe. And then we went through Asia and the Americas to find ourselves here, the elimination stage, the top 16 of the major circuit. First one for CS2, PGO Copenhagen. We have uh, Navi taking on the Mongols on that secondary stream brought to you by Henry G and Anders. Vitality vs. Eternal Fire with us up next. VP Imperial on the B stream. And as I go through these, we'll flip-flop between the two phase heroic, Complexity Pain, Spirit Cloud 9, and G2 Fury. Then we take about a 45-minute break in the middle of the day. We work out the upcoming matches, which will continue to be best of ones, and we do it all again. Another eight BO1s to round out this lovely Thursday. Yeah. Do you have a kind of the the same expectations as the current like HLTV world rankings in terms of the the teams to 3-0 or the teams that are most likely to pick up a 3-3-1? Is it is it kind of the phase spirit vitality Mao's G2 of the world or is there some candidates from that uh, first stage of competition that you expect to be uh, flawless into the second? Well, I, I think that the teams from the first stage can be very disruptive in these openers because they're warm. I think that actually plays huge, right? Yeah, because okay. it, it, you're, if you're an underdog, uh, normally you're coming in a little bit off kilter, right? And you're taking some bigger swings, but coming in warmer than the favorites, that's an advantage in my mind. And you're already punching up. So you're going to take those risks and you're feeling warm. You're not feeling like it's a jarring experience. You know where the breakfast is. You know what the beds are like. You've already played multiple matches and with good vibes. Matches that you've had to win to get from the opening stage to the elimination stage. So I think in that regard, a lot of these teams are going to be sitting quite comfy and that will disrupt exactly what you were just asking about, right? Like these top dogs, I still expect them to make it through, but whether or not they'll be the teams or all of them, right? They're not all going to get upset. It just limits the field. And it's about... Pinning the tail on the upset. Now, uh, we do uh, just get a report that it is a headset issue. So I, I will be completely honest with everybody playing at home. There have been very few technical issues, if any. Mm. It's gone very smoothly. We've had hardly any dramas whatsoever. The biggest being nine pandas, and that was them not being out of field or roster. Everything's uh, gone swimmingly, I, yeah. I think I'd say. No, I would agree. Uh, it seems to mostly just to be kind of peripheral based. And uh, yeah, that's an anomaly at the best of times, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bizarre world out there for the Counter-Strike uh, players and their problems. It's always a headset issue. Always team It's speak. always a damn team speaking. I'm just having a look, though. I want to see what I ended up locking in for my uh, pickems, and I won't say my opening stage went well at all. So uh, uh, I take, well, you've, you've already had to lock them, so it doesn't matter what mine is. Yeah, uh, nor right. We can use this this time. Um, I've gone for Spirit and Mouse as my 3-0 teams, which is starting quite poorly for Mouse. Uh, and I went for Ecstatic and Complexity as my 0-3 teams, which is starting quite poorly for ecstatic uh with my framing at least <laughs> yeah and then i've gone for phase vitality eternal fire vp g2 and heroic now i did just whip them together before going to bed last night i didn't put a whole lot of thought into it no i just did mine now oh well about five minutes before we went they said one minute in on the thing that one minute to lock in your picks and you locked it in something yeah i, I mean i'm not particularly uh 
proud of what I've done for either of the stages. All right, what do you got? What do you got? I got uh, Phase Spirit as my three zero, okay. which is feels like it could very easily go wrong Couldn't immediately. Have, especially with Phase versus Heroic as their opener. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my zero three picks, I've gone for Complexity Mongols. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, could the also... Mongols are going to beat uh, Navi, so you're already screwed. Yeah, I am in trouble already. And uh, then, yeah, you just, essentially just all of the uh, quote-unquote big names uh, with Cloud9 there, alongside with Maos, Vitality, Navi, VP, and G2. I had VP in my three zero to start mm. like i was thinking that's the kind of team that could you know uh, be quite risk averse into the best in the best of ones good news everybody <laughs> professor farnsworth what, what yeah, is yeah right i'm glad you got that hi everybody hi dr phil <laughs> dr phil <laughs> Let's get this Wait, one going. Wait, it's not Dr. Phil, is it? Dr. Nick, isn't it? I don't know, but that's from know. The Simpsons. Yes, it is. And uh, let's see if Mowers can get themselves on the board. Uh, right now, they've got, well, a distinct lack of rounds. Torji has an ult, though. That could be the difference maker. It certainly could be. Maybe it should be. And look at Exertion go. Nodios pushing out short. Taken for that water, the CTs have control. This touch of aggression here, and I'm going to overlook him off the flash. Ooh. It was good, but Patty adjusts nicely. Queenix onto exertion, and they have got themselves that numbers advantage. A re recovered approach. Impact flashed off. Good diligent work from them. Now they're going to fight him. Scrambling. Bringing the fight. Kraken onto Torchy. The Orc gets nothing. Impact, he could have gone down to the round. Could have ended right there and then. Instead, there's a chance. Kind of feels like it has. Look Yo. at this aggressive maneuver from Crag and Shui. You have to be so careful. He this is, is tough. But the angle's so strong. Gets off. Smoke arrives. They are playing a solid game of counter here. Well, at least Shui has a kid. If Jimmy can find this kill under Queenix, there's a chance back in. It really hinges on Jimmy, but he's going oh. long side. So, yeah, Queenix. He doesn't. Feels like this is 5 0, Alex. It does feel like a fifth. They're playing such aggressive Counter-Strike as well. Well, but that was Brolin getting caught sleeping, had no idea a player was already past his line of sight, and that has to be a save. There was a flash, one of them blind, but Patty ahead of it. Well, that's the thing. Uh, Brolin, the way that he's leered up, shows you that he wasn't expecting a player yeah. to already be aggressed past that magic line drawn in the sand. Jimmy, to tuck in long, Kragan and Salazar to exit through the lower bathrooms and Shui to save over towards B. So that's 5-0. And credit to our OBS team for catching all of that because at the same time as that, Kragan was running down the AWP, but we didn't quite get to kind of piece together how it towards you got caught out. But Kragan on your screens right now, I've been very impressed with him. He's had some high impact clutches in the uh, former game over on Vertigo to get them here. I do want to uh, bring this up quite swiftly that both gun rounds, Mauser found the opening kills. Yo. So not being able to convert. Cycron calling an emergency Me tactical time. Yeah, uh, <laughs> because right now there might be a bit of an imposter in the ranks. Mouths are not playing as they should. You're in the bin. This is already more than you'd expect for a T side on overpass. So five is fantastic. Now, any more damage Ecstatic can do, that's just going to be icing on the cake. This is a great showing early. And now this even in makes you a bit more emboldened to go for some riskier maneuvers. You can take a few more chances. You don't need to play as by the book because you've already done the job. Oh, wow. They really did just get pantsed. So we have got uh, one very cold mouth and a very hot ecstatic coming into this best of one. Let's see if they can mix it up off the back of the timeout. Cycrone, he has called the meeting. Aggressive util this time. Let's see how they handle it. Brolant goes long toilets. He's actually gone for a rather solo maneuver, so a lot of pressure on him. In the meantime, though, it's Nodios. Queenix takes Con. Short water being vied for. A team flash there, but all the, is good in the hood. He's out. Territory taken. Yeah, and it looks like they will search a little bit more over towards B. Use Paddy as the individual to tell you where the rounds might finish. Take a look at the in-game leader, see where he's probing. And, well, right now, outside of Monster. Queenix in connector. Kragan's going to search over towards Aeon. He's lonesome for space, and Talons are looking like he's going to line up some util. The question for Maus is, where exactly are they? It's quite quiet across the map. They don't have any information with this passive hold, and they're just using their util at the moment to stall. Kragan applying more pressure towards this A defense. Torji chipped down to about half HP, has drawn Shui back over as the third piece of this rotation puzzle. But if it's a B finished, it's on Exertion and Jimmy to defend. He's so loud about this, Kragan. And we'll go down to Brolin, but it's very quiet. You can see Brolin's going to be screaming in the mic. There's no one else. Get ready on B. They're coming in. Here they come. Just two defenders. The rotation's a little bit just disconnected. Exertion good for one. Nodios trades out. Rotation through. Impact. Opportunity. 
thrown away. Shui with the double kill on the defense. He looks like they've done enough to defend this one and nothing but frags from Shui raising this tut voice, trying to keep the boys a little motivated as Mouse finally, six rounds deep, find their first. And they find an AWP to put back in the hands of Torji. So that one, they finally broken the seal on the board. The first round for them in this major. That's about recovery of the half. Seven, all that's available now for the CT side. Rotating in time, Shui. Of impact from the Polish in-game leader, and that one feels good. Back underway, and the cash already hemorrhaging for Ecstatic. They can only buy once more before they will have to take a bit of a partial. Big fight, Exertion wins it again. We've seen this repeatedly. That fight for short water, this time Exertion with an opening kill, but as we know, hasn't always con been converted by Maus. Torji holding mid. Along the responsibility of Brolan. And a smoke towards the bathrooms to obscure that line of sight. Yeah, for the broader context of this half, I wouldn't be surprised if it just fizzles into a mouse uh, five, uh, sorry, seven to five scoreline. Mm -hmm. right, that, that wouldn't surprise me by any means because I think Ecstatic have already done the job to be competitive in this map. Oh, Kragan, he's, he's a loud boy. Doesn't shy away from giving that information in the pursuit of... Bragging. Oh, what's Brolin. happened there? Completely misreads that. Kragan's found the equalizing frag. Now four on four. 45 as the flash is Woo. so good. Torji gets beheaded. It's up to Shui to find impact again. Kragan's just running at him. Shui, you better be sharp because Kragan most definitely is a double kill. The site is lost. Safe. I take by what I just said. They've done it again, Chad. <laughs> Bit of chip damage from the HE, but are you going to throw it all away if you go through those smokes? You have to save. You, you don't have a choice right now. You, you need to back off. Hold on to these rifles. This is... Brutal! Yeah, Mao's just limping in this game so far. And Brolin overplaying his hand. That was again after another opening kill. We've had, what, four gun rounds played. Mao's have managed the opening in all of them and have only converted one. So this is extremely flat from the CT side. AWP retrieved. Salazar will take that back. And that really comes down to the Queenix punish onto Torji. At the first uh, frag of Kragan onto Brolin, that's great, sure. But uh, Queenix with the punish on the AWP, not being able to repose towards the site and hunker down. Right. Changes the tune of the round. Shui's doing his best. You can see he knows he needs to battle and try to hold them at bay because of just how far away the rotation was from his B defenders. They are buying again. Some drops coming through. Mouse with the loss bonus on their side. That's about the only thing on their side right now. Have been able to facilitate another quote-unquote full buy. They have a couple of kits lacking key pieces of utility, sure. But Torji, keep mentioning the orb. He's to start finding some impact with it. Only two kills for him thus far. Ooh, pace change. Look at them go. They're in. They've still got nades in their hands. Now the flashes are through. Ahead of the util. Oh, it was nearly two from Patty's Mac 10. Still Shui the difference maker. If he hadn't have found that, they'd have had no hope. Damn, double molly through graffiti, pushing smokes. Big Jeez. work from Brolin, double through heaven. I can't believe he's just braved that yeah. on his own. <laughs> it's, Literally. It's so fun. As he saved them, now Nodios is like, what am I supposed to do? They've just partnered up. They've stuck together. This would be a mammoth multi. Wouldn't it? Oh. He's close, close, close. No. Ah. Shui gets the frag in the end. Sorry for that one. Nothing to be too too concerned about as Shui does close it down a quick trade. But yeah, imagine if they'd all just quite been caught and out, caught out, maybe erecting a boost. Well, we would have seen the action. Yeah. I think Brolin's face would have told the story as well. True. And that is going to be uh, the second round for Maus. I, I, with you, I like the pace change. I like the call. But the maneuver from Brolin, I would say 75% of the time he gets one and done and that's seen as a mistake. But he's caught that perfect window of Which opportunity. Which was insane, yeah. right? That's a heroic moment. He <laughs> looks like it's just a masterclass from Brolin. What a play, what a premonition. Of course, they're not going to expect me pushing through the heavens, but I can't believe he's gotten away with that. You see the little lineup, Exertion and Jimmy just caught looking silly. But to be, to be fair, when Shui's insane. gotten that one and gotten away, he finds that window of opportunity where they're both looking towards Shui's position. Just a little bit of a gap. They, they smoked heaven. They had the expectation that it would have been already bloomed, but it was a bit deep. Found a little opportunity and uh, makes a round out of it. So that's insane. big. Insane. Insane to go for that type of a play. But six to landing. And you're going to need more of that, especially when you're down in the dumps on the CT side. 
not saying go for a heroic play every time, but you need to know when it is the moment where a risk needs to be taken. Well, buying what they can, ecstatic. A couple of P250s, Grace, the Galils, and the AK-47. Through connector and the backyard of B. This one seems quite telling of another B play. Wow, good timing there from Shui. Understands what he's oh, up he? against. Yeah, exertion. Welcomes the duel. He'll take the first. But Patty will trade. Yimpat. Oh, no. Empty handed. Patty with the double kill. It takes Shui. Eyes on Nodios. Yeah, out. Found the gap. He knows that Shui had to push off. So Torshi, he's rotating in. This could be a problem. Look at this from Shui. The bomb's coming back. They'll have to clear this, right? They'll be aware that it's a possibility. But would he come this far? Not this deep. Not this deep. Shui has found one with a bomb. Salazar feeling under scrutiny. Takes the jewel, takes the engagement, and he wins it out for he's a two-on-two. Two. Oh, no, he's not. Torji aware of the possibility. Yeah, this is really interesting. Now Salazar in another clutch. He's already got one 1v2 under his belt. He's got 40 seconds, and it seems like bomb plant is his priority, and understandably, the nade doesn't clear the smoke. That would have been the end of the round. Denied the plant and all, but now Brolin from behind. Torji from heaven, and he gets the info, gets away. Salazar, a flash, but not for peeking up, using that smoke to reposition, trying to catch Torji off guard, isolate these jewels around the smoke, it's Torji. Huge impact with the double kill. Being ready for Nodios is impressive. Yeah, so as you were saying, the communication must have been flowing that it's always a possibility one way as opposed to the other. Uh, Ecstatic weren't aware that Shui would have been that far pushed out, whereas Torji had a good idea of the territory that they'd given over while he's in-game leader. Yeah, there he is. Happy with that. Yeah, you definitely need the 6-6, Torji. I think everyone will be agreeing with you at home. Yeah, dude, 60 rounds on overpass. You're laughing if you're feeling like, uh, well, you're feeling ecstatic when you've got 60 rounds on this map. In a best of one as well, you feel like you've already set yourself up for success. If I'm Paddy, the, the thing at this point of the game, already having six, with the plant, I'm not in the realms of a full buy, but I'd love to keep the pressure on. And, and I think that's being reflected right now with the purchases everyone's about to see. There's an AK in the mix and a couple of upgraded pistols. So they've hedged, they've gone half in. They'll try and do damage with this Paddy AK. In the next, they'll be able to buy regardless. You just can't go wrong for sure. He has to find this cleanly. And he does take down the hero rifle. The impact's there to back him up as well. Some some damage, sure, Shui. Could go down to a stray bullet through the smokes, but he's gotten away. Ooh. And they were ready for something if it was going to be poppy towards B. You could just see the sheer amount of numbers that they had over towards that side to start the round. I, I would have even been able to justify an all-in from Ecstatic because of if they broke the money of Mouse, they could have an amazing half. Understandable. And, and you know, a calculated risk, knowing you've already got six to play with. Yeah, so they haven't opted to... Oh, oh, oh. Ooh. Okay, Queenix, that one is a uh, feel-bad moment. You see what I mean with the knives and the gloves? I do see what you mean. And it's even like, uh, you can see it, they've got the float value on the knife. You know, a skin a skin nerd's been at, at work. Well, here. if Zipple's in charge of it, yeah, yeah it's gonna, gonna come out looking primo. You wanna do Namiga? I think it's actually, I think, I think it's very obvious this round. Can we do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it last round. Okay. Oh, I love the I love the well, little. Well, I don't know uh, what Namiga do, but uh, it's something that Mao's have coined. It's very obvious. It's very obvious this round, and then he said, "Can we do it?" So let's find out. We're about <laughs> we're about to learn uh, a strategy of Mao's. Okay, let's it's four it. four B and the AWP. That's why Torji's called it. So let's see. It starts with a boost. A boost for the AWP with a nade off the door. Roland goes towards the tree on long. Oh, and they've had enough of that. And they've gone 3 1 1. Uh, ecstatic, that is. Roland's got company. Yeah, he's flashed. Careful now, Brolin. He's gone undetected so far. Times it to perfection. Patty was not looking his way, and now he can get away. Gets out nicely. Set up already established. You can see this short water setup. Sertion has the cross. And Yimpad has Queenix from Khan, so connect to player gone. Brolin doing a lot here, plays with to perfection with another multi-kill. Kragan and Salazar sent back to spawn. Why not? He leaves with a fourth. It's Torji to steal it away. But yeah, they they made it very clear. Six is a recovery. That's all that's available to them. They've got four consecutive as it stands. 
and Brolin playing a big part in two of those. I think this one will be fast, or at least something where it is coordinated, likely over towards B for the final round of the first half for Ecstatic. They have enough for MAC-10s or Tech-9s and Util around it. So maybe a bit of a B-pop or a B-explode, something where you can really use these weapons to their full advantage. I think heading towards A, unless you're going to try, like they did on the pistol, to just clobber out fountain straight in towards bathrooms, you're going to have a few issues. Yeah, well, three MAC-10s definitely tells the... Uh Similar story. An extinguish and go. Full short water crossing. Brolin has the info from Top Con. Not going to stick around. Doesn't want to give anything over. Careful now. Yeah, hang on. Exertion. He knows what's up. The double nade. He knows there are two of them trapped, but doesn't want to get caught out. Brolin's found Queenix. He's gotten away. Well, if you've been keeping track of the rounds, once Kragen is found or spotted, if it's not over towards A, that starts filling you with confidence if your mouse that it will be the B finish. Uh, Kragen is going to head back down through a connector, and him and Patty were attempting to clear that out. Chip down to 26 points of health. The spam through the boards, doing an awful lot of damage. Your gift there from Shui, making sure his uh, defenders have the necessary utility. All right. Well, they're poked up to make sure nobody's close for a fast flank down con. It's it, it kind of it sounds it looks silly a single flash and a bit of cut of noise, but it does. Keep boots planted, right? Torji and Brolin, they're going to stick around. Shui doesn't seem too interested yet. He's still got that heaven position. 40 seconds. Oh, that's a well-placed utility. Peace. Kragen goes through it. And with the combination of the flash, he was one bullet away from taking the kill. Instead, it's Zershin and Yimpat finding the necessary frags. We do find a 6-6 six, six half. So a recovery as Mao's warm into things. Yeah, and I think that's key. Warming into things indeed. So uh, six out of the last seven rounds played in the half. And... The pistol, the conversions, it was the clutch from Salazar all contributing to a massive six-round T haul. So not only do they come in, they are warm, they know the conditions, they've had good wins so far in this environment. They've had a great start, a better start than what you could traditionally hope for on a map like Overpass. Now it's about closing. Now it's about seeing if they can stand up and deliver at this level of Counter-Strike. Her from the desk saying, let's not make this an apex situation. Let's not just be happy with being here. Let's not just be happy with making it to the next stage especially as the uh, full five Danish representation of the Copenhagen Major. Ecstatic would uh, be dreaming if they were able to make it all the way to the Royal Arena just across the road. I mean, that would be, we're talking lifetime highlight reel. Especially just considering the, the caliber of these names. A lot of them just have seemed like journeymen throughout the tier two of Danish Counter-Strike. A few of them are a little bit newer. But, uh, you know, we've seen the names of Queenix and Nodios for years. Yeah, but, I mean, you can attest to it as well. There's something about when you, when you find the right five with the same motivations, with the same determination. You don't always have to have the biggest names if you are all in the same page. There's four here to, to receive this, Alex. Yeah, these dual Berettas seem primed and ready. Not for Brolin, though. Deals with it cleanly. Team Look flash. at the flash. It completely ruins their chances into the site. This needed to be a mouse pistol to get themselves situated to match the six that Ecstatic set in that first half. So Salazar, yeah, 1v4. This is kind of the way in which that first pistol felt quite helpless from the get-go. Yimpat was the one struggling to get uh, away with his USP. Salazar has fought his way back in. He seems to understand there's a like loot player lingering towards ABC. Spotted now, and this win comes through. Okay, Maus, they needed that. Uh, they're happy with that one. You can hear them geeing each other up. A sexy pistol. Yep. Don't know, know exactly what a sexy pistol looks like, but apparently that. One that you win. Yes, yes. Well, especially one you win that you need to win. Yes. Well, uh, I expect to see Ecstatic just take the full eco. Mm, 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 mm. That means Mal's have a chance to get themselves up to Ooh. eight. They've just taken the lead for the first time in the map. This is their strat. It's unique. Yeah, where would you be going anyway? Yeah, exactly. It's like, let's let's not be under any, any illusion that we're trying to win this one. I think it also helps set the expectation for the viewer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, Mal's already in towards B. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I suppose that it, it's in their benefit to not get found by the searching Mac-10, right? Like, it's in, their, it's in their interest to be hunted down and be able to be more uh, able to avoid isolated duels against the Mac-10. Toji's, oh, I was going to say, holding off on the plan. I was wondering if they would start to send the net of the hunt that you were just discussing out. And uh, it seems like they're already starting to take a little bit of a look. Worst case, you give over an AK. Yeah. And best case, you die to a rifle. 
They're like, yep, yeah, this is us, jumping into their jaws. And they do avoid any of those $600 kill rewards. But everyone's going to be feeling good. The juice is now flowing for Maus. And we are ready to get into the gun rounds. Quick, taking a look at the scores on the doors. Interestingly enough, it's Maus after these, uh, the pistol and its conversion that have all got themselves into double digits with only Patty from Ecstatic finding 10. Yeah, it's only uh, a two-round discrepancy for Maus from top to bottom. Shuri with 12 and Brol and Jimmy Torji all with 10 apiece. Exertion smack bang in the middle on 11. So a team effort as Maus are awake now. First gun round, very important for Ecstatic if they want to be able to contend. Kragan's going to have company. They're boosting for this. And spamming Shuey, can't believe One HP. that. One HP, the brickwork saving him. And only for a moment. Ooh, oh, did brick money. He, <laughs> he dinked him. <laughs> Lucky he's got head armor, huh? Yeah, thank God. Kragan, get out of there. The impact confirms he's slinking away. Astralis could be divider by now, he says, as he doesn't want to overcommit, doesn't want to overcook it. Salazar spots the uh, aggression up long and doesn't look like Exertion's waiting for any anyone. Torji's got the bomb and Yumi's got the frag, so here we go. Salazar swings wide, good find. It's Torji and the bomb left on long. Still back off because yeah, they've done dude. this so oh, early. God, don't commit through the smoke. Are you crazy? We've got 60 seconds. Torji just burrows into the smoke. He's hoping that Brolin can kick up enough of a fuss that he can catch a window of opportunity through. Does so. Down they go. Patty on the double kill. Roland and Yimmy empty handed. Oh, oh, adjust nicely. Patty's low. This 1v3 would be huge to get the Maus squad situated into the second half. Queenix is so disconnected. Oh, and Patty. Now he's the one on one HP. Torji knows he's got this one in the bag if he can just find them both. He nails it onto Queenix. Patty. Oh, oh one HP. One single point of health separating Torji from a massive clutch. That flick onto the bank player, yep. that was insane. That one in slow-mo would look bloody beautiful, but Torji frustrated he didn't win that one. Lost track of Patty. Oh, wow. Respect to Patty for playing dynamic. He actually didn't just kind of cower with the one HP. He started to relocate. But think about how difficult that is for Patty the entire time, because first of all, he's Ooh. like, well, I don't want to get isolated for this duel. But second of all, he's thinking, if I let him go, the rotation of my teammate is up connector. Yeah, Torji could make yeah. it towards B and kind of reset this round. So he had a lot to contemplate in that moment and still sticks the landing. IGL top of the scoreboard, Chad, and clutching. You like to see it. Kind of reminds me of a young Chad Burchill. Oh, don't be stupid. <laughs> But uh, what did you make of that? Uh, we did, obviously, it was mid-pistol when I brought it up. But uh, what did you make of that idea that, you know, for five names, even if they aren't necessarily all um, celebrated stars, by being uh, on the same page and being in pursuit of the same goal, the fact that they're at the Copenhagen Major as a Danish five stack, do you, do you think that there is there's some truth in that? Oh, of course. That's a massive driving factor. And I think that the bonds that you have with your teammates, right, there's always going to be limitations at some yeah. point. But in terms of what you're able to, to milk out of the team, in, in terms of the belief and the never giving up and keeping a positive attitude and all of those things are going to contribute to games of Counter-Strike where you can come back. Yeah, and the, untang the untangibles of, of the competition. Oh, that's, well, it works this time round. Really You're not getting away on one HP this time, Shuey. <laughs> Two of them won that one HP. First it was Shuey, then it was Patty. Well, this is a round where if your mouse with the opening kill given up once more, Shuey can at least pull the strings and totem poles all over the site of B, ecstatic, keeping it dynamic in that department. But they do have emissions in the buy. With Patty the only one staying alive, they've only been able to bring out two A1Ss. Oh, another yellow skin. You see, Zipples pulled out the piggy bank for them. Nice looking bulldozer. Zershans walk past Kragan. Fully committed to this angle. Where's he taking a shot at there? Must the be Salazar on the side. Yeah, Salazar, okay. Nerve racking for Kragan. That's the swing. A good understanding. They've all managed to run down the orb, but it needed to be two. Well, maybe not, you know. With Patty finding a double kill in the meantime, it's actually only put Brolin alone. Yeah, Patty's finding great impact. Queenix should have this one dead to rights. Tie things up 8-8 eight, eight in a moment's time. Simple. All right. Queenix will wow. get himself an upgrade. And yeah, his impact is uh, being felt. So the, the clutch now into a follow-up round is Maus on an eco. So it's going to be three consecutive rounds for the Danes. We split the pistols. You think for Ecstatic, they managed a five-round run out the gate. And that 
was with a Salazar clutch in the first gun round. What's the difference, Maker? Torji couldn't win his. Mm. I would say his was uh, slightly more difficult. And he got bloody close. Putting him on one HP. Great headshot onto Queenix, but not enough. 8-8, eight, eight. here we go. Full eco. Static to take the lead back. I am keeping my eye on that secondary stream every now and again. The Mongols taking on Na'Vi. Another close affair. That one's going down on Mirage. I saw Mazzinho still at his, uh, at his best. He's Brandy. unleashed now, Alex. Yeah, well, he's had some time to warm into things. We're, we're going to be talking about that a lot today. If uh, people want to check out that action, twitch.tv forward slash PGO underscore CS2. You can also check out all the action for the Major. It's on Kick, TikTok, YouTube. Justin TV, no, O3D. No, 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 no. You can watch it in CSTV, though. Yeah, that's a real one. And for those of you watching in CSTV... Check out Patty. Now he's operating with the SMG. Yeah, that's a proper IGL move. Yeah. I'll keep killing them all and using the trash guns. Yeah, Kragan, you take this. I'll... Uh... I'll be fine with your SMG. Well, 38 seconds. Mouse just need to run to their demise. Avoid team killing, I'd say. Yeah, you don't really have much of a hope or a dream of getting that bomb down at this range. Look at this. It's just perfect for the rifles. Not shying away from the engagement. Keeping yourself at arm's length and one by one. Mouse pulled apart. Salazar pads the stats with a nice triple. Confirm that their opponent did not invest. So, a one round advantage. But the bar set. If you did miss that first half, it was a, uh, a run, a hell of a run uh, to start them off on that T side. We saw Ecstatic go all the way to 5 0, make it 6 1 before Maus managed to situate themselves on that CT side. So, yeah, they know that the bar is set incredibly high, and this gun round is incredibly important. As soon as that uh, Ecstatic 10 is found, it's going to feel very quick, this whole best of one. Salazar into an AWP, Torji not the same, door blown off again. This time spam and no boost. I think Shui will think better of having the crawl through connector, so it will force the hand of Mouse to call something different, and we can see the difference. Springing to action three, gallivanting up long. Prager might get caught Ooh. out of position. Poor exertion. Down to Kraken. A lot of rotation required. Is Patty on the way? Bomb would have been spotted on radar. They're actually springing to action through connector now. They're taking a lot of space. I like this from Nodios. This is a huge push. They've got him trapped, Alex. He's going up. He's going up and he's not being held. This is already a huge maneuver. If they try and come back, you gotta go through Queenix? Yeah, it's hard clear. Jimmy's going to be wise to it. Does hit the shot. Wow, very impressive work from the Finn. Oh, hearing this. Yeah, audi audible. Patrick retreating. Just looked away. Fine from Torji. They're coming back, hey. Trying to swing this pendulum now. The flank is revealed. Nodios onto Brolin. Smoke onto Heaven. Torji has full control of the A site. Might just be the save from Ecstatic. You're out of position. The bomb's about to go down, and it's a number disadvantage. Unless Salazar can find something and quickly could just be hold on to your guns. Oh, there it is. It's called off. Quick smart. Could have gone wrong. There's so many different instances there. Yeah, because it was a, a feeling of, of Mouse being trapped. But Brolin being that loose piece, able to pick up some space at least. It felt like it gave them an option. But really, I think it was Torji's kill on Paddy loudly rotating away. Cleared out the bomb site. Yeah, just a misjudgment off the comms he's, he's been hearing. You kind of, you, you do in Counter-Strike, uh, at, even at the highest level, you operate under some assumptions as to what the communication you've heard uh, indicates. And for him, it, he felt like it was starting to pivot back to B, and just the audible, you know, different oh, looking nice. round. Wow, Shui and Jimmy both lose their rifles. Very expensive, and actually important to highlight, because coming into this next round, 3.6, 3.6, 3.9, 3.9. Or... So, uh, what that means, I suppose, is probably my job to tell you that, is uh, if they go for AKs, it's going to be light on util or Galil's if they want full nades. So, you can get Torji dropping one AK, sure. Going to be lacking a little bit of firepower in a round like this, I believe, Mouse. Yeah, in, in victory, they're going to be coming out worse for wear. It's an ecstatic time up, their third use, so Castle wants to be on the mic. It's happened quite quickly, hasn't it? Mm. 
Important round. Loss bonus for either team going into the next, only going to be that 1900 mark. So by saving their guns, Ecstatic are going to have a much better buy than Mao's in victory. Well, by virtue of that save, yeah. Getting to see that all. And I'm, I'm, I've got my eyes, I haven't forgotten our discussion about orps, and especially on Salazar as well. He's on that CT side now. He has that weapon. How will he ply his trade? Unless you see him forward, right? And it's going to be somewhat spawn dependent, which has been reduced. Yeah, I heard about this, that a lot of this aggressive CT maneuvers have been culled in the uh, changes of spawns. A Volvo nerf, intentional or not. Should we try underground again? Nodios has had his number with the boost. No boost erected just yet. Kraken to fight for control. Look at this for a lineup. Patty's got two HEs. Ooh. They're not anywhere near <laughs> no, the marks just yet, are they? It's interesting nonetheless. Double HE from Patty and Kraken finds himself on the wheelbarrow corner. Times it. Whoa! Nails it with the flash from his teammate. That's team play. And it's manufactured a nice opening. Even Exertion's in trouble. Pushing short. They've completely won out connector. Now it's Brolin. Oh, not yours. <gasps> Caught out. Should Trade should be there. Queenix provides. Still a four versus three. It really hinges off uh, someone doing the impossible here. And I think he's got a little opportunity onto the orb, but it's clean. Torji finds Kraken on the activation. It's, it's up to Patty. Uh, that's a lot of info. They know he's truck. He maneuvers back. Oh, Queenix. Oh, he's doing it all, Queenix. He's hearing this. You're not clearing this. You're not this. clearing this. It's going to be one. It should be two. Jimmy in the clutch. Important. What have you got? What have you got here, Jimmy? This really does determine how much of a hope Maus have to secure 10 first. Patty versus Jimmy. 15 seconds and Patty spotted out now. Jimmy under scrutiny. Oh. Commits to the spray. Patty takes it with a 7 HP. He's had 8 HP combined in his two clutches so far. High impact from Patty. Where does that put him? I swear he's still at the top of the scoreboard by a large margin. Yeah, 17 kills. What a performance. The, the impact of these clutches, you think of it, we've had three clutches go in the favor of Ecstatic in this best of one. Yeah, that's right. It's a best of one, and they've won out the clutches. Salazar with a one on two within that first half, the early stages. Patty on this CT oh. side. And wow, just to leer out behind that smoke, it was both of them just pumping bullets through. It's going to be a partial from Mouse. We discussed Holy. the loss bonus and where it's at. They're, they're, they're in trouble here, Chad. Four towards B. Ready for this, our ecstatic. Yeah, man, 11 lingers. It's coming. Nodios, he's not shying away from engagement either. Not going to play too shy, not going to play too scared. He's going to be rewarded. Just this perpetual aggression. He's going to surely get run down, but he's covered nicely. Queenix just providing that long range. It was almost like he was the hook. He was the bait. Queenix just slaps them away. Patty will find the final frag up to 18. But up to 11 are ecstatic. Making good on their promise in that first half. Mouse expending their third and final tactical timeout, and they are yeah. under the pump. Okay. This is, yeah, this is where it's, uh, it's panic stations. Mouse, you wanted to get that dream start. Getting through the best of ones unscathed, but it seems ecstatic already kicking up enough of a fuss. Cyclone on the mic. Well, what are you recounting here? So there's been a lot of aggression in through connected with multiple pushes, right? Some that have uh, ended up with them going all the way up the ladder, but Queenix has been pesky in there in several rounds to limit the rotations back from Mouse. There's also been issues with getting connected control early. The in-game leader on your screen right here getting boost and spammed down. So he hasn't been able to get the space freely as he would hope. And then you found yourself in rounds where it's come down to one-on-one. -on -one. So you recount that and you think, damn, it, you know, it got awfully close. We just lost out in that final moment. But one of them, Torji, I think was in a one-on-three situation. So it's not as simple as you like. Big round here. It's time to find out if Ecstatic can get that nice 1-0 start that they are so close to. Gonna be aggression from Kraken. First time. Yeah, and he tends to be very effective in this aggressive role. He's nearly taken down another. Runs out of bullets, but full commits to the engagement. He does put Torji on notice. But again, it's Maus trying to scramble back into the round, right? They, they lose the opener. Ooh. Yeah, Roland, this is... 
chips in the night moment. These two are annoying, aren't they? Nodios and Queenix. Every time. Oh, bringing the oh. fight! That sounded insane from Roland. Two taps, two heads. Patty, though, the problem. Yimpat keeps him honest. Only the one this time. Salazar, one on three. Bomb should be going down, and I think he's thinking twice about going for it. He knows what the right decision is, which is the unfortunate one for him. He doesn't get to go and even attempt to be a hero. Has to play the long game. Mouse will secure the double digits off of a great Shuey trade, but a fantastic Brolin double. They are hunting, trying to remove anything off the board. That'll give one over an AK to be salvaged and available now for Salazar. Problem for Mouse is you, you can't throw many more bodies and probably shouldn't have that either because uh, you need to be able to drop some rifles across into the next regardless. Brolin will be able to buy himself, but Torsion Exertion will be begging for rifles from Jimmy and Shuey respectively. And again, neither team really being able to make too much of the loss bonus thus far. 1,400 available. Injected into the bank accounts, and we can actually take a look. Salazar will be able... Ooh, if you think they're low on money, maybe you're going to be uh, counting your chickens before they hatch, because there's more than enough for every single player on Ecstatic to have an M4. Here is the Brolin double. Oh, Beautiful work. Disgusting. Yeah, the control onto the second was great. Thought Paddy was going to do it again. Alex stepping Same. out with a lineup. <laughs> Same. After, after all, kind of my expectations being uh, warped by the half patty has been having. If they think they have low money, Alex, which is what we just heard from the camp, they're, they're in trouble. Like, if they play this round like it's just going to be pistols, look at the buy. Yeah, it's, it's uh, what's the word? Comprehensive from the CTs. I think the utility at the start will start to... Uh... Yeah, tell a different picture. Yeah, exactly. Or story. I think that's probably how the saying goes. Well, one of a story this would be if Ecstatic can start this uh, top 16 battle of the elimination stage with a win against a storied organization such as Mao's. How he's been pulled back over to A to worry about the gap. There, there has been a slight gap left open. Kragan and Salazar to explore long. So this is on a timer. When do Mao's decide to strike towards B? Because if they were to go now, they could find themselves in a very nice timing to isolate a two on five on the B bomb site with Paddy rotating back in while action's on. Kragan forward will be finding things awfully quiet. Playground is closed. Phoenix and Nodios, it's really on the two of you. Yeah, this is going to be a full execution. Kragan's already reported that, so the CT should be positioned in preparation. Yeah, Paddy's joined the party. Oh, the, nade is, the door is off. The door is off. They're all not expecting this. Shui was throwing nades. It's a quick trade. Roll and one. Yimpad into the site. Another opportunity for Torshi, but Queenix is holding on. Nodios does nothing, but Queenix still doing damage. A 1v2 clutch with Roland. Queenix gets around the corner in time. A bomb plant compulsory here for Maus. He gets it in. Good idea as to where Salazar's going to be. Just playing the fade on that smoke. Dancing around the pillar. Here's Queenix, coming in from short. Confirms he's completely wrapped around. Oh, info. okay, Brawler makes it a 1v1. Salazar drops off, now plays the game. Confirmation of his presence on the site. Boots loud. No kit. No, but he's going wide on this. Salazar! Oh. No! Can't touch him! Brolin's gonna come up clutch oh. for the boys. So important. Oh. Yes, yeah, so important indeed. That really has changed the whole dialogue. If another clutch went against them, that would have been the story of this map. Ecstatic, more often than not, the ones coming out on top of the 1vx situations, but Brolin... Hi, man. If I'm Salazar, I feel a little a little hard done by on that one. The fact that he falls for the fake, the fact that I'm not being pre-aimed as he rounds that corner now, yeah, you, you had a couple of chances. It just had to be ahead. It's like a lil to the body, and you can see Mao's g him up because Brolin's done so much for the squad. Money's broken. They have to force. Yeah, what are, what are you supposed to do? Five MP9 to defend your honor. Oh, that's going to definitely get uh, Brolin's heart beating. Feeling very good about that one. Still on loan, seems crazy to say. I think that loan might be indefinite at this point. From NIP, the value is going up every single game they win. And can they win this map? It has been a hard fought best of one. And Ecstatic have put their best foot forward. 
Brother. 18 frags. He's catching up with Patty. On the other side of the server, Shui. But gambled A, Alex. There's four here for the defense. Yeah. But, I mean, with 55 seconds, you're, you're surely going to get a little whiff of this setup, or are you just going to exec blind? They're going to go into this. They're walking into this, Chad. This can go wrong. This can change it all. What a call from Patty. Five MP9. Kraken one. Another swing through. Patty needs to go down. It's good from Brolin, but Nodios on the back of Dice. They get the info now. And they haven't got the frag. Nodios tagged up. Found by Shui. And it seems they're going to be quickly piecing together that Queenix likely coming in from behind. Hopeless for Queenix, isn't it? An MP9 at that type of a range. She's even going to dart around towards long. It's a safe plant on truck. They won't have any issues defending this one. But maybe Queenix just seeing if he can find something either with detonation of the bomb because next round, 2400 is the loss bonus. So it's going to be the same type of buy that you just saw again. And the stack, the call from Ecstatic was great. They had gambled to the correct bomb site. They were reading the play, but they couldn't just find lethality with the MP9s. And... Mouse will be the first to reach 12. Now it's overtime or bust for the Danes. As it feels like Mouse have weathered the storm. Yeah, I mean, with all those clutches going ecstatic's way, it's Brolin's clutch that, that returns it to Mouse's uh, side of the court. Getting away with the Galil. This has definitely not been easy at all for Mouse at any point in the game. They've been under stress with the finances. Guys, I want to play a similar round here again. Did we just play mid take? I love it when we get a little sneak peek. You know, it's not enough for the players to be upset, but the fact that I get to kind of hear his demeanor and his delivery on his call, his calls is, is just like gold. And an AWP yeah. can come out, and that's interesting to me. <laughs> yeah, look, to finish things off, he's finally been able to pick it up. That just tells you the pressure they've been under throughout this half. Should we understanding what type of buy again? Going to be light on rifles. It's a scout for Salazar in lieu of an AWP available for the CTs. Two Famuses in the mix for Paddy and Kragan. The scavenged Galil for Queenix and Nodios with an MP9. Very, very quiet over towards B, isn't it? As these two always paired up, Nodios and Queenix. Yeah, and they're always, you know, they're on track with the meta. They know the most effective strats. And this one's pretty solid too for a crossfire. Kraken's about to be tested in flash, but he's anti-flash hidden on the rock. Or he's going to get caught off. Oh. Look at the damage. The Famas and the Scout connect, but nothing lethal. This could make it wobbly for the end of the round. I think fortunately for Torji, he can always play from the back line with the AWP, but for Exertion, he likes to get stuck in. And speaking of that, Nodios again, active and on the Whoa, push. Oh, that's a lot of info. And these two are just such a nuisance. They both always spread out. Oh, Brolin's heard something. He's heard something. Look at his mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They push for info. They push for info, guys. And there's another heavy damage, but empty handed Nodios puts Brolin on 15. But it doesn't matter if you don't finish your meal. Go on, eh? Queenix and Patty. Oh, no, wait. Down connector. Yeah, Patty's been spotted out, so they know it's only going to be Queenix. He's going to surely be holding this. We need to trade. He doesn't even get that. He doesn't find the frag. And Miles to finish in regulation. It would have to be one hell of a clutch from Patty. He's had such a good map. 21. But this clutch is asking too much, and Maus, solid and stable. They were down one to six in that first half, but they leave and they finish with the win. And a way to kick things off under pressure over the RMRs. They took on Guild, and that match on Ancient also went to overtime. This one just shy of the mark, but another series that goes the distance, and a good win, one that will inspire confidence. You have to work hard for that. 100% win ratio on Major. Work hard for that. I wish Ecstatic had worked a little bit harder. <laughs> One second. What's that? Medium rare, you say? All right, Jason, see you tonight. <laughs> Guys, uh, so close yet so far. Yeah. Um, reminiscent of their opening game against Cloud9, actually. I, I do think Ecstatic mm. were in the driving seat, and yeah. then they forgot where the pedals were. And we spoke about it coming into the game. You look at all Ecstatic victories so far at the Armour, at this major as well. They're yet to be the team within the top 10. They're yet to be yes. the, a top dog, so to speak. They got close against Cloud9. They got close here against Mouse. One would argue they should have won this matchup, at yeah. least after being up 6-2 on that T side, but they can't quite seem to finish it. A little bit inexperience has shown that Brolin 1v2 clutch that we're going to get back to as well. Mm -hmm. You could see that. the synergy between the two.
two players alive wasn't really there. So you can pinpoint, you know, a couple of scenarios where it's down to experience, not necessarily mechanical skill. But at the end of the day, that's what decides games like these. Especially, you know, when you're a team who had such a great start, right? T-side overpass, we talk about how hard it can be. And you have like a 5-0 start. Mm -hmm. You're looking at that and, you know, if, if you're Richard Lewis, you're feeling very happy right now. Your wallet's feeling well, great. Was. But then eventually, the uh, the, it also ties into what we're talking about, you know, prefacing this entire day saying a lot of the teams who have flown in yesterday, day before yesterday, there's a bit of ring rust. And that was very, sure. very evident for the side of Mouse. We saw that 1v2, which Salas was able to clutch on A bombs. What was the comms? What is the spacing they're coming in from the side of Mouse, right? It took them a while to get activated, but once they did, it seemed like they were in control. Even though, yes, a lot of the rounds were very close, they seemed to be you know, kind of waking up and getting better and better as the rounds progressed. That being said, I think one round for me, uh, Pim, which kind of was questionable, was ecstatic. When it was 11-11, mm. uh, they, sorry, it was 12-11, beg your pardon. Or was it 11-11? 11-11, they went for the four spike there. That's a very hard decision to make, right? Yeah. You just save, play for overtime, but no, I feel like that was a mistake, in my opinion, although there is no clear-cut right answer, no. so to speak. But that is experience coming into play here. I think it is a mistake, you know, especially when you're on the CT side of Opas, your chances of winning one round on the CT side, if you can afford the AWP, if you can afford all the utility and all the weaponry is, is quite high. You know, I'd argue they're still in prime position to push it into overtime. So I agree with you going with that five MP9 four spine. Mm -hmm. That was the final nail in the coffin again. And, and, and after that, what did they have? A scout, a few more SMGs? Nothing. Yeah. Not so a single rifle in those last two rounds. It is a bit yeah. of a, a sign of inexperience. Yeah, I sort of appreciate them pushing all the chips into the middle, but obviously, sure. you know, you got to have the cards to play. And uh, that didn't occur. So mouse off to winning ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll start talking about all the good things hmm. and i guess the place we want to start with is uh Brolan. we highlighted him before the game yes about uh, how he's had this incredible you know c resurgence in form since leaving nip the player's graveyard as jacob called <laughs> i'm gonna use that one uh but he was essential in this you saw on the stats yeah opening kills you know he, he got five opening yeah. kills huge for the program and then obviously had the key clutch round let me provide a little more context for sure. that, right? Mousebot goes down 6-1. to one. Brolan is 1-6 on the scoreboard. Couldn't find any kills, couldn't get anything going. Then yes. we go into round 8, where he has a massive confidence play. Mouse again, down 6-1 to one on their CT side. You think, okay, if they don't start racking up the rounds, Aesthetic is going to run away with this round. They're going to run away with the game. You see it here again, Aesthetic coming into the side. Very assertive, very aggressive, getting the kills. Yep. A little bit trade back and forward, but Mouse still lose control of that B-bomb side until Brolan comes out Look of heaven that. with a hero play. And bear in mind, for the context oh. of this one, he's one and six at this point, right? A player that seems lost of confidence, couldn't quite get it going, and from that point and onwards, from going one to six on the scoreboard, he finishes 21 and 13. That's a massive comeback for Brolin, he was a massive win condition for Mouse. And also mm. the fact that after that round, they won every single CT round, they yes. needed to win as well, so he was kind of the, the catalyst, so to speak, of that comeback. And now we can just jump into, I think it was the round where he clutched it out as well. Yeah. He was the catalyst to open things up for the comeback for Mouse, and also the closer. This is the round that broke the young ecstatic that could. Firstly, Broland, he gets a, he gets a kill over there. Now it's a 1v2. He play, to, look at the time as well, just 20 seconds to work with. He knows where the last two CTs are, and then he just puts up a master class of information-based clutch play. Yes, there were small micro mistakes being made by the player coming up from short here from ecstatic. Yep. He gets taken down because he was able to isolate those duels, but I can't take it away from Broland. He did manage to manufacture it. In the end, a bit of a labored spray, but he gets a clutch, and you could hear it from the mouse comms as well. We were sitting right behind them, and I think it was Shohei, it was like, that is a round, that's the one. Yep. What a huge round. And from the, then the, on... The so important, that's what he said. So important because ecstatic money was broke. They had to go for that hard decision, go for five MP9s, and that was the death knell for ecstatic. And what was a very val valiant attempt from the uh, from the Danes right there. Yeah. One may argue they should have won the game. I, I think this clutch is, mm -hmm. uh, as you said, what broke them completely. Have yeah. Roland in a position, 1v2, gets to plant the bomb with 13 seconds left. The guy in heaven and the guy in short, there was no synergy in between. They weren't calming. No trade fight potential, no nothing. The guy in short should have waited for the guy in heaven to be ready. And again, it comes down to inexperience. Yeah, so uh, final thoughts based on what we've seen. I mean, it's not all doom and gloom for Ecstatic. Oh, absolutely no. not. Like, I, I think, uh, you know, they, they got off the, uh, they ran out of the gates just roaring. They were very, very much uh, emphatic in the way they were approaching these fights. I think Patty, once again, right, this IGL, we keep talking about it, how selfless he is, how he's the one looking to create a lot of space. He was doing a lot of work as well. I think Kragen, again, continues to deliver, continues to shine. And yes, it is... 
they're very reminiscent of the Cloud9 loss, but this seems like a team who don't seem to be too shook by things like this. We they're able to bounce back as well. We didn't learn anything new about Aesthetic in, yeah. in this sense. We know they're a good team. We know they can beat teams like Pain. They can probably take down Furia, maybe even Complexity, given how they're playing, but they don't have the abilities right now to take down a top dog. They can't win against a top 10 team as a team. I, I think there is a world, depending on some of the matchups, that they might be able to squeak a win, so to speak. Mm. And I think that'd, do, uh, that'd be Was marvelous that a play for the words with Mouse there. Like, Sorry? Were you playing on words of Mouse? Squeak? <laughs> was that what you were doing? Uh, it was unintentional. I oh, wanted to take credit okay. for that. I just but, wanted but to you check. Know what? I think you throwing should, something out there. You know? I think they should still be celebrated for what they've done so far. And I think they can at least get like, maybe a couple more, uh, couple more maps in. All right, well, we're going to see. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Coming up next, Vitality versus Eternal Fire. You don't want to miss that one, so don't. Ready? Go. Ready, guys? Three, two, That's there, what's that guy? Yeah. yeah. Water. Yeah, short. Okay. Water, water. Nice! Oh my god. 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 Hang your disc plates in seconds. Swap them whenever you like. Get official art from your favorite games on a uniquely designed metal canvas and choose from thousands of posters. Join over 3 million collectors now. Your wall upgrade is here. Shop now at Displate.com. Plenty of bombs to be de-quizzed, so I had to bring in one of the best players in the world right now. It's Zai Wu from Vitality, and we're ready to put your knowledge to the test. You said you've seen some of these. I've already seen this, but I feel like at, at home I'm, I'm good. I know some questions, yep. but I feel I'm going to be bad today. I don't know. I feel, <laughs> like, I feel today is not going to be my day. Have some confidence, Zai Wu. I've got confidence in you. So you ready to press that button and get started? Okay, three, two, one. Let's go. The minimum amount of USB shot to the body to kill an opponent. Uh, has to be six or seven. Seven. Six, obviously. Uh, how much money do you get for a kill with Mac 10? Six hundred. Uh, which player is active or inactive as the most major one under his belt? Uh, device. Oh. <laughs> what? In device? But you click debris, luckily. I know. <laughs> what can we do? In ah, it's. Uh, oh. It's dot 50, I think. Yeah. Uh, what is the max running speed of the model? Oh, I have no idea, but I remember on B, B up, I think it has to be 250. Nice, it's 240. What is the team with the highest win rate percentage in pistol? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I will say G2. Maybe us? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. How many CS major have there been so far? Not including this one. No, I think it's eight, 18. And because. Uh, Nice night. Oh, I'm so close. Who has the top ranked player in 2020? I think it's me. No, I have uh, 19. Boy, I'm. Oh, boy. Okay, it's simple. Boy, I, forget, <laughs> I forget. I forget. I say I'm just gonna be so. 
What? We lost them. I don't know. Uh, 2.5? It's 2.7, I don't know. The minimum amount of Glock... Uh, ah, I think it's, it's 8. What is the top... Uh, that's me now. <laughs> yes. Uh, because I know. <laughs> Who is the only player from Estonia to have uh, Estonia? Hello, only one. Uh, what is the cap max loss bonus? Uh, 2.4. Uh, what is the max damage you can take from a nade while fully am uh, I'm good for this one. How many seconds does it take to defuse the bomb without a defuse skip? Well, I don't have discussion at the beginning. <laughs> Which team has the most major titan in CS? Obviously. And you defuse Bo the bomb! <laughs> I was stressed <laughs> when I saw the first second with the Glock. Okay, I need to hurry now. You went down to three seconds yeah. and you and got I came it. Back. Yeah, and you came back all the way. That was a good fight coming back into yeah, the game. Gotcha. I like the style. Um, not remembering if you won in 2020. <laughs> I say my, my brain, I, I, I wasn't confident before this one because I was like, 18 is not... Yeah, 18 is me? I don't know. <laughs> I, actually, I don't remember. You, you can see I'm not thinking about that, so... No, you focus on the game, you focus <laughs> yeah. on the championships. That's what it's all about. And maybe another championship this year. Yeah, maybe, maybe another one. Maybe, you hope. You hope. We'll wait and see. Good luck, man. Thank you. Yes, welcome back to the CS2 Major here in Copenhagen. We're about to have Vitality versus Eternal Fire. Joining me on the desk, Blair and Pimp. Right, guys, we haven't got long, so let's get straight into it. The game is in the building. Vitality are taking on Eternal Fire, eminently beating opposition. Tell me why they're going to get off to a roaring start here. I mean, they have the best player in the world as of right now in Saibu. That's for one reason, you know. I think they have the by far the best team when it comes to the composition of players in different roles, as we spoke about coming into it. I can't, you know, see a, a single player who's out of his preferred role, so to speak. Messi is the big question mark for me. Mm -hmm. Which type of Messi is going to show up at this tournament? We've seen the good side of him. We've seen the bad side of him. Overall, though, it's a team that I uh, I feel like I can rely on, you know. And that's uh, something to be said when you come into this era of Counter-Strike, where there's a lot of teams in this building right now who's showing good <laughs> results one day, bad results another. Another. Vitality seems like a constant. I mean, looking at the results, right? This is where ever since Messi joined in replacing a match. That's the outlier. That's the outlier. Let's touch upon that, right? They, they, they won a World Final Second Night Phase, who were looking nigh, uh, you know, unstoppable, first to fourth in the spring groups, right there. And Katowice, that was a failure, right? That was a, that was a pretty big failure. They're losing just a couple of games. They can be very cutthroat, so to speak. And right there, you're like, okay, this this isn't a good sign. The major's going to be happening in just a couple of months, right? now. you still have to play the RMR. And then they roll up to the RMR. And then I see a Zai Wu I really wanted to see. Mm. I saw a pissed off Zai Wu. I yep. saw Zai Wu's like, I'm the best. I'm going to show I'm the best. This Don Kid comes in, wants to take my crown. No, 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 no. It's not going to happen. He was just imperious in that RMR stage. And yes, they did lose the one game to Cloud9. I think there was a great game coming out from the side of Boomich and his men, but they didn't let them phase them. Completely took care of business by destroying ends. 13 2 against Game of Legion. I think 13 1 against Heroic 13 3. Zaibu having almost a 2 rating on day one. That was a great sign for me. The fact that they looked at the failure in Katowice, they came prepped, they came ready, they came angry, and they're coming to retain that crown. They needed a kick in the ass. That's all they needed. We saw it on Apex and Katowice. It seemed like the body language from him was a little bit more frustrated than you'd say initially. You have a team who's obviously won a lot with two different iterations of the lineup as well. On your left, you see the one with Dupree, Magic Sonic, the reigning major champions as of right now. On the right, you see the current roster they're feeling. And they're also the current champions of Royal Arena Counter-Strike. Back mm. when we were in Royal Arena last time around, yes. it was the Blast Fall Finals. And that's also a tournament they ended up winning quite convincingly as well. So it is a team that if you're a new fan of Counter-Strike, if you are, I tell you, fan already, you can rely on these guys to show up. If they don't make the playoffs, that will be an absolute disaster. I mean, it's not just, it's going to be abysmal if that, if that does indeed transpire. But for me, it's like, as I was mentioning in the in the, in the, in the pre-show, there have been questions, you know, some aspersions cast in a direction when they won the Paris Major, you know, they, yeah. they didn't play the strongest opposition. Well, this is your chance now. This sure. is your chance to show that that wasn't just a, a very lucky run, that you can do it, it with harder opposition <laughs> in the first series to Major. This is your 
chance to cement that legacy, especially for someone like Apex and, of course, well, I guess that depends on whether or not the other teams want to show up and actually win their games sure. so they can face them, which was an issue in, in Paris. Not well, really their fault. True. One of the, one of the things it's that, not their fault. Uh, sure, yeah. <laughs> one of the things that, yeah. obviously, we're going to talk about on and off over the course of the day is, you know, do the teams that have been playing right up until the wire, particularly the three twos, the ones who've already got a week under the belt, yeah. you know, do they have an advantage? You know, Chad was talking about that during the cast. And I have to say, Eternal Fire, you can see what they've done while they've been here. It's been frustrating at times mm -hmm. to watch them. We know that they still have capitulation within their locker. They've thrown away some kind of incredible uh, maps where they just didn't show up at all. And in particular, that one where they went 13 rounds in a row to lose on Mirage against Heroic. Yes. An absolute disaster class. So you have to wonder, if Vitality start strong, are they going to be able to hang in there? That's the thing with Eternal Fire. I think you hit the nail on the head right there, right? We've seen the best of them and we've seen the worst of mm. them. And we saw that in the span of two or three days. Have we saw it in the span of a series it's against Game Elite. Well. And, so, and, yeah. and that's the thing. We don't know which one's going to be showing up. Obviously, Maja, the guy screen, and seeing the screen right there, he is a guy who's going to be very, very important in them kind of controlling their emotions. We know how some of these players, some of the walks that comes to mind can completely mm. disappear and the, the comms are missing and whatnot. They can't afford to have that. You can't yes. afford to men mentally capitulate on the best of one in opening game. You're actually, they're warmed up. We saw Ring Rust coming in from Mouse. We saw even Navi struggle a little bit against the Mongols earlier today. Mm -hmm. This could very well be be the case here for Vitality, and this is when you need to strike. The veto right here from Vitality, that is pure confidence. You're allowing Inferno into the map pool. You're allowing mm -hmm. Eternal Fire to play Inferno, which is by far one of their best maps out there. The past six months, the only two teams Eternal Fire have lost to on this map is FaZe and Virtus Pro, yep. two of the best teams in the world on Inferno. One of them was even overtime against FaZe and Katowice. So if you're Vitality, you're heading into this best of one. You talked about it. You've seen Eternal Fire. They warmed up into the tournament. Maybe perhaps you're coming in cold yourself, but you're still allowing Inferno Inferno into the map pool, that's a sign of confidence. Vitality mm. doesn't give a damn whether they're playing EF or anyone else. You say, they just want to play you a good say confidence? I might say hubris. I, I don't know I why like you that. want to go about yeah. this because Anubis was there. I think Vitalis Anubis is rock solid sure. and they banned it out. And sure, Eternal Fire can play the map there as well. But I was honestly thinking that if Anubis is going to be in the map pool, it's going to be Eternal Fire banning it out. They should not be allowing that through. So, could be confidence, could be hubris. We're going to be finding out real quickly. I like to think it's I like to think that it is confidence, but mm -hmm. then if it does come and bite them in the butt, ouch. Yeah, well, we've seen it plenty of times. The best of ones, if it does happen, you've got to do your best veto work. So, guys, as always, look, thanks for your thoughts. We are going to get into the action now. We'll throw it up to the casters. We're about to enter into the banter zone. Uh, what do you guys think about this one? Ooh. We're in the banter zone, I'm here. Well, I'm wait, do you have any banter, Alex? Um, I think my banter is that uh, Eternal Fire uh, may have used mental capitulation. I saw that one, Blair. I don't even know what mm. hubris means. <laughs> I don't, but I, I, I overconfidence. Perhaps? I'll tell you what I'll do, guys. I'll bring a thesaurus up to the caster room. Could and you? We'll, we'll make this work in the next segment, yeah? Yeah, love I wasn't you. prepared for banter. Our no, inc sorry, our incredibly, my bad. Our incredibly verbose desk. All no. right, have a great one. Cheers, Bye. thank you. We got Vitality on the CT side. Eternal Fire taking to the attack and starting down second mid. Uh, my eyes, Chad, for this entire game are going to be on Mezzi. He has looked perpetually uncomfortable in this Vitality jersey and uh, as one of the sole British representations in competitive Counter-Strike, I've, I've got to be expecting bigger things from him. At least you've got one here. Yeah, and this is an angle that I, I would assume is going to be pre-aimed. It doesn't matter as Mezzi makes mincemeat of Wicardia. And you want to hold on to that advantage. He fakes the run away, hoping that lulls them in. Sphinx is the contingency. Oh, they're actually going to push this. Oh, yeah, thinks twice about it because Kalix is coming. Oh, no, the timing. He just looks away. And now it's up to Mezzi. He's going to get overrun by Clark. He tries to control it. He's got plenty of bullets, but only the one additional frag. Magia. Oh, wow. Zaiwu tracks nicely. One of the highest rated players on the pistol is Zaiwu. He's taken down Magia. The towers could be good for a couple. Yeah, you'd think. Oh, they both just silently slip up long. Zentaris doesn't have the information on that, and as he peeks, he's not going to get any confirmation of it. He has a smoke still, Zentaris, but I don't know where he's going to use it. No. It might be a little bit too late now. Apex searching first. He took a goosh earlier in the round. Now, this is a bit suspicious. If the site is clear, and pit is clear, and now Aps is clear. Zaiwu nails the headshot. They're going for the 10 second defuse. Now they work out where it is. It's a quick one from Flames. Waktik looking a bit frustrated about that one. Flames, uh, he just hit the first bullet in reaction to the comms from Zaiwu. 
couple of nice shots being hit from Vitality there to kick off the pest around. And I'll start it with Mezzi, aggressive with the dual Berettas and apartments. So great work. And it's, it's hard to tell what you're going to get in the opening game for some of these teams. And well, CT sign, pistol round, that's fantastic news for Vitality. Just touched on a lot of points. One of them being this is the uh, reigning major champions. However, Ooh. quite a few players in the team have been chopped and changed. Coaching staff as well. Yeah, we saw that fantastic graphic of just kind of showing the vitality of old and the vitality of new. An eternal fire up against a big dog. I think that's also something we have to keep our eyes on is that they've been so close in multiple occasions against this the top five teams in the world. Yeah, phase especially. Phase especially, uh, for sure. But they've definitely been getting close. And for Madja, when he talks about it in interviews, he always references the fact that they are just, you know, one extra step away from being able to be a true contender against the top Counter-Strike teams. Four here on mid, by the way, Alex. So this is going to be a hard lockdown. Kandia throws out the util. Taiwu tucked in anti-flash and the matchup. Good for it. Wow, MAC-10 versus M4. And it's good from Mezzi, but not able to find any more. Bomb so Mzares, yeah, and Kalix. Kalix is going to be chipped away at. Nice find from Spinks. Stabilizes into the head. Ooh, surfing on the windscreen. And he should be dead. In a moment, there it is. Sphinx, confident. Yeah, that one actually uh, a little bit flat there from Eternal Fire, isn't it? They're just out mid, uh, two players leaking through apartments can get the space, but without the bomb on their back, the bomb cannot go down. They should not be able to justify another force by. That's two rounds in consecutive fashion where it felt like they've had a shot, but just missing a couple of key details to even, confirm it. Even that two on two, you didn't necessarily need to keep, keep fighting for it. You knew where Spinks was. Kalix just kind of, I guess... You're very quick to that fight, wasn't very he? Very quick. I yeah. mean, yeah, you know, you could have cut noise. Things could have got a bit more drawn out. But There's it's more time said... left in the round, for sure. Mm. Well, they've limped in with a couple of pistol investments. Saving their pennies to be able to fully gun themselves into round number four. Interesting to note that Vitality have not chosen to use any early smokes. I say that as a nice deep one arrives. Starting with just incendiaries in this kind of anti-eco. Oh, we haven't seen an awful lot of Inferno played thus far. Lowest played map from the opening stage. And what is your... Um, oh, yeah, thank you. Good catch from our ops team. Kalix is set up for the potential finish. Two smokes at his feet. He can do a... Uh, oh, oh, hold up a second. This yeah. one just got a whole lot more interesting. Flames, he goes down aggressive banana. That's going to draw the rotation of Zaiwu. He's left long, leaving Spinks up to his own devices. The repos of Mezzi now a little bit more turtled in towards the A site. Kalix from this position can smoke off long and moto, and they can try and make their way up short and apps which if they're able to overrun, ooh, they're reconsidering. Okay, well, the extra util that was left has now been scavenged and picked up. I think they're retooling for a B finish. Now they have flashes. They'll probably need one over the top to push Apex back. What crowd control utility are we looking at? Another smoke, well-timed. That's going to buy you so oh. much. They're going to have to go through, Alex. Yeah, they have they to are. go through and with Apex, the flash. Apex, you are alone here. The fact that he's holding his own smoke, I understand it, but I think he's seen enough. Oh, get the hell out of there. Apex stands. He bangs. He takes down Madja, and he is going to leave with two and a half. Should, get a should be able to get the bomb across. This smoke CT. Sphinx can't stop this bomb plant now. So there, the, the, the opening kill onto Flames has at least given Eternal Fire a bomb plant in a... Essentially an economical. I don't know how I feel about two of them staying banana side. I, I think they were expecting the rotation to be quick. They haven't taken sight space. They haven't fought for Coffin's control. Could be a very well placed HE if Acadia times this right. And now they're ahead of it. Let's see playing this fade. Now looking for Acadia and he's nailed the headshot. This gets uncomfortable for Vitality. A fumble. A very big round for Eternal Fire to put themselves on the board. Need to be defusing. There's no hope. There's no way. It would Cardio Let's go. with three. Let's go. Centaurus with two. And they leave with the round. Oh, if I'm Flames, I'm getting a clip across the ears. Yeah, but Apex as well. Yeah. He's overstaying his welcome there, right? The flash comes over. He gets the nade off, but he hangs around Sandbag as opposed to reposing, trying to get back in towards the site. Could have even dipped through the smoke and played a full retake. That's the Flamesy kill that was given up. But Wakadia, he's one of these players oh, Maniac was wow. talking to me about it the other day. He thinks he's fantastic at setting the tones. So that's the T side, right? When he's the one dictating the fights, and that's fantastic work right there. That's going to fill the team with confidence early. Mm -hmm. You see, Madge's celebrations, <laughs> loving that. How can you not love that? And the that guy? wasn't the call that they were wanting to start the round with, right? We had it highlighted. Uh oh. 
Uh-oh, Spaghetti-O. Nade does a lot of damage. They stay the same to Zantara. Zeke cops up the bullet through the smoke as well. Gets away with just 24 points of health. But yeah, you're right. The fact that the, the, the game plan it wasn't even required. That was and an they, A focus early. But does, that also speaks to uh, Eternal Fire's dialogue. Yeah. The fact that they could kind of work it out. Hang on, we've crossed, yep. let's do something else. I like the call when, look, if Apex is going to think he can stand and deliver on his lonesome, might be able to take advantage of that a little bit more throughout this half. Yeah, if you smoke them off and uh, you have full banana control at 30 seconds, maybe just set up a crossfire with your boy. Looking like they want to finish towards B again. Four players towards A right now for Vitality. Gamble stacking on this force by 1M4 in the hands of Apex, and he will be the lone defender of the B bomb site as Mezzi and Co are starting to get a little bit frisky. It's quiet over towards A. They're searching out information and the rotation of the likes of Zaiwu as well as Flamesy on their way back over. Util, but Terrify should be into the side before the rotation. Yeah, flash and spam, and he gets nothing for it. So Apex made his play. Handed. Keep your eyes on Mezzi. He has a flash, but he's in banana. How's he going to be able to facilitate a push, or is he? It might even just be the call to save. Hold on to our goodies. We'll double dip. We'll have an opportunity to use all of this into the next round, and that's going to have to be the case. Eternal Fire, without getting a kill, got themselves into the site. Now it's just about getting out with all their goods. Yeah, it's an exit strategy they're working on here. Maja to clear. Spotting out Mezzi with a great work. Finds himself... Watching now does Mezzi. Spinks. He may be able to find something on the way out. He's hearing them out mid. But they want to take that Kevlar through, have a second bite into what otherwise would have been the economical. This is still early, but in the previous game, it was momentum, right? It was the pistol, it was the clutch early from Salazar. That was helping Ecstatic get up to a very strong first half of play. Whereas that isn't the same case for Eternal Fire. They started with the loss, right, from the pistol, then a force by loss, and then they actually won in that lighter investment. So this is an, a, a good sign that they're not just doing it through being warmer than Vitality. It's just a clear game, and they're battling back and forth. And we'll have to see if there's any fourth from Vitality. Yeah, I'm intrigued to see what the call is when you've got that rifle on Apex. He's going to be joining the A side of the map to start. Zantaras is one we need to keep our eyes on and see if the likes of Flamesy and Apex can put a lid on him. Mm -hmm. Because if he becomes the Marauder up banana that we know he can be, Zantaras on a tech can be a real issue. Yeah, Mezzi the probe on that USP, the only one to go down in the previous. So you could expect him to use that for some information at the right moment. Nadia has the bomb, so he's going to back off, and so is Kalex. Kalex is going to do a pretty standard job of anchoring over towards apps on the T side. Keeping it simple, aren't they? Just going to be taking their initial spread. They've actually thrown a smoke to Moto. They're in second mid, however, Vitality, so they know it will be a B finish again. Yeah, the info's there now. Apex is going to be scarpering over just in time. Sphinx and Mezzi for the banana flank. Zywu anti flash, you'd have to hit one hell of a shot. The bait from Flames, it sets them up. Zywu gets away, drops into the Flames. Need another body shot. Maybe Apex can catch the timing. He hears them in front of him, walking out. The double kill. That's something he can work with. It's Spinks left in the clutch. It doesn't look favorable by any stretch of the imagination, but there is a world, there's a universe. Do we live in it? Makes the noise. Stays strafes out wide. Can expect where they both are. New box trajectory indicates. Walks it towards the dark position. Spinks has a bit of a pressure, a bit of a time pressure. The smoke on the bomb will get them panicking. They peek out. He isolates the jewel. Knows where Kalix is. Pushing now aggressive through the fountain. Kalix, do you take get ahead of the play? Yes, swung on. Holds nerve with the Farmas, and it will be eternal fire converting. It felt like an unnecessary pick for Woxley there, didn't it? Obviously not wanting to get the jewels isolated, but he wasn't even that close. He thrown out the smoke and just pivoting into his demise was Woxy. So giving a chance over to Spinks, but handled and crisis averted. The guns will come out, but Vitality doing an awful lot of damage there. So good round considering that was the buy of the previous that they brought into a follow-up round and it came down to a one-on-one. -on -one. It's limited the finances of Eternal Fire. However, Calyx sitting pretty. 9.3k. It's a residual buy or two, a few drops in future rounds if things start to go wrong. Deep banana smoke. Does that uh, force Eternal Fire into trying to take this mid and A control a little bit quicker? Oh, Wakadia up and towards the boiler room. As the 
Oversight of Kallax, who sets him up with a flash. Calls Boiler clear. So in response to losing Banana early, Eternal Fire has taken Boiler and Halls and are worried about a boost. You can see just going through the paces. Yeah, welcome to Inferno. Yeah, this one's such a give and take, isn't it? Mm. It has, yeah, it has its very own unique kind of pacing to it and uh, a lot of compulsory elements to the T-side. You know, in the same vein as of overpass, in the sense that there's a lot of things you've got to get done. You want to avoid getting caught out. Interesting how both players from Vitality just leered behind their defensive smoke and then both went CT side. So they're having to rejig the CT setup. But a lot of pressure applied towards B early. And while well, I say early, there's 40 seconds left. Another B execute to be called by Madger here. Antares. Usually not the first man in. They'll have to brave this. They have a HE on Kallax to blow it open. Okay, Util sails through. Flames holding onto his incendiary. Now is a perfect moment. They're going to have to go through that. Some damage to be inflicted. Extinguished. Flash high. Flames activating through the smoke. He eats the flashbang. And oh, only the one from Apex. They have got a chance to plant. Eyes on Wakadia. Yeah, he's got the rotation cut off. Messi was not ready for that one. You can see passing glance. A lazy clear. Spinks can't even get there in time. How brutal is this? Wakadi is playing with his food. Zaiwu can't even go for this because his teammates have been cut down by Wakadia. And now look at him staring at his mini-map, playing a wicked, cruel game here against Sphinx and Mezzi. Vitality didn't even get a chance to play retake. I think it's it's quite a simple process there. As long as you can keep three players over towards A while you go for that B execute, sure, Wakadi will go down, but the round has been won. Uh, then you're going to trade efficiently and get in towards the site. The bomb goes down. Then you just get Wakadia being a nuisance on the rotation. Mezzi doesn't even get an opportunity to play the round. We'll call that four to two with a two round advantage now being accrued for the Turks. Yeah. And it's all been a B focus. So what does this mean? Well, talking about who was saving just there, we're hearing celebrations. That's going to be coming from, I guess, the Brazilians with how Sounded loud. Like it. I don't think VP have ever gotten that loud in the <laughs> no. history. Maybe when they were Polish? Uh, definitely not since they've been Russian. No, but we've got VP versus Imperial going on. You can check that out over on the uh, PGL2 channel. Uh, if I'm Xtaz right now and I'm putting, uh, I'm having a discussion with Apex and the way this has flowed out, there's, okay guys, they've hit B a lot. So we've got a few choices. Either we need to make sure that we're retaining banana control or we're going to have a third player able to cheat over much quicker. And by doing so, we need more information towards A. So we need to either be more forward on our mid setups or we give up some space and take a bit more, I don't want to call it a gamble, but an educated guess on how we want to play out the round because we can't just be getting executed on in a two or three player environment when they're coming in with more players. Because yeah. if they just trade efficiently like they did, it's all over Red Rover. I am surprised we haven't seen, you know, a G2 smoke, a phase smoke, and something to in, of that ilk from Vitality's defense so far. Yeah, they're not as jarring, are they? That's what I like about phase. They change the progression of the map. Yeah. Uh, they, they love that smoke down middle. Brokey will blow it open with a HE, take picks with the AWP down. Rops will be a lot more aggressive in boiler and halls, constantly just being a nuisance. Well, and they are being a bit more of a nuisance now. Two saved guns on the offensive. To find a bit of room to work with. So up close and personal in Boiler and Halls. Yeah, these rounds can go wrong at the drop of a hat for Eternal Fire. So let's see how they handle these. Wakadi well, is now up in the window room and Kallax has come through apps. So it's all going to come down to a timing. Yeah, Messi's a dead man. Sold out. And the trade's there, Sold but out. so is Wakadi. So it boils out to a 3v3. Bit of a mismanaged setup in the... Angle for Mezzi. And Apex is rotating to the wrong bomb site. Yikes. Oh, Flames. He's got a smoke at least. I'd be creeping through this. Mm -hmm. Obviously not going all the way through, but, you know, ready to react. They do have a HE on Magic to blow this open. Clear the smoke and go. And they're talking about it. Yeah, they are. And Flames has that flashbang. Maybe he can get it out in time. Throws it, swings it. Dead though. Magic catching him with the anti-flash swing. Yeah, well turned. Smoke's going to be quite shallow. They're gaming. Eternal oh, Fire, they're cooking up trouble right now. Apex, what are you going to do, mate? You've got to get out of there. Yeah, see if you can find one of these guns over towards Boiler Room. That's the best you can hope for right now, Mr. Dan Matasclair. In-game leader of Vitality. Looking to save. One of Counter-Strike's most 
animated individuals. He's uh, probably not going to be too happy he gets to get shot in the side <laughs> of the head. <laughs> Ahead of the play, Zantaras. Reading the only option. Ooh, a little a, a wry smile cheeking onto his face there. A lot of people questioned uh, if Eternal Fire would be able to compete with the upper echelons. And throughout the opening stage, they had their wobbles. It wasn't as convincing as many had hoped, but this is looking good so far. T-side Inferno. Definitely the more favored of the two. With just how good teams are at using their utility for map control. Yeah. I mean, Eternal Fire in the last seven weeks have only lost a phase G2, Na'Vi. It's quite a star-studded list. Can Vitality join those teams or... Is this where Eternal Fire ascend? Well, this is a change. They've conditioned B in almost every round of play. But Vitality is staying with a very standard hold. Two banana, three towards A. So I was dipping back away from middle now. You're hoping this has softened up the A defense, but that's not the case. Mezzi's still in pit, full belt of util. Spinx under the porch. Zawu's AWP towards the long side to rotate in. This is going to be a very telling round. So I'm responsible for long. Mezzi always oh, just as he pulls out the nade. Spinks and Zywu clamp shut. What's it gone? Zentaris has opened up the site. Fights back with a double of his own. Gets After away reset. with low HP. Imagine ready on the yard for the flames rotation. Apex tut of his tongue. Limits his options with the molly. Maja isolating Mezzi. They know he's in the pit. Maja lingering around towards the moto. Smoke down goes Apex and down goes Vitality's hopes of defending this A site. Unless Mezzi can come up clutch. Zantares finds the angle. Three That's kills from Zantares. That started with a double Vitality kill. It was a 3v5 momentarily. And then Zantares happened. Yeah, from a calling perspective, it went wrong for Eternal Fire. But from a fragging one, it went bloody well. I think this from Zantares is huge, right? He's dealing with both of the players oh. trying to help Mezzi over towards Pit. Magic dealing with the rotation. He gets both players rotating in from B. So the in-game leader and the star rifler in contribution pick up a huge round. Zantares on land, baby. Nine and four as it currently stands. We've already seen impact from Wakadi and Zantares as well. On the T side of Inferno and Vitality left wanting. How many, how many rounds have they had a full gun round? We just saw one. About three? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I guess the thing is they lost to a very light upgrade in the third. And yeah, that's what caused the, the turmoil because their force by became a silenced M4 that Apex kept for himself right. and upgrades on the rest. And I think at MP9 was the next best that was in the hands of Sphinx. And that carried over for two consecutive rounds, right? So you can start to piece these together quite quickly. Oh, so Toast singed for Woxic. He's already given the AWP over to Zantares. This would be the worst type of round for things to go wrong for Eternal Fire, but if you consider the Vitality Camp, this would get quite a high mood as... Mm. So you can see that being past each other there... Zantares the are careful now. Wakania. Yeah, it's because he's so low. He's managing to find impact and... Uh, they're going to lose this round, aren't they? <laughs> Jump into conclusions, no, I think, Virgil. they're going to lose this round, aren't they? Oh, I don't think so. What, have you seen Woxic on the AK? They're going to lose this round, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it's not looking good. Picking up the bomb. That's a good start. This would be a frustrating one to lose as well because you did a lot of hard work in the last. Zywu was still searching. Zywu was just deciding how I'm going to play Counter-Strike now. Two players to defend the B-bomb site. Is the usual suspects of Flamesy and Apex. No you 2 however. Apex are low HP. He's just going to try and catch this timing on the swing. Flames. Ooh, did some damage onto Wogsick. It does facilitate Apex and there's no time left. Slow down. Tintaras at least holds on to his AWP. Doesn't die after. That is... Uh... A, a rubbish round from Eternal Fire, really. Well, it's a product of Zywu. Um it, Finding that Deagle headshot that kind of really must have taken the wind out of their sails. I, I suppose because of the forward push of Wakadia to app straight away that they weren't expecting that gap to be exploited in towards the boiler room. 
But that's a gift. And, and, and like I said, that's Zywu playing. He went active again individually, right? They were just kind of searching for fights. That's not a stand around. They didn't like, oh, okay, we're going to do this setup, guys. This is a, oh, um, okay, we've got a couple of upgrades. Let's see what we can do. So that's uh, a frustrating one to lose. But you, this is where you're hoping you can keep your cool. And the desk were touching on it. I think uh, Richard brought up what well, the 13 rounds in a row that we saw Eternal Fire lose. You want to hope that it doesn't start this cascade of rounds against them because the half so far and the type of rounds they've been winning, the conditioning they've been doing, it's been great to get them to six. You'd be looking for seven within this half of ours Eternal Fire at this point. Mm -hmm. Seven to five before you switch sides. Oh, I like the spawn from Zywe. What does he do with it? He's going to be the first man on the scene. It does take a little glance down mid. Nothing crazy. Just looking to catch anyone trying to set themselves up for the mid hole. This is a direct call from Eternal Fire. Look at the dots. Four are going to be over towards second middle in a moment. Yeah, and Mezzi's forward position towards the balcony. He is going to be th uh, noted by the spam. So yeah, no secret of his presence, but it's not going to deter Zantares. He's ready for this duel. He's going to wait for Wakadia. They can double swing. Look at the rotation as well from Vitality. They've just sent Zaiwu's AWP packing towards the B bomb site. Out of position, just two players to defend. These are the smokes they wanted to line up early. This was the, the smokes they wanted to throw in the round. They ended up did winning with just Tech Nines. And now lock at Mezzi under scrutiny. Trying to delay. Flash might work. Sphinx in support, but obscured by the smoke. Good find. Sphinx dead after one. With Cardia and Zantares, this potent pairing have once again kicked open the front door. You've got to be saving. We know how difficult it could be to retake on a map like this. And Zantares. Oh, look at Apex. Oh, yeah. And that's not even his A defender's fault. Who called the rotation as Zywe back over towards B? Maybe that's the lingering conditioning of all the B hits that Eternal Fire have been getting away with, right? How did they sell it on, like... They what? didn't. So they didn't. one of the things that Eternal Fire does is they will throw the half wall smoke. It just lands a little bit deeper than half wall just in front of car. So if you want to contain control for Banana, you have to play in front of that smoke wall, right? And if you play behind it, you don't know what is on the other side. You can keep car control, you can keep sandbag, sure, but those positions are very susceptible to a pop flash, to a molly sandbag, to nades in towards the Banana mouth position. But I also, I remember saying it and it sounded like I was being stupid, but earlier on in the uh, half, they smoked motor when they were finishing B. Is that the round where Bacardia lurked? Yeah. Yeah. They did that lot, that deep smoke towards Moto, which is the same smoke they've just thrown there in their A finish. So perhaps it is one of those where you see the same smoke and you remember last time it was towards that B side of the map. Zywu caught in the wrong side of the map. They'd rotated uh, him ahead of the play, right? Yeah. They were looking to get some control back on the map. So it's the timing of that execute that is key for Eternal Fire. Moxicon is T-side AWP. You said they wanted seven, Chad. Well, that's mission accomplished now. The question is, how far can they fly? If they win this and wipe the board, they could get nine. That would be mad. A lot riding on this for Vitality to get their start. Oh, flames. True to his name. Well, you see the change. This is them hitting the big red button. Hey, boys, we need this banana control. When we don't have it, they execute B. When we don't have it, they exploit our rotation on towards A. So you need that space. They've dipped very far forward. And now Apex hightailing it to join the party. See if they can make this four strong on the A site. Sphinx, we're gonna find one nice hold around the edge of the smoke, expecting Wakadia to try and punish into the site. And what, what is that from Madja? He takes down Zywu. Sphinx finally finds him, but still, now Vitality, they've got themselves a man advantage. It's 50 seconds, they're maneuvering towards long. This is Apex's domain. And he holds firm. Taking down Zantares. IGL's onto stars, the theme of this round. First Madger onto Zywu. Now Apex onto Zantares. Two on four, a uh, tall order. Ma Mezzi's holding the perfect angle for this. This crossfire, incredibly hard to break with 20 seconds left. They're hoping to be given something. Flames goes looking for trouble and he finds it. But there's the crossfire sprung into action and Woxit going to try and maintain that AWP. He's got plenty of cash to drop anybody who needs a rifle. We're we'll going into the final round of play. Lost Burn is about to get piped in towards those bank balances. And that will be four on the board for Vitality now. You see that with the smoke up short and all the util they're trying to harass towards the pit position with the HEs not finding their mark. So stalled out and Apex with the correct rotation over towards A to mean all three of the defenders can focus 
on apartments and short. Even with a nice shot from Madja onto Zaiwu. Pedestrian round for Vitality to win. Eternal Fire, they've done the hard work. Able to buy it again. See if they can walk away with eight. Ooh. Creation. Oh. So Spinks is so lucky to be alive. Never mind getting the first frag there onto Kallax. Walks it gonna feel a bit silly. None of the old wallbang works. He used to be able to shoot them in the head through the corner when seeing the barrel. If they just go in towards a BXQ right now, it would be the perfect call. Look at these two. Having a meeting, juggling nades. Apex trying to stall them out for a moment longer. There's seven more seconds. And there's even a third man, Sphinx, rotating over. Yeah, I'm just so worried about Flames. He's not been having a great start. East side, Sphinx spotted out. Down goes Flames. Centares has opened up the site. Apex and Sphinx remaining vigilant. Only for a moment, the util's good. The flashes were there. Apex, he's under a lot of trouble. Spinks down. Apex, surely the next to fall. He does find Wakadia. He's delaying magnificently. Woxic in the flames will go down. Zaiwu finds him. And with 45 seconds, the clutch is on. Madja. Has he got anything left for us? He cuts noise. Smokes are still up as it currently stands. So no information for Vitality as to where this last player lies. They haven't seen the bomb, so can maybe start to operate under the assumption that Madja has it, but he's making the very executive decision to take a Tech-9 and charge. He's going to get the boys a bomb plant, but it's all about the round. Last round of their T side. Could he really leave with eight? If he posts up offensively towards the long side, he might be able to get one and get away and then play a one-on-one. -on -one. I like it. I like it a lot. He hears them coming. Madja's got the AWP for this. Oh, they nearly lined up. Now the Tech-9, he could get one, but only the one. Madja's <laughs> like, where is my bullets going? Can't believe it. Thought he had one of them dead to rights. God, can we have that one in slow-mo? Damn. I, I felt like there was a world where that could have been a collateral, maybe one kill, one body shot. You never know. You could see he's really frustrated <laughs> about that. Could have been a captain's clutch think, bet eight. I think Vitality are having a similar conversation of like, we may have just dodged a bullet, literally yeah. and figuratively. And had gotten there just in the nick of time, didn't he? Bloody hell, Madja. Uh, so this started with Sphinx kind of getting a second life. Finding one, finding two. Apex doing well to delay them. And I think his shots slowed them down in that Molotov. But yeah, that was the... Uh, the Madja rundown. Where are my bullets going? Zataro's with a bit of a smirk on his face. <laughs> it was a valiant attempt. Good try, boss. Uh, Not what I'd like to see from Zai. We're looking a, a little bit uh, fatigued. Well, it's been a stressful game yeah, so it has far. Been. Yeah. It hasn't been easy. It's been some good calling from Eternal Fire to put themselves up to a two round lead. Uh, or was we. It can this, work for it. Yeah, they're the second half underway. Vitality, if they pick the pistol up, that'll be both within the map. Jewel Berettas, a pair of them. Wakadia and Centaurus, the stars gifted. And Zaiwu, a P250 to work with. They really put a lot of uh, trust in Madger and his smoke. It enables them to play 4A, which is uh, Flames' responsibility. See, in this setup for Madja, if they did go B, it would be smoke delay and then use his flash when his team retakes. Makes sense. And he's got the kit as well. Oh, <laughs> that did not feel good to Apex. I'm actually glad we caught it from that POV. Yeah, and now Zantaras will activate, but watch out. It's the Woo on the pistols, caught and tracked by Kalix. Gets the bullet magnetized to the head of Zaiwu. And a winnable clutch for Flames. I say winnable, 1v3, sure, it's a, it's a mammoth ask, but by putting some damage onto Wakadia, and make no mistake, Flames individually and mechanically gifted, doesn't always get to show it as he's been integrating into the Vitality ranks. Especially in the clutch. Yeah. So it's Kalix kind of going between the two options and Flames being spotted. Kalix plays passive. Wakadi is the next to take the contact. 25 seconds. Kalix jiggles out. He's surely going to be ready for this pit player. Wakadi can take him down any time. A smoke. A plant will be huge. Massive plant. Oh, he's gone away with it. Surely going to go run down. Kalix will. And for eternal fire will trade pistols. One and one. <sighs> you take the round. Considering you, you had a huge number advantage there, the fact that they get the bomb down 
now you're under so much more of a threat right, going into the second round of the half. It's no longer Glocks and a nice kind of peaceful walk into your second half. You've got a very scary second half. Yeah, uh, second what are round. they dropping, right? Uh, are we getting in the Galils? I would say it's almost a certainty. Who's going to get Ooh. a good spawn up? Banana, great shot from Woxing to open up the account, wasn't it? Zaiwu with a couple of crispies on the way back in. And a great plant from Flamesy, right? Uh, that's the in-game leader's dream. The fact that he's tr not tried to play out the clutch, actually played for uh, the objective. Extra cash in the bank balance. And well, here it is reflected into round number two of the second half. An AK for Zaiwu. I love it. Absolutely love that. Mezzi setting him up, or was it Apex? How many head armor, though? He doesn't. Oh. I kind of hate that. I mean, I understand it could be picked up by one of the, the players with a head armor if he doesn't nail it. doesn't matter, it is Zywu. Yeah, it's Zywu after all. A few of these players just get off the hook. I mean, I'm sure, but that, an MP9, a straight bullet, it's awkward. Well, he's definitely threatening. They've dropped back out of Banana. They're even trying to get a boost going over towards CT. You've heard an AK-47. And there's Zywu. Who needs head armor when you've got aim like that? Just takes down Zantara, smokes arrive. The B site could be lost as easy as that. And Zywu, playing for the squad, has recovered a rifle. Throws it towards his boys. Puts the AK in Mezzi's hands. Yeah, just save uh, Tunnel Fire. The round's done. The fact that you were clumsily going for the boost and then crossing back dry in front of an AK that you already knew was threatening up Banana. And uh, just to recount why he has Kevlar and an AK, it's bought him himself uh, because of the kills that he got in the pistol round. So he's bought Kevlar, bought his own AK, and made it work. Yeah, he did make it work. Those two P250 frags are facilitating that. Oh, so uh, there you go. So giving up a plan in a one-on-three just allowed Vitality to have more of a threatening buy and put themselves back in just a two-round game. Man, Punished okay. immediately, Eternal Fire. Uh, and, uh, oh, okay. yep. after that, he left. Very impressive. Uh, and yeah, it's good to see the Zywu's on form. From the pistol into this one, he has just uh, m manufactured two rounds for Vitality. Well, and also he helped manufacture a way back in. The round that they had uh, a lighter purchase and he pushes Boiler, he gets a kill, he stays active. But there's another round for them in the first half and they were few and far between for a moment. Chose not to buy head armor again. Didn't cost him last time, so who cares? I, I guess maybe you're not even thinking about it. Right, that's probably one of the, I would say, issues. Mm. You know, you've just won that last round. You've just upgraded a couple of nades. Didn't even think about the fact you didn't have head armor. I guess for Zywu, maybe it doesn't matter at all. It's going to start a new trend. Not buying head armor on the T side. That would be the craziest <laughs> trend, Alex, that I... Listen, if it's like good there's enough been some Zywu. insane trends. <laughs> yeah, there is. Tunnel fire, you saved a bunch of rifles. Can you make it work? You're the ones who are opting for the 4A stack this time round, and Apex, he likes this map very much so. Doesn't matter about the iteration of Counter-Strike, it's been one of his favorites. Yeah, well, Mox is kind of trapped. He's in front of it, but has nothing to report as they're heading back towards the underguard. They should site. be rotating then. Guys, it's so quiet. Help out your boss man over towards B. Yeah, they're so scared about an APOL. Magic, what can you do? A couple of flashes and a push. Oh, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Zywu will find him. The bomb will be going down. And, woo, Spinks, he confirms it's a big banana retake. That's surely enough from Eternal Fire, though. What are you supposed to do in this one? You, you've smoked off. Save again. This is Inferno, still notorious for being the least uh, retakes from the CT side. Too many wobbles from Eternal Fire. I think the game's kind of slipping through their fingers by a few of the mistakes that they've made. Mm. Their playmaker ability on the CT side starts to diminish. Right, Zantares and Wakadi are both fantastic aimers, but both when they're the ones setting the tempo and the tone. And if you're trying to do that, on the CT side of Inferno, what are you going to do? Right, we discussed some options. FaZe like to do that deep mid smoke and play a little bit more offensively towards middle boiler halls. Banana control is a bit of a standard, but right, if a team just waits it out, they don't have to fight your nades. They can just allow you to use them. They can then use their own utility to retake. Two guys on Eco, two guys on Force Buy.
Well, they should be able to have a pretty decent round, all things considered. They save three rifles. They're actually taking their first tactical timeout to have that conversation. So I think Apex ready for the likely option of using the 2,400 loss bonus into the next, plus the money they currently have residually in the bank, which is about the 2K mark for most. Meeting that of the minds for these two. Well, this is, this is the, the, the chat. Do we want to just force buy again now behind these three guns? Right, you could drop some MP9s or Famuses, and then you could have a rifle round again, or you could just take a save on everybody right now, not invest at all behind the save guns that you currently have, and then have another buy round that is going to be pretty similar into the next. So it looks like they're taking the cheaper of the two options. They're going to save right now. Try and get your bang for your buck with the save rifles. You, you need to get into a few of these fights. Three towards Banana to start the round. Wakadia and Calix on the short side. This boost should get a chance. Yeah. Not like the kind of lamp boost, the alternative version. So Zantara's readies himself for combat. And wow, Zaiwu, he's been a recurring theme on this second half. Filling the feet with openers. A flash. Careful. He wanted to go. He did, didn't he? <laughs> he I wonder really wanted who to go. Who the leash there? Stay. Zantara's going to be kicking himself. Thinking, oh yeah, I've got the advantage here. It's a, not an angle they're going to be pre-firing. Bang. That's two times Zantara's has tried to take that first contact on the defensive B, and twice Zaiwu has just put him in his place. When do you think Zaiwu will buy head armor? When he dies? Um, maybe not. I told you, it's a new trend. See, walks well, it. walks it, cooks. Medium rare. There's Ricardio at the back of the site. If they can find him, which they've done. Apex, both of them hitting the head, but the AK reigning supreme. A couple of flub nades, but it shouldn't cost them. Say that. The oh, uh, yeah. Oh, got him straight through the smoke. Up to 16 now. So Zywu's in attendance uh, at the Copenhagen Major. That's been confirmed in the first best of one. He's definitely here. We'll find out if Donk is a little Ooh, bit later yeah. in the day. Spirit versus Cloud9, the final best of one. Well, look at the body. Well, yeah. My face when, or my body when, Zaiwu is on form. That's a vertical bend back. Yeah. I've never seen it done in that fashion. That'd Years be, uh, of uh, gymnastics for Auditioning that. for Cirque du Soleil. Oh, sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> I think, no, I think it's going to no, be fine, though. Okay. Well, I love this. He's on the top of his game. Apex knows what's coming. Because you're kind of piecing it together, right? You knew that there was going to be some rifles in the mix. You can take a look at the corpses, see what they brought in. It's Woksik that's just bending over backwards. No, they're back in control of this one, even though the score is tied up 8-8. Eight, eight. Eternal Fire. Can you change the tune? Madja into an MP9. Control for top banana. Molly's in exchange. You can just keep them coming. Yeah, so many procedures in place for Inferno. You can see that that half full smoke being dropped, it will delay. Centaurus is trying every trick in the book to try and uh, keep hold of this site. Right now, we know Zywa's got his number, but see that tiny little gap he's holding. They're going to go for uh, top and under retake nades. So this will buy them a little bit more time. We'll have to respect that unless they want to extinguish. But you can see the exchange and now the boost and vision. So that means the Apex can actually creep through. Oh, this is strong. But these are the moves like modern Counter-Strike. You, you need to make sure that you have all of these pre-discussed. It doesn't even have to you know, be perfect in terms of how it goes down, but you need to know what responses are available to certain Util deployment, and that's a great one right there. Yeah, it's like kind of knowing the. Uh, They're just coming in. Best computer move. Just Can't coming in. Trying to block it. They're already across. And a, yeah, messy one from Centaurus. It's an apex that takes him down this time. Oh, save? Yeah, unless uh, Wakadia can find a miracle. You wonder why we don't see much Inferno. The fact that that exchange is enough to determine the winner of the round is madness. Too much on the line, isn't it? But Sphinx is already hunting. Cardi, you're kind of trapped here. Can 
gonna have to fight his way out. And, oh, he just looked away. Flames catches the timing to dispatch of another. This makes a whole lot of difference if they can take these rifles away. There's a reason they're saving. Eternal Fire need these into the next. You know Apex has been making it uh, his role to keep track of his opponents by... They know how important these uh, saves are for Eternal Fire, and they will get away with it, and that will facilitate the opportunity to equip the two dead stars, Wicardia and Zantares, both going down. No, but they were scared of other things. They smoked Murray, they smoked me. No, but they missed some... They missed... Okay. It's always interesting to take those little details, I right? So it. Spinks reporting it. the details to Apex of what type of util they're using. It's going to help him make calls into the next. Now, uh, if they do buy, which you discussed as an option, with the 2900, they could drop uh, M4s, but they've actually decided they want full nades, right? So if they had done what you suggested, there wouldn't have been enough utility to defend. So they're actually, I'm not saying conceding a 10, but they're not shoving all in. With the loss bonus being maxed out into the next 3400 available, they've just gone for MP9s alongside of the saved M4s, and they'll give this one a crack. Wow, how has Apex managed to get this far forward this early? Oh, did Magic get him on the jump spot? He's gonna take a single point of damage. Look at Apex go! Takes the fight, willing Zantares into the duel, and nothing from Zaiwu. There it is. That's the deviation from the norm. As it's Zantares with a double kill. Uh, but Sphinx and Flamesy, they were the two that had to snap into action to try and grab back some space, but Mib was smoked. So if they had gone, it, it would have been taking these fights either through a grey screen or through a choke point that would have been watched on high alert. So they're just going to retool, regather, and rotate back towards Banana to join Mezzi, who's pushed up, being able to slink himself aggressively. And now they can execute in a number advantage situation, even though they're... All big, big find from Zantares, a dink, and then finishes it through the box. Don't worry about execute. Yeah, three kills from Zantares. He's having a strong performance here on Inferno. Three coming behind them in Banana. Yeah, there's nothing here for Flames at stake. Nothing at all. A clean, a perfect round. And as you said, without the full investment, who needs it when you've got Zantares on a rifle? Solid work from Eternal Fire. They're not going to bow out of this one. Okay, well, now let's see if they can do it when they have everything they want and more. Because this should be the fullest of buys. And take a look at that. Five AK-47s equipped on the CT side. Oof. A 10 AKs in play. Yeah, okay. Well, that's advantage. The inherent advantage of the T side weaponry is now completely flipped. Five one-shot headshots available for the CTs. And this is what we weren't seeing from the CT side of Vitality. A bit more of a forward smoke. Yeah, it's not super aggressive though, is it? That's a bit more like a G2 smoke. Mm. It definitely kind of gets this player apex, forces him to stay and hold the potential slips. Flames has boiler, they have apps control. But they are rifling through their smokes very quickly on the CT side. Only two remaining and a minute 14 on the clock. I, think flash. Friends, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's going to happen there. He's going back to pick up a smoke, but by doing so, he gave up the banana control. Bomb down T-stairs. I think Flamesy will be tasked with grabbing that. Magic drops his smoke, so getting what he needs. And I like this search for info mid. This is a good play from Wakadia. Sphinx will be hearing some steps, so calling a potential rotation. Woxic and Zatara is both evacuated. Wakadia needs a couple here, Alex. Good flash. He gets away. Sphinx will hear that. Molly required for pit so they can start their progression. Woxic's here as well. It all comes down to these next duel. Coming in from long, oh. he the double kill, but Wakadia responds in kind. They have the sight. Zantara's and Magic are disconnected, and a tut of their tongue. The just like that, from 0 to 100. The, the, the space that Flamesy took off that mid-flash, he just immediately hightailed it around long, and you could see how unprepared they were. Two players, ready for the fight, apps and sure. Backs turned, Flamesy goes, well, I'll take these. Easiest kills of my life. Manufactured gap that Flames jumps through. And I, I did like the info play towards Shore to at least grab something back. And the fact that they don't like make this whole song and dance about coming H as the pot flash up mid, Flamesy swings out, gets info of a player close short. Sphinx is apartments aggressive. He hears the rotation back to sight. 
Woxic in between two minds. Is it A, is it B? Well, now he's committed towards the A side where there's so much drama. His teammates are screaming, so they're under pressure. And his position on the map ends up being the gap. Double digits secure now. Info just flowing with all the U2. Yeah, man. Listen to Mezzy go. Nice British accent at the Copenhagen Major. It helps as well and maybe hinders in some accounts that Mezzy once upon a here it is. So Calix was just starting to deal with that, but too little too late. Flamesy had already established his power position. Oh, and an eternal fire second tactical timeout. Xtaz looking directly at Apex, having a conversation. Not sure if he was unhappy with what was being said. It's hard to tell with Dan. Yeah, it is. But uh, what I love as well is that uh, I just realized they, they can obviously have a little chat in French as well. You know, like if there's something that it wants to be exclusively communicated, uh, okay. kind of can uh, change languages into simlish. Simlish. And, uh, simlish. Yeah. Get it going. So the double digits first, they are found by Vitality. Only two rounds on the CT side so far for Eternal Fire. Most of the rounds for Vitality were, were found at the, the tail end of the half on their CT side. And because of the round that uh, Eternal Fire did win in the previous, they have actually been able to get themselves out another full buy. Walks against the AWP. They lose this one though. I think we'll be closing down this best of one and Vitality will be taking their win. Hard 4-4. Four, four. Oh, we're gonna try and be the entry piece. Imagine I just so dead, swallowed that nade. He's got so much use till he can't afford to go down early. Three of them vying for this fight, and it's Woxic onto Zaiwu. There should be info for three players though. Yeah, and look at Sphinx, he working off that info immediately. Starts to probe up mid, eyes on long. Rotation's quick. Centaur is aware of the potential. This is the fight. This is the fight. And Zataris goes down. Magia doesn't be go wide. Wakadia has found flames in the meantime. But they're wrapping up long. It's up to Magia. The flash is beautiful. So is the spray. Wakadia sets up his lead up for success. And a one versus three for Apex. Calix is holding the angle just as he mantles up. They'll close. And yeah, it's game on. It is game on. Both teams now locking horns at 10 apiece. Information, uh... Stressful for, for both the teams. And you can see the high-level Counter-Strike being played with the reactions, knowing that there's no AWP in play going towards the long side because you can avoid a library peak or mm. an arch peak with the AWP. And it, it felt like a good call, but the teamwork between Wakadia and Magi, you could see him asking for a flash. Right. Well, he didn't peak, did he? After Zentara's going down, you could have kind of swung out, gone for a late trade. Yeah. Instead, he called for the flash and it won the round. All right. Well, both teams still with full purchases, but we are at the breaking point now. Lost bonus for both uh, of them. Uh, Sticky uh, nades. Uh, uh, Jeez. You can't be 100 0 by the molly, but the nade might put him down. Four HP left on Apex. Oh, clear. Oh. oh, what? Sounded like one through the walls. And Tara's white screen. It's magic to Look provide the, the cover. Yeah, they are in trouble. They are, I mean, dead men walking right now. It's going to be unconfirmed. Magic's going to have no idea how much damage he's just stopping Mezzi and Zywu up to. What a horrible turn of events for Vitality. And I was just discussing the loss bonus. If they actually link back towards T-Spawn and just save, I wouldn't be surprised. The next round, only 1,900 loss bonus for either of these teams. Which, where the cash is at right now, Sphinx has 1,900 residual, Apex has 2,400. Yeah. If they do save on the three of them, they can have something that resembles a pretty strong rifle round because there will be money for Zywu to buy U2, Mezzi the same. And that's not accounting what they already have left over. So, yeah, the save is the best call. You can see it was immediately called off. They were way too low. And that one's won in the opening exchange of Banana. Wow. Where did Woxic find that opening? <laughs> Looks like it was Apartments. There it is. So the AWP of Woxic putting a leash on Spinks, one of the star riflers over there for Vitality. And back and forth we go. Second game on the secondary stream, already come to its conclusion. Maybe not the logical one. We won't give spoilers. We'll allow you to go and check that one out on your own. It was Imperial taking on Virtus Pro. Plenty more action to come today. Plenty more action to come in this one.
We're getting the legit looking eternal fire putting vitality reigning major champs through their paces. Zywu though, top of the pops, Alex. Would love a little bit more support. Has Sphinx not that far behind on 13. Apex on 12. Flamesy and Mezzi get very quiet. Seven apiece for them. Tantara's... Oh, here we go. Look, x really on the mic right now. Last tactical timeout to be called by the French coach. Reinstated. Got the boot for Zonic and then uh, Zonic went elsewhere. So x we need you back. Yeah, that, you know, I think those are the two moves where it's kind of, uh, it's like the it's Nork device. device. For Nork, yeah. yeah, device for Nork and uh, for Extaz. It's like, oh, you're replacing me? How could you? Who is it? Oh. Four-time major champion. Four-time major champ. champ. Most accomplished coach in all of Counter-Strike history. Yeah, all right. See you guys. Uh, see you guys in a, in a couple of years. I'll be back. I'll be back. Oh, you got my number. And uh, right now, Eternal Fire have Vitality's number. If this one slips away, they just were forced to save after they've, what? First 30 seconds. They're in big problems, Alex. There's only yep. 2,400 into the next. They lose this one. Eternal Fire are up to 12, and then their, their type of buy is Tech 9's back 10s. So this one here is essentially the game for Vitality. Oh, they're going for the double app setup. The AWP, the rifle. Yeah, this is going to be a hard one to break if you're going through your protocols, if you're trying to take that space. It's Sphinx tasked with that. Flames as the bomb. This could all go wrong at the drop of a hat, at the fire of an AWP. Oxix posted for it. The bomb still on his back. Oh, this really could be the end. You don't love to see it, do you? No, you don't. And okay, just as I say that, they're going to juggle it over to Zywa, so Flames is going to double peek at Sphinx. But there you go. They can both go down. Necessary. Necessary find from Sphinx. Oh, Moxie wanted to, didn't he? Yeah, of course. Tempted, but knows what's at stake. Tara is probably tempted to try and catch a little bit of a spam through the smoke. Yeah, the nade can finish him off, gets away from it. Oof, Apex has been humbled. Oh, and Wicardia nails it onto Mezzi. Eternal fire, they're cooking up trouble. Wicardia's found another onto Sphinx, walking out the apps. And one by one, Vitality fall, their wings clipped. Zywu's frustrations visible, as there's nothing for him here. A one versus four. And Zantares is going to peek out oh, the perfect time. He's not looking. 12 in the bank. Look at the big smiles as the Turkish side comes into the top 16 after getting through the opening stage and now faced with a titan in vitality. This is the best type of round, Alex. They have to close things down right here, right now, 13 to 10. The money is right where you want it. Vitality are squirming. You've done the hard work. You won the pistol. You lost the follow-up. You've bounced back into the half, and you're the first to reach 12. Look at the buy. Wicardi has not bought nades. Maybe we get something aggressive out of him. Trying to throw something aggressive into the mix. For now, not the case. But we will keep tabs on that. The battle for Banana rages on. An extinguish out of Mezzi to reposition. Apex can't afford to take early damage again. Two rounds in a row, he's been humbled. First a... Nade barrage, then a leg shot from the orb. Oof, it looks like they just want to execute B. Well, this is where Vitality found their success in the second on the force by that Zywu AK. That's right. All five here. Here they come. They're testing them. Magic, Zataris, Zataris, good for it. Look, everyone doing the flashbang dance. Two body shot frags from oh, Zataris, no. but through the smoke. They get it. Good one from Woxic back. Hang on. Hang on. The nade from Wakadi has done it, and it's oh! on fire. In the opener. Look at that celebration from Magic. That's a big name taken down in class Counter Strike. Eternal Fire. Huge victory to kick off their elimination stage campaign. Everyone needs to watch out for Eternal Fire now because that is going to boost the confidence levels. Look at the way they're walking. Swagger in your step, as you know. You're the boys who took down Vitality today. What a huge win for Eternal Fire and Vitality. It may have been caught cold. Zywu, however, <laughs> was here to play. Not enough in their opening best of one. Not enough indeed. Uh, thanks for that chat. Uh, Yes, uh, it looks like we are indeed paging Mr. Hugh Briss uh, because <laughs> they left Inferno in, we highlighted it, and we said this is a risky map to play Eternal Fire on, and it is indeed bore fruit. Well done, guys. Yeah, I I mean, I don't want to like harp on it too much as well. Like, we made it. Pimp, Pimp did say, you know, this could be a confidence pick coming in. I'm like, do you really want to go here against a team that are warmed up or very, very comfortable on this map? And they indeed paid the price. Yes, it was close. Yes, it was a little labored. I thought we, I thought we might see that capitulation coming in from Eternal Fire again, considering mm -hmm. the lead they had initially. And mm. see Zywu starting to activate in this T side from Vitality, starting to bear fruit. But they were able to finally take the 
fight to Vitality, that B bombsite hold towards Banana. Finally, Zantaris getting multi kills after multi kills. Walks not missing with the AWP towards A, and they close it out, and they get it done. They take down the defending champions. Listen, the B side was a goddamn nightmare for, for Vitality in this game. Yeah, well, mm. more so for Vitality, right? Because they couldn't really hold the B bomb side whatsoever. Eternal Fire went on a six round win streak on that C side, where in five of those, they planted the bomb on the B bomb side and won every single time. Then mm -hmm. the sixth one, they went to the A bomb side and basically outsmarted Apex and outsmarted Vitality. Now you then see Vitality go over to the second half. You think, okay, normality restores. They lose the pistol. They win the conversion. They win four in a row. You think, okay, they're going to walk away with it. Then full control. And then for some reason, they kept walking up Banana and they couldn't win that Banana control. Yeah. Utility from EF was great. The peaks from EF was great. The aggression coming out from Voxic with the AWP from Santeris as oh, well. Oh. For some reason, Vitality kept on pushing that Banana and it left Obviously, Apex very frustrated, but also Vitality in a situation where they didn't even get close to winning any rounds. We didn't see the bomb being planned. We didn't see clutches go down to 2v2s or 3v3s. Yep. EF just outright won the game. Major was out calling Apex yeah, the majority of the entire yeah. game. And I think we need to uh, you know, just give him his flowers as well. Once again, the Xantaris with Kadia combo, just so mm. so unplayable well, at times. But there, Major there was just an great. interesting story there, obviously, because we, we've talked about Major and uh, how he was heavily involved in the French scene for a long time and yeah. then kind of found himself on the outs. Yes. It's a very you know political kind of scene. And uh, I don't want to say there's a lot of nepotism there, but I mean, historically, that we've seen some lineups where they've avoided working with certain players and they've it just is like that, right? Mm. That's the reality and he was one of the guys that uh, sort of is on the out so I'm sure it'll be nice to send a message to some of his old compatriots yeah. and I've got to say this was it for me the Zantara's performance he like was so instrumental in what Eternal Fire did. I mean, we, we knew he was a great player. We've seen that yes. for many, many years. Even when he was in, in big time, he was doing fantastic. We kind of forgot him because he's been playing in teams that hasn't been participating at the Vegas tournaments. But we've gotten to see EF play at Katowice. We get to mm. see EF play at the Major now. And once again, we're being reminded that he is arguably one of the hardest hitting rifles out there. Mechanically speaking, he's been taunted as one of the most skilled players Counter-Strike has had to offer the past five years. Yet he hasn't really found the success from an individual standpoint down to the fact that he's been playing on teams that didn't allow him to do so. Now that's changed a little bit. He's the catalyst. He's the guy showing up. He put up a 1.61 rating against Vitality, taking yep. him down in the opening game at a major. That's a massive statement for Santaris. And for Santaris, you know, sometimes he can blow a little bit hot and cold as well, depending on, you know, where, where the team is at, ment mentally speaking. I'm just looking at his numbers in the, in the past five, six games he's played. Apart from that one complete meltdown that they had against, uh, I believe it was Game of Legion and Overpass, his ratings have been about 1.5 and a Above 1.4, 1.5, 1.8, 1.7. Mm. It helps. Just, it, it really helps, I'll <laughs> tell you that. But it also helps that they made a game basically designed for Xantara's, like the wide peak uh, meta, uh, uh, which he's an expert at. So uh, absolutely thriving right now. I, I think we can, we can actually talk about the, uh, the the first half, right? How it kind of played sure. out, right? And we're talking about this B bomb side and how much of a nightmare it was for Vitality. Look mm. at the amount of times they, they hit B here, Pim. I mean, you wanted to talk about this, right? They're just going to plant the bomb, win the round, plant the bomb, win the round, plant the bomb went around. It keeps going on over and over and over again. And I don't want to simplify it to a point where EF is not getting the credit they deserve. Mm -hmm. They were very, very structured in the way they took the B-bomb side. Yes. Again, the utility usage, the spacing, the jumping in for each other, making the game for Major, making the game for Santeros, making it winnable for them. One could argue that Vitality at some point should have brought Saivu to that bomb side to put a stop to mm -hmm. it, invest in AWP, fight for banana control, just like EF did in that second half. They were okay playing on the back foot. They were okay yes. falling back into the bomb side, and they just couldn't hold it. I'll also argue there were a couple of rounds where Flamesy got super, super close getting that second kill that could have changed the tide of the round, but over and over again, they were just missing the mark a little bit. It's a, it's a game of inches. It's a game of millimeters at times. Right? You could see the frustration on Apex. I'm sure it wasn't just a loss, but also how much of a struggle city, struggle bus it was for him on the B bomb side. And then mm. what I love about what Major was calling the T side was when they switched over to the A bomb side, it was just a clinical, clean, well-constructed counter-strike. And we could see Vitality that had three players on the A bomb we had Zyvo with the AWP as well, and Eternal Fire just completely outcalled them. Uh, you can actually probably, probably roll the tape right now as well. It's, it's going to be a very simple hit coming in from the apartment's position. We have Major coming in with the late lurk. You can see over here, right? Mezzi stuck on the side. The opening kills goes the way of Vitality, and then Zantaris immediately, two quick replies, and they slow it down. They know where Mezzi is, they slow it down, and Major 
plays this one to perfection. Chef's kiss. He cuts off the rotation, gets both the kills. Now it's Mezzi left in the pit. 1v3. He finds one and he's done. Just, just completely outcalled and outplayed by the Turkish team. Yeah, and look, we talked a little bit about Mezzi in, in the pre-show, saying he's under a lot of pressure to have a uh, good tournament here. Yeah. Of the obvious name people would be looking as uh, being potentially removed if it was a disaster here in Copenhagen. Is it panic stations yet for Vitaly? I know it's only one best of one, but you do want to start strong. Nah, not yet, not yet. It depends on how they, they bounce back in the second one. Obviously, if they go 0-2 and, and pull off a furry in that regard, then we can start to hit the, the panic button. I'd also argue for Messi, you know, I, I won't put the blame on him. He was playing in pit, he didn't see much action. He, he, he wasn't seeing anyone on no, the No, that's the right? He had to retake or save his gun every single round. Yes. If anyone who didn't do his job this time around, you know, normally does it, Flame C on that bomb side, he was being contested time and time again, only ended with eight kills. So for him, not a great game for Vitality. Not panic just yet, you know, but they can't afford to lose another best one. All right, thanks a lot, guys. As always, we'll see if the Wu Dan clan can bounce back. But next up, we're going to be setting up FaZe Clan versus Heroic. Make sure you join us. Level up your gaming space with metal posters from Displate. Hang your Displates in seconds. Swap them whenever you like. Get official art from your favorite games on a uniquely designed metal canvas and choose from thousands of posters. Join over 3 million collectors now. Your wall upgrade is here. Shop now at Displate.com. Welcome back to the CS2 Major in Copenhagen. And now we get to a matter of legacy. Uh, FaZe Clan are going to be taking on Heroic, uh, breaking it down as always. We've got Blair and Pimp. Uh, let's just talk about what we set up this morning. Uh, FaZe, obviously, I, I mean, for me personally, I, I felt like they are the favorites. I think this is one you yeah. sort of have to take right now while the scene's in a little bit of flux at the start of a new game. And I really like the continuity in the FaZe lineup. And I think they've got some of the best players right now, in particular, the man Rops. Yeah, I uh, very much agree with that. I think Rops has been fantastic in Counter-Strike 2. I think getting Frozen as well to replace Twist, we spoke about that oh, yeah. earlier. You know, it's, it's almost an upgrade, and, and that's uh, oh. a bit of a rough statement to put out there when you consider how good Twist is, but I do think Frozen has a higher ceiling. I think Frozen is the future for this lineup as well, yeah. and now they had a time to integrate him as well. So you have this duo of Rops and Frozen who can be super, super hard-hitting with the rifles, and then, of course, Brokey being this wild card. So in terms of the roster and their strength, I fully agree with you. They are one of the favorites to go all the way. This is, this is one of those teams where you're looking at the results and sure you might have you know you might have your spirit and the and the run they had in Cato and how good they're looking right now you might look at vitality and the heights they had at the end mm. of the year and how they've tapered off a little bit here face have been the most consistent tier one team in cs2 
Sydney, the opening. They were the best team in the first few months, by the way. And yep. even their failures was only in the grand finals against a team playing at their very best. I mean, look at the Sydney. They won CAC. They won an online event as well. Head to the fall finals. They fall to Vitality. They lost in the world finals as well in the grand finals. And Katowice are the only team that mm. stopped them was Spirit and Donk on that insane, <laughs> Which insane was just, run. Yeah. It had to be literally it live gaming day, to brother. take them down. Exactly. Yeah. This is, for me, a contender. And if you put a gun to my head, don't do that, Richard. But if they do, hmm. and we'll you see. ask me to... We'll see how the, we'll see how the segment goes. <laughs> right. They ask me to pick a team to win this major. I'm giving it to Neo, Carrigan, and the boys. Yeah, I mean, also a good point there, right? Uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about the importance of coaches in these big moments. I think quietly, they've pulled off a massive coup in bringing Neo in there. Obviously, towards the end of his playing career, was in phase. Sure. Very well respected by everybody in that team because of his legendary style is coming out of 1.6 but I actually think low key he's the coach people aren't talking about right now okay mm -hmm. he's uh, he's uh, a classic pick for for Kerrigan Kerrigan would never allow a coach to come in and dictate the way face is playing he would allow a player to come in and help him you know be the second hand being the guy that can help transpire the ideas of Kerrigan make no mistake you know some teams you'd argue the coach is the more important person compared to the in-game leader you have Blade and Navi being a great example of that yes. it's not like that within face clan Neo is playing the role to perfection he's a allowing Kerrigan to control the team, chiming in whenever needed and helping him out whenever needed as well. The pair of those two, I agree, it's a great match. I, I was remember in, in Sydney, in, in the first CS2 event right there, right? I was having a quick chat with Neo. I'm like, hey, Neo, you know, how's it going? You know, how's, uh, how's it going? You're coming in, you're stepping into some pretty big shoes, so to speak, in face. Like, I'm just sitting down. I'm just <laughs> feeling out the vibes. Yeah. I'm watch I'm not giving any inputs. I know what they're doing right now. I'm just feeling out who, how these personalities are, how these people are over there. And he's taking his time to really, you know, c not come in with his ideas all together, trying to enforce what he thinks is the way to go, but rather being like, let's have a more harmonious meeting of ideas of minds. And when he said about Carrigan and how, you know, he, he is the real captain of this team, he also respects Neo a lot. He has said this in interviews as well. Yeah, he's like, having a legend like Neo, I am actually a little bit starstruck, is what mm. Carrigan said. So. <laughs> It's just perfect. It's just yeah. a perfect meeting of ideas and brains and minds. Meanwhile, over at Heroic, a uh, very different situation. Uh, when they lost, theoretically, their two best players, yeah. uh, people kind of started to write the lineup off. But what they've done since, with the additions they made, and obviously kicks in this great, you know, talented young IGL, Heroic going 3-0, this is a tough opponent for FaZe, no doubt about it. It is. It, it is a team that is uh, expecting, you know, our expectations were quite low coming out of the, the 2023 season we didn't really know where to put him. Let's be completely honest, the replacement they got in in Nerds and in Nico Dust mm -hmm. and Kixen for that matter, they're quality signings. I think Nico Dust is the one that surprised me the most. He's been, you know, looming around within the second tier Danish scene. We saw him in Flames, we saw him in Fnatic, was never really able to break through. It does feel like he's found his home and a place within this heroic lineup. And what I love the most about them as well, they have found a way to combine the identity of the old heroic with Kixen's way of playing and calling Counter-Strike. Yes. Take Mirage as an example. They almost play like the old iteration of heroic. They this constantly proactive Counter-Strike team that is constantly in your face, making it very tough for the opponents to ever feel safe or calm down on the map. They never allow you to breathe, so to speak. And then on different maps, they have a more kicks and style-ish play where it's more like the old apex of iterations. So I like the fact that they've been able to combine different play styles and actually make it work from the get-go. And, and one thing you need to touch upon, first is the map, we have to touch upon this. This is a map that Heroic have looked uh, pretty, very, very comfortable on in the past. It's also a map that FaZe have historically given some of the most exciting, the most, you know, just blockbuster moments sure. in Counter-Strike right. in the past couple of years as well. So I'm excited about this map. I want to touch upon a little bit on Nerds as a player. Oh, the guy who was just seemingly just thrown to the winds into the wilderness when all his teammates from the ends, they moved on to Falcons, they, they dispersed, so to speak. He gets picked up by Heroic. He's been in an international lineup, so he's like, all right, I'm going, to re I'm going to kind of reinvent myself, so to speak, and try and showcase what he's capable of. And he's done it. Talking about Tessis and Shush and the run they had in the RMR. They were looking so good. They have a point to proved they were the leftovers they were the discarded pieces and they're like no we can be winners Final it's uh, it notoriously known for FaZe to be slow starters. It's the best mm -hmm. of one. They're going in against a hot Heroic. You'd be a fool to count them out right now. I think this is going to be a close game. Definitely a game that can go the way of Heroic. FaZe are the favorites, but we've seen them time and time again at the Major. You know, slow down and, and ease into it in the tournament. So given it's the best of one and we're about to start this, I expect a close game. All right, well, thanks a lot for your thoughts, gentlemen, as always. We're going to get into the action now. We'll try the banter zone again. Well, are we in? To just turn his monitor off, Richard. Can you please come up here and fix it? We are having technical issues. I'll bring I'm you a coffee serious. as well, Sir Chad. I'll be right there. Oh, actually, uh, a cappuccino. Yeah, no, Rich, if you're, if you're doing coffees, I actually will bring you one. All right, yeah, nice one. Love you guys. Thank See you. Ya. Bye.
Oh, oh, but the match is paused. Well, we my screen is working. Okay. You got it. You got it working. Yeah. Okay. We could have sent it out here, okay. and now we're paused. Well, we could have stayed in the banter zone. It, well, it gives us a chance. Does to, it make uh, the same noise as the Twilight Zone? Do, 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 do. I think it probably would. That's yeah. a reference for the older generation. There's at least three dads watching right now that found that entertaining. Shout out to those three dads. And uh, well, we'll find out who's the daddy between Faze and Heroic. Are you up for this? I think it's Carrigan. Yeah, actually, fair play. Fair play. He's so been, actually, Rain's an actual father. He is an actual father. An yeah, actual he father. He gets, he gets the brownie points on that one. I'm intrigued. Heroic are on the T side. So we get to see what kicks in. You know, we've seen what Shui has started with uh, in the top 16 here at the elimination stage. Oh, oh and Frozen, the newest name in the phase. Jersey has started with a bang, quite literally, to the head of Nerds. Rain, the same, forced away. I do love watching Rain on Ancient. Ooh, the molly. He's dead. What? How's he survived? Oh my god! Rain finally brought down, but the damage was done. Shush and Kixen have got enough space to plant. This yeah, is already. Dude, now. there's some serious aimers in the server, and we're getting a prime example straight into the pistol. Well, especially with the type of counter strike we saw from Shush and Tessus, right? Yeah, Those man. two were lighting it up, especially with the AKs. Now, this is difficult for FaZe to get back into. It is Robson Carrigan, the leader and his lead henchman. Two caves set up and one ram. It's a tickle. Yeah, they're not buying it. Ramp will check it. He has to clear this. Rob needs a clean one. Shush. Nails it on the clock. And it's Tessus to put the cherry on top. That's what he's talking about. Tessus g up the boys. And I'm not going to lie, a huge confidence booster is on the menu for Heroic today. If they can start strong straight in, you know, we talked about this. Uh, they call it the challenger buff. The uh, challenger buff. Yeah, from the former name. But... Uh, Coming in hot when you're familiar with your surroundings, the environment that you're competing in. And Faye's coming in rather cold. Let's see how much of a difference that makes, because at the moment, it comes down to a brokey scout too. I like scouts it. Scouts uh, in the mix. I think it's a good map for scouts. You can find some tags, and if you can be proactive with the scouts early, then you're going to be able to mop up with the SMGs later within the round. So this force buy and a double tree boost as well. So a little bit uh, fruity, as the B lane is completely under the control right now of what's, Heroic. What's the theory here? Is it with four starting A, you're just essentially saying we'll come back and have another go into the third if you don't hit a, the A site? Yeah, and I think, you know, this is something that's probably based off of homework. Oof, yeah, no, he's in trouble already. But a scout is quite scary. So you would have to make sure you retool and execute proficiently if you do want to continue to hit this site. And Carrigan's already very low, isn't he? Nade. Not far off the mark, all things considered. Carrigan, if you can't scare them away with a tag or two now, it's over. And uh, it's over. Forced in by the util. Yeah, th that would have been a different round if you hit a tag or two in the initial exchange. Because they probably have to pivot. And they go, okay, well, we're a little bit scared now. Because, uh, you know, when you get tagged up, you can do those MP9s or 5.7s, whatever they're expecting. Instead, we're just going to be seeing this one... Uh, Peter out. Now, uh, if people were with us for map number one, I, I brought some skins trivia thanks to yes. Owner Picks. So I, was, I was watching last night and I learned some more skins trivia because he was going through all of the pro players' uh, inventories. He wanted to lend out some skins. Uh, it I did see. seem a little bit desperate, to be honest with you. But uh, regardless, go over to uh, Rops for me if you could, Bastion. Thank you. So we'll take a look at Rops' skins. He's got some some very nice skins, but one thing that Owner Picks will notice was no stickers. Uh, he's a sticker-free gamer. So we'll see if that stays true. Uh, throughout, but uh, that's that. something that I learned. I just wanted to share a bit of trivia. I appreciate that. It's always good to do in these down moments. And I'm not like the most skin proficient, but I will say that that looks like a very clean MP9. Look at the float on that. There's not a blemish, not a scrape. Same not with the, a whole, the, the coffee delivery. Is that, there's He's a actually done as well. it. Wow, look at this. Hey, uh, Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Oh, that looks fantastic. Hey, that's, I do, I do. I'm a, I am a fan. Oh, look at this. Okay. Well, thank you very much. All right. Cheers, We've mate. We've got a whole bunch of good stuff. All right. Well, on, yeah. we are sufficiently caffeinated. I'm going to get hydrated. Yep. Cheers. And we're ready to get the third round underway. So this uh, second bite of the cherry, it, it's the just the Carrigan uh, scout that went down. So he'll be operating up with a pistol. Yeah, you got given a 5.7, I believe. Nice oh. from Nerd, taking down Frozen and continuing his path straight up mid. Look at Kixon getting tanked down by Rob's good awareness of the timings. Kixon's cut down before he can get across. This is a scary round. I understand that it's just a double dip on the saved weapons, but the fact that they've had that early exchange, take a look at the U2 remaining. A couple of smokes, a couple of mollies. There is the ability to still execute, but FaZe rejigging right now to clear mid. They want to group up together, 
and search potentially red. Rop still, oh, and yeah, by doing so, they've left this wide open bomb site. So Heroic, enjoying the taste of B so far. Three rounds in a row, they've found the finish. And they're in, bomb goes down. 40 seconds thrust onto the clock and away you go. Feels like just damage now, surely. Yeah, how are you getting back into it again? It's the same conversation we've had three rounds in a row. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the, the loss of Carrigan, it's probably the same kind of result. I really like the way that Nurse conducts himself in middle. Uh, it's something that has is, is been one of my joys of watching Nurse ever since the endpoint days. Uh, one of Mighty Max's many poached individuals. They're giving it a look. What kind of look is that? It's, uh out on most of them. Take, taking Shush down is nice. Taking him down another. Robs is at least getting himself three SMG frags. I don't think he's leaving with that AK, I'll be honest with you. And uh, yeah, three casualties for Heroic. But this is a dream start in terms of rounds, getting themselves the pistol and the following two. It is time for guns though. Okay, well, the Brokey AWP brought out immediately. I don't know if the same will necessarily be the case for Nikodos. We've seen that he is actually very proficient with the AK. He uh, doesn't always need to lean into the AWP, which, discussed in some of the earlier heroic games during the opening stage, allows Kixon's calls to stay a bit more flexible. And one of the times I first took notice of Kixon during Apex was the calling that he was able to get away with on this very map. But we might get a mid-jaunt immediately. Kixon through the flames. Smoke to extinguish and Big. he's out. Yeah, Frozen's found an opening. That's his second so far in four rounds of play. That's all immediately silenced him. You talked about his uh, mid prowess. And Rain is, is noted as one of the most proficient in this Jag Cave position. You can see how he's using that uh, elevated angle to keep his uh, head in a different levels of elevation. Can be hard to track. Searching for info over towards main. This could be Rops. Well-timed smoke stalls out the round. A nade at his toes. And if they just finish B again. Hey, you've got some real problems. You know, it is... Oh, Rain with a spam. So he's able to find a lick of damage onto Shush. Carrigan is the B long holder traditionally, but the support of Brokey not too far away, and they're just creeping in. Oh no, Carrigan's gone down to Shush, and now it keeps you freeze up Tesla's. Look how many bodies there are. There's way too much to handle. Brokey! Oh. He nearly finds the collapse between the legs of Shush, Robs. I mean, you know he's the A anchor. Yeah. So, Nerds, he's ready. He is ready to go. And so are Heroic. Let me take a quick look at the scores on the doors here, because, yeah, it feels like everyone's arrived already. Nikodos has actually got the most damage dealt. We've got Shush at six. And uh, no, that was just his third. And you saw the smiles on the faces there of a few of the Heroic members. They're very happy with how this T-side is kicking off. I've been loving the type of counter strike we've seen from them so far and just catching Carrigan off guard. He had no idea that they had leaked up so far. It was Rain the one who got punished by that. Brokey under pressure with the AWP and Nerds ready for the Rops A push. Flicks into action as face yet to find around this major campaign. That trade in middle as well, if you're Kixon and you get traded by Nerds, you are, and then you get to maintain pseudo mid control. You don't have full mid control, sure. but you have enough that they don't have it. Yeah. You're happy with that. And then he gets to take a look at the bird's eye view of where everybody is, what we have left, how we get to finish the round. But you're right in terms of B just being exploited right now. If you're phased, you're, you're going to be kind of hankering for a solution to this uh, B site that just feels like every time Heroka wanted it, they've walked up and claimed it so far. Not sure how far the Nova's going to get him. And Tessus has managed to catch Carrigan investigating. A strong angle for him. He's ready for more. Frozen was very good for that one, though, on the MP9. The shotgun nails nerds. This one gets a little uncomfortable. You've got 45. Nikodos on that T-side 8WP. He can't be the one to fight in. Frozen, however, has got some support from Rob. So a nice nerdy nade from Kixon doesn't find its mark. But again, it's just an execute. Short and long smokes. Oh, it's the same warbang that really has been problematic for them. Rops is such a nuisance. He's in form. He is coming to Copenhagen on his A game. Shush evades the potential swing. Disappearing through the smoke gives Rops additional options. Time. Rops spams away. 
Shush, you've got 12 seconds. He's really rotting the clock here. Brokey tries to swing for the punish. You'll get it. This is problems. And it's Robson Brokey to close face. They will post their first round of the Copenhagen Major. And it starts with a Nova on mid. Yeah, not too bad, is it? Nerds goes down. And that was after the kills felt like they were falling in favor of Heroic. So they have been stalled and stunted. My phase getting it done with some punchy weaponry indeed. There is some juicy upgrades available. AWP, AK-47s, and a first round on the board. So that's a good one. Tessas has already gotten a kill from that exact position. And yeah, Brokey's never did come into play. Nerds it was a little bit too far. And then time being the biggest issue, just jarring on the site. And the B plays stalled and stopped. I wonder what he's after. Yeah. I think that was just a member of hotel staff. Just checking we're all cool. Got a name badge. Well, Rain is about to need to help out Carrigan. Oh, he's gone away with one onto Nerds there. He was full blind, just good crosshair placement, the smoke on Cave. They are abusing this B-bomb site, Chad. They're abusing Carrigan. How cruel. Oh, man, you can just already feel this brutality of it from a CT perspective. Now that frag from Kixon has almost sealed the deal by taking down Frozen. Oh. Rops just got one tap. Whoa. Down goes the AWP. Nikodos, you talk about his AK skill. <laughs> Here's a prime example. He just out AWPs the AWP holding his previous AWP. And oh. Rain is in cave only for a moment. Dude, Heroic look vicious right now. And this, this is going to have to change your setup, right? So it's either going to do one or two things. It's going to soften your A defense because you might just want to give it up and give, maybe have a complete gap. Or it's going to take players away from middle to help Carrigan out on B long. Because you can't just keep having your in-game leader crept up upon, executed on, and isolated, right? He is uh, obviously individually one of the weakest players within the whole server. And that's not me having a dig. That's just the, the truth of the matter. He's got a huge brain, and he's definitely very plucky. He can get stuck in on the T-size. He likes good brawl. But if it's a heads-up duel where Nerds is coming up the ramp and Carrigan's standing to deliver, I'm going to be back in Nerds every round. Yeah, right now it's a problem. And uh, Neo has called the timeout. You actually just would rather use that 30 seconds to have the team screw their heads on tight. But yeah, if you were to watch this demo from Carrigan's POV, he's been wall banged, he's been flashed, he's been molotoved, and every time a bullet between his eyes, the game plan right now for Heroic is going perfectly. Let's see if they can con continue to adapt as phase they already found one round with a lesser buy. Can they do it with rifles? They've got everything they need here, Chad. But they're essentially calling the bluff. Notice that I haven't changed anything with the setup? Smart. Well, that's it, right? You're thinking, okay, well, if they're playing to condition, eventually they're thinking they're going to force us into something else. Now, Bingo. it is a risky game that you're playing because maybe Kixon's like, hey, boys, let's just if, keep doing it. If it ain't it. broke. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It, that could be the case, but it isn't. And as we take a look at the radar top left, you can see there's two players in quick response time to deal to, with this towards a Brokey, Temple AWP, and Rops over towards Donut. Out of curiosity, yeah, I wanted to see Rops' POV just because that sliver gap he's playing. Well, Red will have to be picked up by one of the B defenders, but they are searching down ramp. So the info game flows. They know it's clear. On high alert, Rops and Brokey now. Rops? He's being walked upon. Playing the fade, Nerds and kicks, and there's no way Rops can get both, but can he get one? That is going to be the difference maker. Brokey to be tested as well. Don't forget, the calls have been made. Oh, and the gap has been found. Carrigan slips past the two mid players. He's behind a main. The smokes are fading. Kicks it. Good for it onto Rops. And three players collapse. It's Brokey's up that's left tagged and retreating. Set. Nothing for you here. Heroic are playing one hell of a game. Don't forget, these were the guys that have yet, are yet to drop a map at the Major. Or rather, let to yet, yet to drop a game through the 3-0 in the first stage of competition. And chasing that form, chasing that AWP. Brokey is going to get double swung. He misses them both. He's in trouble. I don't think he gets away with this whatsoever. He's a dead man oh. to the nade. It kicks him with a well-placed trajectory. 
Rain jiggled out. Oh my god, they're abusing them. They are absolutely uh, running rings around FaZe. That's the team that's singing right now. The fact that on the hunt they've even been poised, right? Going for the jiggles, going for the jumps to avoid the AWP. I think that's fantastic. That shows that this team is playing at a very high capacity right now. I'm, I'm convinced, Chad, just because of the, the psychology of human beings and the way we operate, there is definitely something in the water for, for Tessus and Shush wanting to just prove, uh, as they already have. You know, I, I would argue it's already. Oh, yeah. It's definitely sure. been proven with all the people that have kind of left and departed them, uh, not being present here in Copenhagen. But these two Danes combined with such a talented force, Heroic have really landed on their feet and now they're sprinting. Uh, they know what type of buy they're dealing with. That's told by Tessus into the MAC-10. This is seven available for Heroic as long as they don't trip over their own shoelaces and Shush, he falls first. Nurts is in a bit of hot water, Alex. Another one oh. would have been great. Now it's number advantage phase. Okay, Carrigan. Has to translate though into a round. frozen has got him locked in. Tessus can't really depart. He's in cave. They don't need to force the issue, but the bomb's going into B. The smokes will allow that. And oh, Frozen did not expect Tessus to be lingering around. Carrigan has continued to rack him up. How has he found kicks and a wall bank through the smoke? Puts it all onto Nikodos. Through long. Carrigan dead. A one versus three for Nikodos. We know he's sharp. Nine kills so far already from the day. The death's disgust. Nikodos. Been kind of rising to the challenge of heroic. Knows where the smoke came from. Fake steps, drops down. There we have it. Phase on the board. I will, I will have to, you know, review the fact that the two rounds they've won, Chad, have been with lesser weapons. Yeah, uh, precisely. Like you've got nothing convincing in your gun round. Not at all. So uh, look, that's going to come down to individuals hitting some necessary shots and then cascading on top of the number advantage. That right there, Shush felt like he should have gotten one. That's very uncharacteristic to see someone as solid of an anchor player like him just whiffing. And then Nerds as well, under so much pressure from middle as well as A, he's pinned. From there, it all kind of falls apart. You can just see how many blue dots started to swarm towards that B side. But speaking of B, back we go. Yeah, the orbs here this time. Different setup. It doesn't see? matter. It Abuse doesn't Carrigan. matter. That's the name of the game. Nikodos. A huge opening. And they know Rain likes a push. Straight into Tessus. Straight into Tessus. This is so good from Heroic. Oh. What are you supposed to do? Now if they just go for the simple execute like they have done, the only problem was Rops pushing A main, which has been dealt with right now by Nerts, who's left middle to go and deal with any leaks. But with the smokes that they have available, I would say just a simple execute again. Short and long. Use your molly, away you go. But FaZe are trying to play ahead of this, starting to gamble towards the B side. A search from Frozen. One head spotted. Nikodos is just going to be comfortable after backing up his aim. two B. You now know it's an AK and an AWP. Yeah. FaZe are trying to get ahead of this, though. I feel like they still should finish B. Uh, I mean, certainly, in, with the minimap on our screen, <laughs> it does seem like the wiser of the options, but this red smoke's been walked through. Frozen's getting a lot of audio, and now Broke has gotten a frag, taking down Kixon. Rops is here, the jig is up. Heroic trying to get into A with only 25 seconds left. They have to get past the AWP here. Brokey dead. No, what? Covered by Frozen. It was Nikodos, had the opportunity. Now Nurt is the one in the clutch. He knows where Frozen is. Or was. Loud about this with only 10 seconds. The pressure is on Nerds. How did he get out of this one? He oh, takes the fight. Yeah. Frozen reigns and gets the double, but it's the clutch that matters. FaZe finally find a gun round. Uh, yeah, you just think because I know that you knew there was two towards B, but as soon as you start throwing that utility, they're going to rotate. And that's exactly what happened. So thinking that FaZe would call the bluff, thinking it was a fake, rotate in towards A. The rotation time is there. FaZe shut them down and get their third, turning into a three round game. Heroic. They bring Saw into the conversation. Well, he's yeah. spoken about coach at the moment. Gets 30 seconds to see if he can right the ship. That red smoke as well. Like you could, It goes two ways. You could have thrown that red smoke and then gone back to B and you'd have likely had a wide open sight. Weird to know that by virtue of X-Ray, but of course they're not. And it gave Frozen this opportunity just to confirm their suspicions. He was so close in the smoke he could hear at least two donut. Jobs are good and maybe a bit of an overthinking there. It's because as soon as they knew that there was two, they didn't just sprint into action. Right? If they had moved immediately after understanding, it still would have been an equal rotation if both teams were just sprinting in that general direction. But 
giving up a brief moment of time, has left Heroic scratching their heads. Now they're going to come in with two SMGs and three rifles. The signature MP7 for nerds. They've been finding B success. Carrigan, can you get anything done? Rain. Is he going to be overlooked? Yes, he is. Tracking nicely. Gets himself the multi. And just as easy as that, as Heroic are escorted back to spawn. That's the most convincing one we've seen. 100%. And looking likely now for FaZe to tie the half up at 6-6. I know there's still a few more rounds to go, but the flow has changed. Right, what was working for Heroic has now been completely stunted. Yeah, and you always feel a bit silly when you die to a multi-kill from Cubby on an all-in beat. Rain, rain, <laughs> rain down to Nikodos, yeah. Quick reactions from Nico. 19 HP, Broken will find him. Nice fucking hold, Toby. Good fucking flesh, David. I will. And that's also the job of a, of a good teammate, is just letting everyone know what they did so well, thanking them for their performance, and the fact that he gets three. The flash from David, you can see there, is the assist onto Tessus made that third possible. Alex knows him like that, but uh, <laughs> it's frozen, in case you're wondering yes. who David is. Yeah, excuse me, Sernansky. And a Horvy is Rain. Shout out to him one time. Oh, this is a heroic economical. They've thrown both the spawn B door smoke and the elbow smoke. Trip nades for the mid jump up. Woo, the airstrike. Well, uh, fortunately for FaZe, able to dodge all that goodness. And now this one should be a certainty. First frag found. Second, almost, from Rain. Lots of damage done. Shush. One HP. Tessus now down to 17. Continue to harass them is Rain. Carrigan would love to get a couple of freebies. Fully throughout. There's one of them. There's another. And Rain showing you the jumping accuracy of the MP9. Nice little demonstration for everybody playing at home, as it is all five staying alive. And just one more round. It's got a similar air to it uh, as that hot start we saw from Ecstatic. Getting yeah, slowly the mouse back series, away. right? Yeah. yeah. We do have uh, Cloud9 versus Spirit coming up next. Donk at his first major. You guys can't see him, but Chad is genuinely like a child on Christmas morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, this is the thing. Obviously, the bar keeps getting moved for Donk, right? Yeah. Winning Katowice is uh, qu quite, a, quite a high one to leap over, but now coming to his first major. Mm hmm. So uh, excited to see that one unfold on our screens. Uh, just a quick little game crash. So we'll get this one back ASAP, don't you worry. But there is, there's just so many questions. Isn't it interesting just how much of a, you know, divisive presence Donk has been in the scene? There are some people that are just kind of almost like waiting for him to disappear and fall off. There are others that are already kind of putting him in conversations that he's probably not supposed to be in. Yeah, precisely right. We love to... Um... It's the same conversation as we have with like teams and eras and everything yeah. like that. And I also think because of what um, Astralis did, right, or because of what Simple did, yeah. or because of who Zywu is, mm -hmm. everybody has these cutouts of what they expect the next player to be. And when this kid is only 17 years of age, he just breaks onto our screen. He's doing things that, you know, people are like, oh, there's nothing flashy. Yeah, because he's doing the basics right. Like he's just getting a multi-kill Every round, essentially. Well, one of the things that I find most uh, impressive about Donk is how, how consistently he catches timings. Um, you've, you can watch, there's a lot of people that do the breakdowns of that, but the performances he put in on Katowice where he was just so consistently finding the time, and that's through his perception, right? That's through his understanding of what the expectation his opponents have for him, where he constantly will find the window of opportunity where they avert their gaze, where they swap to their nades, where they're looking somewhere else. And it's it, obviously it's facilitated by great team play, but it's just to do with your individual awareness as to what your opponents are expecting from you, so you don't meet it. What? It's all right, they already have one. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just, a, it's a just it's in just case. A backup orb. But uh, that'll end uh, the Chad and Alex glazing of Donk for now. We'll yep. return to that later. Well, we'll be back. We certainly will. This could be the Norp Frank to open us up. Brokey holding that ledge angle. Past tense, uh, he's, he was holding the ledge angle. Instead, a more passive hold. Carrigan's going for a jiggle smoke defense. If he gets a wow, that's enough from that. Thank you. Those pesky 
wall bangs do limit some of your options as a CT. And I'm intrigued to just kind of take stock of how they're approaching this uh, B side defense this round. They've got Carragher playing close ramp. Yeah, and one of the keys is Rain not forward and Cave spamming and harassing B lane. Oh, Carragher. He is going forward. He wants to just get a one and done. Set his team up for success as they're lining up their nades. He tries to catch the timing. It's a good flash! Oh, it's a smoke instead! Now they go through, and it's going to be Kixon and Nikodos just collecting oh. the whole site down! Oh, God, it's gone horribly wrong. Horribly wrong. Rops tries to stand in the Molotov to try and catch him on the cross, but it's not to be. This round ripped by force out of their hands. Good find back from Rops. Tracks Tessess. Doesn't even really feel like it's something to work with. No, not at all. You have to go for this one. Now, sure, it's only a 2v4 situation. The bomb's down and already somewhat ticked. God, that smoke was so telegraphed for the push. Will fall. Trish will trade. What have you got here, Brokey? Nothing. A helpless round for the Orba. He nails a shot onto Shush. That bomb too far gone. Nikodos nose goes wide. Heroic will lead into the second half. Yeah, it felt like they were probably worth seven with how the half started. Yeah. I think they managed to pick up their, their first six within seven rounds of play. And two of the rounds they lost, one was to an A main push with a couple of pistols. The other was to a Brokey Nova and some good MP9 work from the likes of Rops. So the, the type of rounds that FaZe were able to post were definitely not the most convincing, but they've given themselves enough to work with. I would say that that's not the half they were dreaming of. 6-6 six, six or 7-5 in the CT favor is probably more aligned with what the expectations would have been. But considering Heroic had such a great showing in the opening stage, they're warm in this environment. FaZe have had to come in and try and slow them down to kick off their major campaign. Great shot there from Kixon to completely secure that B bomb site. In-game leader showing that he can pack a punch. As well as pull the strings as we do start to see the buys take shape. Nikodos looking to give Romps a taste of his own medicine. A Zeus brought out in the hands of the Danish sniper. Red smoke, some leaping FaZe members and nerds. Sits rain down. They're coming his way. Shush well aware that donuts are occupied. Well, drops away from a main for now, but he's getting swung upon. It's Karagun. Karagun needed that. He finds the head, clears out a main, and now a post plant with advantage on the retake. Nurse has found himself too. It really hinges on kicks and down to Frozen. Needs a second. Tess is testing. He has the smoke. And he needs the headshot, can't find it. Frozen keeping his cool, tracks in nicely for a multi. That's what. And that's exactly what they needed. Phase individuals aware of just how important that pistol was. In a best of one, and you're down 7-5, it had to be a phase pistol. And a furrowed brown from Heroic. You can see Nurt's not too happy with that one. Feels like he could have done more. Well, I feel like he did more than enough, to, to be completely honest. They didn't really play together, did they? Uh, like, I understand that Shush got isolated in main. That's a kill that, okay, fine. He couldn't get anything more done. He was pinned. Nerd's got a freebie through the smoke at the start of the round and grabbed the second. It, it felt like if they had played more as a unit right there, Hero, they would have had a better chance. So, mid, definitely their focus. Well, they're making no secret of it. You've heard at least two or three. Spamming through the smokes and mid. Nikodos has to be very worried that they pushed all the way out close red. So you can see him backing off because they could be at the left or the right of the doorway. So having to completely relinquish control means that he can no longer be a... Oh, Tesla's heard something there. No longer be a forward piece. So they've dropped back red, dropped back donut. In more of a total setup. Nerds with a smoke to block passively. So it's not going to be the first leg of donut. It'll be the second. And Shush doing the same over towards main. So they can stall them out for 20 seconds or so. Carrigan, this is where he does his best work on T side. Shush just gave Nurse his smoke, so redeploy. Carrigan's flirting with the idea of a. I was going to say nade on the smoke. No, he's just trying to keep that presence noted. They have to go back to B. Yeah, a seems so scary. It's a bit awkward, isn't it? That smoke from Nerds has done a lot of work, and now Shush is going to start getting loud about this perfectly Kicks timed. Kicks him as a smoke step. Oh, oh dear. Oh, they're pulling the strings perfectly. 25 seconds. Ramp is smoked. You've got to run through cave against five sevens. 
or kicks in. Smoke, that's a big frag though. Carrigan opens up the threat from the back line. That puts Testis in an awkward position. He's worried about everything. Carrigan will find it. They overrun the site, and there you have it, FaZe. Whew, they were made to sweat. They were made to work. But I think Carrigan's frag suddenly got that those dominoes toppling. Uh, you definitely cannot fault Heroic for the way that they used their utility in that round. They paused FaZe out all across the map, timed the utility to near perfection, and still got pulled apart. So FaZe, you had to fight hard for that one, but you will be able to secure seven and tie things up. And Carrigan on the hunt, one of the Danes, and quite a legacy Dane. Would be loving the opportunity to waltz out onto that Royal Arena stage here for the PGL. Copenhagen Major. They would go absolutely wild for Mr. Finn Anderson. And he is the showman. Well, listen, Rob, but you find solutions, okay? Yeah. Good. That was a fucking... Uh, that was tough. Yeah, like, yeah. I definitely wouldn't have wanted to be in that trap. Oh, man. That's high. That would get me so G'd up if Carrigan's just hyping us up, saying, yeah, we're going to find solutions. That's the objective. Even when it feels tough, we're going to find solutions. That what? That like Yeah. I, I love the way that Heroic used their U-tool there. <laughs> they put them in a really tough spot. Yeah, a lot of teams would have just gone, okay, well, let's, put, let's flash and push through this. I'll yeah. take a bit of a risk. But FaZe found a way. And took everything away. Heroic, down to the eek. Silent A main push. Yeah, but the, I mean, Robs, this is uh, it's not going to be the first time he's seen this so on this kind of round. He's got the weapon for the job. Would certainly be flush for cash if he gets the majority of these uh, eco-heroic players. Full focus, always ready. It's Robs. He's got support. And with Brokey and Robs putting their heads together or make it just Brokey now. Yeah, he's got the bomb, bro. Doesn't want to get caught out. And cleans house. Clean. Happy with that one. <laughs> Don't know how Carrigan's monitor is shaking so much when he's in those engagements. Well, like... look, for in-game leaders, Alex, when you grip your mouse, it's a little bit more intense than everybody <laughs> else. Uh... <laughs> not me, not me, not me. Time out from Saw. Yeah, okay. He's seen enough. Second time out called. Important moment to do so. Getting the first gun round under your belt here on the CT side for Heroic can keep you battling back and forth in this. You lose this. Well, it's going to be nine for FaZe. They'll go up against another partial investment. Call it 10. The guns come back out at a 10 to 8 scoreline. You lose that. Well, the game quickly. Six and one to start. Recovering the half into a 7-5 scoreline. It looked like it was going to be 6-6. Six, six. Mm. That last round going the way of Heroic, though. And now with phase starting strong into the uh, T campaign, it's time for that timeout to just resituate. Heroic looked firmly in control for the first half of our first half. But now we're into the guns. Well, something that you noted was phase in the early stages of this one, having heavy presence towards middle. Not sure it will continue on the gun round when you know that there's going to be mollies, HEs. Oh, they are trying. Well, at least considering it, double mollies. So they've gone elbow and close, and then the smoke on top. So mid control completely under the remit of heroic for now. Trish is very confident in this. I, uh, we've seen him do it multiple times, but this time up against a rifle. So he he is sort of. Good feeling that he can get away with this one. And yeah, Micro crap. jiggles. It's just, yeah, it's, what are you going to shoot at? His fingertips. Tess is making no secret. Yeah, needs to be very careful. If he was to do it again, you can see Carrigan would be in position to punish, but he's also a step ahead. Here's the cross. Deliberately audible by Carrigan. Puts him into this angle that then they can double swing from Rain. Oh, he's ready. He knows how these fights work. Very comfortable in them. Kicks in, running out of bullets, but he does control just enough. Conserves his ammo oh. to take down Carrigan, yeah. You think Carrigan should be trading? I that think he yeah. thinks he should be having that one. And now really hinges on Rops. He's not ready for this. Shush, too clean with it. And off the back of their timeout, Heroic return to a heavy man advantage into the first gun. What damage can FaZe continue to dish out? Oh, Roki had a spot, had a chance, but chipped down to 30 points of health. Two Molotovs will buy the eyes. Frozen. Wow, he had the jump on Nikodos, but the clear 
And now Brokey just looking for the save. Worst case, he goes down after time. It's not going to happen. Gixon spots him out. And Brokey does go down. Wow, that is a dream for Hero. Just the one casualty. Tess is the only one to fall. Yeah, it really felt like Harrigan should have been good for that trade. Uh, it'd be very frustrating to not be able to pick that one up after Rain gets like a goosh through, through the timber. Yeah. And able to convert this first one. Yeah, the fact that kicks and look, Six. he's on 44 and down to eight. So, yeah, Carrigan just wildly coming in with the MAC-10, thinking the movement would get the job done for him, and Kixon even finds another before the round ends. So, there it is. First gun round for Heroic. But it was a bit of a bonus for FaZe. Interesting approach on mid. Frozen smoke. Brokey was blocked there. I think he was trying to get back through to not sustain any damage from the nades. And they clearly have a couple of moves that they want to use to get back this B lane control. Ooh, Carrigan playing with fire there, and it forces Kicks to throw out the incendiary nade. Ooh, not quite on the money. Kicks and gets away. Tassis' warbangs applying a lot of pressure. This is a high stakes game of counter, and still looking well drilled on the CT side are heroic. This time, Carrigan passes his test. He actually provides the opening. 13 frags and counting. He's definitely not lagging behind, even if there have been a couple of uh, missed opportunities. And they tried to bully him within that first they half did. as well. They really did. So standing his ground. Looking to start strong. The first major on Danish soil. Nikodos. Flirting with aggression here. They know where he is. That nade hit him. That's going to be an unfortunate turn of events for Nikodos and kicks and smoked off, unable to contribute. Should call it off. I think that's the plan. Okay. Well, loss bonus will facilitate another buy as long as they don't get cleaned. Kicks and Nerds and Shush all having to hold on to these upgrades. Kicks and still hanging around to make sure he can buy a bit of a buffer for his teammates but they definitely need to hold on to their goodies if they want to contest into the next. That loss bonus will be 2,400. It will be enough to put them in a position for a buy. But Carrigan couldn't trade in the previous, finds the opening this time round. And back and forth we go. We'll be keeping all five alive. Oh man, it's cool, isn't it? It's so cool when you get to look under the what hood. Did you say ledge yellow move? The ledge something move, you yeah. You said ledge? Yeah, okay. didn't know ledge. And uh, David, uh, which I obviously we discussed. Yeah, he's frozen. He's frozen. Yeah. He does seem to be settling in nicely, doesn't he? Uh, it was a, it was a, it was a big role to fill. Yeah, he's... I still think there's uh, some proving to do, or yeah. someone else has to fill the void. Because what Twist did in big games was have impact moments, like clutches or yeah. crazy big rounds that would change the tune of a game. That's fair. And this is interesting. This is Frozen's own design smoke that he'll choose to walk straight out of, and already a lot of control. So under ledge. It was the the double mollies in middle there. So you saw that one was used to jump throw. I think. Uh, Nada here highlighted that to land a little bit deeper. And then another one in towards the cutout gives the CTs nowhere to stand if they're not forward. They have the full mid control. Feels like Fades have got a lot of space right now. You're at Blaine, you have full mid, and you're peeking into the orb. He just looked away. Oh, great shot from Nikodos just before they get the molly out, Carrigan. Has his head blown off. But Frozen will take the space regardless, yeah. which is important. You're reposing to Donut. Brokey has the bomb, Alex. This uh, gets you worried, doesn't it? Most definitely, considering the reposition from Nikodos, is the fight's going to be coming from multiple angles. Oh, hello. Nikodos spotted out, warded off by rain on the rifle. But Brokey seems rather convinced there may have been another body in Donut. Where do you finish? Nikodos is rotating back 30 through. 30 seconds. Yeah, and the bomb's red room. Brokey is important, and he's nailed it. Down goes the Orpa. 
No, it's on high alert. Shush, what can you do from this position? He's hearing them. CT might catch a beautiful flank here. They're not expecting this one. Straight out of the temple. Backs the turn. Bodies are dropping nearly onto Rops as well. But the round is done. Nerds, make sure of that one. And 9-9 nine, nine, tied right back up. Yeah, that was huge from Shush, wasn't it? But I think for Nerds, the fact that he was stayed in Donut the entire time allowed the rest of the pieces to be a little bit more free in their rotations. So Nerds, once he was committed towards that right-hand side of Donut, just got to sit and chill. Shush with some impact. And as you mentioned, back and forth we go. Really well played by Shush. Finances still there for FaZe. They're going to call their second tactical timeout. Neo, an opportunity to get on the mic. Brokey can get into another AWP. AK is available for the rest. And the opening to the round went as Carrigan would hope. Said good against what they're doing, and it was. They were able to get that mid space. It was more about the finish. Carrigan gets picked off. They take the red space. They try and split A. Just one too many players over towards that side of the map for them to deal with. Here's the opener. I think it was just with a little tips of the head spotted in this double from Shush. That seals the deal, doesn't it? Rain has to push the smoke, no real choice. Oh, one of these two teams can look to get control of the economy. 1900, the loss available for either of them. Come on, Molly's mid, but no follow through. No, it's actually quite passive. A main push from Shush. He's going to tuck in and even has the oversight of Nikodos on the AWP. So it looks like he will get an opportunity to shut down Carrigan's info play. And it's more than an info play, Alex. Look at all the bodies. They oh, were hoping for an A finish. Good call. How diligent are they on their approach? Carrigan crouch peek through. It's a trade by Frozen. Nikodos already being here. Makes it clear and repositioning. You can see they left the cache of smoke grenades for the A execute, but first they want rain to work. How much of B lane have we lost? Smoke towards the ledge. I feel like you have to retake middle or something, right? Like yeah. a red smoke. You have no info on mid. Uh, they're going all the way back through T spawn. I think the fact that rain is through is good news, but they're not going to be... Oh, no, here you go. They are going to be noisy. But I was going to say, because rain's through, you can see nobody's forward. They should know that they can make a few sound Does cues. Does Rob's fake with all the smokes? Maybe, but how, how scary is it going to be? I guess the because temple... Because it's an orpa, yeah. How many smokes does he have, though? Three. So if he smokes off Temple, then... Oh, only two. Only two. Okay. Okay, well, then, yeah, the Temple and Smoke not being present. Does it? I mean, Nerds has definitely Nerds rotated through. Kicks him now realizing it's all on him. His teammate... I think Tessus the fake worked. I think it was there. genius. Hello. And goodbye. See you later. Too easy. Comfortable. Tessus comes swinging through and Heroic will leave with a 10th round. They take the lead. They take control of the economy as you prophesied. Well, that's a limp fake. You don't want to be going to work with something that's not uh, fully functional. No, sir. No, sirree. Okay, yeah. I mean, you can see that they were trying to find a solution, but it wasn't particularly convincing. Not with the amount of time on the clock because you're fully committed to that type of a play. And and Nerd's like thrusting himself close, eh, man? I guess he's also secure. He's like, hey, guys, no, seriously, there's nothing, eh? I'm ahead of the... I'm, I'm actually basically in a main. So Kixon bides his time, denies the plant. Tessa swings into action as well. And this was the opening exchange. Carrigan's round removed, and Carrigan in the last two removed early. So if you're looking for your player to take the risk and get you some map control, he's dead. Nor normally it's him and Rain. And now look at this type of a buy. Mm. They are frazzled. Face could be falling to heroic. We just had Vitality lose to Eternal Fire. Let's see how this one goes, because it is going to be a bit of an orb head to head. Brokey got a lot of pressure on his shoulders. With only a Glock, you'd expect Carrigan to kind of get that info. The Shadow and Fire connects. They're not ready for both of them. The setup noted. Good work from Robs. Needs another. Nikodos stands his ground. Need another. Whoa, Rain manages to get the double on the Glock. Headshot. For the plan, that's important in the grand scheme of things. The nade, the spam, it's perfect. Onto Rain. What have you got for us, Brokey? Around that Brokey box, now backing away. Kixon and Tessess. Up against Brokey, can he find the impact? This would be exactly what the doctor ordered for FaZe as they are starting to hemorrhage rounds. 
He's going to be cleared. Quick scope, impossible when Kickson's hitting the first bullet out of his rifle. Heroic edging closer to causing the upset to start off Phase's campaign in Copenhagen. Now, we're getting fired up. You've got uh, enough money for residual buys. Phase are scrambling right now, and Carrigan in three consecutive rounds has given up the opening death. That was one where he didn't have a gun in his hand, sure. But the in-game leader, being the lamb to the slaughter, hopefully he can be a martyr and start to establish at least some inspiration for the remainder of the team because right now it was pistol conversions but it's been three consecutive rounds for heroic now two more on the trot and this one is all over phase will go down to that zero one bucket yeah that bomb plant has saved them quote unquote it at least gives them a chance to defend their honor oh rain's getting pushed rain is getting pushed look at the flashes they've all run past him how has this happened and now from behind, Nurse should go down. He's just holding down Mouse. One, this is chaos. Utter pandemonium. Tessus pushes back through, wondering how Rain got there. Down goes the bomb. Carrigan could Huge. be the next victim. Shush is locked down mid. A triple on the spray. Oh, and FaZe, they had a way in. They had an opportunity, but now it all rests on Rain. Shush towards Red Room. Baited out. Smoke towards the Red. Might give him some room to stretch his legs. How has he gotten three there? How has he gone down the way? They take B lane control. Rain has a power position. Nerds gets one. But it's Shush's triple. They're playing retake B. And Rain starting to magnetize towards the second letter of the alphabet. You take another plant. 2,900 yeah. loss bonus into the next and potentially final round. So if he's able to get this down, it will facilitate yet another buy where FaZe can have some form of rifles in their hands. But he's so worried about anybody hiding behind these pesky corners. 35 seconds, and as you mentioned, that retake setup will give it away. Now, if he gets it down, I see he's so worried. He's clearing everything out so that he can just plant. But as he walks further away from the site, he walks into the hands of Kixon, and they do not get that bomb down. It's only the lost bonus coming through. I'm telling you, they get the bomb down. It can be Galil's and AK's with Util. Now, it's going to be messy. Oh, wow. Yeah, a little. I mean, can't really fault Rain for being convinced. There must be someone. But, but Kixon, his kind of uh, proactive reposition really caught Rain off guard. Gave him enough rope to hang himself yeah. right there. And yeah, I have no idea how they come out of cave and they don't see Rain. I understand there was plenty of flashes Smoke going on, but flash. the CTs, I'm not sure how they would have been blind. Regardless, it doesn't matter. Shush, the hero of the day. Here it is. So Rain just on the cusp and... <laughs> That's crazy. That is crazy. Actually ridiculous. Yeah, and yeah, it didn't matter. It didn't matter thanks to Shush and this beautiful handiwork. He doesn't get three if he doesn't have the M4A4. Perfect weapon for the job. Better gun. That's, Just That's what they're saying. A more expensive price that's point. That's what they're yeah. saying. Yeah. And well, they've got cash to splash. Yeah, I can't say the same for FaZe. Look at this one. Uh, you've got you've got enough. You can, you've got enough, your full five smokes. You just don't have the flashes to facilitate all of that info. Well, what, well, this is the thing, though, right? So let's talk about just the standard round that you'd open up with on the T side. If you want to do something where you vie for control early, you're going to smoke red, and you're maybe going to smoke off towards cave. There's two of your smokes gone. If you want to harass middle so nerds just can't have free control, you're either going to double HE or molly, right? You're either mollying up towards heaven or double HEing his push. All right, well, we don't even have all the nades for that right now. They take B lane control. We need a flash over the top. We probably need a molly pocket. Oh, also, we're worried about a B ramp push. We need a molly that at the start of the round. Okay. Um, I don't think you have enough nades for that phase. No, you don't. So you have to play slow. So if you play slow, they're going to establish control and then the AWP can post up. Nikodos has that firmly in his grasp. They've got uh, a couple of AKs in the mix. Oof, yeah. I mean, you know, you, it can be the best call in the world if you don't have the weaponry or the utility. It's, it's bleak. Time it's to bleak. hit some shots. Yeah, it is. It's time to, to really get into the AMDM. You need three rounds consecutively, otherwise Heroic are going to throw one hell of a first punch in their campaign towards the top eight. And it, it has, you know, once we recount the rounds, and the, I'm sure the desk is going to do it once we get to them, which could be in a moment's time, but the type of rounds that FaZe were winning were through individuals overrunning them with pistols or shotguns or SMGs. As far as the gun rounds are concerned, I think Heroic have done a better job. I tend to agree talk about it there's nerds doing exactly what he wants full lane carrigan's gonna try and punish him oh he's there in time nerds down after one that's a big trade from frozen he keeps their hopes of continuing play here for forward by the flames and rain another compulsory frag tessa's dead as well they've given them the frags they so desperately sought after nikodos should have one back yeah rain unprepared for the orb but that's information 
The loss of the Norwegian, Shush and his teammate Nikodos on either side of the map. And one of the keys here is the duel between Shush and Rops, and it's more about what territory has been given over or who's going to push into it late. These two play quite similar. Shush could ruin the hopes. The Dream snaps oh. out, Rops down, 2v2. That's impact, baby. Back-to-back -back rounds from where Shush has given Heroic the weaponry and the frags they need. Smoke's trying to get Brokey across. He'll miss the shot, but they're going to try and walk on him. Oh, this is crazy. Yeah, Nikodos is not expecting this. His back is turned right now. Oh, and there's Frozen. More impact from that Galil. And now the bomb will go down. It's just a disconnected. They know he's the A anchor. Picks himself up a smoke. He's good in the clutch. Has the kit. They've got money. He can give this one a go. And he's looking to end it right now off of his own handiwork. That's a very well-timed smoke for Shush, and it's so deep that he's going to be walking through gray screen. He'd throw one of his own to change that. Flash and go. Maneuvering through the smoke. And it's Frozen! <laughs> That's one hell of a round from Frozen. Chad, you said, sometimes he's not finding some high-impact rounds when they need it most. There's an example of Frozen doing just that. And the proactivity punish from Heroic, right? They give away an opening exchange in middle. They all start pushing, and the picks keep coming. If you're going to put yourself in the crosshair of phase, they can hit the shots. And this was on display. For Carrigan giving away an opening, but traded by Frozen. Rain gets one on the kicks, and that's great. But coming through a gray screen, Tessas looks desperate. Nikodos is going to be punching his desk. He did such a good job with the leg. Wow, actually, you know, that leg is a kill. That's their round. It's a 2v1 situation. The game is done. Now it's heroic into their third and final tactical timeout. They've just exhausted the bank balance completely with their buy. Their loss bonus going into what might be the last round will only be 1,900. FaZe might have put themselves in pole position to take us to overtime. Well, and what's so stressful? Sure. Oh, didn't want to talk over that. Yeah, sorry about that. We heard something about a retake smoke, but... He also wanted someone to go into A main with him. Okay. But, God, Counter-Strike is a stressful game, isn't it? You're just, you've got no margin for error here, FaZe. They need to run a three. You've weathered the first storm, but every bell, whistle, and weapon required for, for this to finish here in round 23. Heroic have got plenty. Carrigan making no secret of his arrival. Molotov off initially. Being very loud about his presence on A main, hoping this instigates a reaction. It's a good reaction though, because if they just sat so far back for the entire round, they would have had no info. They've just, oh, they just flashed and cleared out lane as well. So I'd argue a heavy advantage for Heroic at this point. You've heard a lot of action A. You've called B clear. Shush commits to a passive hold, hoping to go uncleared. The bait from Nerds is perfect. It does damage, the nade is landing. Shush, not gonna be cleared. Oh, this is dreamy. He's got the opportunity to end it. Frozen will manage to find the trade. Stops the bleed. Into A. Brokey to plant. Nerds tries to line it up, he denies it, that is massive. He has really f turned the tide of battle. Carrigan in a hard angle to clear, but Nikodos does it anyway. Two frags away from Heroic. Picking themselves up the win to start off here in Copenhagen. The top 16, the elimination stage. Robs finds one back. 27 and counting, two towards the donut position, but it's just frozen. Oh, what a peak! He's finding every frag he needs. Maybe there's a clutch available to Robs. He's only got 16 seconds though, Chad. He needs to find and isolate this jewel not being given to him. Fake plant, they're not temple already. Nine seconds, Kixon. Donut finds the frag. Maybe he can do this after all. Charging at him, Kixon. He could end it here. It's Robs in the clutch, but Robs is what a sharp shooter and Kixon takes it. That's got to feel good. Heroic start with a win. Nerds on that denial, I think that changed everything. Yes, indeed, it drew resources back. They couldn't worry about the rotations in and kicks in the lead of the desk. We're discussing one for the future, well, one for right now. Oh. Heroic picking up their opening game of the elimination stage and phase. Put down a notch. They joined Vitality in the 0-1 bucket. What a showing from Heroic. This is the type of counter strike we want to see.
yeah, the type of Counter Strike we want to see if we're not face fans uh, or <laughs> have pickums or anything. Bronze coiners, rise up. Uh, Heroic, keep doing it, guys. What's I, up? I am, I'm very, very, very impressed with what I saw from Heroic over here. This is mm -hmm. a phenomenal Counter Strike coming out. Nikodos as well, someone we've been pointing fingers at, saying, you know, he's been kind of quiet for this team. He comes alive. Shush putting up just a masterclass performance. By the way, Tessus was virtually nowhere to be found in the server. Despite that, they get the win. Brilliantly done from the side of Heroic and for FaZe and for a lot of these teams now that that little initial discussion we said about a little bit of ring rust starting off cold, it's coming to bite them in the ass. It is, you know, another beautiful display by Heroic. We said it coming into the segment as well that it's a team that has some sort of the, the old Heroic DNA. It, DNA sorry, it's, it's not a team that relies on individuals too much. It's not a team that relies on someone popping off or a D2-esque situation with Nico and Manisi always being the, the two hard hitters. Mm -hmm. They rely on synergy. They rely on team play. They rely on setting each other up, outplaying their opponent, and they did it in this game. You said Nikodot had a great showing. I agree with that. Shoes was fantastic. Kixen was showing up from an individual yes. point of view as well. But the MVP for me in this game was without a doubt the synergy of the players in between. You never saw Heroic being caught off guard. You never saw them being shot in the back. You never saw them lose control of the map over, I guess, the overview of the situation. It almost felt like Kixen and Heroic were one step ahead of Kerrigan pretty much the entire game. And that's a massive compliment to give against a guy like Kerrigan. Yeah, uh, just wild to sort of see a map that FaZe are usually so comfortable on. And they, they were just second best in a lot of key areas. Uh, and I think, uh, obviously, I don't want to sound too reductive by saying this, but the, mm. first, the first five or six rounds, right, that's where Heroic, I feel, pretty much guaranteed themselves the win. What they mm -hmm. did on the B-bomb side was abusing Carrigan and Rain. Now, we know Rain, the caveman, is going to be playing towards cave, the Jaguar position. There's going to be Carrigan taking care of long, taking care of ramp. And just, they showed so many variations in the way they were abusing that B-bomb side. They'd be creeping, you see Shush creeping up quietly, catching Carrigan with his pants down. We could see them going for a fast B hit, a delayed B hit. And no matter what variation of a defense that they were throwing at Heroic. Heroic had their number and Shush as well, just shushing them down, shushing them up rather <laughs> on the defensive, on the A-bomb side and also just being, you know, amidst the action every single time. Yeah, I mean, this is the guy that was obviously deemed not worth uh, a super team invite. And ever since then, he's just super team continued now. to prove that like, yeah, you bought the wrong dude. Yeah, I said it before, you know, you know, building a Danish super team, not having Shush in your lineup as yeah. one of the first players is just, outright stupidity, you know, in his role, in the, the, I guess, the fashion he's playing in, whatever positions he's occupying on the lineup, it, it's a no-brainer, right? He's so, so good at what he does. He's one of the best, let's call him, role players out there. He's been yes. battling it out with Perfecto for a couple of years in that role. I think now in the new Heroic as well, he's showing once more why he's so highly regarded in that role. So for my money, great to see Shoes playing well. He has this ability of always being good for two. We say in Denmark, you know, he's yeah. not getting one kill, he's always getting two kill in his position, and it's worth so, so much. It's it changes the dynamic of the round, it changes the dynamic of the game, and he's just a, a, an outright stellar player. Yeah, well, um, we've got uh, some examples of what Heroic did in, in order to enact this famous victory here. Yeah, like we get to just talk about what FaZe did wrong this time around, right? I'm, I'm just talking about mistakes that are being made uncharacteristic. This is a four versus four. Rops is going to be trying to go for a very simple fake. Look at the time, 30 seconds, a very simple fake towards A. By the way, they're not biting. There's no real no. agency or aggression behind the fake, and now, Phase, you still have time to at least clear the angles. Kixon is lying in wait. He's got his teammate right next to him as well, and they just completely shut them down. Tessas and Kixon, free kills. This is not what I expect from FaZe. They usually don't make mistakes like this. No, that was a, a perfect round. You know, we spoke about Heroic having synergy. You could see in this round, in this iteration, FaZe having no synergy whatsoever. You have two players running up towards the bomb side. Yeah. One has to plant the bomb. The other one is trying to cover three different angles. While Brokey, I believe it is, on ramp, is already looking from behind, being afraid of a flank or something. Yeah. Your only job in that situation, if you're Brokey, is to get up towards the bomb side, make sure to provide cover so you get the bomb down, and then afterwards you can worry about what's coming from behind, what's coming to happen in the retake. So for my money again, it was just a disjointed face clan, a team with no synergy, a team that looked a little bit off. And, and also like the, just, just the assumption that Rops, when he threw that utility towards the A bomb side, right, he, he didn't push with the utility. He didn't even fire off any shots. So what we saw happening from the side of Heroic, the proactiveness, which I want to give credit to, would be nerds. He pushed in 
bit through the smoke. The, 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 I think it was a donor to CT smoke. He pushes through it, peers into A main. It's like, guys, it's empty. There's no need to rotate. The fact that FaZe were, had so much faith and so much conviction on what was basically a very flimsy fake right there was a bit worrying. It felt like they were running out of ideas, which is something you don't say about Carrigan. No, generally not. But obviously, again, can't really underestimate the importance of essentially they've, they've got in yesterday and you, you get one night's sleep and then it, you're in uh, to a brutal day where if you're 0-2, mm. the tournament just gets that much harder. Yeah, I think you asked you ask me the question, you know, should we hit the panic button for Vitality? Uh, I said no. I think it's the same here for Face Clan. It's the best of one, as you said. They're just coming into it. If anything, I want to give credit to Heroic. Yes, we absolutely. were poisoning the question whether or not is that a team ready for the playoff at the Major. I wasn't too sure after I saw the armor. I wasn't too sure after the opening stage here at the Major, but I'm ready to say it now. If you can take down Face in this fashion with that kind of synergy without nerds popping off, without some individuals having a, the game of his life, then you have the team play in order to do it. Heroic right now is a contender for the playoff. Yep, awesome guys. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, when we get back, it's Spirit versus Cloud9. Shiro's return. You don't want to miss this one. One No one out, man. One ping out. The Molly Miras. Yeah. Can be out now. Yeah, he's shooting. Can be out, can be out, boys. Yeah. Well, nice pose. Two, all, two, all four here. Yeah, I'm flash over. Two donuts. Yeah, they're they're flashing over. Two donuts. Flashing over. That's not for aiming. Deep donuts. I'm blind. I'm blind. I killed the bomb. I'm blind. I killed the bomb. 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 Nice. Yeah, that's one. Unless they have to go A. Can it stop that? You can let her on that play, maybe. Yeah. Both city. You can walk now, or no? He's planting for the city. Oh, not planting! You play, you play. Yeah. He's... No! Oh, 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 oh my god, I almost fucked it up. Level up your gaming space with metal posters from Displates. Hang your Displates in seconds. Swap them whenever you like. Get official art from your favorite games on a uniquely designed metal canvas and choose from thousands of posters. Join over 3 million collectors now. Your wall upgrade is here. Shop now at Displate.com. popular it's loud and this is a zones commercial but a zones spent all the money to make the headphones good and they got no money left for the commercial so i'm gonna need you to head to a zone io a c e z o n e yo code pgl 50 euros off We've got some headphones now and never
Yeah, welcome back to the CS2 Major in Copenhagen. And up next, we have what the kids call a banger. It's going to be Team Spirit versus Cloud9. Blair and Pimp are joining me on the desk. All uh, right, well, let's start. I said before we went to break, it's the return of Shiro. Shiro is kind of the X that Cloud9 have never <laughs> got over with. And they've tried to replace that X with all sorts of different people, yeah. and it just isn't working. Look, uh, the, the, the analogy here for me is like Shiro left, by the way, right? Hmm. He was the one. like So in, sure. in, that, in that factor, you're that... That girl's like, you know what? I'm not having a good time here. I'm going to go date someone else. And now she's coming in with this stud. That is spirit. <laughs> He's gone there. All right, fair news. And there we go. I mean, like Cloud9, we could see, you know, the trials and tribulations he had with his ex-teammates right there. And then just this incredible success. Albeit, it's been a very short honeymoon period so far. Sure, I've said it before and I'll say it again. You know, if you're Shiro, you're looking at the potential that Cloud9 roster had when you brought in Electronic, when you brought it perfect, right? On paper, they had everything they needed in order to be a world beater. Mm -hmm. We expected them to be a team contending for trophies. Yet Shiro found it himself to be like, listen, this is not working out. I'm going to leave you guys. I'm going to join the nerd next to me, maybe the unproven guys, and I'm going to make sure that they are going to be as good as we were, if not even better. Sure, right now, Spirit is in a bit of a honeymoon period, yep. but I think they've shown and confirmed that the roster and the foundation they're building with Chopper as an in-game leader, of course, Donk coming out being who Donk is, it was the right move for Shiro to do. It's a ballsy move to leave Cloud9. It's a ballsy move to leave one of the best teams on paper in the world mm -hmm. to join Team Spirit, but it was worthwhile. Well, yeah, they've become a super team, uh, sort of by accident in a way, almost. Yeah. You know, you've got this prodigious talent, yeah. brought in an AWPA that, you know, was a little bit disgruntled and they weren't achieving in the previous team, a very experienced, tenured IGL. There's, there's a lot to like about Spirit. Oh, absolutely. I mean, let's get the obvious out of the way, right? Donk, the, the, this, this preternatural talent that we've been blessed with. Uh, it's always fun to watch you looking at someone like Magix, who's been around mm -hmm. with Chopper for a while right now, mm -hmm. right? And he's a he's a workhorse. He gets the work done when sometimes you might have, you know, your, your Zontics having a bit of a quieter day. You might have Donk being kind of fined out, let's say, for example, as we saw on Vertigo by a couple of teams. This guy continues to deliver. He's always good for one or two. But for me, it's very simple about Spirit right now. They catapulted themselves alongside the rise of this freak of nature to the very apex of Counter-Strike. But for me, was Katowice just an apotheosis for this team? Was this, mm -hmm. is this, was this kind of like a fluke, incredibly unreplicatable win, so to speak? Or are they a team that's going to be winning championships down the line? This major is that test. Yeah, what do you think, Jacob? I think it's a team that's going to win a lot of uh, tournaments throughout the year. I think Donk have shown uh, enough, you know, already. I also think Donk right now putting a, a 1.55 rating is not going to continue. It, it would be absolutely absurd if anyone wants to go in and, and put up consistency like that. But I think there's more to the team than just Donk, you know. There's more to the team of than course. just Shiro. Yeah. It's a foundation they're building up. So I reckon they'll reap in a lot of trophies throughout the year. The Vito wise right here, interesting as well, because there's one weakness we can attach towards Spirit, and that's the Vertigo. That's been a punish pick for a lot of teams. That's mm -hmm. been the one map where we are not quite sure what's going on. Dong is playing as a B anchor as well. That's been a point of conversation, but we're not going to see Vertigo bleed played out because, of course, they remove it in this instance. Vertigo okay. is not played by Cloud9. That's a massive issue in this video for them specifically. Yes. And in the future, I'm pretty sure Spirit is not going to allow it through in a best. When we talk about uh, map pools, just to add on to what you just said right now, you know, there are certain teams where speaking about a map pool, it doesn't make too much of sense. Some teams, it really does. When it comes to the best of threes, absolutely that Vertigo is going to be a problem. In fact, I'm even wondering, you know, have they maybe been like, our Vertigo is really much of a struggle bus here. Maybe we ban it out and mix things up. We don't know yet. It's still a while to go. But the fact is, even their overpass, I feel, could be a potential weakness. Because despite the fact that they beat FaZe, for example, in the mm. best of five, they won a few of them, they don't really, ha they haven't really played it much. But in the best of ones, their middle of the pack map is still better. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, the problem Cloud9 has, I mean, it's problems, it's plural. Mm. You know, you've got this strange map pool that's just not very in right now. You've got different AWPers on different maps. Oh, God, Perfect is going to be AWPing here, isn't he? Yes. Ugh. So uh, it, it, it's, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they are admitting to the world right sure. now on the biggest stage, we don't know what we're doing. We've got issues that we're trying to fix on the fly. Mm. And I think, you know, you come up against a team like Spirit, I don't know where they're going to find the solutions.
there's there's no solution to that issue, right? Because as you said, they tried everything. They tried a bit with Hobbit. They tried a bit with Perfecto. Uh, I think Exile even picked up the the orb at some point. They've been trying to to desperately find a solution to those issues. The only solution is to find a player who can occupy that role, which means someone else has to go. Obviously, that's a, a conversation for the future. For now, how well are they going to fare with not having an AWP? Unspecifically ancient, it's been an issue, right? You yes. see Shiro on the other side, one of the best orbs in the world when it comes specifically to ancient. So I think they're going to be in deep, deep trouble. All right, well, we're about to find out because we are going to get into the game. Cloud9 versus Team Spirit. Take it away, gentlemen. It would be our pleasure. I know I'm very excited to see just our first glimpse of what kind of form Spirit and Cloud9, of course, we've seen over in the, the uh, opening stage of the major. But for Spirit, this is going to be our first look as to what they're bringing in form-wise. It is so vogue, isn't it, Chad? The uh, dropping the double jewelies. I, I have seen it um, kind of be in absorbed by everybody. Everyone loves this idea. I don't know who started it, but the jewel berettas are very vogue right now. Well, it makes a lot of sense as we do have a technical timeout when player has just left the server. We'll just give us a moment. But yeah, it makes a lot of sense, especially when you consider that Glocks are better to operate in a pack. Yeah. Right. So the jewelies gives you 30 bullets, the ability to try and uh, slow them down in that type of an assault. And... Uh, Will we just have a quick little game crash? I believe it is Hobbit who okay. we've lost, so well, it shouldn't be too long. That gives me an opportunity to kind of pick your brain a little bit about uh, where you're setting your, your expectations for this matchup. Cloud9, no AWPA, and then you're up against one of the most dedicated AWPAs in modern-day Counter-Strike. What, yeah. what do you make of that well, interaction? Uh, look, the fact that it is his old team uh, is always quite fun and, and uh, probably an extra motivator for both sides of the server. Uh, I, for, look... Ancient is a map where I think the AWP can obviously play a decent role, more so on the CT side, right? Being able to use it over towards like B long or using it over towards A slash donut. Uh, but I, I don't think it's going to necessarily be the end of the world for Cloud9. I, I think that they should be able to, to function. Now, these two teams, uh, well, when going toe to toe six months ago, right? That's telling you it's Art Frost was on the roster and Shiro was still playing for, for this Cloud9 team. The third and deciding map of that series was Ancient, but they never had to get there. Uh, it was mm -hmm. over in a 2 0 fashion in favor of Cloud9. So uh, this is the actual middle ground from the last head to head of the two of them, but six months is a very long time in Counter Strike, especially considering the release of CS2 and all the changes that have come with that. But for Cloud9, I'll be honest, I don't have any expectations and that's not to, to mean that I have low expectations or, or high expectations I'm kind of sitting on the fence a little bit with it it's just this is a team of very talented individuals some of them show it some of them don't Axile probably being the one who uh, falls into the don't category but what they're able to, to do with the level of experience you've got a major winning core in the team right you've got Electronic Perfecto and Pumich uh, you've got Hobbit as well another major winner mm. uh, from quite a long time ago now but uh, there is a lot of experience on this team and they understand the job that needs to be done to win going up against the talk of the town at the moment of Spirit. And it's about seeing how far Spirit can really, uh, I, I guess, raise the bar of our expectations of them. Because mm. a lot of people probably coming into the major with Spirit as one of the favorites alongside of Phase and Vitality. I would say those are the three teams who people would have as their front runners. Uh, Phase and Vitality though, Alex, in back-to-back -back games just lost their best of ones. Yeah. And I mean, those best of ones, when you think about Cloud9's path here, I was just looking at the teams they've beaten. It's, uh, you know, the Legacy uh, squad, Ecstatic, and Soar in a best of three. Yeah, so in terms of uh, household names, mm. yet to face one. Mm -hmm. uh, and look at him, Alex. Look at him there. 17 years of age. What were you doing at 17? What's, he, what's the song he's got in the beginning? It's like... Uh, choopy, 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 I don't know what... It, I like... Yeah. yeah. How disconnected from his world do you think we are? Oh, we are in a different universe, bro. We're in a different solar system. Yeah. At least. Um, but I, I love that I get to observe his world, you know? Yeah. It is, uh, it's a joy just to see the, the kind of the embodiment of the new next generation. Though I mean, You've seen the videos, haven't you? The eight-year-old. But it looks like yeah. the, the mouse pad's the same size as him. Uh, running around, hitting headies, and uh, and now, of course, finds himself as one of the hottest prospects in Counter-Strike. 17 years of age, and the last time we were casting Spirit, Chad, I'm sure you remember it, it was over at uh, the IEM Katowice 2024, whereby he broke all of the expectations and records that we've seen in a 3-0 against FaZe Clan. Yeah, not bad. 
not bad at all. A 1.93 rating in that final. Uh, I want to um, just return to one of the conversations we've been having so far today, Alex, and that's about teams coming in warm mm. uh, from the opening stage to the elimination stage. So if you don't want any spoilers, I, th I think you need to mute us right now, people at home, uh, because we're just going to recount the results of the day. So Navi versus Mongols. Navi won. So that's one against Warm. That's cold winning. Yes, cold, uh, cold one. Cold 2-0 up with Maus beating Ecstatic. Mm -hmm. Okay, Warm get one with Imperial over VP. Yeah. Warm get another. Eternal Fire. With Eternal Fire over Vitality. 2-2. Two, two. So we're 2-2 two, two tied up. Complexity coming back in for Cold. Ooh, Cold 3-2. And uh, then Heroic, well, ah. they slap back in for Warm. So 3-3. Three, three. So we're all tied up. Yeah. Well, well here we go. Time for the, the difference maker between C9 and uh, and Spirit. But how warm are you when you just 3 0 Oh, is that another conversation? That is another conversation. Uh -huh. Yes, that's another conversation in itself. Uh, and right now, everybody cooling off as they wait for Hobbit to get his phone out of the box and log back into Steam. Anyone else feel like Chopper looks like he's getting younger? Like, you know how, like, stress makes you look older? He's now, like, he's gotten to this point now where actually... He's, he's Benjamin buttoning before our very eyes. Really? That's what you think? That's what I think. Is, is the shaved head? I think it's the shaved head. I think so. He just kind of looks like he's full of life. Full you of know? life. Not okay. that he didn't before. <laughs> I'm not saying he was like a zombie. I'm just he's saying. saying about he's full of He's full of life. That's what I'm saying. Probably hanging around with these teenagers trying to, you know, keep, keep track of them. How old is Chopper? Good question. I have a guess. Oh, do what I want to. Yeah, take, take a guess because uh, you said he's aging backwards. 28. 28 for Chopper. Well, I will find you officially. He is 27. Oh. You were close. I was close. Yeah. But he's, yeah, yeah, doing great. Average age of this team is 21. So, uh, yeah, he's definitely well, the I one that's bringing that average up. Zontix, uh, Shiro, Magix, and Donk, all quite young. Magix has been around for a while and still only 20. He's just chilling, isn't he? No. Oh, oh. Hang on, he's coming back, boys. There you go. Straighten up the back of the chair, get himself situated. Oh, he's getting a bit too relaxed. Oh, I'm intrigued. I'm so intrigued to see how these two teams clash. I, it, it, the desk was saying Perfecto is going to be orping. Boom, which has recently gone on the record saying, you know, I'm going to be inconsistent on the orp. He had a bad one. Of, oh, I mean, it kind of goes without saying when you're not a dedicated orper. We've seen him have some impact. It was more on overpass than any other map, but... Going to be intrigued to see how this one boils out as it's Shiro against his old squad. It's his old squad against Shiro. And it's Donk with his debut at the Copenhagen oh, Major. A little bit of a tease. Just hit us again. A uh, little bit of a tease. We were close. It is another uh, Cloud9. Who's using nine. the Navi spray? Tactical timeout. Interesting. What are they saying? Hobbit had money. Hmm. What's that got to do with the price of eggs? All right, well. That's all right. We'll let the admins work it out. We're just the observers. No. I'm not going to fall for it. I'm not falling observer. for this. I'm not falling for it's it. It's not live. The time's going down. No, it is but... live. It is live. Okay, let's go. CT start for Team Spirit. Cloud9 on the attack. What's the plan? Boom. He's got a smoke, as does Electronic. Two flashes between them as we start with the 3B2 towards A setup. Rather standard division of labor for a CT pistol, but it's Zontix and Donk, dude. Get past these boys at your own peril. And just like that, Zontix reveals the dual Berettas. He's looking for more. Don't connect. Another from Zontix. And immediately, Cloud9's pistol plans have been scrapped. Torn up in front of their very eyes. Yeah, no way you're finishing A, or at least in the way you had hoped. Electronic and Perfecto. Last two remaining. Plenty of time. Oh, there, that's why you sent these two to hold A. Oh, it's going to be clean. Zontix is here, starting as he means to go one, and not even a slight raise of eyebrow, not even a wry smile. It is four kills to start off his campaign to Copenhagen. He might even be the individual who started the Steam group D underscore pression, uh, because Zontix, I don't think he knows what happiness is. He just knows what winning feels like, and it's something he loves. Don't just the supporting cast. This yeah. is a Zontic show. You don't have to talk about me. I want trophies. I don't care about anything else. I, I don't love care, that. Feel, don't feel any pressure. I am just cold-blooded killer. Yeah, well, uh, what can you say about this one for Cloud9? Not a single player has uh, yet to feel the sweet, sweet taste of a successful frag. Zero, one, across the column. Can't say a lot about a round like this, can you? No. You can say that I find that fam ass a little spooky. I don't like it. Makes... Plenty of eyes looking back at you. Yeah, they follow you across the room as well. Well, we can uh, look at Tonk's knife. His famous, his player cam. Um, Hobbit hiding behind the box. 
That's kind of that's something to say, isn't it? Yeah. There he is. No, but seriously, maybe uh, you don't watch a lot of Counter Strike, and for those of you who do, I'm sorry, you're fed up with me. I know. Uh, me too. But uh, right now, they're allowing the, ra- the round to play through, allow the CTs to limp through the utility, so they have to reinvest it into the next round of play. And hoping there that maybe one. somebody gets a little bit aggressive and they can pick up a free kill, because right now, on a full eco, they are waiting for the loss bonus to come through into the next, where they will be bringing out the AK-47s. 50 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, and in an ideal world, after you, you've, you've run down the clock... You run into a FAMAS instead of an SMG, which is exactly what they're doing here. Donk will find himself his own 4K and Magic's puts the uh, cherry on top with the 600 buck kill reward. So four for Zontix on the pistol, four for Donk of the easiest variety, unarmored Glocks. We're not giving you those, Donk. I'm taking nope. off your score. They don't count, young man. Sorry. Zontix, four, Donk zero. Uh, one. He got one on the pistol. Come on now, that's not a replay. Hey, what? Uh, Come on now. Yeah. We ain't highlighting that. Put it in slow-mo for you. Shira has an AWP. He does. Okay, well, let's see if they're gonna immediately going to be uh, made aware of what they're lacking. And Shiro, he is one of those, as I said, one of those AWPers that, unlike the Nikodos we've seen earlier, the, even the Brokey, maybe in that conversation, Shiro will have it every time he uh, can. Okay, now the Magics, that is a very aggressive solo maneuver down the ramp with the smoke to allow it. He doesn't force the issue. He's got Shiro in support of him now. This gets interesting. The image is trapped yeah, as long is. as the orb stays posted. Crossing back should be a death sentence. And it is straight away. Shiro's orb fills the feed. A demonstration of what they lack. Well, that's the B prong removed, right? There's nobody now to apply any B lane pressure unless they jump up Tetris. Spot them. Don't get his info, flash and fall. Not gonna throw that smoke without confirmation of presence. See you later. 20 seconds, shaved off of the 50 that remain. We saw how this hampered phase in the previous. They had to reroute completely and looking to do so. Could be back into Shiro's AWP if they test red. As they creep forward up the stairs, 40 seconds now, running out of time and running out of options, Cloud9. Next test into Shiro. Shiro's not going to react. Electronic tries to bait the shot, does so effectively. But with 20 seconds left, where do you go from here? Cloud9 left wanting. They're walking into the AWP. Finally, a trade. Oh, a double from Perfecto keeps us interested. It's Axar with an important frag onto a main, and they're Huge. somehow miraculously going to get this bomb down. Perfecto timing. Could deny. Oh, Hobbit just about gets the bomb down in time. Evades the potential from that push of Chopper. Cloud9 making an impressive last minute. Molly could be good. Not quite. Double elevation. He knows where they both are, but Magix realizes it's an unwinnable round. There's an AWP available if he goes back towards spawn. Maybe Shiro has just piped that little bit of information through. He could be able to scavenge that and get that in the hands, but They're trying to hunt right now. Yeah, you can see Hobbit coming for it. Going to constrict this. No chance for Magix. Ooh. Oh, maybe there is. Yeah, Ooh, Bomb is huge on Ancient. He only has 20 HP, so retrieving the AWP might not be on the uh, docket today. I I'll be honest, we don't say this often, but Donk should have traded. Terrorists win. Yeah, yeah. Donk should have traded. Perf Perfecto won that round, right? That it was the... Oof, couldn't... Famous for a Galil. It's, yeah. a it's an upgrade. It's, it's an up it yeah. is an upgrade. Yeah. Just. But uh, that right there, right? It's the sweep out of red that was the issue so shiro gets one donk swings it goes down as well yeah perfecto did he did perfecto hit a banger but oh absolutely but still donk that was a required trade for that round to, to fall in your yeah, favor because at that point zontix is left with absolutely no choice do i stay up tree or do i try and take some space and he tried to take some space he got punished while doing so yeah. but he had a difficult choice to make because then he starts pivoting around well he's going to be open to one angle and that's already forced a timeout from spirit hallie the deep voice it's a chance to converse with Chopper and the boys. Yeah, interesting one. There was like a little glimmer of hope on Chopper's donut fight, but by virtue of catching Perfecto just after he threw the molly. This is the shot from Perfecto. Yeah, yeah, really good I'm one. I'm not saying it was easy, but I'm saying that that's a, yeah. either a position where Donk sits back and waits, or he makes the trade and was unable to do so. Let's go. Shiro paying a heavy price despite his early contributions. Cloud9 with a very convincing recovered T round. Yeah, that was a 4v5 
for the majority of the round. And it's still three of them without a frank. Isn't that impressive? This one with a bit of a different flavor than the last ancient. There's not the early battling for middle and B lane. Both teams just really sit back. The CTs have sprung into action and have some information off the back of Magic's push. Axile with A main control at the bare minimum for Cloud9. There's the push highlighted. An off angle from Magic's currently is mid is the biggest issue. As soon as this space is sucked up by Cloud9, Magic's will have to worry about the jump up and well, he won't be able to have much support whatsoever. How do they address it? There's a red smoke deployed and now rerouting around the world. Back through the murky waters and Boomich has called them back into position. Magic staying forward. I need a couple of kills here, Magix. Yeah, a lot riding on this. He has the advantage of the shadow. Yet to reveal themselves. Here comes a ooh, big one from Boom. Nade might finish him, but he's ahead of it. Pushing into Shiro. That 5 7 will finish the job. Magic started Hobbit very low. Still yet to see a frag from Hobbit, and it continues thanks to Chopper. A three versus two, though. They have the sight. Donk, quick across. Into ten to long. Ooh, and Perfecto's got him twice. So far in the head to head. Okay. <laughs> All right, Perfecto. Perfecto's on one. Uh, just He's on one. Five bullets through the smoke and down. Well, if anyone is uh, going to do it, it is a player of Perfecto's caliber. I think one of the issues I have with the conversation around Cloud9 and the lack of Orpa is more what it takes away from the solidness of the type of players they have, right? When you have somebody like a Hobbit occasionally picking up the orb or a Perfecto doing the same, it takes away from how good they can traditionally be. Whereas Boomich, that's where I think it, it feels okay because, well, actually no, because Boomich likes to be an aggressive disruptor of a player on the T side especially, but regardless, as Pim mentioned on the desk, that's a conversation for another time. This is the Cloud9 we have now, and this is the Cloud9 that have leveled things out 2-2, looking good for the third. Spirit on an eco with an A main push. Oh, don't commit to that spray, or maybe you should, because Axile's managed it to perfection. Hello, four. Controls his AK spray. Many would fault that, but he controls it. Harash Davai. The only words you, I know. Have you, you saw that uh, overpass clip of the Axile spray? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think he's probably been hitting the DMs. I don't know what I have in Axile. I don't think anybody knows. I don't think Axel even knows. Yeah. A mystery. But pants the stats with four. Well, they've gone insta double door smoke, sorry, B door smoke, and elbow smoke for the defense of this one. Is this just up? It yeah. is. It's Mac 10 and it's charging a pace change. Defending their honor was Magic's past tense thanks to Hobbit. Good one back, Chopper. That's good to get one. He's alive and kicking as well. Shiro playing ahead of the molly. Oh, there's a chance here for some real impact. He can deny it with the wall bang. Axile lucky to be alive. Brought low. The USB can finish it. Another bullet connects with five HP to spare. Axile alive. It's donk quick to kick. And now Hobbit dead to Zontix. It's going to be Spirit's round. Credit where it's due. The double from Chopper. He holds fast on the B site. Yeah, that's one of the most horrible positions to find yourself stuck against the rush is behind that pillar, right? Because yep. you can't really peek out. Uh, obviously don't speak in the language, no, but, but I still like to hear the tone. I appreciate that, right? yeah. And maybe there's a couple of words that would sneak through in uh, Counter-Strike language that we could latch on to. But good stuff from Chopper. Important for him to slow down that assault on towards the B bomb site. But there's more than enough for a spirit bite, and it's going to be the same in terms of the B door smoke, but it's missed. You can see there, not hitting its mark. Goes for an aggressive maneuver, and he's gonna go wide on it. How is no one covering that? Perfecto will be likely mad that that's come so easily to Chopper. At least Hobbit and now Electronic have found the B defenders. Puts it all onto Shiro, an AK-47. And three members of Cloud9 outside his front door. Donk to activate. Smoke still up on elbow will facilitate a push. Held by Hobbit. Three versus four. Numbers favor Cloud9, but will that remain the case? Tom. 
Monk restrained. Starting his crawl, and yes, boom it this time to catch him. Forced him to look away, avert his gaze, shot, hit. Zontix advancing now for the Axile on the cross. He's gone too. Cloud9, individuals are hitting shots. This could be a full team ace if it wasn't for Perfecto. Empty handed. Hobbit, not gonna find Shiro. He's giving it a look. Don't. Two of them are already hunting and Shiro's still battling for the round. He doesn't have a kit. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But is one available. Thank you very that. much. I believe that would be j -Raz. Still, it's way too far gone now. So Shiro's probably going to lose everything. Just, uh, I guess, hoping to do some more damage or aware that they've already cut him off at the pass. Regardless, Shiro down. Axile, former teammate, finds him. And Cloud9 back into the lead, four to three. Now we need to kind of address the way that Cloud9 are approaching these rounds and they're going for a heaven smoke. So if a team likes to do the full mid press and they like to really harass B lane through that, it almost negates it immediately, right? So if you're Donk, you're going for mid control, you can't jump up heaven unless you want to HE that smoke. And at that point on the fade, anything is possible. So by throwing that, it's forcing Spirit into a different setup. And then that has echoes into future rounds. Then do you start playing heavier towards B? and then you don't fortify middle as much, and then A becomes a little bit more susceptible. This is the second full eco that we've seen from Spirit already. That's all right, it's all right. It's a little bit wobbly from Hobbit there, all good. Yep, we've lost the side, boys. Let's battle on over and see if we can do some damage. Finances. Nothing crazy for Cloud9 just yet. So if Spirit can find a couple of kills, that'd be all right. Oops, Perfecto's put one into electronics. Unexpected casualty. <laughs> <laughs> Team kills are the only real problem there. Big smile on his face, no problem. <laughs> Oh, that gave me Kanye vibes there. Electronic going from full smile to game face. Okay, three to five. And I understand why Halley's taking another timeout because this is the CT side of Ancient. Two rounds in the hole compared to the five of Cloud9 so far. And the guns come out once more. An ult for Shiro, but last time he had it, he found the opener, he found a follow-up, and they still dropped the round. Cloud9 are doing a very good job. And this is the thing, the T side of Ancient, I don't think the AWP is an integral part of it at all. You can execute quite proficiently without it. In terms of the type of heads up jewels you'd be looking for in all versus all, what boosted on the box to monitor long or going a main. So making it work without a primary AWP up. Residual cash available for a Cloud9 buy if they are to lose this one. Utility to be juggled by through Halley's orders. Again, you can see the door smoke being lined up. Two middle, two B, one A, standard hold. Yeah, no cave smoke this time. And electronic, he tries his luck, smoked off elbow and jumping up quick. This is where Donk will find an opening. Surprising they didn't go for the heaven oh, smoke. And Zontix, he managed to get away with two and it's all onto Donk. He can't handle Perfecto, so now a clutch taking shape. Yeah, I love the catch there. You can see the the ledge left open for business and immediately it's yeah, punished. It's punished. Yeah, so uh, surprising they didn't continue with that same game plan. Maybe thinking they had conditioned spirit. Not the case. Now Perfecto. This is where he does his absolute best work is in the clutch. But this isn't a position that he's been able to snatch, right? He's not mid sight. He doesn't have an opportunity to plan. He has to work his way back in from scratch. And now that the info has been played for, give it up. There are so many eyes bearing down on him. No fun here. He's going to try and smoke his cross, or at least was considering it a flash instead. Lovely. Clean conversion. I'll be very happy with that one. And uh, yeah, the fact that Zontix and Donk leave with a double as you try and t test their uh, mid, it's probably going to change your game plan. You're not going to want to be ending up back there again. Mm. Well, we'll see if they go back in towards the Heaven Smoke immediately. Right. I said there was going to be enough finances for another buy. Boomich has chosen to go with a MAC-10. So eyes on him and maybe something more aggressive. 
Might just be a full commit. Red Smoke lobbed. Maybe it's just going to be another one of these B rushes. Uh, they're starting, yeah. They are starting 1B. Magix is in a lot of trouble. Just playing short. Takes his first fight, realizes it's over. He's got to give it up. Bomb not up the ramp yet. Chopper's managed to get over and find the first. Magix in combination takes down Hobbit. Problems now. Big problems. No one from Cloud9's got anything done. There's only one for Perfecto there. Starting 1B and only losing one player, defending B. Yeah, well responded to, right? You were using the uh, deep position of the death cube just to post up and take some fights while Cloud9 is still worried about Cave and the other positions in the site. So well handled while under pressure and they've broken the finances of Cloud9 just at the right time. As an IGL chat, would you find that call landing so flat as a kind of take the wind out of your sails, maybe knock your confidence a bit when you've kind of called something, you feel responsible for it going so sour? I just think considering the type of buy they had available, it's it's just such a all in. I, I, and now you're straight into an eco. It's, if you only had tech nines or something like that and it was a half buy, okay, try and use momentum. But when you still had a decent buy available, it just feels desperate, okay. right? You're trying to clobber them. It's a bit more momentum based. And in a game where you've you know, been having some success, it, it just feels like it's been thrown away. Spirit with the opportunity to get seven within the half, but five for cloud nine already is pretty damn good. They have a hero AK on Hobbit. Who's the Nim up? Swantix has been... He's aware, isn't he? So aware. Covered nicely. They have hit some shots that enables Boomish onto Zontix. Bomb plant would have been nice, but not to be. Duncan Shiro making light work of the situation. And down he goes. Ooh, yeah, Spirit getting it nice and comfortable here. A triple kill for Shiro this time. All of their stars having their multi-kill moments this time. Just uh, hoovering up three for Shiro. And it was, you know, a threatening attempt in the sense that Hobbit had the AK-47 with nothing at the end of it. Six to five. Can Cloud9 keep it level into the next half? The Molly Cup, the Cubby. Extinguish and go. Donk needs to get out of there. They're chasing him down. Flash back. Perfect from Zontix. He had that ready to set him up for the fight. Axel only the one. Down they go. A lovely hold from Zontix. Stepping up and just as easy as that. Convincing on their CT side. Oh man, it was like Do Donk was the bait and Zontix had that flash ready. Whenever Zontix and Donk had like heads up fights available to them where it didn't have to be thought about too much and they just got to stand and bang, they owned them, right? Even from the pistol round, it was Zontix with four kills with the dual Beretta's aggressive A main. So quite a few rounds can be attested to the uh, Bash brothers, the young guns locking down at Cloud9. But five, still a respectable first half. Seven for Spirit as they switch over to the attack in this best of one opening round elimination stage PGO Copenhagen Major 2024. The fist bumps signal that we are getting this one underway. Only one pair of jewel Berettas. Here it is again. That flash perfect electronic just cool. spraying and praying, hoping it was going to be enough. And then Zontix. Finishes off what Donk couldn't. Magic's with a nice easy one. Julius for electronic. Couple of flashes, smokes, kit. Three towards B. Donk gonna slip in towards pocket. Chopper outside middle. Zontik's dealing with an A push. CT set up. Two players in donut. One red. And two to lock down the B play if necessary. Perfecto's given them answers that there's nothing walking out mid. Which is surprising that they're still staying two donut. Or surprising that Perfecto's still staying red. One of the two, right? Somebody feels like they should be freed up. You're just a lot of faith in Boomich and Hobbit. Now the smoke has arrived. Skills Perfecto's view. Those donut players, however, still ready for the fight. They'll have a look. It does catch Chopper. 
He's been isolated here. Some support from the ledge. And actually, Chopper's bailed himself out of trouble. We'll go down after one. He had util, so whatever the plan was for that, it's done. Yeah, and Hobbit has an opportunity. Oh. What a second shot onto Magix. He has his moments, does Hobbit. And he's set them up for success now. Kit on boom with a smoke as well. The retake package is perfect. Shearer is going to be hard pressed to stop him. Low HP on the defuse though. Maybe that's enough. Maybe that's enough for the clutch of Zontix. Running him down. Audible. Boomage needs this chance. He's got the timing oh. and he's going to take it. Boomage <laughs> with 9 HP secures it for Cloud9. You could see Zontix so scared that he was just sticking the defuse. It didn't matter, Kit or not. Just think he's lost him in the source, lost him in the smoke. Zontix starts spamming at what could have been a massive one on three. Boomage pulls it off. Yeah, it's really smart. I mean, if he's got a smoke, he's got a Kit. It's a likely assumption. Oh, yeah, Zontix, understandably feeling the pressure of that one. So loud about it. Boomich has to hit this shot, though. Otherwise, it's an immediate flick from Zontix. If he doesn't nail the head. I think it was out of ammo. Oh, yeah, he did swap to his knife, right? didn't he? Because he, he had to Touché. use a lot of bullets to deal with those players over towards the long side to even draw it down to a one-on-one. -on -one. But the oh. plan's through. The buy's there. That's a big one from Boom. He's only got four frags, but that one has given him the leg up. Interesting scenes, interesting indeed. Dunk on an AK-47 regardless. You feel like an A walk when you're upgraded into rifles, contact feels pretty strong. So let's see if Cloud9 account for this. Redeploy of the elbow smoke for now. Three players dotted on B for their defense. It's Axel with an awful lot on his plate over towards main. Already starting to... Rifle through his utility to hold them at the door. Zontix back and forth between quizzical glances of main. And now Util was being lined up. Chopper needs to get that bomb out of his hands. And now Donk gets to search. What can he find us? Crosshair placement. Does identify Axile on the jiggle. Defensive smoke dropped will slow down up, but they are congregated in main as well. Rotating now at Cloud9, they've just left B. HE on the donor smoke, one from Axar, but the rest fall. One more on the site, rotation through Temple. Plant will go down. Oh, actually landed it, forced him off of the plant. Boomich, yeah, makes a meal of that onto Shiro. Spirit have handled business into this one. Job done. Yeah, does Perfecto even get to leave with anything? Maybe wanting an upgrade away from the MP9. Not sure really damage is name of the game for the CTs. You're only going to get the min-loss bonus next round. You guys actually need to hold on to what you have. So trying to punish. Decent damage done, but Chopper will be able to get away. I'm worried if I'm Hobbit because they've cut you off. It's rotation around the world. Shiro coming through the B site. Perfecto might be the one to be copping the bullet in the back of the head. Bomb goes off. Perfecto and Hobbit touched by the bomb and the hunt. Ooh. Yes, Donk will remove it. So just one gun saved. The better of the two, Hobbit with an A1S. Cloud9, Groove. He gets a chance to chip in. I'm not sure what you really meant to say in a moment like this. We saved an M4. We have very, very light on finances available. Uh, we, it's really tough to come up with an idea in a round like this of, of what you, you're going to opt for. Oh, yeah, and send those high highs of Boomich's clutch in the pistol. Immediately comes tumbling back down to reality with this loss of the second. Halley on the microphone as well. Look at the uh, intensity of his gaze. You wonder how, how high level of a uh, chess game it is that they're playing between one another. Oh yeah, uh, like the, one of the one of the things we have, we get to watch the games and watch the demos, and we can see what the teams like to do. But when it comes to the head to head and what tendencies they look for and what things they're looking to try and avoid or exploit, that's a whole different game, right? We're, we're essentially doing a bunch of patchwork as we see it unfold on our screens. Hey. Well, four towards B, one aggressive middle. That's the CT start. Oh, an interesting start. It seems to be, at the moment, the right call. Two ahead of the molly. Chip damage land. 
square on the jaw. Dog down, empty handed. It's a Boomich double That's with ridiculous. just a CZ. How has that gone down? How does that transpire? Cloud9 now chomping at the bit to get this one converted. This would change the dynamic of the entire half. Yoink. Boomich grabs an AK. Axel goes looking. Shiro gives him a quick spray. More where that came from, though. Electronic, next victim. Shiro racking him up. Chopper tries to finish him off. Perfecto's low. It's Boomich running him down. Boomich doing it all here. Triple kill from the IGL. Poor Molly. Boomich could be on for the ace. He certainly could be, Chad. Four kills. He was on four, doubling his kill total. In a round, they really didn't have too much of a leg up in. Single save rifle, some pistols around it, and a CZ double onto two of the hardest hitters of Team Spirit. Down goes Hobbit, a one on one. It has to be the ace. Now it has to be the clutch. And up against Zontix again, his rival from that pistol one on one. They lock horns once more, round 15. Now the pressure's on Zontix. Bomb on his back with 25. Feels like he has to finish towards B unless he starts hightailing it now through mid to donut. But Boomich is already close with the response time. Didn't hear him. So the bomb should go down. Then the penny will drop. Smoke giving Boomich an edge to be able to rotate in slightly quicker. Head to head. Oh, Zontix is actually anticipating this play. Boomich is not ready for this. Oh, and Zontix, he takes him down. A bit of a heartbreaker there for Boom. He did everything right. His teammates couldn't even give him one to work with. It was four in that round. That's the bigger frustration and one that would just settle in moments after losing the clutch if you're Boomich. It's like, I just got four kills. I, I, the first two with the CZ. I don't even know how I got away with that, but I did. Boys, I just needed one to help us get over the line. Look at Groove, straight on the mic. A lot to say. Back-to-back -back timeouts. I'm thinking about the, the killers that Shiro found. They felt quite pedestrian. It's like I'm holding ramp. I'm... Of course I am. And he was isolated. Yeah. He was very isolated, right? There was the smoke doors. Chopper was trying to help. He was like, hey, I'm here. I'm shooting. Like, don't, don't just go for Shiro. Still picking up a couple. And then Zontix. Well, I want to say he puts it in. Still a difficult clutch to win, but a clutch nonetheless. And not, is, and not yeah. playing scared, Chad, right? The fact yeah. that he's pushing in front of that smoke, it's uh, he's backing himself on that one. But he said he doesn't feel nerves. And, nope. uh, and uh, he's given us more and more evidence to back that up. Just the way that he conducts himself. It's ridiculous. And I'm sure some people are like that. Yeah. But I am he's definitely built, not. He's so built I different. have a very difficult time hearing him say that and just be like, yeah, no, nah, it's all good. Yeah, so everything's fine. Just a guy. <laughs> I'm just a man. Well, clutches like that will put hair on your chest. Yeah, well, uh, let's see how many magics can farm. Three. Farmer magics, they call him. Farmer by day, butcher by night. Oh, yes, indeed. Oh, I bet the atmosphere in Cloud9's camp has been soured after the way in which the second half has started. Spirit are up to 10, three rounds on the trot after winning the pistol, after having a 1v1. In that third, the fourth just slips away, obviously, against the Eco. It's just MAC-10 spam. Well, it's good that one of the three front runners, right? We mentioned Vitality. We mentioned FaZe, both of which dropped the ball in their best-of-one openers. Mm -hmm. Tough opponents, Eternal Fire and Heroic, respectively. But Team Spirit, the third of that batch. They're quote-unquote cold in our uh, timeout uh, maths. Well, uh, G2... Did take down Furia. Yeah, okay. Well, they didn't just take them down, they manhandled them. Great look for G2. Furia playing Inferno. Let's see. Do we have many rounds left in Ancient? This is the final game of the opening round of the elimination stage. Shiro's AWP train. Flash and... No <gasps> fire. The double kill. It's there for Axar. He controls the spray again, Chad. He will get run down. But Donk down straight away to the flames held at bay. Four on two. Well, they'll be hearing all of that juggling. Yeah, a bit of a uh, trash man right now as Chopper, making sure not too much is left over. Want to save the AWP for Shiro if they can. But that was great from Axel, and sure, Lavered, but still made the most of that alley-oop with the flash. One hell of a flash, right? Uh, the, the, the two threats 
white screen for three seconds. Like, you had no problem. It felt like Cloudon had a good idea. It was giving me an A play as well, because once you saw Donk just desperately try and push through to find the trades, there were so many blue dots that were already up close and personal. Are they giving this a look? I wouldn't think so, but... I've been wrong before. Yeah. I'll definitely be wrong again. <laughs> Four of them have got plenty in the coffers. Could imagine if they won this. Uh, I don't think Boomich is interested in uh, considering that. But imagine. Yeah. Magic. He's good for the orb shot. Activate one. Boomich will close. Boomich has bailed him out. Could have got awkward. Could have gone really awkward with Perfecto and Electronics so disconnected. That would have been a plant and a 2v2 retake that I would have probably backed Spirit in. So not far off of making a round out of that. Well, the orb's been picked up and donated, so Perfecto wielding that. Third tactical timeout from Spirit. Halley has used them quite liberally. Mm. Aware that the finances will be run through after a round like this, wanting to make sure that they stay out of hot water. Keep Cloud9 at more than an arm's length. Both mouths moving a million miles a minute. Both teams AWPs, both teams full buys, all the U2, all the goods. Yeah, lovely. Perfecto and Axel both hitting a bullet as the flames finished him off. Well, Boomich now up to 10 kills after only three within the first half, definitely making his presence known. A lot of early util. Look at the minimap. Mollies are plenty. A fourth for good measure. Axalka steps up to the plate for the fight. Magix gets away. Undetected. Well, A is completely open right now, but Spirit, they aren't to know. This one stalled out as the harassing spam of Donk. Trying to find a pesky electronic. What's he looking for? A silent retreat from electronic, now dealing with A. 50 seconds left on the clock. Spirit haven't really done anything so far, but are now working on B lane control and late middle. So late mid utility, uh, Cut out Molly, a red smoke. And a flash forces Shiro into a shot. 35 though, pressure onto Team Spirit mounting. They have enough for a B execute. There's only one incendiary on Axar, so this uh, three-man A defense is gonna be in the wrong place. Hobbit and Boom with a lot to do. Smokes will land, they'll play behind them. Boosting. Flash and erecting the boost. Oh, they were noisy on it. Yeah, they were. And he'll start his spam, think twice about it. Very cautious. As we're going to have a five on five retake. Strap in, folks. This one could be a bloodbath. This one takes comfortable on the first engagement. It's Hobbit with a necessary trade. Double on cave. All coming in from the death side. On Speedway, Shiro onto Hobbit. That's a big one back. Just trading blows. It's Axel who tips the scales in favor of Cloud9. Need another from Electronic. He overlooks the position. This double cave setup has paid off. There's no time for this one on Perfecto. He has to just get out. He's going to be run down. Donk's got his number and 11 for Spirit. Only a couple of seconds left when they get into the site and get that bomb down. Good proficiency out of the timeout. Halley takes it. They convert it. That is going to feel nice. Puts them in a position to close. Cloud9, money in the bin. Couple of them could go for Silent Stem 4s with Kevlar. And that's if they wanted to try and shove for them 2400 into the next. It looks like they will. They're actually going for lighter weaponry to facilitate utility. But yeah, five on five, B site execute. Wild scenes. And it's really that one, isn't it? Yeah. Electronic so glued on trying to hunt down Shiro. It's Donkey should have been worried about. Cloud9, you don't win this. It's essentially the game. You can't really back a uh, boom for another one of those crazy CZ starts. Feels like Spirit have just kind of whittled Cloud9 down. Axile. 
with their only M4. <laughs> Goes down to the Galil. It's already falling apart. Oh, able to get it back. Interesting call. What do you yeah. make of this? Well, they're going to have info as soon as, yeah, now. Right now, it's already, I mean, they could be behind the doors, so I'll acknowledge, but they fall all the way back. It's not like they are rotating so much as they're anticipating a re-clear. But this bad info, look at this. They're all rotating away. The bomb ah. is just waiting outside of the doors. If they go back for the mid control, right, get the uh, cutout molly, the red smoke. And there's the cutout molly, and there's the red smoke. Thank you very much, Chopper. Oops. Extra deep. Does the same job. Electronics not going to be falling for it, though. He's a tough, that's a tough spot, Alex. He's a lone wolf up against five. He's going to be clear. Magic's caught out. The bomb spotted. Need another if you really got it in. He takes half health onto Donk. They will start to exec into B, and it's wide open. It's wide open, Chad. Do you even give this a look in? Oh, you're saving what? Uh, one M4. At least Hobbit should try and hold on to that. For the final round to defend their honor. It's a meager 2,400 bucks. Cloud9. Looks like they will be falling short for the first round of the elimination stage. And look, Axile, we can critique him, but he's had a decent showing. 17 kills for him. The only one else in the double digits has been Boomich. Perfecto started strong. He snuffed Donk out in a couple of consecutive rounds. But there has been a conversation about Donk and Zontix, the two of them at the tippy top of the scoreboard, and Shiro on 16. So the three who are the star power for this spirit roster, using the power of the Year of the Dragon, and getting themselves up to 12. All right, well, everybody, I'm sure, is standing by, eagerly waiting to see what the next round of matchups are going to be. Uh, after this, I'm going to call it. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to say this game's done. Oh, wow. The desk's going to break this down. Right. And then they're going to uh, have the results come through and talk about the next round of matchups. So don't go anywhere after this one ends. You want to be glued to your screens waiting to see what the 1-0 and 0-1 matchups for the elimination stage are going to bring you. we got Richard, Pimp, and Blair to break down all the action. Let's see. Maybe I'm a little bit too far ahead of myself. Cloud9, final round. Good nature damage. The run boost across. So Perfecto's there quickly. Leaving A completely open again. He's yet to be punished. Silence across the map. They've got full B lane control. A re-smoke mid will slow them down further. The problem is they're just trying to hold them at the door, but uh, Spirit don't care. They've already operated late within the rounds anyway. It's like, yeah, take B lane control, use all your nades mid, and then we'll come in late. We'll smoke off red, we'll molly out the choke points, and we'll just clean house. The biggest bonus for Cloud9 right now is there's two to three players in quick response of A, potentially. They know it's not B, they've got the full press. And here comes Donk, you can hear him coming. And he's actually gone down to Perfecto. It's Chopper that sweeps a double under the rug. It seems like Cloud9, their hopes of seeing another round of play. Dwindling, Shiro, a nice shot. He puts it all onto Boom. Shiro can finish it. Ooh, he lands a tag onto him further. Chopper maybe going to be overlooked. Yep, back is turned, and Spirit will do it. A convincing one to start off here in Copenhagen. On Ancient, no less. Cloud9 humbled upon arrival to the elimination stage. Yeah, that's what you want to see from Spirit starting the major campaign with a victory. The first major for the likes of Donk and Zontix and their first victory at once. So this is the showing that I think many fans out there were hoping for. Remember what I just said, hang around. The desk is going to break this match down and then we'll be bringing you all the matchups for the next round. What is going to be 1-0? What is going to be 0-1? Well, let's send it over to Richard to break it all down. Thanks a lot, Chad. Uh, okay, we got one. Uh, a game that made sense. It happened. Finally. Yeah, uh, I mean, you can even see as well, by the way, how easy that was for Spirit. Hmm. Just from the reactions at the end, there's no screams, nothing. It was just, yeah, look, we're 
it's the game we're meant to win. That's kind of what we expected, right? Coming yeah. into this matchup, Spirit yeah. being the better team. You know, we talked about the AWP presence of Shiro, obviously being on the server. He showed up in a couple of rounds. We talked about Cloud9 having been a little bit lackluster when it comes to Ancient, lacking that AWP presence. And then we once again saw Dunk, you know, do what Dunk did best. It wasn't a, a game that he dominated, so to speak, on the scoreboard, but he had a couple of rounds that really swung it in the way of Team Spirit. So overall, uh, a great team effort coming in for the boys. And as you said, Richard, nice that we have one of the favorites at least turning up. Yeah, and like I said, it's been a, it's been a weird day. I'm, I'm really pleasantly surprised at how fluid Team Spirit looked here because, you know, we've been talking all day about the rust and getting settled into the hotel and having to play teams that have already done those things. Yeah. I mean, it looked the other way around here. It looked like Cloud9 were the ones who just got off a of plane. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I'm just looking at Zontix, Dong, and Shiro and, and the kill difference among I mean, the three of them just being one, right? 18, mm. 18, and 18, over 88. You have all these three players as well. When you're. When these three win conditions that you have in your team are all popping off this easily, it's great. And this isn't what this wasn't like easy from the get-go from Spirit, right? They won the first couple of rounds, and then we actually saw a bit of a resurgence coming out from Cloud9. They were able to uh, some some pretty ballsy rounds, so to speak. You know, coming down to the last ten, 10 seconds, they're able to clutch it out. I think Perfecto was finding mad impact. I mean, imagine putting an op in the hands of that man; like he yeah. wouldn't have had any of those rounds. So he was finding really good impact. They were leading five and three at one point, and then I feel like Boomich was maybe trying a, a little too. Too hard to, to force the issue. Many fast hits coming out, especially towards the yeah. B bomb side. Maybe trying to catch Chopper off guard, like how we saw FaZe getting caught off guard in the previous game of theirs, where Karakun was getting punished. On the other hand, for the side of Spirit, they were more than ready for these fast hits. I think Chopper was doing a great job over there, just staying alive and whatnot, and switching over to the T on onto the second half. Nothing really got going for Cloud9. They never really had an economy to speak of as well. On the only one round it may, it looked like they might be able to steal away was that Boomage 4K on a force buy. Apart from that, it was spirit through and through. No positives whatsoever for Cloud9 then? It wasn't that bad, you know. I, I think it was just, you know. Axel seemed to show some time. Axel had a couple of, of rounds, yeah. He was also farming in a couple of eco rounds, so yes. he is a little bit inflated when it comes to the scoreboard right here. I don't think Cloud9 played a, a bad game of Counter Strike. If anything, I just want to give it up for Team Spirit and say yeah. that that was a, a great performance from one of the best teams in the world coming into the tournament. Mm -hmm. I also think this game was a realistic measurement of the strength between the two teams. Mm -hmm. I think we expect Team Spirit to be a team that can go all the way into the grand final, potentially even win the major. And I think if you asked everyone, this building, most people probably don't have Cloud9 going into the playoff with the way things are right That's now. Right. So, okay. in terms of the scoreboard, in terms of how the game played out, maybe we just got a game that made an awful lot of sense. And here he is. You're going to be seeing this guy's picture a lot at home. Just get used <laughs> to it. It is the donk show. It's always the donk show. You know at what? The moment. That, that pisses me off a little bit because I did say, you know, he didn't have a, a standout game or a game where he blew up the <laughs> server, but a normal game for Donk where he's not blowing up the server is 100 plus ADR. Yeah. That's how Wild good he is right now. That's how he's made this standard for himself look like. This FMS spray as well ridiculous to control the FMS like that. He's always in your face, always going for the duel, yes. and you can always count on him to make a play, and I love that. Sometimes when you find yourself down in a 3v3 and a 3v4, Donk will find a way to put you back into the round, and that's probably the greatest greatest asset, sorry, to this man, right? I mean, you could just call him Matt Murdock, because the man has absolutely no fear, right? He's just running on in straight up, taking his deals, and in the final four rounds that they were able to accrue on the CT side for a spirit, because again, reminding our viewers, it was 5-3 for the side of Cloud9. They didn't play cowed, they didn't play scared. You could see, uh, I think it was uh, it was Donk and, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Zontix towards mid, just taking his deals and yeah. just heads up, we're going to out-duel you, we're not going to be cowed just because a couple of rounds didn't quite pan out in our direction. So, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. It's, it's, it's an okay game with over 100 ADR, top fracking in the server. That's Dong for you. All right, well, look, not a lot to talk about in that one. So let's take a look at the results from the secondary stream. We'll talk a little bit about these guys. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, obviously, we've had some interesting matchups today. Uh, I'm trying to think. We caught one of them, didn't we? We saw Mongols Navi. We're kind of half watching that because we had to for you. Yeah. And you can see right there at the top, Navi, 13-10. Not a dominant performance there, Blair. Go on. Well, to be fair, I think uh, Mongols completely crapped the bed at the very end over there. I, I, I caught, and this has, been, this has been a trend I've been seeing with this team every time they're going up against uh, you know, a top 10, a top 15 team, so to speak, where they have them kind of on the edge. It's a 9-10, it's an intense situation. Sure. And then some of the decision-making, double upset are coming out, Senzu completely crapping the bed as well. Uh, some issues which needed to be fixed, but that being said, I think Navi did a pretty good job. JL woke up and shut it out, but those other results, man, like VP. Yeah, like shocks yeah. at the first what pro the one, for real, like what happened there? Like, yeah, that's 
that's, that's the big one. Imperial was playing great. Again, they played Inferno, and you could see Imperial take charts of the game. VP was nowhere to be found on the yes. server. I think a lot of people have VP as a, a dark horse, potentially, to, mm -hmm. to make a lot of upsets at this major. So for them to lose that best of one against Imperial, who, yes, they've been looking great, but they're not supposed to take down VP, and not in that fashion as well. To me, the biggest surprise of the day. So I, I think it was like, what, it was 12 rounds in a row or something. They just something like ran that. over them mm -hmm. completely. And I haven't seen VP. It, it's not like they were just getting outplayed. They were also making so many uncharacteristic mistakes. You, you might say a lot of things about VP, but they don't make too many mistakes. In no. fact, they play so safe that they're bloody boring at times. But this was uh, some very curious plays being made by the individuals and the team. And just quickly, because I like to leave it all out there, you know, when we're doing these broadcasts, <clears throat> I have this recurring nightmare about G2 winning this major. And it's <laughs> like, you know, the, the, the crowd are all chanting Hooksy's name, and then he just holds up the trophy. <laughs> and how about my major today, dickhead? And my life's just over. So Prepare it, for it. Very sad to see them get off to a great start. Anyway, these are the games that we're going to be having uh, later now. Obviously, we know the draw. We know what's uh, happening. Oh, sorry, results first. My yeah. bad. The nightmare was taken over there. Uh, Team Spirit Cloud9, we just saw. Uh, we know that uh, Heroic did beat FaZe Clan, score that not there at the moment. But uh, the real surprise was the Eternal Fire Vitality one, I think. Eternal Fire getting a win over Zewu's team earlier that we saw. A genuine, genuine surprise that's going to put Vitality in a position where they might have to play a better caliber of opposition than they would have liked to. Both Face and Vitality losing their opening best of one. That's yeah. going to put them down into the lower yeah. bracket. And if anything, yes, it does suck for Vitality. And yes, it does suck for, for Face Clan as well. But if I'm the teams facing them in that 0-1 game, it's going to suck more for me than it is for them. I just don't want to repeat of Paris, Richard. I don't nah, want, don't I want to see all these crazy things yeah. go down. But you know what? At least it's a, it's a bit of a rude awakening, right? Sure. So it's more like, hey, guys. We're the major. Wake up, right? Wake up. And I think we're going to be seeing uh, a Zaiwu and a Vitality activate. I think we're going to be seeing sure. absolutely getting pissed off and being like, all right, no more losing. We're going to win. It's going to be okay. Yeah, you just have to get there. That's the key part. So it doesn't really matter how you do it at the end of the day. Uh, these are going to be the games that we've got coming up for you now. This is going to be over on the secondary stream. Uh, so working our way backwards, <clears throat> FaZe versus Furia. I mean, you know, FaZe probably should be favorites for that one. Furia had to battle so hard to even be here. Look very flat against G2. Cloud9 versus Ecstatic. We've rematch. got a rematch. Yeah. Yeah. Say, yeah. And actually, you know, Ecstatic, remember, they should have won that one. They could have beat Cloud9. It really hinged on one round. And it was the best of, of one yes. as well. Yes, exactly. So interesting to see. I wonder if Ecstatic are going to maybe make a correction. Mm. Virtus Pro versus Pain Gaming. Virtus Pro not having a great time against Brazilian opponents yeah. in their first game. So that's definitely one to watch. And Vitality Mongols. So again, Blair, uh, we're talking about you guys. Uh, I, I can't Rest in peace. I kind of feel a little bad <laughs> for them because, listen, I'll tell you something. Zaiwu's not going to be taking it easy on them. Neither are things and Flames, but yeah, uh, at least for Vitality, it's a, it's a it's an easier opponent, so to speak. So maybe they can kind of wake up there. Obviously, it's a rude awakening for for Fury as well. They went 0-2 in the opening stage, fought their way back. We saw them win yesterday. They were happy. We talked to Guri. Everything was working out for them. They were talking about maybe we're ready for the playoff, and now they find themselves in an 0-1 situation, going up against Face Clan. It's a, a rude start to the day for for Fury once more. Yeah, um, and obviously we've got more games uh, coming. Going to be on the mainstream. These uh, we won't even. Well, we'll be in the building, but we won't be sure. on the desk. We'll more. be watching. Yeah, exactly. We'll, we will be watching them. Um, so they're going to be with us now. There we go. There we go. Uh, right. Uh, and you can see we're going to wait about Team Spirit get to play Imperial based on what we've just seen. Probably comfortable favorites for that one. But then it gets a little spicy, doesn't it? Mm. And Na'Vi versus G2 Esports. Was it Furia being bad? Was it G2 being legit? I think it was both, kind of, yeah. actually. But this is a real test, right? Because Na'Vi definitely did wake up. It was a closer affair against the Mongols. And then looking at Heroic and Complexity, I think the clear favorites here has to be Heroic. They looked great today. They had mm -hmm. to lose a, a match of this major. They went 3-0 in the opening yes. stage. They yep. won the first game right here. Now they're going up against Complexity in a best of one. I agree. Heroic on paper right now are my favorites to win that one. Again, Mouse versus Eternal Fire as well. We saw the building in That's Turkey, spicy. you know, with the was it the cinema where everyone went absolutely crazy when they yes. first That is first such game. a cool thing, man. That is such a cool setting as yep. well. Going up against Mouse, who looked a little bit shell-shocked against the static in that first game by no Yeah, they had perfect. to play a lot harder than they would have wanted. Listen, that's a perfect opportunity opportunity for Eternal Fire to go 2-0 and give themselves a really, really good shot at making the playoff. Which the would be historic for yeah. Turkish Counter-Strike. Yes, and again, you know, we've talked about, you know, how they've been having these mental capitulation problems. Mm. Started today, there was none of that. 
I None mean, of that no you know, they had to dig deep to beat Vitality and they found it. So. In, in, in fact, I was even more impressed because, you know, you go to that 1v2 from, from Major where he we, we kind of feel like he got a little cs 2 a little bit there, missing mm. the shot. And even when that comeback happened from Vitality, they didn't waver. Yeah. That, that, that mental strength, it was rock solid. And once that happens, I have to echo what Santara said, is that when we are all playing 100% with no mental you know, weaknesses whatsoever, we're one of the best teams out there. And I think they're proving it here. Yeah, so a lot of surprises and upsets potentially to come. But here's something that isn't surprising. It is my love of displate. Oh. Mm. We've got another one again here. This is actually, this is fire. Colorful. Yeah, this Very is Very colorful. Great. Actually much it, it, it's like some Sakura. But anyway, for those who don't know, and if you've just tuned in, Display obviously are sponsoring us at the Major. And by the way, every time I hold one of these up, there's a million memes made of them. Some of them not fit for broadcast, to be honest <laughs> with you, but whatever. Uh, and you can go to displate.com uh, slash PGL. If you buy one or two, you get 22% off. Three or more, 33% off. And they're super easy amount, obviously, all using magnets. And it's not just the official you know, CS artwork, uh, they've got like two, over 200 different kinds of artwork from movies and books. And but magnets, yeah. how do they work, Richard? Well, I, I actually don't know. I, I need to get a, what is it, Insane you don't know Clown how Posse. <laughs> we need Insane <laughs> Clown Posse on, on the phone. Uh, I have one, it's just of James Banks in my living room and he's just up there <laughs> looking down on me and I, I pray to the patron saint of esports. So I say, James Banks, save me. So anyway, uh, do support them for their support in the major. And for now, uh, we're gonna go to a break. Guys, as always, it's been a pleasure working with you through the day. Uh, when we do come Come back to the desk. I won't be here. It's going to be Shocks, Maniac, and Moses. So you will get their thoughts. And we'll, I will see you tomorrow. But don't go too far. Bye. Level up your gaming space with metal posters from Displate. Hang your Displates in seconds. Swap them whenever you like. Get official art from your favorite games on a uniquely designed metal canvas and choose from thousands of posters. Join over 3 million collectors now. Your wall upgrade is here. Shop now at Displate.com. remains the same. Victories with 1x bet. We are proud to announce new additions to the XL series. Both are using fast TN panels and newly upgraded DIAC2 technology. Fast TN panel with its faster native response time can reveal enemy outlines quicker during flashbang attacks. For IPS panel, more overdrive is required to enhance response speed, leading to dynamic image blurring due to the panel's inability to handle the load. These new monitors integrate new dynamic accuracy technology, DIAC2. The upgraded dual backlight design not only provides FPS players with clearer visuals at dynamic aiming and spray control, but are also more friendly to your eyes. Moreover, built in the monitor panel, DIAC2 functions independently and doesn't require any sync with PCs, ensuring no impact on game performance. XL setting to share now has auto game mode feature. Besides download, save, share your settings, it will auto apply different color settings based on your usage scenarios. Outlook of the latest monitors are refreshed it has incorporated industrial grade bearings into the height adjustment mechanism, allowing easier and smoother adjustment to the exact desired height. The new monitor series continue to evolve, refining details to ensure players can perform their best consistently in games. This is a brief introduction of the new XL monitor. Feel free to DM us if you have any questions. It's popular, it's loud, and this is ASONE's commercial. But ASON spent all the money to make the headphones good, and they got no money left for the commercial.
So I'm gonna need you to have the A zone I O A C E Z O N E Yo Code PGL 50 euros off. We got some headphones. It's now or never. Becoming a professional Counter-Strike player certainly isn't easy and everyone's got their own journey and how they go on it. I've got Ima here from Navi. How are you doing? Hello, I'm very good. Where did you grow up in Romania? Were you always from Bucharest? I was born in Bucharest. Oh, nice. But then uh, around six or seven, mm -hmm. I moved outside of Bucharest, but not for a long time. Like, I think I came back around 12 or 13 because of the high school, because we didn't have like better schools wherever, wherever we moved. Yeah. For you though, were, say school times, were you a very competitive person? Like not just gaming, I mean like normal sports? In school? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My favorite thing was was fighting sports. Oh really? Uh, okay. That's... What sports? Football, basically. Football, yeah? Yes. So you were very competitive? Kind of, yes. Your first time of playing video games of any sort. How old were you then? I mean, I think my first game ever was Halo 2. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because my parents bought me a PC and then it was from someone else. Mm -hmm. And then they had Halo 2 in the PC and I was like, oh, let's nice. try it. <laughs> and I actually liked it. How old were you? I think it was around, around 10. I'm not 10. sure. Yes. Okay. 9, 10, 11, somewhere there. When did you get into Counter-Strike? So I remember that I was in school. Some of my colleagues was playing uh, 1.6. Nice. And then uh, I was starting to play 1.6 and then I'm not sure if it was the same guy or someone else that played CSGO. CSGO was already out mm -hmm. and I started to play CSGO around 2013 in the middle of the year or okay. something like this. Was this a home PC you were playing on or did you play home the internet PC. cafe? Okay, oh, nice. Did you have a good PC at home? Mm, nah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Like I have an interesting story. Like I was playing for Nexus with mm -hmm. 100 FPS. And I was playing in rank S back in the days yeah. with 100 FPS. I won the first place and that's how I bought my new PC. <laughs> well, that's good. That's a good investment, right? Invest in your future. Okay, so you start in 2013, but you didn't join Nexus till 2018, right? Something like this, yes. What what happened in this time between? Like, did you just play matchmaking with friends? Then, I mean, I, I was playing matchmaking a lot. Mm -hmm. Then I started to play face it around I don't know, something in the middle there. So how did you find Faces though? How did you go from matchmaking to face it? Probably like everyone, just a random guy in TeamSpeak or it was TeamSpeak for sure, not Discord. <laughs> uh, saying, ah, oh, let's play that tournament on Face It. Okay. And then we played the tournament on Face It and then we see that there is a matchmaking on Face It and we played there as well. What did your parents think though when you start to put so much time into Counter-Strike? They didn't have any problems. Okay. Because we, we we had like a rule that it was not a rule, basically. Like, you can play, you can do whatever you want, but you don't miss classes. No, okay. I was never missing a class, not even religion or something like this. Really? You just went all classes? Full. Like, so you were a good yeah. boy at school? And like, was it always come home, play school, and then Counter-Strike? Okay, pretty yeah. much, yes. Did you have some teams that you played in with these guys? Yes, I had like a, a team. I, it was called Vama Vek. We're just playing tournaments. We're losing every time, 16-1, 16-2, but we're just playing. We didn't like grow up together, but we, we made like eight, nine until it's level 10 together. So it was okay, good. Okay, so you grind it out. Yes. You were learning the competitive side. So we had a hub in Romania, a hub for only pro, semi-pro Romanians, like all of them were, they were level 10. They were like more than decent, even Nexus were playing there. And then I think I won the first tournament of that first season. Then I got second place in the second season or something like this. Okay. Then I won the third season or, or something similar. I don't remember correctly, Did but- you get money for this? Yes. So, okay, like, was this the first time you made money from Counter-Strike? Uh, kind of, yes. So how much was your first like big paycheck? Rank S, like I said. And how much would you get for Rank S then? It was first place, so 1,200. $1,200? $1, yes. And what did your parents say then? 
I think I, I just told them that I will. Uh, I want this. Mm -hmm. I'll buy a PC. <laughs> I, I don't care. I've got my money. I need better PC. I can play better. <laughs> yes. Done. That was it. Yes. But did you always want to say like I'm going to be a professional player? Did you have a goal? Not really. Like. So I, what were you thinking of? No, no. For for example, usually I don't like to set goals at all. Like I just go okay. like moment by moment, mm -hmm. year by year, and then just see what happens. You you can set like small goals. Like okay, I want to do this, but now it's not. I have to do this. I must do this, yeah. Yeah, because okay. if you don't do it, then you're going to be full disappointment. Then maybe you lose motivation and stuff like this. I just don't want to, and I don't like it. Interesting. And, uh, yeah, I think I just play in the flow. Like I said, I was playing in that hub, and then uh, Nexus saw me. Aha, uh -huh, so this is when we get to Nexus times. Yes, then they, they put a good word to the second best Romanian team. Mm -hmm. Then I went there. Then from there, I went to Nexus. And you at this point, how many hours a day are you playing? A lot. <laughs> a a lot. lot. And did you get a salary at Nexus? And no. Really? Yes. Back, no salary? Yes. Back then, at the, at the first time, we had no salary. So what did you Nexus. get for joining? Nothing. We were just getting the prize money. They were already playing for two years, maybe maybe more, maybe less, mm -hmm. without salaries. Then I joined, and then after some, not, not that much time, they started to give us some salaries. Okay. Do you have a contract though, even though you won't? So no contract? No contract. So technically, it's kind of good because you're free and you can go to somewhere else when another offer comes along. Yeah. So during Nexus, was this, would you say, is like the most serious you'd got? Yes. Yeah. And was there like full practice schedule? Yes. Did you finish school to the end? Yes, I finished school to the end. Okay. So when you joined Game of Legion, yeah, you just went as a free agent, basically? Did they have to buy you? Yes, I went for free. We were playing the Flashpoint. We are in close qualifier with Nexus. We did good. Not gonna lie, we were playing good at that mm -hmm. point. Game of Legion contacted me. Also. I said no first time. Mm -hmm. Then they bring Dobo. Okay. And then after the second time, whenever they uh, they asked me to come instead of Dobo, mm -hmm. I said yes. Okay, so you came to Game Legion. Yes. Now you're talking real contract. Yes. Good salary. Yes. I don't need to know numbers, but like a good salary. It was good. Yeah. And you can now live and play comfortably. Yeah. Now. Going to the Paris Major, yep. this is obviously where things really change for you guys. A lot. But is it just because you changed leadership, your IGL changed? Was that the reason for success or did it just all click? What do you put it down to? Team progress, basically. So he came with his ideas. He did a great job doing uh, IGL and else, but also like Aker came with his experience. Yep. He helped a lot. He was speaking a lot to mid round as well. He, he was your most experienced player though, right? Yes, or, yeah. yes. Kios as well, he came, he had like a lot of energy. You put up one hell of a show, but you were the star of the show. Were you always thinking you'd be in a star rifler position or was this just you hey, making sure you could perform? What was the biggest difference here? I don't know, I just played my game, to be honest. No, no, Bro. <laughs> no, no I'm, not, I'm not joking, I was just playing my game. I always hated this. Uh, this first star rifle. Mm. But you were demolishing sure, people. Bro. You were running through yeah. tier one teams. You were just yes. bop, 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 bop. True. And it, I, I can understand your team might set you up. You might go for a play. You might say you want to play. But you played better than you'd ever played. Yes. What was the difference? What Because like now, right, you must feel that people expect this of you. Yes. I mean, back in Paris, it was full on the floor. Like we were feeling confident. Mm -hmm. We are feeling like we can beat anyone. What was this whole Paris experience like for you though? Like you had so much more media attention. Everyone had high expectations because of your performance. Everyone was super hyped. Everyone was like, Ima, Ima, Ima. Overwhelming, I would mm. say, because everyone was cheering. Everyone was uh, hyping. Everyone was uh, nice. Yeah. Pretty much overhyping to me. Like overhyping. <laughs> yes, I would say like, and I was like, okay. And then Navi go, Hello. Hello. We want you. <laughs> what the hell do you say then? Because you go Nexus, Game Legion, which is still okay, but then Navi, this is yes. way different. Yeah. I think I can say that Game Legion wanted me to stay so badly. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but they they couldn't hold no. me. I, I got like a lot of offers, but like and a lot of interest. But you chose Navi, so why did you yes. choose Navi? I mean it was the most obvious one, no? Yeah? Yes. But like, you, did you know what players would be there? Did you know like Alexi yes, would be there yes, and stuff? Uh, whenever Andy, Andy contacted me, mm -hmm. he told me the team. He asked me if I'm interested and I said, 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why are <we> asking? <laughs> So what do you think right now of, of how your journey on Navi has just begun, this early start, right? It's just been just over six months now. We started good, like, obviously we didn't start at the best because we are not winning constantly. I think it's kind of understandable, not understandable, because we still need like more time with, uh, with Wonderful to, to, yeah. to put up like a, a more structure, like to know basic gaps, to have fast solution to unpredictable uh, stuff. You've gone very quickly to the very top. Did you imagine that it would happen like that? It's not that quick. No, no, not in terms of, but if you look at it from like, you didn't go Nexus to Game Legion to like a lower, t you didn't have to go through like a lower tier team. You went straight to one of the biggest organizations. How do you view it? I don't view it like you. <laughs> I see it like uh, I played a lot in the Lord tired teams, like for example, Nexus. Well, you spent a lot of time in both Nexus and Game Legion. Then I spent years. a lot of time in Game of Legion. Yeah that we grind a lot. Uh, so you're very loyal. Yes. And then and then something happened and I ended up in, in Navi. So I think it was like a hard work mm -hmm. uh, path. You can say that it was lucky because Paris Major, but... Uh, no, you, you performed. You played, you played really well. Yes. People wanted you. Yes. That's not lucky. Yeah. It still took... I don't care about the run or who teams you faced. You yeah. still fought against every team you played, right? Yeah. You still did big numbers on it. It's, that's what everyone was hyped about you. And if a team like Navi can see, okay, we want that, yep. that's obviously very positive. It's not about luck, is it? Do you have a goal still though to win a major? Like, no, obviously. Yeah, there we go, I mean, okay. I, I mean, I got the second place, now I have to take the first place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And just if you had any advice to people who watch this and they want to become a professional gamer, you went through playing for teams, play, well, playing with friends, playing with teams, the face it way, and now you're here. What advice would you give to young players that want to become pros? Because everyone's so young now trying to start. Yes, I mean, the best advice that I will get is have patience. Because okay. people will start being, I mean, not a pro, Pe people will get to tire one, mm -hmm. maybe at a young age, 70 years old, 16 years old, 18, but people are getting in tire one at 24, yeah. Yeah. like me. So. You never know. So if you, if you don't um, give up, mm -hmm. your chance will come. I like it. Well, thank you very much. It was very interesting to hear your story, man. Thank and you. Best of luck for the major. Thank you. It is time for another CS2 fantasy draft here at the PGL Copenhagen Major. And title contender Shuhei over here from Mouse Sports. Look at that face. Okay, man. You ready for this to be a GM, to build yes, sir. Yes, your sir. ultimate team? Let's spin the wheel. Let's go. Let's kick it off and let's see who you are gonna get. I'm interested to see how your mind is gonna work and how you're gonna pick your pieces. And the first team you start with is a team that didn't get very far. Apex. Mm -hmm -hmm. Let's go sense with the IGL. Okay. I so like a young IGL. Young IGL, you're keeping the DNA of where you started from. I see how that works. Same mentality with this one. Oh. Well, mm. spirit. Surely Chopper, yeah? Just another IGL. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, let's take uh, Mr. Donk here. Okay. Um, I think he's a good addition to the team to keep donking on the opponents, so we, and, can, we can take Donk. And if you're GMing this team, you already know how to stop him, so you know you can stop him from being stopped. True. Mm -hmm. I like this. Well, Ooh. you, you got yourself, basically, but you don't want yourself, maybe. No, no, no. Honestly, a donk and a gym hat duo. <laughs> that's, that's huge. That's that huge. is huge. Let's go with Jimmy here. Jimmy coming into the team is uh, this. This is already super team material by far. And so young. No so one's young. over 20 right true, now. True, <laughs> true. Virtus Pro. Now we go with uh, Sir Flit. He's a, a very aggressive player as well. Yeah. Though. I think it would be a good addition. A little bit of balance. Okay. Now we need a... Donk, Flit and Yimmy. That rifle core yeah, is or, not. But we need an AWP. Yeah, you're here. missing an AWP. Whoa. Well, obviously we take Kerrigan for the AWP. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm taking Kerrigan for up. Do you remember TSM old? days? Okay, 33-year-old 
Opa, we take Kerrigan for op. <laughs> I love this. This is great. So you have one experienced player in the whole team. Yep. And he's not even going to IGL. You're going to make him Sounds learn to a me. bit more. Go go back, roll back the years and AWP again. Yep. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay, question. This team, will it go through to the major? If so, how far will it go in the major? Ooh. Carrigan's second calling, helping sense as well, if you need. I think it does go to the major. I think it goes pretty far. How far? Elimination stage, playoffs? Maybe suddenly quarters. Okay. And something happens in semis. Then somehow, just, you know, teleporting into the finals. I, th I think it's got potential. Potential. I like it. It's a bit wild, but I like a bit of wild. People will be confused when they see carrying over an all, probably run away as well. As long as he doesn't team kill someone by mistake when just you know, not able to handle it every now and again. That's a pretty solid team. I like it. I like it too. Well done, Mr. GM. Thank you. See you soon. We're going in to the opening stage of the PGL Major Copenhagen. Eternal Fire has been on a huge rise and looking very good here. Madra is the man in charge, the IGL, rocking it. How are you feeling, sir? Okay, I think we're feeling good. Coming through the RMR, right, you go 3-2. Um, and I would say, looking at that, right, it was a good performance again, but I would say some of it is still times you look sometimes shaky, even against the good teams, right? I compare your phase games from Katowice, right, to what we saw at the RMR. What has it told you about where you guys are at, how Eternal Fire are performing right now? Our performance in the RMR was okay because we play like G2 and phase. Yeah. Then we play Falcons, then we just play Bed Boom for the last matches to go to the major here. And we just win it 2-0 with uh, we show good things. We just miss, I think, when we play like teams like FaZe and G2, I saw that we miss uh, something to win against them. No, I, li I like it because what I'm seeing from you there is an understanding that there's small gaps that you're having in these games that you can't get away with against this level of team. So it's something you focused on now, yeah, before coming into the major. Because the objective, all, obviously, is going to the Legion stage and play against these teams. But with what you've been working on, did you boot camp at all before the major? What did it look like from the Eternal Fire schedule? I had like two days off and we just practiced, starting practicing, but not boot camping because okay. we can't. But we just did uh, like boot camping from home. Uh, we just walk, watch the demo that we, we play, try to fix the mistakes. Uh, it's not easy on practice because we play with eye pings from mm -hmm. Turkey. Four people, I play from France. I, I, I don't have this eye issue. Now, one thing that's interesting is you haven't played any officials. You just mentioned it. Practice is not the same. You haven't yes. played officials since the RMR. Yeah. Does this worry you at all? Uh, in practice, sometimes in officials, something different can mm -hmm. happen. Here we are favorites to go through. So we need to have this mentality like we are favorites. So we need to play good CS, focus 100% because the teams we're going to play are really uh, eager to win. Now, one thing I'm noticing, right, from the team and how it's different from last year, 2023, I saw Eternal Fire, every qualifier, every event, every online event you could enter, right? You guys were playing so much. This year, RMRs, then Katowice, yeah? And now you're here. Only 23 maps officially played so far this year. Not so much, yeah. Was this a decision you wanted to have? Is this a change you wanted to make? Maybe we're targeting some tournament right now but uh, we have ASL Pro League after that after mm -hmm. this major extra so the thing is to be honest to answer to your question we're playing from Turkey some online tournament and yeah. it's difficult we have we are not the same level as we have on LAN on online because the ping we're playing like 16 ping sometimes four people three people yeah. and some online tournament can be dangerous you know you can like lose a match lose against a really weak opponent then after that you can lose confidence so I think there is a strategy on that. Okay. Uh, we need to focus on uh, the most important tournament right now is the major. Yeah. And like you said, that comes with the experience for sure. And another thing you mentioned to me is you feel like you're one of the favorites here. And I think many people consider you guys to be the favorites here. Yes. Is it a strange situation to be in, to go from being not the favorites, people not expecting you to do so well, to now you're like, oh, okay, we, we should be going through. Yeah, obviously. Like <laughs> all my career, I was the outsider when yeah. I play. I always playing against I open it because we are always T1 half and T2 between. Mm -hmm. How does it feel for you to be back here and to go through this again? I feel great, to be honest. It is the best tournament that uh, CS can show. A really good feeling to be here, to play here, to have his stickers, to be honest. You had a very specific way of always getting ready for the team. 
We used to be going down for breakfast. You'd be there on your own. Mm. You'd have your notebook. Yeah, you'd be remember. doing some extra work and you'd be going through everything else. Yeah, I'm still the same. Like, I, I think before the match, I always watch like three, four maps. I just, sometimes I'm thinking too much. <laughs> uh, in the night, I'm doing like overthinking. You're just doing it. You've always been doing it. And then yeah. it's looking pretty good for you right now. Things are coming together. I hopefully, hopefully <laughs> it would be better. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in you. Let's yeah. see how it goes. Good luck Thank in the you. games, man. Thank you good luck for the competition. Guys. Hello everyone and welcome back to the CS2 Major live from Copenhagen, Denmark as the shift has been taken over. Thank you Richard for a great start to the day, but now uh, it's my turn to take over. My name is Shox and I'm joined by Moses and my maniac to guide us through Mouse versus Eternal Fire first, but then of course the rest of the winner matches to see who moves on to 2 and 0. Let me first get a temperature check about how much did things go the way you expected in the first half of the day? You Generally. Want take, you want to take that one? Oh, uh, it didn't go really well in the Vitality <laughs> camp. I knew I was going to be yeah. putting the blender at some point, right? We can address it for, from the get-go. That was a little bit of a disappointing Notice Noticed your star. absence in the green room for yeah, that game as well? To watch. I think it's in everybody's interest that I not be in the green room and Vitality is losing. I disagree. People, this guy over here, has he has a certain love for poking me when yeah. Vitality is losing. Yeah. And I because I value him as a person, as a friend, and I don't want to hurt him physically, I thought I'm going to remove myself from the conversation because, you know, you, you poke me a little bit. And for me, it's like a height of friendship to be able to really get under your skin and give you a little jab in <laughs> not, the back when things aren't going your way. Can do that. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. You know, it's, it's love, really. That's <laughs> what it is. It does lead us into a, a great first talking point in terms of if the results went the way we think. And I want to take a look at the schedule for the last of the day because, of course, that will tell us who lost and who won. Here on the A stream, uh, you will see all of the winner matches on the secondary stream. You will see the teams that would be up against it, starting with Vitality, when they're next up versus the Mongols, which I dare say is a very dangerous one to be in. Yeah, I think the Mongols are a horrifying team to play against if you allow doubt to creep in. Mm. And I think this is what we saw a little bit with Vitality in that first match against Eternal Fire. Granted, it was a, a great map from the Turks. Like, I think it's the, the least we can say is that Eternal Fire played beautiful yeah. Counter-Strike. It wasn't just the Vitality Crumble show, but now with the Mongols, I feel like they have an opportunity, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, it's a similar kind of style of team, right? That Eternal Fire, you have those like really sharp shooters coming in hot, like really aggressive, taking some taking some fights, taking some peaks. And yeah, if you let them get into the game, they can steamroll away from it. Virtus Pro looked real ugly to start the day. Yeah, that what happened not, there? That was, not a, that was not a cool game to watch. If you're a Virtus Pro fan, I mean, if, yeah. if you want to see him lose. We do see a little bit of a trend, of course, between Vitality, Virtus Pro, and FaZe. You know, heavy hitters that you expect a lot from, but who come into this tournament cold, respectively, comparatively, to some of the other teams. And FaZe generally comes into these tournaments a little bit cold to begin with. Like, they, know. you know, they, they kind of always have those slow starts and you add into it, yeah, playing against a team that's already been in the environment for a while. Tough, tough matches. We saw a lot of them struggle. Even, even some of the teams that won actually started their games out a little bit slow. Mouse had to kind mm -hmm. of come back against Ecstatic. That was looking a little weird at times. Um, so, yeah, just all, the, all these kind of the teams that you have as quote unquote favorites, there's there's some tough games out there. Yeah, I'm a little bit on the fence. I know one of our narrative is always, hey, the teams that have played here already, they have a little bit of an advantage. You know, they have momentum, they know the tables, the setup and all. But a team like Heroic who won 3-0, they've had time to cool down. Like, uh, to how much can we actually put on any sort of momentum? And can we not just value at face value, what they've been able to do. I don't think they were just building on whatever here. They just they just played better. No, yeah, but, like but certain, certain the others necessarily maybe didn't. I guess that's the point, right? Face didn't definitely. Yeah, they, exactly. Not to the level that we would have hoped to see from them. Yeah. Sorry, I cut no, you off. I, I, think, I think it's just certain teams. Like Heroic, yeah, 3-0, you have a little bit of break days. You get to chill, you get to practice. They would live right, some of them live right down the road, so it was nice and easy. Must be but, nice. But other teams get to just kind of roll, roll right in, and especially when you have the excitement of qualification. Like, I don't care if you went 3-3, three and three, if you went 3-2. and two, Anytime you qualify to the next stage of the major, you're going to feel a surge in confidence, a surge of excitement, a surge of energy for the next game you sit down for. Um, and it, it helps kind of get through that first game, for sure. It does also show in the matches that we're going to have here uh, on the A stream, because, for instance, Imperial, you know, uh, they were playing late until yesterday in terms to qualify into that next round. They won their opening game and now they get to play Team Spirit. Yeah, that was against Virtus Pro as well, that, which yeah. is a tough team. And uh, yeah, that, that was a really nice upset to see them kind of roll into also. And then this, this is just a really tough ask. Good luck. 
Yeah, congratulations, nice win. <laughs> Honestly, at this point in time in the history of Counter Strike, playing Spirit is kind of a luxury in the sense like nobody expects you to win. Nobody expects you to win rounds. You can go freely, and I really think they keep on impressing us. Like you can talk about how VP and their playstyle are supposed to be equipped to deal with a day one here at the major, but Imperial just completely rolled them. If you, if you want to talk about a mentality that you have to go into that match with, though, if you're Imperial, you got to be like, thank God we have them right now in a best of one, where it is the easier upset rather than you know potentially a best of three down the road for qualification or for elimination, whatever, whatever. Might happen through the rest of the stage. At least you're playing them now, where it feels like it's, it might be an easier chance that you can just Henny gets a hot game and just rolls with it. You know, you never know what can happen. It's true. Uh, anything else you'd like to dive in from a holistic standpoint before we get a little bit more nitty gritty into Mao's versus Eternal Fire? Um, not really. I think uh, Ecstatic was a, a team that I think is interesting to talk sure. about the journey in their first yeah. match because it is very representative of what can happen when you carry over a certain momentum, you have a good start to a game, but then you allow your opponent to come back in. And this is where I feel like the conversation resettles. Once you get to 10-10, once you get to 11-11, it doesn't actually matter anymore that yeah. you were here before, that you've been there. No, 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 no. That's when you all reset and the experience kicks in. That was a sad example of that for the Ecstatic fans, but obviously they're not out. Quite yet. Yeah, I actually think it's particularly frustrating for them because uh, remember when they started their campaign here, they had the, that match versus Cloud9 and they got so incredibly close and there is where you can really point to these are players that are new to these types of games specifically and even if you don't see it throughout the game because they play phenomenally and above their level, it is when you have to clean uh, close it out rather that sometimes it gets more difficult and oh, I, I I mean, they show so much promise, so it's frustrating that sometimes in these games against the teams that they shouldn't be beating, they get so close. They're a cool team to have been watching through yeah. the opening stage and now. I like Kragen a lot, Patty's obviously. Oh, Kragen's wow. well. yeah, Krag really, really cool to watch. And I mean, look, that's that's a team that, you know, they still have plenty of time to kind of turn turn, on, turn around after this loss. So um, they can still be dangerous, surprisingly. You know, that was a team coming into the major I didn't really expect to be able to do much and mm -hmm. um, still showing that they have some elements of danger. Almost taking down Mouse is nice. Oh, they were right there. Yeah. Uh, the, the, my pet peeve is when you have a team in that position who tries to play perfect to close a game that is such a trap to fall into and this is where teams with a little bit more experience will allow freedom into 2v1s 3v2s if you know you have a duel and it might not be the counter strike by the book you take the duel and i saw them give a lot of space to opponents trying by all means please don't lose this round we have we have the power play and this is usually the gap where we talk about rookies and a bit more experience it folded them Thinking a bit, a bit, a little bit too hard about it. Uh, I'm also very much looking forward to the Navi versus G2 matchup. I think that could be spicy. Get Nico Navi. is major. What? Get Nico is major. Is oh, is this like your Bring tagline for for I'm today? Ready. You've been saying that for many, many majors, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> you have a line of yeah. T-shirts, something. Ever since Boston, Boston, I didn't want him to win. That was really the only one I didn't <laughs> want him to win. It's been a while now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every everyone since then, I'm like, yeah, just give it to Nico. It's cool. So what is it going to come down to? Because Monesty was firing on all cylinders, right? It's really going to be, well, is uh, Nico going to completely settle into CS2? Well, I think there, there's two kind of stories with, with this G2 that we saw earlier today. One is when we've seen them at their best, you know, winning winning the Katowices and Colognes, it's been when they've had that trio of Nico, Hunter, Monesty. All three of right. those guys fire on all cylinders in their one map they've played today, so let's not get too excited. And then the other one is, we all know, and there's no reason to shy away from it, there was a little bit of a struggle, especially for Nico kind of transitioning into CS2. The early days of it, you could see something was a little bit off. Same with Hunter weren't really used to the game. They, they struggled to kind of get on board during that transition. And again, it's only one map, so let's not jump to too many conclusions based off it. But if you start to see them going through the stage, catching fire, catching momentum, and those guys continue to play well, then then who then Nico really could be yeah, searching for his major. It's just one map, but also it, it's the last game it's of the, the RMR against FaZe where he plays to that level again, and you yeah. start hoping, you start being ready to be lied to again. Yeah, by you Nico let yourself believe. No, I can, I can feel it creeping in. Like, I'm ready to believe once again. Oh, what come Nico with me, Matthew. Do. Come on this train. Forget uh, about Vitality, forget about Zywu, forget about Apex. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I have whoa, love for this? many, many different players, yeah, right? Do you? I, I do, okay. I do. I have a big heart. Yeah, but speaking about, you know, Vitality, the, the all eyes are on them. The major winners, the current champions, even though it's now CS2 instead of CS, right? And uh, But as you say, it's only one game. So I think at the end of the day, we'll be able to talk a lot more. Well, I don't think it's only one game. I think it's symptomatic to issues oh. that have been deeper in the Vitality camp. And weirdly enough, I wouldn't stand here and tell you that they are the favorites to win this major. I don't think that's the case. They might Did be the reigning champions. Also, before 
the first yes, game they played? Yes, okay. I would have said that before day one, that mm -hmm. Vitality were not at the very top of that power list that you would make. Uh, there are deeper issues that I think were masked a little bit by the euphoria of the end of last year, which was completely out of control for them. But we saw it a little bit at the Blast Group. We saw it even more in Katowice. So why would I just play pretend now that this is a perfect team that's rolling in with confidence? That is just not the case. Yeah, there's been some concerns about how Mezzi is kind of acclimating into this it's team still. Just him. Yeah, yeah, it's not just him. And, uh, you know, I think too, like the, the, the fact that I think you're right, like some of the successes they had last year amidst all these roster changes are super impressive. And that might have kind of crazy. shielded them from a little bit of potential criticism because it's hard to do that when they're actually still winning events when Mezzi comes in, mm -hmm. when Flames comes in, they're still taking those trophies. Um, but they, I mean, the, new, the coach coming in as well, like a new coach, they're working with Apex, even though he, he loves working with Xtaz as well. There's going to be some questions, and especially if you take a loss like this early on in the tournament, those questions are going to keep being asked. That's what I love, actually, those questions that are bubbling up for all the teams, not just to, to kind of laugh at Mathieu, which I, I <laughs> no, never do. Laugh at him, jerk. That's, that's a win-win, right, Jason? That's, <laughs> yeah, we, that's how we... That's the I have at these events. <laughs> in general, though, uh, you know, it's really exciting. So let's get into our first match that we have here, uh, Mouse versus Eternal Fire, winning their opening bouts. And who would you like to start with? Because for who has it been more surprising that they won their first game? Remind me, who did Eternal Fire beat earlier today? <laughs> I think it was... Uh <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it leads us actually seamlessly into this match, Mathieu. <laughs> Took over me, right? So how did they beat them? <laughs> how did they beat Vitality? Yeah. Um, there is a, a very short list of three names that we can mention in different topics. One is the IGL skills of Major that came through as well. And if there is a chess match to be figuratively put to the test here, he beat Apex. I mean, in my book, he completely beat them uh, in the calls that he made, mostly on the T side of Inferno. Mm -hmm. Then you have Azentaris, that was a, a gala performance from him, multi kills galore, and Wykadia finding impact on the CT side. And that to me has always been sort of a coin flip for Eternal Fire. We know Wikadia, his ability to penetrate on the T side and have impact, he can do that, no doubt. But when you have to have him a bit more stable on the CT side, sometimes his struggle wasn't the case at all. He cleaned up on the A side on multiple occasions. So yeah, you have these three factors coming in. That was enough to beat Vitality. I think I would right, be, Jason, they, they beat Vitality, right? I think it was think Vitality, yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, I would say there's another fourth factor there, when, which was when, I, when that game started and I looked at it, I was like, they're really going to play Eternal Fire on Inferno? In a best yeah, but Vitality are supposed to be good on the map too. Like at some point, sure, the, map pool, the map pool shrinks. <laughs> Come on. You know? It's like, <laughs> what you going to do is like, well, listen, I'm the reigning champion. By, uh, Inferno is a good map for me, but I'm not going to play it. Like at some point, you have to make it. Oh, uh, yes, it's around. already tilted. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's, see, this see, is that's what, what he does to me. <laughs> that's <laughs> what he does to me. It's already popping off. I'm down. Um, Anyways, Back uh, to there, was fire. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of excitement. I just want to get to this because this was really cool. I, I'm sure you guys saw it on social media as well. The watch party uh, in Istanbul for Eternal Fire. Uh, I guess yeah. they have it for the entire day. Yeah, this is Hopefully. so mental. They have two of them from what, I, from what I've heard. One's yeah. in Istanbul, one's in Ankara as well. So, I mean, they've, they Eternal Fire set this up. Perfect. Look at this crowd. Look at this. It's this awesome. is great. It's beautiful. It's like the meme, you know, when they're in this bar and they're watching something and they well, yeah. erupts. That's exactly what it is. Like the DVD thing, you mean? Yeah, that's the one I have in mind, yeah. And listen, if, if French Counter-Strike took a little bit of time to wake up, you have to imagine Turkish CS has been on the lookout for success for a long yeah. time. And they knew what it was to be frustrated, to have interesting players left, right, but not really together, not getting along as well, having a revolving door of players. And now it's finally clicked and they have a reason to be excited. And the beautiful thing is some of the players on this Eternal Fire team were part of those teams in the past that were knocking on the door and that were getting us excited, and they never made it past that point of where they could be more than just like a best of one upset team. That's they right. never made it past the point where they were just going to ruin somebody's group stage and actually go for a deep run. And now you have that team, and I think what's really cool about this as well, they struggled in the opening stages. They had some they had some head-scratching losses, losses as well, Definitely. so that helps them put them in the mindset and the, in the mind frame of being like, we got to focus down. We got to be ready for these big dogs. Yeah, absolutely, because um, we even said in that run at the beginning of this tournament that they can run so incredibly hot and cold and that has been their their biggest peeve right in terms of breaking through that ceiling i agree with you and i also think this is why they are a relatively friendly team for the best of one because one of the weaknesses that you could point out is throughout the entire best of three they will have moments where it feels like the game is getting away from them and they don't have the same intensity to it uh, and i think it was zentaris who had a very interesting interviews on hltv and he sort of described word by word how the communication can break down in hard moments he says, people are not listening anymore. Everybody's looking at their crosshair. We're giving information, no one is reacting on it. We have gaps in the defense, no one does anything about it. That's what we sometimes try to quantify when we say, oh, they don't have momentum, they're going out of energy. Mm -hmm. These details, they definitely
definitely have a lower floor than a team like Mouse, for example. Okay. Even at the worst, I think Mouse have higher sure. protocols in terms of team play and synergy. But in best of one, I don't feel like it plays that much of a role. It's, it's actually kind of cool because I think when you look at Mouse, you'd probably be, I feel like you could you could say, uh, you know, these guys are kind of like gatekeepers for the top five, it feels. That's you know? fair. Like, yeah, That's yeah. fair. They're like right around that level. Like, like the semi final, they're like the bouncers. Yeah, exactly. So you, know, the, yeah, you can't get into the top five. No, it's, it's not a private yet. event. Yeah, not yet. Uh, and Eternal Fire at the same time, like Major, when you, get, you hear him give an interview and talk about the team, like I've heard him say, like we are kind of like a tier 1.5 team. We're like not okay, really ready enough, to be yeah. the tier one team. And that kind of falls into a similar category where you see these two teams coming in at a similar level and a similar like level of play at the moment. And as you said, the, the floor for Mouse is higher than the floor for, for Eternal Fire. So like outside of a disaster game, this this should be a very, very tight clash. Yes, but Mouse slightly edges out, of course, but the team that they played initially, um, I hope the ecstatic fans won't be angry, but less impressive than a vitality, right? If you come into it, because it was ecstatic. And uh, Mouse did have to mount a little bit of a comeback. They started off mm. pretty cold, but then they brought it back, and Brolin was at the center of uh, what happened in that game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We have the numbers right there, and, and I don't think they even uh, paint the full picture. The impact that he found late into the game and having crucial moments. What I do like about this scoreline, although it is probably closer than what you would like to see, is that Mouse started the game with an intention to be active, to be proactive to try to dare. They got slapped, they got punished a couple of times, but then they stuck true to whatever they thought was going to work. And they were strong enough mentally to not just do a 180 completely and become passive at all. No, 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 they realized, hey, this is why we're losing the rounds. We're in the right position, we're missing our shots, it's gonna be fine, everybody keep trusting in what we're doing. Not everyone is capable of doing that, and that's how they were able to sort of pull back on the CD side of Overpass. And bro, you gotta give credit over to Brolin for, for stepping into the shoes of Frozen in this fashion, because he's been really good in Miles ever since he kind of stepped in on, on loan as, as a stand-in situation, but like when, Fro when Frozen leaves this team, you're just like, oh, what, oh God, like th that's a huge piece of the puzzle that just departs the squad. To have someone come in and be able to, obviously you're not gonna play the same, you're not gonna match everything one for one, but for him to be at this level and having, you know, impact that, that allows them to not feel the sting of losing Frozen so heavily, that's super impressive, man. That's I know. All credit to Brolin. I know, but I cannot chase this image in my mind or like watching a B-movie, someone coming out of jail, like that's Brolin <laughs> yeah, walking out of NIP and be like, Oh, the fresh air. That's because the that first was the burger is like that was the announcement was getting him out of jail. That's exactly <laughs> how it feels like. So of course he's embracing life. You know everything just really, looks yeah. amazing, smells amazing. Everyone is nice. That's the moment he's in now. And then and then you see him walk into a team and it's got one of the most promising young in-game leaders in the scene at the moment. I want to you play know, with Shui. Yeah, wanna, everyone wants to play with Shui. Young that band young Pat, old Jimmy's like playing great. He's a fantastic player to have in the team. He's been just rock solid. He's you know he's he's been super impressive coming into this team. What he's been able to prove pride. Uh, exertion I think is maybe one guy you'd say has has another gear and another level that he hasn't hit recently. Big playmaker. But, I mean, yeah, the playmaking ability out of him is off the charts. Yeah, I spoke to him in, uh, in Katowice, and he was saying that he wasn't really that happy with his last year, even though I think when we think back to Exertion, we think about very high highs at times, right? Rounds where it was um, a 4K, a good clutch, a big impact, but overall was left wanting even to his own ability, he feels like. Yeah, well, listen, he puts himself in risky situations too, I was gonna right? Say, yeah. yeah, he's like the targeted impact player. Yeah, you can. there, there are ways to pad your stats a little bit if you want to be a bit selfish. You, you know, you let your teammate go, oh, sorry, just please go ahead, I'm going to trade <laughs> yeah. you. I really don't think Zerjan is that. I think he's getting ready to get stuck in in many situations. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but when it does, mega impact immediately. Okay, uh, I know we also wanted to speak about Brolan specifically in terms of the situation Stakes. that he finds himself in and the quote that he gave, right? Yeah, he gave a very powerful quote to HLTV talking about his future. You have to realize he's on loan right now, mm -hmm. and we love the word stake here at the desk. We say, oh, the drama, the consequence. Medium this rare. man might actually be playing for his contract. And I could remove the mic. He is playing for his contract. He's in a flux situation right now. He's trying to make a case that he fits in that team, that they would both benefit from continuing on their path. What a best way to do it at the Major. I mean, the results have been great so far. I, I think, I think, I'll think i be honest with you, I think he's he's already earned himself a contract. Maybe not with Mouse, but I think that's what the Major's about. But he wants to spot, be in Mouse. I know, I know, that's what I'm saying. It's a spot in Mouse. Even if, if for whatever reason, Mouse doesn't sign him, someone else is going to pick him up after what he's shown stepping into this team and how well he's, uh, how well oh. he's done. But Obviously, Maybe Vitality you want to be in Mouse. You want to be on that team that's knocking into the top five. Absolutely. Yeah, but you see it there. It was on the quote. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this was a breaking point here where I really wanted to shine some light on what, how Brolin plays it as well. A lot of game sense in here, a lot of movement. But this, we go back to this. This is uh, the space they're giving. Yeah, them. the space you're getting because people don't want to make the mistake. You don't yeah. want to do that overpeak. But then he disappears and then he plays it absolutely beautifully. He knows that he cannot just wait out. He goes for the 1v1. He makes the right deduction. Here's the sound. And from this moment on, you watch the, the 
clutches it, and you know he's got it. Yeah, he's in a supremely confident and comfortable position Ooh. at this point. And uh, yeah, even a little sketchy at the end of the fight, but that's a big win that's at 11, a very 11. important moment. Yeah, uh, that, that's, it yeah, could be destiny-defining. Absolutely. In in a world where now he, they are looking at a 1-0 in the best of one scenario, that clutch right here is the difference. It is the difference. And I think when you look at Maus, uh, you're looking far past this this elimination stage beginning. You want to be in the playoffs. You've managed it now two events already. You went 3-0 and zero at the RMR. So I think the expectations are exceptionally high. When it comes to this first or the second rather opponent that they're playing uh, in order to go 2-0, and zero, a moment like this is probably not going to happen, right? Eternal Fire, they are not the team that is going to give you that space. I feel like in the late rounds or am I incorrect? No, I mean, look, it depends on which Eternal Fire we get. The that's one that's true. having some communication issues that Matthew alluded to, that Zantaris has spoken about, or the Eternal Fire we got against Vitality, where they knew the the the, the stakes of that match, of how big of a, you know, quote-unquote, dis whatever disparity you want to give to Eternal Fire versus Vitality, that's going to get the team hyped up and focused and communicating well. And if they come in with this, that same exact mentality, like Maus is a tough team to mm -hmm. beat, which I imagine Majors have them prepared to do. I feel like Majors that's the case. Majors seems like the IGL who's going to pump that into their brains. This isn't, a, yeah, I think, I think this is an Eternal Fire that's not going to give you that same kind of respect. Yeah, I agree with you. I think if you are internal fire, you have the same hunger. Mouse yep. is almost, almost being the operative word, but in the same category as Vitality, right? They're one of the big teams, they're one of the playoffs team, and if you're EF, these are the, tar the targets you want to be able to take down. Uh, I do think that we're going to see the veto anytime soon. I think yep. there still is a little bit of an unhealthy dependency on Major. And I know it sounds a little bit weird because the talent individually is definitely scattered all across the board, but he has so much to do in terms of organizing and being a maestro of what's happening in internal fire. And when I feel like he loses track of what's happening, nobody else is ready to take over. You have a moments where your leader can just you know, sink. That happens. They're human beings like anybody else. But you need someone else to be able to do micromanagement, sort of be a lieutenant. And I feel like this Dude, is sometimes a bit missing. It's why we always put such an importance on people we consider and when we've heard are like the secondary callers or the mid-round callers for team. Those guys need to be able to take over in those situations because you are going to... You heard Major in the interview leading into this as well during the commercial with Banks saying, yeah, I, I spend an extra time watching three extra demos. I stay up late at night. I'm second guessing myself when those doubts creep in and they inevitably will in live match scenarios you need someone else to pick up the baton and i can tell you i can't name who the secondary caller of eternal fire is should be zantaris from the conversations yeah. Yeah. i think it is zantaris he's that second voice currently uh, in the ef camp how does it work in mouse next to shuhei well, I, I'm 100% certain that Exertion has a big voice. Yeah. I think just the way he plays Counter-Strike, just the way he feels the game and how, he, again, he calls his own number in a lot of situations, it would be criminal if he wasn't trying to build a team around him in these very moments. Based off the plays he's making. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it is the, one of the hardest tasks there is in Counter-Strike. You, you have to imagine, you have to simultaneously be focused in what you are doing, which is a high-intensity moment, and at the same time communicate so that the rest of the team is ready to either pounce on you or trade you or give you a u turn And this is why... Sometimes he can miss a little bit because it's super demanding. Yeah, you have to recognize and be able to like foresee the fight that's going to come, the kill that you're mm -hmm. potentially going to get, and what opportunity that's going to open up based on where your teammates are in the map. And yeah, that's a very distracting thing to do when you're trying to make an aggressive play, try to create space for everyone all at the same time. Yeah, that's a lot. But uh, in, in seeing their games or in the studios, you do always see that he's incredibly vocal. Well, he's looking at us in the graphic. <laughs> Does he not like the picture? Or he's looking at us on the side as well. He doesn't like, <laughs> doesn't like the picture, apparently. You have to. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll <laughs> okay. Come retake it. Oh, right. There we go. <laughs> he's, uh, he's given the thumbs down. We still don't know what he's actually mad about, so... Yeah, we have to see. If I had a microphone now, I would just chuck it on the... But we're yeah. going to have to guess. That's going to be a question for the... I haven't made much uh, mad in a while. So, uh, actually, Eternal Fire beat Mouse in the uh, online, of course, the <laughs> qualifier for the RMR. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, you hate that, <laughs> you want, don't you? Do you want to contextualize why you want to make me mad about it? Uh, no. Okay, because Mathieu rightfully so says, I don't really care about online once we get to land. Yeah, exactly. I, it, I take it with not even a pinch of salt. I just literally use the entire shaker of salt. I yeah. just drown it completely. I don't Screw really... off the top, leave yeah, it for the next exactly. time. Exactly. That's yeah. what I do when it comes to online results. I think we're blessed now in Counter-Strike to have way enough land to go around and to kind of feast on. So yeah. Especially with online, these two teams. Great. Yeah, yeah. There's some teams you kind of got to gotta lean into those online results a little bit more. These aren't one of them. It's the best of one. I Vertigo. actually, <laughs> I was like waiting for the first two maps to come in. <laughs> wait, wait, like, this is weird. Vertigo, okay. there we go. I mean, Eternal Fire at the end, removing overpass, that does make sense. I don't think you want to allow Mouse to go there. You're going to a little bit of a Vertigo play. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Well, again, we have the, the camera shots of Eternal Fire right there. You're talking about an ability to use your firepower in a, a logical way. Wycadia and Zentaris, 
these are two people who are going to come at you, pincer move on the A side when you're trying to attack, and they absolutely do not give a flying dog. Like they're about the fight, and eh, sometimes maybe a little bit too much, but that's <laughs> that's part of the deal. We've seen Zantaris have some pop off games on this map. We've seen a lot of them actually. I don't, you know, I don't think this map looks especially strong for Eternal Fire, but it is a map that historically I feel like lean, leans into some of their strengths. With Zantaris making plays at a ramp on the T side, he's going to be going B stairs once in a while, looking for some duels. And Major can obviously call around this map. Uh, you know, in terms of the map, I like this more for Eternal Fire. It doesn't mean they're going to win, but I think it's great, great for them to be heading to this map. Okay, to is it the best choice they could have made, basically? Uh, or what? What is the latest game you have in mind of Miles on Vertigo? Like, I, I have to be, I have to come clean. I'm kind of blanking. That's why I focused on Eternal yeah, Fire. Yeah, I, I understand yeah. what you did here. <laughs> I, I wanted to see. I was going to leave Miles for you. No, I'm kind of blanking on. Yeah. Okay, okay, what is the latest memory <gasps> I have? To Spirit. Of Miles? They beat Spirit on online. It. No, that was no. Yeah, that must have the been online. That was at the RMR. That would have been great, though. If it See, was this online. is why. Because my brain sort of decided that I cannot take this result seriously. There's no way they actually beat Spirit, and I compared my life. I just dissociated watching that game, like the penguin meme. That's exactly what happened. I knew well, that I from the top of my head. I totally of did course, not from the have top of my to iPad. Yeah. Open. Exactly. I mean, but, that's uh, a good resume to have. Yes, it is. It is. Uh, time's up. Let's get into it with Scrawny and Launders. Yeah, damn right, it's time. Time to dive into Mao's Eternal Fire. They're the doing such a one... good job of yapping. Yeah, they are, right? <laughs> Professional talking heads over there. Uh, and M Moses, for someone who's supposed to be a caster, what a dirty way to set up the other analyst. Yeah, true. Left him to talk about Mao's on Vertigo. And he has let's... no hair and no spine. Yeah, let's talk. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's talk about <laughs> Mao's on Vertigo, shall we? Uh, a recent win over Eternal Fire within this, and then, of course, that win over Spirit. Yeah, that's right. That Spirit. happened. Spirit falling to Mouse at the RMR on the road to this one. The stakes are high. The hearts are pounding. And the counter strike is well and truly underway here in Copenhagen. Top 16. Ooh. Very quiet. He's going to back up right into the shot. Ooh, okay. Yimpy stays alive. Keeps his head down. Torzi toying with the thought of a ramp peak. It's two sets of Berettas on the ramp, plus Brolin to hold back and make contact with his USP. Solo B set up. A ramp gets held onto. Does that flush them forward into Yimfat? He takes a shot to the face, not ideal. Off the teammate's flash, tries to go back in. But now next CT up is pinned behind green. Santeres can't quite connect it, but at least that opening should have afforded the bomb to cross over. But no plant just yet, and uh, Melzer keeping the pressure on. Sertion tries to get on the bottom of it. Brolin connecting. T's flushed forward because of that pressure from behind. Sertion didn't have to make mm. his play already, but he decided to. And we get the challenge over top of construction. We get the close T on green, Shuhei. Oh, man. The other side of Jens not being held so major is just holding this, hoping. But they might have forgotten anyone could be this close. They saw him peel back a little bit. Pete comes out, and he doesn't move. Man, Major is just locking this one in. It's going to be on Brolin, I think, to clear it. I don't think Shuhei is thinking about it. There oh, it is. Oh, the Calix. Calix. Oh, He's got oh, both. Oh. Four kills in the round from Calix. He is the guy who gets Jim Fat. He is the guy who gets the jump up from Zertion on the flank. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, Exertion came up quite. I mean, they decided to play with pressure that whole round, so they're willing to participate in this duel. I would say this is actually a pretty well played round from both teams because there are a lot of layers to what Mel's were doing, how they were executing it. Oh my God, and it honestly came down to hard shots. Wow, that was a crazy next kill, man. Now, there was a point in time where Calix was the player in Turkey to watch, but uh, now that we've got this team all together and Wakadia as the youngest piece has come in, it's really rounded up this lineup in a beautiful way. Nice gap spot from Calix. Ooh, and he hangs on with the AK, toppling three. Looking like the only casualty that Eternal Fire will have to deal with. That's so, an AK, actually. Eternal Fire off to a strong start. Yeah, so I mean, they... They probably both knew that Vertigo was going to be end up being the last map, and obviously uh, Eternal Fire, last time they played, this is the one map that they couldn't win. Torsi on full bullets, uh, four bullets, obviously he's going to be hunted down. Ooh, all four bullets land. That's not a bad second kill. So for a round where you don't have much to work with, couldn't ask for much more. Of course, when we talk about the last time they did meet, right, that was the closed qualifier B on the run to the major, but as... Moses kind of got the wires crossed. That was the one that was online. Mm -hmm. Not the spirit result, right? Spirit result more recent and on LAN. We legitimized that. Yeah, yeah. And they're head-to-head. -head. Yes, Mao's fall in the series. 
like you just mentioned, this map was in Mouse's back pocket. So one of the storylines in every major is, you know, how much do the challenger team power up versus the teams that just hop into Legends? And while this... Oh, okay, hold on. Great opening kill here from Torji. Quick to it. Yeah, wasn't timid for a moment. And he'll also catch Wakadia trying to get up into the same position. So guns make a world of difference for Mao's immediate five versus three. And a pretty consistent three-player setup on the ramp looking for these fights from the pistol until now. Early A, which our analysts alluded to, could end up being Xantara's playground for now is the defensive hold. Yeah, and keeping the smokes open is awesome. I mean, obviously, even throwing your own smoke and keeping those smokes open is a really effective strategy. Some damage done here from Brolin. You can tell they would love to hang around a little bit more if that means they can keep the information, but eventually Eternal Fire will win some space back at the minimum. But it's at this point of the round, they are totally fine to play much more passive positions However, no full push down B. Eternal Fire don't seem worried about it either. And Calyx, the star of the pistol, still up. There's a gap on that, right? Yeah, Santaris is going to punish. Able to just crawl along the side of the wall. No contest. His teammates die, though. Mm. Brolin with the double hey! kill hold. Insane on A. Yeah. Insane on A, indeed. Give them no fucking space, okay? Yeah, bro. fucking smack them. Well, let's go. We got some good energy out of Torji. And uh, Brolin's obviously just the fifth piece of the puzzle. There's something weird about it. It honestly, I don't even, it doesn't have anything to do with really the gameplay or like the type of player or the place that he's coming from. But Brolin just looks right in a Mel's jersey. Like, I feel like that's the feeling got like sort of as soon as he debuted with the team. Um, it doesn't make sense necessarily that he's replacing someone like Frozen, yet it's working. Yep. I think that's credit to Shuhei for integrating him very well. And, oh, okay. Try that twice, though. Pay the Piper. Santeres, instant headshot. Ready for it this time around. And uh, Torzi's hype from the last round <laughs> is very quickly cooled off. Yeah, they didn't know how excited he was, but that's like the perfect guy to kill in a situation like that. Although what he said to his teammates was give them no oh, space. Oh, flash is beautiful. And, well, Eternal Fire will come back at that ramp looking for vengeance. They find it with the two kills. And a comfortable looking 5v3 here for Eternal Fire. Shuhei still sits around, and he, on an individual level, has been playing some great CS, one of the driving forces in their victory over Team Spirit. But right now, what was considered that solid A play, that of which got Mao's hyped, has come to a quick end in round four. And they'll pause on the ramp, but this time from a place of power. They've got the player advantage, and uh, they know that Mao's are already letting the incessant thought of saving seep into their minds. Now, I know what you were just bringing up, speaking of, you know, Brolin's inclusion for Maus, and if we look at kind of the trajectory of his career, right, he's this young Swedish prodigy that gets to play with what was at the time the best Swedish players in order to all elevate and come together, right? Mm -hmm. What we have now for the first time in his career is playing alongside four other young upcoming players who, as, as far as in the server goes, don't have that legend or experience to point to, oh, right? Yes. These are players that were all on their journey together as young men, and with Shuhei and Mao's NXT, okay, took yeah. over from a young point. There was no prodigy within them. They are just, you know, they are bit by bit, piece by piece, using the WePlay Academy League system to gain LAN experience, and from the get-go, they were a group of professionals. Mm -hmm. That is what always, you know, made Mao stand apart for me. Our experience with... Mao's NXT and Shuhei's lineup there with exi uh, with uh, Exertion, with Torji, you know, and the the whole former lineup was that they were just so much more mature um, on average than all the other teams that were that young and playing in the academy league. Nice save, and they and they won so much as well. Yeah, that's that's a beautiful spray down. It's exit frags, but he keeps his gun and knocks down a lot of money here for his opponents. Even when speaking of ex Mouse players in JDC, right? I think if you go and watch Big's interviews with JDC nowadays, you just see how well spoken he is, how professional he comes across, and he just has that, you know, professional mantra about him as a as a as a player. And it's a testament to what that group has had forever. And now Brolin gets to kind of throw himself into a ragtag gang of younger men who have results we can point at for him to be you know, proud of. He hasn't posted them with them yet, but it does feels like the right 
fit. If you were to tell me Brolin was always an NXT player and that he came up with them on the same trajectory, I could believe it. Yeah, it's the same story, though, for like that quote we saw from Brolin before the game started, where it feels like this tournament is where that re- all the success at the start of this year really matters. Because, you know, qualifying to the major, even if you qualify directly to the elimination stage, is awesome. But it's your results here that are going to speak louder than anything else that you've done. Everything else is preparation, building confidence, showing results. And uh, they've laid that foundation. Now it's just about executing and achieving something that he never felt like he could in his previous lineups. Let's take that mentality and apply it to eternal fire as well, right? We've been watching over the last six months this team grow in their success, grow in their confidence, and with it, the expectations of the community. Oh, nice double nade. Their nades are so good. I and mean, we saw the flash e execution. I mean, it's not the flash that's difficult. The difficult part is corroborating that with your teammate who's running up the ramp and making sure it pops as you turn the corner. And that part is harder than it looks. Obviously, it's a matter of dry run and preparation, but when people are throwing counter utility at you, they're swinging on you, doing short pushes and things like that, that's when it becomes the hard to execute versus teams at this caliber. And we have seen from Eternal Fire that they're looking like a great team because this composition of players looks good, but they're obviously, their practice has been very sound as well because their executions and defaults have been very thorough. This round with zero ramp pressure as well, right? That had been the consistency from Maus so far on this TT side. You give them ramp, they're gonna go for the double nade stack. Oh my God, that's Santeris crazy. Santarius is so on point. He yeah. rounds that corner, gets himself the second. Feels like the door's open for the follow through, but with the smoke still up, they're gonna hold for a second. They give themselves a little pocket to play behind. Desperate shots out of Yimfat don't find his mark. Smoking off short could keep Kalix out of the equation. It's and now we're getting down to the sketchy 25 second mark. Oh, this is a crazy play. I mean, he could find a pickoff, but you know, he's risking it right now because they're low numbers. Yeah, so he gives it a shot. And uh, as cool as that smoke was, Zershin playing on that side of it would definitely risk getting flanked if he takes shots. So he'll have to peel back from this. And that's a good show of composure here from Eternal Fire. How many times do we see teams get really nervous when shots come through a smoke, they get tagged? Because we know how valuable that sound information is in CS2. And yet uh, they're really good about not firing back, not taking every single battle and just approaching. So this is an incredibly strong start, of course, for Eternal Fire. But Mao started the day 6-1 um, down to uh, Ecstatic. I yes, think sir. it was on Mirage. Yes, sir. And they overpass. came back overpass and they came back into it. In so fact, they bet. came back into both of those halves. Uh, of the 0-1, of the 1-0 matchups, this is maybe the most even on the higher end of things. Like, I would say two of these these two teams, Eternal Pyre proved so much through the first stage. Mouse proved so much by qualifying directly to elimination. And in, in the process of that, defeating Spirit. Mouse is the only team in 2024 who has defeated Spirit in a best of three. Yeah. You know, they've lost maps elsewhere, Barring, of course, the blast groups at the start of the year where Spirit had two stand-ins. Those, yeah. those don't count in my books. That's when we, like, when Malice beat Spirit, we're like, man, Donk is just getting too old. Yep. You know, that's when we thought. Yeah. Times are retired. Yeah, I mean, it really felt like he was counting the days at that point, but he found the Fountain of Youth once again. He's still back. He's still here, I guess, is the best way to put it. You know, I was quite surprised to see the amount of doubt that started to be thrown Eternal Fire's way after their struggle versus Heroic in the opening stage of the Major. Because Eternal Fire are a team that so many people were comfortable putting 3-0, having full faith in, progressing out. And yes, they had their hiccup against Heroic. One of those maps was still close. They exchanged maps in the following sense, but if we were going, say, and putting hype on Eternal Fire and Saw to break through and get into top 16, it almost feels like, personally, Saw's shortcomings rubbed off on the doubters of Eternal Fire. Their next chance to move into top 16, they seized. They didn't waste any more time. There was just that massive streak of rounds they weren't able to win. Did that explode on his head? It, it looked waterfall like it. smoked from his head. Things do be happening out here. That one M4 in the back of the site not finding anything to shoot at just yet because this weird smoke that pops in the middle of everything. Zershin will pull a single player off the site. I'm sorry, but I didn't even know that was a possible interaction. Maybe it hit, hit the floor right after. Maybe it hit his head and then on the box. Maybe he's, he's just got such a hard head it counted as a floor. You have the replay. 
float. What the hell's going on? Roland floating here. Wicadia gets locked into the pistol fight. But Santeros gives him the cover. So at the moment, we're talking about a 5-1 lead for Eternal Fire. We're talking about a consistent A-ramp take that started well for Maus, but has been stuffed ever since. Mm -hmm. Crazy. We got Eternal Fire on a full Turkish lineup, obviously. They, they've they been on a full Turkish lineup. This is just now them impressing on their full Turkish lineup. And then we have, you know, Big, who Zantaris used to play for. They're on a full German lineup right now as well. And I think if you guys saw it, there's a the video posted by the Eternal Fire account on, on Twitter where they're having a watch party in maybe Istanbul, I would assume. A thousand people there cheering on this team. And Moses said that I think there was actually two watch parties going on, another one in Ankara. So like, you know, wow. two big cities in Turkey yeah, that's... and enough to fill out a couple theaters by the looks of things. Turkish passion runs deep. The pockets of Mao is finally refilled. We get the M4s out and Brolin is going to contest the ramp again. Now, Santeras has been the bane of their existence. See, the, the approach are being so much more careful on the ramp this time around, but they are still scaling. Mm -hmm. Wikadia comes through oh. it, the lineup for Brolin, made easy this time around. That's Woxic to the wayside, Wikadia with him. Yeah. No it, W for Eternal Fire this round. This was a, this was a time where they needed the flash, but uh, didn't have it. Another 5v3 situation here for Maus. Best chance to claw back the CT half. Pressure on Yimfat again. The last time they tried to scale into B, they rocked him. He just dives behind green, but oh, then comes the back and tries to fight it. Caught out in the open. Molotov's over the top. Zertion looking to put up some kind of a defense. There's two players here for the T's that are low, mm. and Zertion's going to make sure he cleans up a couple. A trio of frags, a total stoppage, and finally, Mao's second round. I know he died right there, but I want to say that, that that's a play that makes me appreciate Jim Pat because... He obviously eats the flash, and that's the main reason he can't lock down the spray. But falling back to an angle in the open, that's still a good angle to defend against that choke point, gives Exertion more space to do this, right? If he had fallen back to generator, then Exertion would have been in way more trouble of actually just getting hard cleared that entire time. But instead, he gave his teammates space, decided to go try to go one for one if possible. And as a B player, it can be tempting to play retake, but how many times do we see teams play retake on almost any round on Vertigo and simply lose? Again, this time Brolin opening up. You best Xanteras. That is the key to the A site of Eternal Fire. Left behind. Maus have shown their resilience in the opening best of one, and they're going to have to bank on it. Well, this round is basically over, actually, because well, his pockets were jingling on the fallback. Plus, they don't see anybody after they take this risk, so... Amazing timing here versus the A-Ramp, and we've seen that Eternal Fire are usually not faking. They've committed slowly versus the ramp, and they also haven't been watching their flanks. What's this CT setup, though? Where, where, where? Oh, they're going to clear out B. Oh my god, they think it's They're B. stacking the wrong site. That molly comes down in front of it. The rumbling's on A. CT's now scrambling Ooh, they over. Lost, they might have lost the timing right there. Although, because Eternal Fire take a little time, at least Maus do arrive I before just, the hit comes out. You would think they're going to start watching their flanks now. We'll see. Opera saw the barrel cross. Nade's gonna go for the jump up. That's easy damage versus Brolin. Then the Oppers exchange glances and nades, which does find a home for Major and Wikadia's health bars down to the half point. Molotov's going each way. Six. Exertion's gonna start to get activated. 25 seconds. Time is of the essence here. Exertion starts to get that flank going. Great flashbang, but you didn't see him? Major just tries to plant as the player's posted back sight, and then Exertion's flank comes out. Kallax on the recovery. One kill and 10 Ooh. seconds all he ends up getting. Uh, I can't believe that Major doesn't see him. I would actually like to go back and look at the utility. They don't have wall smokes on the site when they're trying to plant. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. Well, Major, the flash, Oh, Major didn't see him boosted up after the flash came in. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Diving a plant not on default with no wall smokes is... Unless Major was also flashed. Crazy. And because he's planting, then there's no animation. Could have been that as well. But, see what I mean? That's, that's bananas. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's open to CT as well. I don't think they had a smoke down that had bloomed yet. So, I mean, I don't think males care, though. They'll take it. Take what you can get. Yeah. 
on the recovery here versus now pistols in round number nine. Yeah, we see that round's worth two, maybe. And they only rotated in seconds before the pressure started to come out. Brolin will catch Wakadia towards ramp through smokes. Brolin is making a name for himself. Easy versus lesser weapons. You can see the formula is always about a good default, disrespecting space, but then committing very heavily. Not too many lurks here for Eternal Fire. Oh, oh my god. We used to call him Turkish Nico, man. He's got that deagle. His aim is so ridiculous. You gotta be careful at all times. You got a player locked into Tetris. Molotov to make sure the boost can't come back up. 50 seconds to try and milk this round. Now we've got no impact grenades left over, just smokes. Eternal Fire looking for that flank, doesn't come in. All Mel's wanted was the information. They haven't even played the game of trying to flank. There have been gaps where they could do it, so something to consider. Rolling, making sure nobody's allowed anywhere close to the top of the ramp. Zertion's angle could certainly catch somebody off. Xanteros will be looking for the head back site instead. Oh, actually, he's dropped by the in-game leader of Mao's cleanup mm. on the B-steps from Zertion, and Mao's will convert off the back of the previous round. This one goes down easy. Yeah, they're definitely winning as a team. Good, uh, good setups to get the kills. They're getting a uh, high yield. It's high, high yield. These setups on the A ramp, opening kills have been definitely going the way of the CTs. Enough times to justify more. And that's been actually the real trouble for teams to figure out how to get a ramp control because CS2 smokes are so fickle on vertigo with how you can blow them up that can bite back at you. But we're actually seeing that this is working out more for the CT side um, with the HEs. And they're approaching in the same way as CSGO. You know, high-low setup on the ramp, one player ready on short side, ready to peek, and then just timing when they blow up the nade instead of Eternal Fire using it to find a pickoff on the crane peak with an op. That is definitely what unlocks Vertigo right now for the CTs. Because you can't you can't really just play retake on either side. I think that is the that's the tough part. You've got to fight fire with fire on this map on CT side. Ooh, Major decides not to follow through. This is a round that features less pressure for Mouse on A ramp because they went for that early double B setup, right? We see the AWP posted down the steps. These and Eternal ooh. Fire is starting to move faster than they have in rounds prior. Yeah, and a full blown exec here could really find them in a post plant with still a lot of tools to close out, a lot of bodies to still be standing. That yeah, looks like a pretty apt call. Torzi moves over in time. What a dangerous game if they're going to start pressing out against this. Eternal Fire looking for the execute. Yeah, they would have heard Torzi moving up. They've got the wall scope. smokes, and they're juggling right now between the players. Major taking his. So they have gotten to the top of ramp, and they've stalled out here. Uh oh Missed off shot. A warning sign of what's to come. But a constant activation on the flank as well, perhaps, could end up being pretty important. Woxic met by smoke and still without a kill. A little hesitation as the CTs stall in sight. Brolin decides to go into the smoke, and we'll see what Torshi can do here. He's pressured. Brolin comes out. There's a it's player right behind. Wikadio can recover this. They've lost track of him, but he is all that remains for Eternal Fire. So many players on the site. Ooh. So many, in fact, that Mouse yeah, will hang on. Yeah, there was a gap, but it was a matter of timing for Mouse to get back into position. They were playing jump up in that 5v5 with a rifle, and uh, Eternal Fire almost couldn't believe that they didn't take any ramp fights. And when they didn't see any opponents, I think they got a little scared. Because if they had gotten down to a 3v3 or something like that, they were low utility for the rest of the hit. Then I think they would have felt more confident about coming in. But they really expected Maus, who have shown that they're going for aggressive CT ramp control, to be there at some point and haven't found them. I think the game plan out the, for, for Major in not finding someone, they could have transposed into the site hit. So there was a timing and a good call in that. But it was also bad that when they didn't see that, they didn't have a second layer to the game plan. What's the reaction now that we've gotten more space than we thought we'd get? Need some more conviction in the calls. Make hay when the sun shines. 
earlier today. Of course, we had the Eternal Fire versus Vitality game where the experts were praising the calls of Major versus Apex. Now it's Shuhei at bat. Easy pickups for the rifles inside of the B sites. No entry allowed. And that has been the case for the majority of these B attempts. Early on, they got through with the pistol. But from that point forward, give that Zertion locking this one down. And Woxic's first kill has been nabbed. An AK comes with it. His own AK comes back to him. What more can he do with this one? We've got layers in the site. In fact, decides enough's enough. Over the top, he'll go. You are indeed looking at the very last CSGO MVP after the ESL Pro League and Malta was locked down and won by Maus. A group of players who dreamed of one day winning a CSGO event and in their final chance to do it, mm -hmm. did. There was so much poetry at the end of CSGO, that Nico getting Cologne, Maus winning that Pro League finally, Vitality winning a Paris, Iwo getting his chip, and... Yeah, lots of uh, storylines got locked up. Heroic winning a tier one land. There was... It's almost uncanny. Fast one. Early damage is great. Ooh. That is Shuei fed to the wolves. And this is this is the game that Eternal Fire won, right? Mal starving them a bit has worked out quite well. Kalyx having an excellent performance too. Tie game on the cards. Pretty low utility as well for Mouse to just try and close out with. Op shot Ooh. hits, but it's a little late with Kadia tracking him on the tarp. No shame down to that. <laughs> they were ready for his swing. Into the 3v5 we'll go. I, I would say like Mouse really haven't had the reads this half, but when they finally get the information, they've been really good at the setups. Now it's the first time you see kind of a hard gamble here. It's blind and it's 5v3. It's the perfect time to try to do it. But uh Let's see if it's red or black. Yeah, it's also not too characteristic of Eternal Fire throughout this T-side to be going for fakes, but here in the final round of the half, they will do exactly that. Santeras with the Wall of Smokes. <laughs> the amount of times that boost has worked. They'll see nothing else. Uh, too many guns shooting back. And Calyx can be given a nice long lurk. Bomb will be planted on the B site, confirming Mouse's worst fears, but interesting. Yeah, yeah, he's going to stick around a little bit, right? He didn't think that Zantaras is on his own, maybe because of the two smokes. And sure enough, wow. now they have equalized this with enough time to go for a bit of a desperate retake. There's two kits in the mix. Molotov, smoke, everything really that Mouse need, barring a bit of a lack of time. But with Gadia's position, it seems like they sense him, and they're going to come through now in the man advantage, falling forward, Woxic locked in against the wall. Brolin has done so much, and all he has to do oh. is try to close the clutch, but Madger's going to tap him. Yeah, nice one. Beautiful from Eternal Fire, making the most of the 5v3 to tie this game right back up. Oh, we, we've been blessed with a lot of great games, and uh, this is a, another good start. Both teams showed brilliant plays here in the first half. Lots of good individual efforts, and uh, no telling who's going to be able to win this game. Vertigo is a known quantity between both of them. I can only assume, you know, Jim Pat watching the flank that intently in that situation is because they were well prepared for Vertigo. And of course, Cyclone also the coach to get the call up from Mouse NXT, and um, uh, and now they've got Zipix, who is the assistant coach. Who, of course, you would think Zipix, you know, who could? Why would he be an assistant to anybody? But he hasn't done any coaching, so I think it's a really good setup in terms of keeping Cyclone in his position and getting some new perspective, of course, on how to become a championship winning team. Few know better than Zipix. Yeah. And, you know, anytime Shuhei has a chance to praise Cyclone as his right hand man and coach, mm -hmm. he'll do it. He's also stood in a few times and fragged out. Mm -hmm. Ex player, for those that don't know. Definitely has what it takes. Here we go into the second pistol. Eternal Fire picking up their T side pistol win. Ocadia solo. And don't forget, Mao's recovering from what was a 1-5 deficit. Even despite Eternal Fire putting the cherry on top of the T-half with that last round win. Wicadia on Tetris with Berettas and no support, Ooh. nor ahead. Sertion right into him. 
and they'll find that all of this is for free. That deep Molotov on construction followed by a smoke. Excellent utility usage for the few tools that they had for this job, and it'll be a matter of hanging on. We've got a flashbang for Kallax to try to get the retake going. We've got no kit, though, in the mix for Eternal Fire. So this flank is going to have to hit hard and hit fast. Walks it, kicks it off. Zershin tries to push through, giving the Berettas back over to the defense. Flash to get the green push going. Yimfat losing teammates, and it falls on Shuhei. 1v3, can't get out of dodge. Takes the jump. Stuck into the bomb site. Defuse coming out from Kallax. Has to be the 10-second stick, and oh, Shuhei oh. delivers two. A three-piece 1v3 like it's nothing. Wow, it's a cherry on top to have that second kill come out at the exact same second. Nicely done from Shuhei. Definitely finessed him, trying to pretend to jump over the half wall and put together an all-important clutch in the situation in a tied score line. This could definitely tip the scales. And you would have felt bad for Mouse for losing that round after getting a clean entry plus a dualies upgrade into an open site and a plant versus a team who had no kit on the retake. Well, I would have felt bad, but I also would have been maybe looking at Zershin for pushing out through that smoke with the Berettas. I don't think they, I don't know if they had a flash to get that aggressive with. And it's not like Major's flank had instantly worked out. Not yeah, sure. I agree. On low utility, they could have doubled up on uh, stairs, for example, and held yeah. down the most important retake spot. Um, but you never know what the call was. Someone was flashing for him. Yep. Not going to push blame without a top-down view of what the hell was just going on. Sometimes it is fun, though, to just fire indiscriminately. Of course. Shoot first, ask questions later. <laughs> Three MP9s featured in the buyback from Eternal Fire. Little stack of grenades, a cache of utility. And Zershin, as he will be, on the entry. Sprays down Madger and gets into the cover. But uh, they have just whacked the beehive. And they are soon to find more CTs where the first one came from. Clearing them out with ease. Mm. Shuhei, it's a double kill off his Galil. Joining up nicely, Mao's will start to establish a lead early on. And you can see Exertion is feeling himself right now, 14 and 5. And uh, he's someone who I squeezed in my top 20 list last year um, in like 19th or 20th or something. And there wasn't really a stats argument for him because he has so many deaths. But uh, for me, you know, you take the good with the bad with Exertion because when he's having his on games, when they played against Spirit, if you remember the Mirage match, he's the one who killed Donk and Connector every round. You can't really do that unless you've got the kind of confidence that Exertion has. Um, and especially for someone who has no pedigree, right? No reason to even believe in himself to the same level as some of the players that they're going up against. Without him, this team loses a lot of their identity uh, because they could only supplant, you know, the aggressive fragging to like Shuhei or Brolin, for example. And uh, despite all the deaths that Exertion had, if he played slower, he'd probably have better stats. But I don't know if he'd have better impact. And he has had moments where his individual level has dropped off. Didn't mean that he lost his identity at all. We're gonna get the Berettas posted. Ah, but held by none other than Exertion. Little backside presence dealt with. MP9 will sweep one under the rug. And we'll see if Eternal, ooh, if Fire can do anything at all. Little Glock burst in the middle of it. 9-6 posted out of Mouse, and this T side starting to hit the flow state. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're talking, they're having fun. They're coming off a win and looking to start the elimination stage 2-0 on the first day. Eternal Fire look for revenge here on Vertigo. Probably knowing that it was coming up in this veto again in a timeout now to try to claw back a T-side. But that Shuhei pistol clutch. That was big. Yeah, that makes a massive difference. I mean, even the near retake in the 3v5, the round prior, could have been a Mao's round, if not for the other in-game leader on screen now, who clutched back his 1vx. But an MR12, best of one, those close rounds mean all that much more. No doubt that Shuhei, 1v3, leaves their ears ringing. Eternal Fire, give it a chance. 
to get back on the board with the weapons. Horsey's going to go hunting. And oh. shot. Wicadia playing a dangerous game oh, there. Massively, yeah. But he also eats his teammate's flash, so now no held angle. Zantara is not looking too afraid of this pressure. There's a call out. Double nade to the top of ramp. Pat in the depths. Major almost taking a peek over top of the wood wall. Could have very well cost him his head. Jim Fat the crocodile down beneath. I think a lot of the belief in yourself for Eternal Fire comes in this round. The thought of having to save again versus 10 rounds can be devastating. I think it's a great play actually for Mouse to play it slow because even if they shave him down, they could be at an advantage. Next round, win or loss. Draw through utility, make it expensive. Give you some style points, but only only if you had done it the first time, Torzi. A few seconds extra, still scouring sights, sees nothing. Good peek from oh Zantaris. Oh my god, he just took just a look. Unannounced, <laughs> wide swing out of his position. He's like, it's a bit too quiet for me. Torsi's trying to creep on the approach. Zertion has to end up going through smoke, but he changed places with Wicadia, so it ends up costing him teammates on top of the Xantara's headshot. There's Wicadia's challenge and finish. Nicely done here from Xantara's and Wicadia. Just yeah. timings, right? Those internal timings from Eternal Fire that clicked as well as their headshots. There are times for momentum calls, and um, I actually think Mouse called the correct round here. Again, just trying to make it as, as expensive as possible, but even in the situation where Mouse are looking for, where they shave down three players and make the money tough, even if Eternal Fire win, they don't get that, but they don't even get the kills, and it's actually not that expensive at all for Eternal Fire, so this is the best possible win that they could be looking for. But they know there's still some money to chew through, and still a lead here for Mouse. Been looking for Xantaras with these nades. Waiting for Woxic to have his big moment. Oh, <laughs> Brolin wins that duel. And then Torzi uh -oh. gets the better of his counterpart. 5v3 for Mouse. You know, they've gotten close to sight, but it was without kills previously. Kalix getting Jimmy back is big. What's the move here? You know, this is a situation where you definitely keep 1B very often, or you go and search back information. If Mouse moves fast enough, they can definitely take the A site. There is utility left on the CTs as they go back to check flanks. This buys them time. So, we'll see if it's early or late, but it's still past a minute, and there's still staging here to be done on the A side as they molly out all the positions. Yep. CT shelf peak, a possibility. Madger looking to create questions for Maus. Nate goes a little too far to take more than 30 off Shuhei. I don't even know if he's... And that opens up the door for Maus to go deep CT, right? Off Madger's smoke, Zertion decides to take the position that he himself has offered over, and we'll see if this comes back to haunt Eternal Fire, as suddenly their flank has also been cleared out. Zertion wins the fight towards Shelf, and this retake never had any legs to stand on. Yeah, it The only didn't. thing that kept them close was Kallax's kill on B. They're sitting outside, like you said, their own smoke, right? And so they're in a 3v4, looking to get back into a site, low on time, low on numbers and instead lose players in the exit after a round where they showed that they were keeping their economy in mind, winning all their trades. In this situation, they at least saved one gun, but it probably should have been three. This is a great opportunity now for Mouse to take full advantage. They know the opportunity they've created for themselves. And this kill right here, that's, that's huge. Money on the line, eternal fire. Giving Torzi a bit of pressure to deal with, but nobody walking into this scope. There's the challenge. There's the next volley. Wakadia forced out. Smoke goes in. And he's locked into this position. T's flooding out towards him. <gasps> Torzi playing with a gr what? A pistol? Changing guns? Well, he had the molly up, right? So. Oh, Nate, okay. 
there's a molly right in front of him. So it, they were trying to scale from the ramp, but Zantaris had him covered too. Damn, talk about a pressured situation for Wicadia. Flushed out, burning, burning. Still able to get in behind the pillar. And a wonderful 2K to try and put Eternal Fire right back into a place where they can compete. The response from Mouse is the B-Split. Bum Molotov, CT challenge. Oh, oh no, 3v5 oh. coming back thanks to the double up in middle. Wikadia put this one set up so wonderfully. Woxic is going to have to pick up slack. He's got Jim Fat in front of him, but he's found good timing underneath the stairs. Jimmy, oh, he ends up seeing him. And this, this is a recovery from Maus that it felt near impossible. Yeah, it's a massive shout out to Brolin and Shuhui. It came up into heaven. They covered everything. No trades back for Eternal Fire. Even if one trade fails, another one goes down. It's still a great situation for them. So that shows you what kind of fight that Mouse have right now. Is that Mouse just staying fluid, being slightly ahead of the Eternal Fire rotations? I'm not even sure how they get over construction with that half smoke. Like, where was the mid play? Where was the pressure at all there? What do you mean? Just, it felt like there was never any pressure from, from Eternal Fire in mid whatsoever. Well, they had the, the boost to watch Heaven, right? And then they also had a player behind Generator. And then they have a rotator who comes through. So they smoked the rotator out. Okay. And they came up into Heaven. So you see this back Jenny guy. Then they're covering this as well with their smoke, so... They smoked both players and watched their smokes. Oh, it's going to be a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, they can't get lazy. If they if they go for rounds like 3v4 retake, they lose two players, and then they get a situation like this. They have a massive man advantage. They finally get their money back. They aren't going to be able to buy all the way through. Walksick now has an auto shotgun. Safe to say, not ideal. No utility to go with it. Calyx, only the Molotov, presumably for the bottom of B. Maus have positioned themselves. Into the four round lead, two to close it. Torzi, not given that chance. That Woxic mid hole is literally an auto shotty boosted on boxes, just hoping somebody steps forward. Kalix, he did use the Molotov at the very start of the round, so now he's just banking on an MP9 and the few nades that his teammates still have to work with. Even back into apply pressure. Nice and early here for Maus. Knowing that if they can win this one, it feels like the CTs are busted. What? Oh, Xanteris okay. has always been there. That was uh, an amazing trade back, to be honest. But uh, as we've seen already, they need much more than that. Yeah, no doubt. Smoke grenade from B site. In fat. <laughs> Third time's the charm. <laughs> Fourth time's the charm. Yeah. Climbing over with the smoke up. They don't know I'm here. Second CT <laughs> coming over by green. <laughs> And we're going to get this pack of mouse players. I'm, I'm slipping Jimmy. Look at it slide through. <laughs> he got through. Sure enough. <laughs> I mean, you could hear the scrambling, <laughs> scrambling offense. Yeah. It's all good in the end. Jim Pat. He said, light as a cat, baby. Yeah, shoots better than he jumps. I'll tell you that. Nice boost, bro. <laughs> <It's> not... <laughs> yeah. Nice one, jump hat. You know, there's some weird inconsistencies with jumping right now, so like I don't know how much I want to grill him. He was just trying to pull the rotators early. Oh, that's what yeah. it was, yeah. Uh, that's the only way you get this sequence. That's true. Like Naf said, you know, nobody makes mistakes. It's always on purpose. Damn. I think Internal Fire will have some, some regrets about this ET side, but they also lost to the better team, potentially. Like, they can pull back this game, but right now, Mauser you know, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them in some situations, but more X-Factor. I think they're playing more responsibly. And uh, they have a good read on Eternal Fire here in the second half. 
Yeah, all their setups have been flushing out the right players. Nate's landing in the good spots. There's been a couple near misses with Mao's and Shuhei's calls, but even when it felt like there was going to be an issue, they act fast enough to recover moments. So, Major off the next flash. <laughs> Wonderful. Kalix setting that one up beautifully with the flashbangs. Eternal Fire not done yet. Jim Pat, neither is he. A second three versus five would be backbreaking. So he is. jumping Jimmy. They're gonna make sure to put him <laughs> down. Well, Katie, a hot don't, on the heels. Don't knife him. You know what I mean? Don't knife him. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I need to think about it for a sec. That actually would have turned into an op duel. I mean knife duel, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. I need to think about that. And at that point, you have to commit. You have to. You have to. You have to be honorable. You have to. Torsi looking like he just saw a ghost. Turns around and there's a knife in front of him. Very solid utility and team play off of the... Calyx slash Major Behold. Yeah. You know, because Mao's very fond of getting out to the bottom of stairs early. Staring at the skies. And not to mention, when they first got there, they saw those two CTs falling back from the stairs itself, right? Mm -hmm. They almost got clipped, I would say. So expecting this re-aggression, very tricky from Major and impressive calls. Staying active in a high-pressure situation as your opponents have five map points all right now down to just four yeah it's four but uh they've got walks gone and up but they don't exactly have him on form right now much more impact coming the way of torji in this matchup and of course Sertian, 20 and 10 as wakadia looks to get off to the races again wow. he does it a double kill from the same spot not his first that's the timing they've been looking for all half, actually, to pull that play off. And Wakadia has fought for it, coming again behind the Molotov in that previous round. They definitely have a read on the way Maus want to approach the ramp control, and it's uh, it's it's doing pretty well for them. I mean, he's died a couple of times. The other times, Xanteris has got the kills. This ace stack looking good as well for Eternal Fire. Fourth player leaning back towards elevator. Good op shot, good nade as well. This is Eternal Fire with what feels like a layup of a round left over. Mm. Zantara is forced to the fight, happy to contribute. A little bit of recovery now. Yimfat on his own has gotten two kills and a bit more damage, confirming two CTs to the left side. Torji not on the trusty off. Elevator peak about to come in, and that is where this one gets cut down. This is Eternal Fire with an excellent back-to-back -back response. Yeah. And this will be a real test of the fight of Eternal Fire to see if they can put one foot in front of the other because I think this is game, a game where clearly, like, I think the round, ac the round score accurately describes who's made less mistakes. I mean, even if we go to the Shuhei 1v2, it's a 10-second stick, but once they know where Shuhei is, couldn't they still have swung him together to get the kill? Um, in some of the defaults where they've got outgunned a little bit, I don't think this game comes completely down to aim. I think Eternal Fire have kept up in that regard. Maybe there is the... Uh, Waxic, Torje, uh, uh, sorry, Torji difference, mm -hmm. but Torji's been set up very well where Waxic hasn't even been. So there it is. Bit of a rare appearance, but uh, never too late while well, the game is still live. So I think it comes down to mentality. And Eternal Fire's mentality has been strong in Copenhagen. They've been fighting tooth and nail. And they've been through it. You know, there was a, the, the game... There was a series, I think one map on Vertigo, where they really showed that they were not themselves and the pressure was getting to them. Mm -hmm. But they bounced back from it. Waxik, missed shot. Yimfats opened the door towards B. To lose this one would be rough. So, luckily, they start to stop the bleeding. Shuhei, oh, whoa. Him and Zantares. Oh, he, oh, he made noise, though. Yeah, but then he made noise the other way again. And then turned back. No way Zantaris falls for that. Shuhei just ran back a second time. Yeah. Zantaris. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, that was a sweet play. Down to it a was second. A, it was a sweet play. It was yep. a sweet play. Yep. Desperate times call for desperate measures. That's quick thinking. Shuhei, if he didn't see me, I can bait him. Trying to flex that brain of his. Eternal fire at the moment, flexing the muscle, because they are indeed clawing this game back. This is three rounds in a row. Two more to push us into OT.
and some late game runway for Woxix Op to try and take off. We saw him drop two bodies last round as that pressure was coming at him in the pistols on B. The rebuy for Maus and a force for whatever they can afford in the follow-up. That's what they have to try and close this game in regulation. And a site has been slightly problematic with those Wicadia short pushes. He's trade places with Zertion once and just got two straight up 2Ks on his aggressive peaks. That is three rounds that I feel Eternal Fire have won off the back of Wicadia's impact. Can they solve him? Especially if they want to keep coming A. Because you technically don't have to take this fight if you don't want to. But Eternal Fire are growing with strength on both sides a little bit more. And it is very important to keep presence here. If they hit B now, after they go ahead and try to clear out this ramp, and there's a little uh, they've uncertainty. Done a good job. They've done a good job, I think. With the, with the smokes down that flash, yep. it's uh, delaying the reclear on the ramp. So Unless here's Major the lead off. Comes down to the entries now. Major goes back to A, and Kallax eats a flashbang. Now they realize this commitment's coming into the B hit, and Kallax pressed against green, sees nobody in sight just yet. Finally, Mao's players flood out. 30 seconds to make this work, and Woxic delivers, but Torsi clears green, tucking into the corner. As the bomb is looking to go down, the mid play oh. denied. Zertion's gonna get nothing. Great recovery from Ooh. Wikadia. Excellent impact out from Eternal Fire. But bomb down nonetheless, and on top of it, damage is done. The retake to keep this four round streak rolling. A clump of Eternal Fire players in oh, from CT. What? And Zantares on the off. Then the spray from Shuhei, not enough. Wow. And so four straight from the Turkish team. <laughs> was that a lineup from Zantaris or a flick? The left side of Quad, I thought that was a perfect way to play that 2v4, where he might get one or two kills and cause an absolute tragedy. But instead, it's a mouse who can't sustain in the post plant because the pickoffs keep coming in. So I would say a rare situation where being forced to play retake can still go your way if you play it calmly enough. You know, I think the back generator player not doing anything until Walksy takes the first shot is important. And uh, he actually ends up dying in this situation but it, it comes with information as they try to push forward and take over ma more map control. So this comes down to round 24, folks. After a tied first half, Eternal Fire trying to claw back, getting smarter, getting stronger throughout these rounds and setups. But Maus have the advantage of being able to collect some data. They know what doesn't work at this point. They've been doing good on the op front as well. Moxic in the same place at the same time. The flash first, though, before the Shuhei Shuhei timing shot. Aye. Shuhei takes it right to the chest. The chase is out. Sir Shin gets the second. Now, there is this rotate back around CT, but are they going over the beat construction again? Jim Pat wins oh. his duel. That should open the door for the bomb to drop Zantara's in the pocket. But that mid lurk from Sir Shin. He's not known. He's just going to be able to come in from behind. You'd think shooting that one bullet. Torsi looking at his teammate's screen. Has to stay focused as Wikadia comes around. Caught out, but still able to win that fight. Zertion then getting the CT spawn into the back pocket of Maus. Four rounds in a row, and now Wikadia gonna have to get the fifth. Working with 19 HP, two Ts posted. Maus will survive the test and move forward 2-0. 2-0, baby. Another 13-11 victory, and uh, Maus did great with, I think, being as good of a team as they needed to be, as well as having slightly better individuals overall. I think that game comes down to razor thin margins because Eternal Fire did show a lot of strengths on those fronts too, but they did get outclassed in the more important moments. And uh, that's when, again, we amplify and shine a light on, you know, the 1v3 on the pistol from Shuhei as well. Yeah, a huge clutch that just in the end, in hindsight, makes a world of difference. Absolutely does, and we talked about exertion uh, before, and also in the cast that was mentioned about how you can't always see it necessarily in the stats because he tends to die a lot because he takes risks, but then he can also play rounds like this that avoids them having to go to OT and closing out their game and giving them the 2-0 today. Uh, definitely impactful on this last round, and it encapsulates all of the qualities that we were talking about when it comes to exertion, right? It's being daring. There is a Molotov, he knows Wuxik is in front of the middle, he bunny jumps anyway, he closes that gap, and bunny after jump. the second kill, he goes through the smoke to the right side. This is the vision that we're talking about. Players who are willing to take the extra risk. And here, obviously, he's a beautiful closer. 13 to 11, a game that has delivered massively. 
Actually, I thought he did good, pretty good on both sides of the map. I, th this game was super interesting. The first, the first like six, seven rounds of this game, it felt like it was all decided on the A ramp. Everything was set on the A ramp. You either had the entries from Zantares and Wakati on A ramp, right. and the round was done, and Maus couldn't defend, or Maus got those kills and shut them down, and then there was no way for Eternal Fire to get back in. I actually think the key to the first half, that and actually the key to the game that allowed Maus to recover convincingly, was they started playing more passive at that bomb site. They stopped giving them those fights like from like round eight on. They were like, we're just not going to fight you on A ramp. You can have it, and that's where. They activated Exertion. He got a couple of those mid pushes going yep. down the ladder, pushing down the stairs, getting tons of information, getting fast flanks. And that more passive defense, like that that switch up into that philosophy was great for Mouse. And I think we can rightfully maybe fault Eternal Fire just a little bit for that because they had a, a pretty good start to the uh -huh. game. And you're, you're usually not in a position where flanks are going to affect you when you're in the lead. And that's why I get a little bit confused. Mm -hmm. They play slightly too much together, the wolf pack mentality that we like to talk about with them. I think Exertion exploited it as much as possible. The amount of information he was able to gather on the CT side and let his teammates be very comfortable where they need to be. That's because the, the flanks and the lurks of the T side of Eternal Fire aren't doing their job. You're supposed to know what, where the fog of war is, when you can punish, haven't done that. Actually, an apt quote from Zantares uh, to HLTV just yesterday, he said, we have mental issues in the team sometimes, everyone focuses on their crosshair a lot and we don't get all the info. That's what was in play today. It's yeah. crazy. It's like it's what we talked about in the pre-show, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it all comes together. It all oh, circles back. It all back. circles yeah. back. Here we go. That does mean, though, that for Maus, we have, uh, you know, a great streak of games when well, we've seen them right from the RMR to now, two and zero on the day. I think what's really cool about bo both Mouse's games today is especially I mean, the first one, they started out in a little bit of a deficit, right down zero to five. This one, they weren't like losing it so heavily, but they were kind of getting punched in the face by some of those entries. A little bit. And they found they found things to switch into, right? I, I mentioned in the green, I'm not sure Cyclone gets enough uh, enough credit as a coach, and I, I, there's no way for us to know who kind of called for a change in philosophy, but obviously this team has come into this very well geared at a couple different philosophies, a couple different setups that they were able to execute in the series and switch into when things weren't working exactly the way they wanted it. And that's super impressive to me for, for a Mal's team coming into this. That shows they're, they're just well prepared. Yeah, they are. And, and I like that they keep on going with what I call the gambles, but a really well uh, intuition, if you will. Like the, the decisions they made on the CT side, coming back into it, was one of a team that is very much connected and activated just mentally in the game and not lost at all. And we, we sort of celebrated Major and what he can do as yep. an IGL. Well, here I think Shuhi deserves a little bit too because he, he placed his pawns the right way. Oh, absolutely. He also had a couple of uh, clutches or yeah, situations that there. were hard to win for him. Yeah, well, that, that I mean, that was kind of the story of the second half is Eternal Fire ha was in great positions multiple times in that second half to not even, not even like the comeback is fine, right? The four rounds in a row as you're kind of coming back, almost forcing overtime, fine. But you lost a 3v1 in the pistol. You mm. lost a five on three later on in the half. Brolin gets a nice double kill, executing a mid split into the B bomb site. And like, these are the moments, especially in MR12, you don't get a lot of time to recover these kinds of mistakes the way that we saw teams able, you know, used to be able to. So Shuhei wins this one, and that's brutal. That's backbreaking. That's a pistol round as yeah. well. You go on to have a really, really, really slow start in the second half, and the game's kind of out of reach. It's such a beautiful way clutch. Like, the way yeah. he plays it, the way he jumps around. Like, it looks a little goofy, but there is a logic to it, right? Trying to grab information, make sure that you get that extra shot. Shoulder peek, you can analyze, locate where it's next opponent. And then, of course, as time is running, while the whole madness is happening, he knows someone's going to stick the defuse. I just have a duel to win at the end. Exactly what he does. And the understanding of the, like, how much time you have to play with without, no. without a kit and all that. Yeah, it's great. It doesn't get a whole lot of praises from an individual perspective. I think right. we always mm -hmm. talk about Shui as a maestro and this well, there's, new there's gen leader. exciting people on this team at <laughs> Overshot. I know, we, we, can, we can always talk about everything, but I do think every now and then individually he shows us what he can do, yeah. Just not just about mental game, but also the skill-wise. Yeah. yeah, when it all works, when he has the calls and he can trust on those heavy header, hitters, rather, when they're all online to, to make it work, then it's beautiful to watch. And then they look uh, kind of flawless at times, even though this one was... It wasn't easy, right? Eternal Fire did find with the dysfunctionality that they were dealing with and some of the heartbreak rounds that they were fighting against, they built up in the end um, 12 rounds here. So we need to give them some props in terms of contextualizing them, also beating Vitality earlier and now mm. going into that one-on-one -on -one pool. I agree. Abs absolutely. I think, it, I think it's a pretty good day from them. Uh, I mean, you, you got to be happy with this one as well, with the Vitality victory. Obviously, it's not going to feel good after losing this one to Mal's, but you, you see some of the reasons of why they're a dangerous you squad, take that, for sure. No. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you, you take it, of course. Not that it means anything specifically who you've beaten to no. be in that 1-1 one, one pool. It's going to be uh, not easier at all from this point on. But I do like that even when this sort of... Uh, 
comeback was happening, they they didn't fall into what we saw against Heroic or Gamer Legion, which is becoming super passive and not having being yeah, destroyed. Yeah, Gamer no. Legion one from the opening stage yeah, where it just felt like they disappeared. Here. It didn't happen yeah. here. Even when Escrolan is 12 to 8, you still see Major and Calix working in unison, flashing for each other, being active, finding these moves. That's how you manufacture a comeback. You act as if you're winning. You act as if you have the momentum, and that's what they did here. So props for giving a good try. Props indeed. I hope the fans that were watching live aren't too sad. They got a one in one day. They get to watch them again. There's more games coming tomorrow. in those in those little watch parties as well. Exactly. Many more of those. But after the break, we will head into complexity versus heroic. So mm. stay tuned. Mmm, delicious. Go. Oh. Flash. Second. Flashing. Off mid, off mid. Boom. Boom. Get it to be. That's one dead. Slow side. Nice. Let's go. Let's go. Come. Let's walk up. Yes. Let's go. Yes, the boys, if possible. Cut. Nice. City. Nice. City. 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 This is big, guys. Here behind the one. Sit the one. Yeah. I'm on that dice. What's up, planting? I am behind. Sit the one. Two city. Two city. You should. Yeah. Not one. 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 Yeah. Tell him. Tell him. Don't worry. Tell him. 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 Tell Nice, Last behind. Behind. One I have one flash, I have okay. Okay. Flash okay. Flash okay. Wood. He's wood. I'm Wait. low. Big from me. Yeah, I'm with you. Nice! nice! Level up your gaming space with metal posters from Displates. Hang your Displates in seconds. Swap them whenever you like. Get official art from your favorite games on a uniquely designed metal canvas and choose from thousands of posters. Join over 3 million collectors now. Your wall upgrade is here. Shop now at Displate.com. It's time for Complexity versus Heroic, NA versus EU, and the sole North American representative of the Americas. So Moses, can you contain yourself? I don't, I don't feel any pressure to perform well. See, this is what's wrong with NA Counter Strike. You have no passion for your team. Like, what is this distanced attitude? Would you let me be like that with Vitality? No, you would poke me. You would force me to be out there, and here he is, just looking smug. Like, this, you are what's wrong with NACS. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a bit of an that overreaction. That is a bit <laughs> quick, quick. <laughs> Maybe went overboard on that. Yeah. Maybe a little, but let's set the Anyways. stage then. Uh, Complexity <laughs> did come into uh, this stage. Uh, they got the start in the elimination stage and they beat Pain earlier today. On the other side, we have Heroic who took the scalp of FaZe. So kind of in terms of the teams they beat, I, I bet Heroic is feeling really good about that. I definitely, and there's a contrast on where these teams are at 
either in their trajectory or their inception. On one hand, you have Heroic, who are pushing the boundaries of what we think is possible for this young roster, game after game, event after event. They've I, already broken through the boundaries, I thought, in my head when I oh, when this team formed yeah, together. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> it was always the case in Katowice. It continues here with the win versus face can, whereas for complexity, we felt, at least I felt personally, that they were starting to have a glass ceiling or a vibranium ceiling, whatever it is they cannot go through. And well, I started to worry. Breakable. Yeah, well, Arminium, then that would be the one, right? <laughs> that one does, it's like the, the shield. Right? Yeah. That's the yeah, one. Yeah. Well, they couldn't break through that one. Thank you, by the way, the engineer over Captain there. Captain America. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. See, we run it back. <laughs> we brought it right back. <laughs> Joe <laughs> needs to go to the gym. He can't even break through glass, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should not break through glass. I don't think people should. That would hurt, actually. Ooh, that's a... what? Anyway, let's get back on topic. Um, See what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, talk to me about Complexity because I think that's of course apt. Uh, they had, they were soaring for a while, right? And they, they, I think, inspired people to think, "Wow, where is this gonna go?" But then some question marks arise, and, and I, if I'm keeping me honest, maybe about the opposition particularly. It was the early days of CS2, right? When, yeah. they, when they had their most success, making to the finals of Sydney, and I was like, "Oh, this is this is kind of intriguing." But you also yeah. have that kind of doubt in the back of your head where you're like, "Is this?" just because we're in the middle of this transition? Is it just because they've kind of maybe gotten a little bit of a jump? Obviously, Elysia has been stellar all the way through, all the way through his career, so you, you can rely on that. I think the biggest thing with complexity is, you know, what comes after that? Because Halzerk's been a little bit up and down with the AWP, had a rough time, had a great RMR, mm. really bounced back and a good first game today. JT has found some form. Floppy's been up and down. He had some good games back at Sydney, right. and then he's kind of been down again. Grim as a second star on this team who's been developing for years for previously before that in Liquid. It's like he was playing great. Elise joins the roster, still playing good, and then we've seen like a slight drop off. And it's like they can't get what? all these pieces playing on? well. That's the point. Yeah. You say, you say Grim as a second star. I'm not exactly sure whether Complexity have fully embraced the idea that he is a second star because I think he should be. I think whenever he's being put in positions and he's yeah. got the resources to deliver, he does. But when Elish came back, obviously a lot of space was given to Elish, and you should because he is your best player by far. He's a beast. But I feel like you had a massive drop off from Grim, and now he's getting slightly bit more importance in the roster, and I think it, it shows. I mean, this is also why you saw me like a little, little backed off and casual <laughs> at the desk when this all began when she hyped up the Eda angle because it's like I don't know, was, I, don't, uh... I don't know what this team, how it's organized. JT's like the next best player on this team. Jay, that's, Jay, that's a problematic Jay, statement. I know, and in my head, I'm Not just great. like when I look at when I look at games where they're playing well and causing an upset. It's like JT's up there. I'm like, I f that shouldn't be happening. It's great that it is, but it's weird. I wouldn't describe it as hyping up. I was just adding yeah, yeah. you on. Yeah, okay, that's to fair. start. Yeah. Uh, but no, but they deserve, of course, their, their flowers if they do play at a high level. Here, level here today, they won their opening match. Um, we mentioned Halzerk there. Let's talk about Nikodos a little bit on the other side as well, perhaps. Oh, you didn't want to. What well, did you want I just to wanted about? to mention and also complexities <laughs> and some throwback jerseys right now. Yeah. They look really that's, good. That's, that's all I have. That's, that's all I wanted to do. giving me a lot to work with. You, you stopped my point? Yeah, it was for the throwback the jerseys. Talk about fashion? <laughs> men. Oh my god. No, don't say men. Say Jason. Jason. <laughs> I would like to not be affiliated with that character all right, right, right now. You, uh, talk to me about these uppers. Well, uh, interestingly enough, I think they create controversy in different ways, right? Halzerk, of course, just from his level overall. And Nico does because if you are an aficionado of the purest AWP style, then sometimes he doesn't live up to the expectation. But there is rifling skills over there. Yeah. And it always creates a debate, a conversation whether or not this should be how an opera behaves or what are the pluses and the minuses. I think against FaZe, we saw that the rhythm you game. can have, the, the rhythm you benefit on your T side when you have these rifle skills coming in from Nikodos are absolutely instrumental. And in that case, that was definitely the plus. Yeah, I think it's a take I stole from that cast particularly, but it was interesting about like kind of theorizing how for kicks and there can be more opportunities because in any given round, you can use them in, in, in a myriad of ways. And also financially, that's the that's least yeah. of the investment. Right, you don't Silver always lining. have to have that eco for the AWP. Vertigo again. If you want to talk about offers though, Halsey, Halsey playing well puts this Halsey. complexity to me. Like that? I like that. I like that. that. Halsey. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. We have to get that anime mouse pet wow. out of here, but it's 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 all right for now. Yeah, him playing well takes this team to a new level. That's fair. He's just one of those offers that like finds impact. He's not like your textbook offer, but when he's when he's finding his game and he's finding his impact, taking confident peaks, he's going to change so the nature of the game. So here is my issue, uh, Jason, because I was a big fan of Halsey back in the Dignitas days. Oof. So we're rolling. You're the we're one. Rolling. You are the one. I was the one. <laughs> There was a fan club, and we were three. Uh, I had a couple of friends with me here. But the problem is now, I feel like he's been playing for long enough in the complexity, and I, I, I had to drop the narrative yeah. of, you know, just give him some time. He's going to warm up into this. I, I do feel like we've seen the maximum we can get from him, and I think there is a little bit of a frail, uh, frail, he's frailty. Frail, frailty. frailty. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah, I think Mentally, so. he's got moments where he disappears. Sure. So I, I think he is who he is as a player. I, I have to come to peace with the limitations that he offers, and maybe that's why you know, complexity were considered. Okay. Where to go? In I the see. Mathieu sending for Halsey, as Moses likes to put it. So Halsey. let's head over to our casters, Scrawny and Lowie. What do you think about Halsey? 
I sounds, mean, sounds like a refreshing mint to put into your mouth. Yeah, I mean, not Jason's best work, um, <laughs> but the bar's low anyways. <laughs> Former coach of a liege. It looks like being bald is contagious. <laughs> Complexity and heroic lock and horns and a best of one to go 2-0. Who could have thought? Funk it. Of course, Complexity opening up versus a regional matchup of Pain earlier today. Heroic, it was the big one, right? The upset over FaZe. That's why we're all hyped on Heroic juice at the moment. And uh, Vertigo, an interesting map because we've seen, of course, a little bit of Vertigo from both these squads as of late. Complexity versus Furia. Uh, Heroic versus Eternal Fire. Mm -hmm. And so the game tape's out there. I wouldn't call it the best map for either team, but that's the nature of the best of one. Can Complexity come in cold, all things considered? Skipping the first stage of the Major, and controversially, because the America's team in Furia, who beat them at the RMR, had to come in at the opening stage. Complexity get this free ticket to top 16. That was a big talking point. And now they've got to prove that it was well-deserved. Right well, now? They didn't have the retro jerseys ready, so they had to get those ready. That's why they gave them the spot. Nice oh double my nade. God, that's the frag. Yeah, JT. Imagine running into a bowling ball. You'd never beat Mario. Leash ends up catching Shush 2 on the fallback, so this is looking good for complexity. A tantalizing 5v3 retake. There's a frag grenade for Nerts to try and do some damage here. There's a kit, of course, on JT. He who threw those nades and God. Damn, complexity coming through in this post plan. Whoa, it's go. a flawless pistol for NA. Yes, it is. <laughs> for NA, yes, it is. And South Africa, of course. And uh, a little bit of Norway. Throw it in there. Yep. But most importantly, Jason Lake. And I think there's actually a heroic watch party in Copenhagen right now. Yes, sir. I don't know how many there are in the city right now, but that's one of the ones I've heard about. So shout out to you guys. Got McKellar, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, McKellar. Great bar. Great logo. Great logo. Quintessentially Danish uh, brewer. Okay, so complexity. Well, we saw the strength versus pain. They're playing together. The leash is going crazy. And Grim, I think, stepped up massively. So Oof. those are a few things to look for. Trade from the grave here from Halzerk's Molly. Nothing. Test S and kicks in. In with the Mac 10s. So that high horse, the complexity, we're hoping to ride into round two. Just had its legs taken out from beneath it. What do they have to work with for the retake? A liege hanging on to the smoke grenade, but met by another. Make that two. Refresh smoke wall. And Nerds. It's a long hunt. Ooh. Now he's taking a not-so-fun fight. <laughs> it's just about Indiana jonesing from cover to cover to get close enough for the MAC-10 to be useful. But uh, also just denying them from exiting B, so... Yeah, Sorry, okay. Corey. It was nice while it lasted. Heroic getting right up in their grills with the MAC-10s. Nice charge behind the fire too, right? Really keeping that pressure on Halzerk, making sure that Short was compromised. JT had a hell of a chance off of Sandbags, but he died with nothing. And yeah. That's what let the bomb go down. That's what caused the liege to be smoked out of sight. I keep being reminded there's a couple of Danes here on Heroic, you know, because the team got so gutted. Um, but uh, they, they have survived and thrived. And I, I keep wanting to say that Kixan again, man. I mean, he's been a great IGL, but I think even as an individual player, he'd be an asset to a lot of teams that we're watching play. His rifle work is superb. So that's one stolen back. Not going to be fun for complexity, but I, I think they're in a, a good place right now. They can survive this one. Panel touching on Nikodaz and his ability to play the rifle. Screw the op, as far as he's concerned. He'll pull it out when he needs it. Definitely brings value to the table with the Colts as well. The solo pistol player pulls back. JT not wanting to die empty handed. See if the scout can get anything going. No, sir. Predicted by Shush. So all looks good here for Heroic. I thought he hit it. Eh. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Have Heroic exceeded... From the peak of the mountains in Norway. <laughs> Have they exceeded your expectations yet in Copenhagen? Blown them away, man. Oh, yeah? Blown them away. I mean, I was 
thinking about having them go through 3-0, like that thought was coming into my mind. And you know what? Is it even that crazy at this point in this 1-0 matchup? Like they just keep, they're just exactly as good as they were before the tournament started into winning as much as they should into all their players playing as well as they should. And I mean, even seeing Nikodaz, you know, finally kind of back to his form from Flames. Like in that last match, Nikodaz was critical as an opera. So I think things are going extremely well. I mean, I've been liking for sure what we've been seeing out of Shush. But uh, this game's still a coin flip for me. I think complexity, especially after the pain matchup, I'm like, I have a little bit renewed, more renewed confidence, at least for them in this stage, especially with Grimm playing a lot better. So I think, uh, but I've said this before, I don't think my issue with Grimm has ever been his ability, but right. more so his floor. Okay. So let's see if he can have a, a good threshold of impact here in this very important game. You know, there is this looming cloud as well around all of the teams coming in for top 16 and starting at this point. And I think that a lot of the community would have put complexity as like the number one target of a potential cold start. Yeah. You could argue playing pain was an excellent way to kind of kick off their major run, shake off any rust if there was some. Right now, that Halzerk scout does indeed find impact. But the follow through from Heroic on the opposite side of the map is looking oh, good. They're using the Spirit Mollies. Great full exec. That's the one with the lane open in the back, right? Yeah. Yeah, beautiful, right? Loves with this peak right here from Kixan. If those fires were still burning, he'd still be able to have vision on sight. Nothing like a little utility evolution to remind you that Counter Strike is king. Yeah, and also. No point in inventing. Just steal. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to stay on point. Yep. No copyright infringement in Counter-Strike. Yeah, no IP law protecting your smokes, okay? Steal, steal, steal. What is yours is mine. And what is mine is mine. Mikasa, Mikasa. In your casa. So who do you think is going to win the game? Do you think it's just do you think it's going to be heroic? Or? I believe heroic yeah. will win this. Yes, sir. Yeah. I um. I, I mean, I, I came into the stage with no no faith in complexity, but I really did, was impressed and liked what I saw. Definitely versus pain. So, you know, they're another team. That even just not even like Grimm as an individual, not worried about his ability, but his floor. Same thing for complexity. Not worried about their ability on a good day. They can beat almost anyone. We've seen that over yep. the last few months for sure. Just about doing it doing it a lot. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think, I mean, Heroic are just having a great 2024. The signs of their ability were early on. And every time you're sat here being impressed by Heroic, you think, well, surely there's going to be some cracks now. Yeah. That that momentum can't be followed forward. Yet here we are at the second stage of the major, and they're on the brink of going 2-0. Still frying. And on top of that, they're nice and warmed up. They went 3-0 in the first segment, a couple days off to get some practice in. But right now, we've got their hands full as Complexity try to fight on ramp. It'll cost them two and the third. Nikidos, doesn't matter what he's swinging with, his guns hit hard. And Heroic, a 3v2 to try and follow forward with. Alige pressuring with the flashbang to get himself out into the sights. But he doesn't take the full chance. And holds off. There will be the question of the retake. Floppy getting a glimpse of the bomb site, but they could all peek him in a moment, and the trade potential is high. Him and Alige joining up on the doorway, gonna try to get the retake going. Floppy takes the front end. Alige looking to support. That's two positions confirmed. Nikodos though could catch them all off guard. They clear the planter. Nikodos still up close, <laughs> catching Alige on the end of a reload and forcing Floppy, who can clutch, to come forward. Time is of the essence. He's gonna put that smoke on top of bomb and fake it. A second fake, he gets his frag, oh, but there no is no kits. kit for the defuse, and so heroic, it's a costly fourth round yeah, win. Yeah, yeah, it's expensive, but it's worth it. Worth every penny. Floppy can run with a the gun. They've got the four rounds here, and an excellent start. Getting Vertigo, vertigo again, that's uh, Eternal Fire, who I think start, started out the exact same way. The CT's clawed back into the game. It's never too late.
really can come down to who's just more resilient, who's got the better floor. In the most recent heroic game on this map versus Eternal Fire, as you bring them up, that was a nine round T side that they were able to post. And even then, mm -hmm. that game ends up going into overtime. So there's a small question mark around their defense. But with the nature of these wins, with the complexities economy on the ground at the moment, it is looking par for their previous course. And they're concerned about Elysia's spot. Oh, oh my god, he's still got the kill? Come on. And I know Elish. He's pissed. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how mad you can be. Crouching he, he, under the deagle He probably would have got him on his next bullet, you mm -hmm. know, so... Yeah, yeah, no, sharp shooting from Kicksan. I mean, it, it's no coincidence he crouches, that's exactly what he's trying to do. And then he gives us the 180 flick around, so... Showing us that he can call and kill. And that's really been something, I think, that has been an uptick since his inclusion in Heroic. Back on Apex, we knew the calling was strong. We'd see glimpses of his individual level, but I feel like he's even better now that he's on Heroic. He is fragging harder. Yeah. In interviews, he said his confidence has gone up as a caller, but he said that he feels like he can do more of whatever he wants. I mean, of course, he accumulated so much experience on that old lineup learned and had lots of mistakes with them and sometimes it's great for an IGL to actually move to a new team every once in a while before they become veterans and figure out their style because as an IGL you have to make lots of mistakes you're going to make mistakes managing personalities you're going to make mistakes figuring out what your play style is and while that all happens sometimes your teammates can lose faith in you or sometimes you just get into a rut that you can't get out of and all you need is a change of scenery with all that experience you take from the past you leave all the mistakes behind all the baggage behind and you come through with a lot more confidence, you know? I think like in Kerrigan's career, that's happened to him, where uh, in the early days, it was a lot of, and so many people just weren't around at this point to to remember that, but there's a lot of choking, a, a lot of like teams where it felt like the leadership wasn't strong enough. And now, of course, like look at him, like ever since this lineup where he won Antwerp and Twist was on the roster. And even after bad losses, you know, Twist like my captain, I, I support you and everything. And everyone stands behind him in such a massive way. And he's a guy who's just used so much experience and gone through a few different lineups and come out ahead every single time because he's built on it, learned from his mistakes. And I think that's the hardest thing to cheat uh, when it comes to getting better in any role in Counter-Strike as an IGL. It's, uh, you can really tell when someone's had a lot of years under their belt. But uh, when we look at Kixan, we just look at someone who's learning fast. Somebody who has a great mind with him to help, right? We talk about Saw in the coaching role. And we talk about the aggression in this one. Straight up into the boost is Grim. Tess is looking for this. Keeping his head on a swivel. Not to mention a gap on the smoke for Nikodos to try and get around. How long do they hold this? And a question as to whether it can come back to haunt them. JT takes a leave of absence, departing towards middle. And the T's creeping up without being spotted. Little utility pressure from Tess He let his guard down. A spot he was watching. Comes back to get him. Shush activates and takes <laughs> Floppy out right before getting burned. That's yeah. a nice kill from Shush, and watch out for Shush to dominate that B site, T and CT side. Yeah, true, man. No one better to watch than Shush on B site of Vertigo. He is the one writing the textbook for modern CS, in my opinion. So, yes, he knows he knows all the gaps as well when it comes to the T approach. Definitely a threat as an individual lurk. But Complexity have found themselves in a very favorable spot. I mean, it's 35 seconds. They have retake utility. They have a kit in place. They just don't have any HE or Molly to slow down the bomb. So we'll see how aggressively they want to play this defense. And, oh, Grim nice. come, someone come up on the side. Ooh, the trade comes down. But then they let that guard down. Halzerk able to track Kicksan as he jumps over. Nertz, it's a 1v3 attempt, but Nertz, known for a clutch. Fakes it a second time to elicit some kind of a peek. JT doesn't give it to him. Now Elyse starting to make sound. It's a third fake, and it's one that Elyse will punish. Hmm. No bomb plant for Heroic. And I think you painted the picture perfectly. They had all they still needed to hang on with. Yes, okay, no utility to do damage, but the guns shoot straight. Yeah, like Grim, it looked like for a second he was going to fall with nothing, but that short peek into his reaction was nice. His aim was so good, and it, you know, you don't really want to plan to have good aim, but with someone like Grim, you want to like... You do want to assume they're going to out-aim people because, like, 
That's the kind of guy he is uh, when he's having a good day. He's winning tough fights. And yeah, that, that situation, if they had an HE and a Molotov and a man advantage, they could have played back and delayed for time, outlived smokes, and then pushed in together. But in this situation, they have the material advantage, no HE, no Molly, then playing within smokes is great, just trading down into the exact position we just saw where Nertz is in a 1v2. Because he has no room to plan, no smokes down, no way to trick anybody. And the time on the CT side. Great to see the old school jerseys in play here for complexity. Didn't know that was going to be possible. Right. So, but now that Jason Lake has just sort of bought back the team and owns it himself, mm -hmm. um, now he can do whatever he wants. Death taxes and Jason Lake owning complexity. The three constants of Counter Strike. Go for this aggressive mid setup. Tess says, wow, man. making sure that smoke stays honest. But a liege there and supported. But with that mid presence, check this out. Heroic, they're eyeing up the B site while they throw another body at this A ramp, right? Tess says, he did his job. He got his pick. The middle players separate, leaving Halzerk as a solo op in B. This sandbags play, they're getting real close. Grim swings, Woo! and that'll catch the single player from Heroic on that half of the map. Kicksand's been boosted up behind the wood wall. Halzerk about to have his hands full. And no teammate here to help him. If he could drop one, that would have been great. But he loses his head to the first bullet of Shush, who we tried to highlight as a problematic player for complexity when it comes to this half of the map. Kicksand brings one with him. And Shush, multi-frag. Stuffing Grim back into his spawn and forcing him to try to piece this one together. Now there's no rush. Yeah. Put the smoke out. Grim goes for the peak. He sees him. A sliver, a shadow. Oh, can he get any damage off? I don't know, but he knows that he can push through the smoke behind Jenny's clear. Yes, sir, that's positioning. That's positioning on both players. So he comes out looking for the quad player. Grim getting close. A silent Woo! approach. Oh. All right. A tidbit of info, and he cuts them both down. That's good, man. Grim is cooking today. That's a good clutch. Obviously, with the information that he had, he played it perfectly. Aim does the rest. What you want to see out of Grim? Great presence of mind. And, once more, sharp shooting. Over towards that A play, coming out of Sandbags. Gets himself the instant headshot, puts Complexity's third round to the board. And this is going to keep Heroic honest. Money in their back pockets, but by the nature of the B collapse, all of a sudden you thought that round could have been done. Shush, burnt to a crisp. Mm. Burnt down to a quarter. That's some crispy Christmas pork right there. Halzerk no longer playing with the op and... Honestly concerned about Tessas, understandably. Over the top of Xbox goes Nikodos and down to the hands of Halzerk. Showing that both these oppers can swing with M-Force. Yeah, true. Extremely well done here from Halzerk. Saves the situation. Look at the CTs. They would have been no position to retake if he had died. Needed to get both and got him. out this A site to see if they can get the opening. It's going to be a long ladder flank. Oh, but Halzer, okay. his third kill on the round. He has done everything inside of this A site. Shush barely standing. He's just going to try to get that plant down. No nade except for on Grim. So, Yo. in position and Halzer's shots not too far away from it. The flank is fantastic. And Shush, it is desperate times which call for desperate measures. Overwhelmed by that pack of players, a beautiful quad out of mm. Halzerk, and he had to pick up that slack because remember, he lost his teammate with that climb from Shush over Xbox. Yeah, both kills on ramp means that his teammates don't have to rotate, frankly. He said, get me my damn keystone, I got this. A spiritual American member of complexity. He's been playing in the region for quite some time. Not as long as JT and Coach TC. Definitely long enough to be one of us.
Made a name for himself in Swedish Counter-Strike, playing with some legends. Yeah, that was a crazy opportunity that he had with, with Dignitas to like garner some experience. Mm -hmm. And he always seemed like a character back in the COVID online era. He's become himself proper in complexity. Alish, hands full towards mid, double peek. And it's a beautiful trade from Kixan. Hot on the heels of Nerds, he makes sure that there's a hole in the defense here, and it's going to be dealt with by the elevator rotation. They pulled two players off A because of the forward setup on short side. Oh, man. Oh, his floppy didn't see anything right there, but uh, his gun might betray him. But it doesn't seem like yet, actually. Shush is cautious on the approach. The rotators come in, but now they could still fall victim to floppy. He's been spotted out and softened up. JT, a double kill, and both headshots. Molotov's thrown towards Floppy's last known position. He just shuffles Woo! outwards and in doing so holds them off. And but Moses brought this up on the desk prior to the game going live, right? This impact that we've had from JT as of late. We'll see if Tess S can knock him down a peg. They're all here ready to go. Oh, nice tap. No flick though. Halzerk and Floppy gonna keep this one in control. And JT with a highlight moment. Yeah, that was a well-functioning B site. Um, of course, Floppy is is spotting periodically, but he doesn't want to show himself because if he does, then he gets mollied and he has to use an aid and then he goes into like a turtle setup where he can't really fight back that well. So he's just hoping and, and just making sure no one can walk up onto the site. His teammate dying is fine because he's set up perfectly thereafter. Uh, they get that flash so he can transpose to push forward, fight the B steps. They keep that man advantage to keep the flashes going high and over and they never really lose control of the B site. Well, there's been a lot of action top ladder here between Elysia and Nerds. What are you made of Elysia's CS2 performance? Because some say top five CS2 player. Obviously, early on, we have to wait those results. Yo. But man, he has been consistent. Cleaned up shop at the America's RMR. Ooh, JT giving us another one versus the Pistols. But yeah, I thought, you know, Elige departing Team Liquid, joining Complexity. If you're Jason Lake and Elige becomes a free agent, mm -hmm. you have to jump on that. Yeah, initially I was like, oh man, they must have just shelled out like so much money to be able to afford, you know, what Liquid could offer him. And he said, well, no, actually, I took a pay cut to come to Complexity. So not only did he take a career Jason risk Lake. leaving an established team, you know, that have won him all his trophies and was the team only team he's really played on at this level, but he kind of, he moved to a team that he knew that he would have to be the reason that they won. You know, he's not moving to a team to surround himself with star players that are going to teach him the game. He realizes at this point in his career, there aren't many players in NA, if any, that can teach him uh, about how to improve. And so him sharing uh, trade secrets from the way Liquid playing, sharing sort of the mentality of how to be a champion. I think he knew he had all that as a cross to bear in this risk of going to complexity and he was willing to go to the challenge and he rose to the challenge. And unfortunately, since then, it, coming, you know, second to phase at Sydney was sort of the best result that they've had on this roster. You do have to be careful with the amount of times that you get close because it doesn't mean that you're going to get closer and eventually win. You could just fall off. And um, uh, complexity have not actually achieved the result of getting that trophy on this roster. But it's very clear by how well he plays and how much effort he puts in every single round and how consistent he's been in this game that he is there for the right reason playing to win and getting complexity on the right track. Yeah, giving them a taste of near victory. Comes with confidence as well for the other pieces. I think one of the best things about the complexity addition of Elige was the level he got out of Floppy originally. Every North American player content to sit next to Elige and chase the dream of hosting trophies. Especially if they're from Boston. Yeah. <laughs> I want them MVP medals, a couple trophies. Uh, put them in a the case, John. Back it up. Let's get some oysters. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. Let's crack a brew with old Halsey over here. <laughs> yeah, damn right. He's Maybe ready. watch some Goodwill hunting. <laughs> I'm like the dumb version of Matt Damon. Man, if Complexity hadn't lost the second round of this half... 
curious how many Heroic would have ended up getting because it's been activity from Complexity round after round. Look at this Elyse flank. Poor Shush is going to walk into his own death, never sees it coming, hit like a truck. And now Heroic's execution into the A site, all that they have left, has been read like a book. Double nades from JT again, and he is here to clean up with Halzerk. A hell of a recovery from Complexity. They go down 1-5 mm. after winning Pistol and just sweep this CT side right back. No kidding. It's never too late, man. They, they stayed focused that entire time. They played some great CS there. And they really slowed Heroic to a crawl in terms of their intention was, I think, to keep that half very fast the entire way through. They earned that right after the first five rounds, gained a lot of momentum, could take some shortcuts. But then they started losing their individual duels and defaults, and they had to respect that complexity. We're ready to fight back uh, against them. And I think it starts mechanically, right? You have to stop a team that's going to run at you very fast, win some hard duels you're not supposed to win. Then you earn their respect. Then you slow them down. But then we went to the next level where they leveled up as a team as well and stayed consistent all the way through. So great climb back for complexity. But you know, we know it's not a complexity game unless it's close. So classic game, certainly not over yet. And Heroic are very stiff competition right now. Feels like that is some of the scarring that our region has had to deal with in trying to cheer for complexity is they'll get your hopes up. They'll make things feel close. This team has had to go through a lot of heartbreaks throughout 2023, especially towards the tail end of CSGO with close results that could have been something special but weren't. And that's why we stopped talking about it. Get it over the line. Or go home. The Molotovs, the USPs of Shush. Oh, they're slowing them down so much. Looking to stuff them on the stairs, Oof. which they are. Two kills for Heroic. Looks real good. Ali's trying to recover with something. Oh, that's so frustrating. But the lurk in place from Grim, he could change things. Spotted out. There's two here for him. He will bring one out of this. Yeah, that And then works. they're going to go for the boost on the B steps. Elise looking to re-engage. Nice angle from Nerds, oh, but Elise, the way he approached that. He's reopened this bomb site wonderfully. Kicks down low health, gets oh. his answer back, and it's gonna have to be JT. Known to be a demon with a pistol. Best deagle in our region, but the Glock doesn't quite pack the same punch. Two enemies still ahead of him. One on low health, and it's on the reload that mm. Tessess smells blood in the water, chases him down, and with that smug smirk, knows. This is Heroic's chance to bring back the game. Yeah, and then, you know, there are moments where you see a player like Tessus keeps, keeps Heroic of old within him. Like, they're ready to chase down frags if they need to. Shush has shown that he is a two-way player in the sense of being able to play slowly, play quickly, aggressively and defensively. And uh, they're, they're still on the same page in that regard. Um, they definitely evolved perfectly with the old pieces and the new ones. And, uh, well, a second pistol means they're going to be smiling from ear to ear about being able to play CT side, especially on this anti-eco. Tech 9's barreling towards them. Grim shut out of it real fast. Wow. And then a little pressure from Tess to clean up with the SMG, make some extra money. All is good. Man, so, you know, that last round was a really good way to exemplify when you fight a little bit versus, versus an execute that's coming in, that can mess anything up. Like JT's execs from the stairs are perfect, right? All the mollies they have for the site hits, everything they need to scale. It's like everything is very orderly when it comes to a JT execute. And if a timing is blocked because someone's on the half wall or peeking or not dying, suddenly the flashes you throw are completely useless. The mollies will expire. And then you are left with players who are unarmored, no, uh, uh, no utility left over, and your game plan is fully exposed, so that was just such a good way for Heroic to defend in that last round. So you're saying you just have to kind of get complexity off kilter. Yeah, especially, again, the teams that are strict. I think strict has really fallen out of favor. I wouldn't call them strict, by the way. I'd call it thorough. But moments like that, full execs, you know? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's really good to play by the front door on full execs instead of playing back. They try to go for the ramp hit. Kicksan taking that one up. Dropping the chance. Now, this MP7 off angle. We saw the bullets coming through the wood, whizzing by Nertz as he stayed stoic. 
Nothing more deflating than getting smoked out here. We see we passed the minute mark. You've got to re-clear things. CTs are still looking down. Prying eyes here from above. Ooh, oh, man, nice and Nikodaz, he has been making his M4 look like an op. Yep. Laser beam and fully focused. We get that rotation back from the teammates, trying to scramble into the A hit. But Complexity have to be a little cautious on the approach, because for all they know, shorts compromised. Sandbags could be preoccupied. So they'll get that ramp control. With this volley of utility, try to puncture through in the 4v4. There's a few lesser weapons for Heroic to deal with. But Sight Control, the name of the game. Halzerk, he'll catch Tessess through the smoke. And Nikodaw is going over, doesn't stop the plan. He gets the fight towards Short, queued up, killing Grim. Halzerk next up with the answer. And as he tracks through smoke, Ooh. it's a multi-frag from Halzerk. Not the only opera who can rifle. Yeah, that's true. Once again, answering back like so many rounds back and forth. And Nerds, who oftentimes can be a lurk, hanging out because there's a better gun sitting here on jump up. Oh, but they push elevator. He's done. Oh, okay. Nicely no. done. Halzerk thriving in the chaos and keeping majority alive. Yeah, it's great to see Halzerk. It's great to see Grim earlier today. These are the two players who I think are sort of putting the floor in question for complexity. And on the biggest stage, they are showing up. It's actually insane that they did that after having to walk through a smoke at the bottom of A ramp, past a minute mark, into the A exec, and uh, Nikodos gets another kill. Final timeout coming through from Heroic. Yeah, they're forcing the gears to turn. Greatest American Counter-Strike player of all time. The figure that head wasn't of... Stewie, bro. What yeah. you okay, okay. Oh, whoa, okay. Punished. Nice recovery. JT tried to get it going. The boost oh, man. denied. Shush is not going to let you take this bomb site. Look at where he stands. Wonderful third kill from Shush. Just. Art, okay, the way that he plays this site, it's beautiful. His positioning is just perfect. Oh, but Hulzerk on the recovery. He's been posting multi-frag after multi-frag. Even despite not having the big green, Kixan behind green, holds, flash, misses, Hulzerk does as well. That could have been the big one. Yeah, that was a good play. I mean, the flash was set up right, of course. Grim though, 1v2, cuts it down. Looking for the second swipe of the scythe. Kicks in in the oh. open. Closes it out. And Heroic are going to tie this game up at eight apiece. They better bless Shush for that one. A triple kill hold after losing the player through the wood wall. Mm -hmm. How easily that site and round no. could have fallen to complexity. Everything about the way that Shush plays this site needs to be studied. And if you're not really, then you're losing. I mean, he can play that perfect balance between someone who's too passive and goes quad every round and someone like Donk who's always swinging. Like, look at how his sort of zone of traffic is just, just one line in the back of the site, and yet he's covered all the time by double stack on one of the boosts. He's ready to take an unfair fight versus the wood wall. He can switch to the stairs. He has so many options to not only be in cover in a site that's one of the most open sites in the game, and then also have very good fights to the CT side, and at the same time be supported. I really don't think the way that the best players are playing the site right now are tucking and, and uh, picking timings to go for swings. Uh, behind, hot, behind hardcover, where they can't update information. And yet, Shush manages to have his cake and eat it too, because it looks like he's being very aggressive, but he's really hard to find. It's that beautiful balance of elusiveness and yet confidence that I think only comes with the success of being a player like Shush, specifically in this position. You start to grow an aura about yourself. Gets away with a robbery. A liege over the top of the Xbox. He knows there's a second player short with an empty mag. Whoa. And a liege and JT will just churn through that A defense. Heroic wanted a fight, Launders. They went yeah. into it. 
they took the first swing and they get knocked on their ass in round 17. Yeah, that was a strong punch with a great follow through right there. Sight gets trampled, bomb goes down, no chance for the retake. Again, Nurt scratching his head as a rotator and Shush with nothing to do. He can be as good as he wants, but they know that he's going to be on B. I think the question is like, can, you know, how many times can they go A? They're willing to do it. It's actually a really, really important save here for the CT side. With the money as low as it is, it gives them any chance to fight back in this next round. Otherwise, Complexity would have their way with it. I think this is turning into the game where anti-ecos, you take it to the B site, and then A site on all of the full rifle rounds, and then you just dress it up with a fake at the end. So you, you pretend that you're willing to go B, but you really only do it versus weak buys. That side of the map is tough to deal with, but right now, all of Heroic's problems are truly on A. Man, Elise, take a bow for that one. In the chaos and pressure of the short push with the spam on the smoke, he comes in with those two kills, climbing over Xbox. And I thought he'd get caught with the crane swing, right? That third piece of the defense, I thought, is what maybe catches him back, gets the trade frag. But the smoke pops open, and Elise still wins a duel. Well, they've got an interesting question to ask themselves because they, they know that money's not going to be great here for CT. But Look how there's chaotic this is. Still saved guns, yeah. And that's really the perfect spot for a leash to be in. Demanding aggressive, frantic positions. Very far pushed up on T side. Oh, look at the state of heroic. Look at this force by. Look what it nets them. Yeah, but they, 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 they do have a gun on... Well, actually, Shush is, Shush is on MP9, obviously. A little bit more viable on the B side, so... Nikodaz will pick up the M4. And I think they have to ask themselves, do they think they're going to find Shush on B, and do they want to use this round to go there to sort of check him because they need to put his confidence in place. On one hand, this would be the round to do it. This would be the buy to punish, but Ramp has been going so swimmingly. Almost magnetizes you back at it, and Elyse wastes no time whatsoever. Locking it into yellow, timing it perfectly. Kickstand here is locked in. The smoke pops, but the Nikodaz support is exactly what they needed. Tess grabs the AK, oh. but in that moment, it gets cleared out by JT. Just when you think you get an extra tool to work with, you walk into the middle of the road and JT hits you like a truck. Now Shush, excellence on that B site. Can he contest it? Oh, he gets the kill no and way. burns him. What a 1v2. Are you kidding? He can come over and put a cameo down on the A site. He can't just play B all this time and let the A site get taken over and have nothing to say about it. That's an unbelievable clutch from him with the gun that he, he gave away his M4, took the MP9 and still had some utility in his back pocket for a rainy day. That was a beautiful round out of Shush. What a humble king, man. You can run, but you clearly can't hide. Yeah. He will hunt you down. And that poor bomb planter had nowhere to go. Yeah. That was, you know, just as we left this perspective, I didn't think he was going to win that fight either, right? Like he's fighting versus the ramp on a headshot angle with an MP9. And as we can see, it's both kills for one right there. That's nuts. Oh, that is a spicy round. Oh, man. Round 18. Don't forget it. Because the implications are money back in the hands of heroic full buys. Oh, that is brutal for complexity. It just like tore through that. And that is a tremor. The complexity still have to waddle through. Shush. Who else? N.A. Slayer. Tucks back into the B site, his safety net, but without early aggression down to the steps. It's just three players kind of stuck into the B half of the map, right? You can't depart. And if complexity can find a road over towards A, in contrast, this could open doors. But that pressure out from mid recedes into top middle. And then they come back at this. Heroic clearing out mid at a moment where complexity could actually get active and maybe clip their wings, maybe catch the mid rotation. They could shut the door behind them right here. I mean, even a smoke to wrap. They just don't know where the CTs have gone to. This is a heroic-esque round. This oh. call, this call is excellent. This is JT letting them leave, get out of that bomb site Ooh. without knowing everything. And now they're going to have a genuine 1v5 versus Nertz's MP9. 
He takes one, but that is it. Wow. Falling off middle, ensuring that complexity can't be found as heroic go to clear mm. because early contact was shown and then this aggressive peek out to the spawn. Crazy. They just outplayed them. Yeah, that's, look at that. It's basically a pacifist round, right? The round is won before Nurts even makes contact with anyone. There's no way he gets five kills with his MP9. So that one is one in prep where they get set up and stage perfectly and they get heroic to their honeypot on the A site. There's nothing there. Okay. Interesting after, rounds. After losing that last uh, anti-eco, I mean, that would... That's a, you know, we play a lot of Counter-Strike around here. The beauty of CS is every round is always a little different. That's a unique one. Early showing in middle to get heroic, to go find you. And your decision to give away map control you earn for free has them trip over their own two feet. Yeah, that's a big gulp for Heroic. Great call here from JT. Good staging. Good composure. They don't overplay the situation. Don't make any noise whatsoever. And Nerds is actually having a lot of trouble getting into this game. He was sort of getting outdone by a liege in the first half. But now that we're on CT side, as a rotator, he hasn't got that much action, and when he has, it hasn't gone that well. He's been so consistent as a fragger for Heroic, set up to be a star, and actually been delivering consistently. Oh, gush on Shush. You've got him weak. That's exactly what you need, early damage, to maybe get through this site. And sure enough, dead oh. with nothing. JT catching the rotate and complexity on the highway to 11. Yeah, they had half a buy right here. And now their rotators can't even come in. That op is going to be saved in this round. Complexity will get to 11. Hard fought, well earned. And only gaining momentum. And did they get cleared out? Nerds is looking for something. Yeah, finds the gun. And we'll be able to fall back to say, okay, this game's not over. We'll be back. You won the battle, but not the war. Another great call here for Complexity. Full B exact taking over the site. Terrorists win. The amount of rounds Complexity have actually been able to win with still five players up too, right? These half buys, they haven't worked for Heroic. And we've seen the threat of their pistols and half buys find success in games prior here in Copenhagen. Mm. You know, Heroic is a team that always makes you believe that little bit more when they have a half buy. Because it does feel like they still have the remnants of Heroic, right? Where they can thrive in chaotic moments, where they can cause carnage. But right now, they can't touch complexity. They're going to go for the boost with the M4, right? This is the M4 Nurts was able to save from the smoke. Worked hard to grab this, but doesn't make much happen. Uh. And JT doesn't shy away from that fight. JT just dukes it out with Nertz and his teammate in this bomb site and feel how uncomfortable they are. Nertz just stuck here on this line. Elise comes climbing over the wood wall. Nika Dogs with the off, having to do something special. His teammates fall empty handed. He goes deep for the oh. quad peak, can't nail the shot. And with that bomb goes down. Complexity on the brink of confirming a 12th. They arrive in Copenhagen, marred in some controversy, a team that gets the one America's legend spot despite losing to Furia on their road at the RMR. They show up with critics calling for them to possibly fall out 3 and instead they will have three rounds here to go 2-0 with a phenomenal first day of the very first CS2 major while draped in those legendary complexity colors. Yeah, absolutely. And it is a half investment for Heroic. They were hoping to win this round with that tactic. They couldn't figure it out, but they still have enough money to put together a buy for this next one. In a three round game, Complexity have a massive opportunity, but again, how many games do we see like this that get too close for comfort? They know that Heroic didn't fully invest, so they're gonna be half happy about this. They realize that there's still a full buy coming in, and uh, these last two rounds have been shining moments for complexity in terms of ideas. And obviously, when this boost falls apart, it's so awkward. <laughs> You're, the guy underneath you is running away and just falls, falls shooting from behind the double stack. So will this be the last round is the question. No op in play here for the CT side. 
But we know that Nikodawas can swing that M4. Grim holding back in the Liege, looking for the fight. They were just here, and they're ready to come back at it. Nikodawas, wonderful 2K, but it does cost them short side. His rifles has been so sharp, and it's additional damage for Floppy to feel up, but Elyse is here, and Elyse is the difference maker for complexity. Tessess attacks from the short side, takes him out of this one, and Floppy with a little bit of health is waiting for support. Grim gets caught to CT, and Floppy goes down. Heroic double digits, not done yet. Yeah, I don't know if there's an op to pick up. Hauser didn't have one in this round, right? So we'll see if they even want to try to buy it. Again, Nikodaz, does he need one? Spray transfer with the M4 on the ramp. That's been a key spot for him over and over again. He's gotten so many multi-kills in this half. And you can see Kicksand sitting up straight. There is an opportunity at hand to make this comeback possible. I think the one massive weakness that we've seen Complexity exploit is inside middle. And the B-splits are starting to work out. It's aggression fast. Trying to take it to Shush. Floppy on the entry, dies out. 5v4 looking great for Heroic as they can just lean into the site now. Yeah, I think they just, they wanted to try to gamble one frag in that situation. If they take Shush out early, then it's such an easier site to take later. Just ruins the structure on the CT side, but it's Shush to come out ahead this time around. Smoke grenades allow for Nerds to slide in behind Tetris. You said it earlier, it's not a complexity game unless things get close. Yeah. And every risk is a calculation. But just because you lose on that, there has to be another layer to the plan. You cannot simply give up because it's 5v4. So what is it, JT? Because right now, they're staring at the face of three CTs inconspicuously posted up in the B site, ready for an exec to come this way. And we see the intention of complexity right now. Yeah, they're walking into the pitfall. Trap's been set, and they're about to spring it. Nerts flushed out of a couple forward spots. The flashbang from the CT spawn soon to come out. Nice opening from JT. He does what Floppy couldn't in getting that entry. Pressure towards Quad. They've got a player stuck in that smoke. Nerts is known. Meanwhile, so many other rotates that it seems the CT should be able to hold. Holzerk dodging these gunfights. The assistance comes out from Grim. Nikodaz again in with the double, oh. and Grim gets stopped. Is this guy an opper <laughs> or the best rifle on Heroic? Because oh goddamn, God. it's consistent. Yeah, he doesn't. I mean, you give him as much money as one. He could just get him for us and drop him all half long. It's crazy. It's not even a feature of the CT side at all. That's unreal work by him. Not only this game, but last map too. All the time. Yeah, that's a close round. And uh, Complexity nearly fought their way back into a 4v5. They got so obsessed with Nerds and the smoke, and they knew that there was a chance to get him spamming as he was running back and forth, and they had him so low. But it did slow down the scale. It did give time for Nikodaz to make his way over towards the site. And now, round 24. Straight back in. Tessess has the angle. Elise gets the kill, but now he's onto the sidelines. And Complexity having to forego a bit of control of ramp early. You run back that last round, you can't blame them for getting concerned of Nerds and Smoke. At a moment's notice, he comes swinging, just like now, posted on the gap of middle, Okay, awaiting Nerds is this walkout. Nerds out. is 5 and 16 on a good angle, gets his first and a second frag as well with the bomb down. All he needed. All rounds lead to this one. And while boosted up, he holds the line. Surely pushing Heroic into overtime. While Halzer creeps up onto the A play, he's lost his teammate towards B. The bomb possession's still on the other side, but look at this situation we have. He saw him. There That's it is. all they need. We... Had they not spotted that, things get weird. Instead, it's Heroic. Supposedly. Call it, Connor, call it. Supposedly Just locking it. in OT, but they've also given away the bomb. They have. Hulzerk has had high highs and low lows in this complexity jersey. Distance in between the three players left. He gets oh, another headshot. Okay. He is halfway through this 1v4. He has time to go back to A. The player sits inside of the B site towards Tetris. He can smell it. It could be a costly mistake choosing B. Not that he gets to know, but a Molotov. That's perfect. Perfect for the Tetris oh. player. He was piecing it together, but heroic hold on. Whew. And of course, it's not a complexity game, unless it gets close. Unless it gets close, baby.
That's just the way it is. Man, that Nurse was 5-16 and 16 and got the 2K spray down in mid. And again, I love the idea from JT because that's where they got some of their more, most dangerous rounds out on T-side. Jeez, Hauser was very close to being able to win that. He would have known that the last player was waiting on the flank probably for the fallback at ladder yep. or inside of mid and uh, really had a good inventory of what he had to go up against on the map with the right utility to do it. But doesn't win the trade, of course. Shush, put, Shush puts up another good hold. But got to say, they were formidable when it came to dealing with Shush and also brave about going back towards him You know, after that great defense that he put up earlier on on the half. They didn't run away from their problem, but we are also now in overtime. And immediately wow. into their only timeout wow. as we get into overtime. I get it. You want to start off right, and you are also on T side. Such close situations. If it wasn't for absolute peak rifling for Nikodaz in a couple of moments, this game would be over already. I love the fact that we've been talking about Nikodaz on the rifle, and then we get this clean attempt out of Halzerk in the last round as yeah. well, right? His HSP on the AK has been solid. True, they've both been great on the rifles. Which isn't really something, you know, I tout Halzerk for, but... Trying to match up to his counterpart in this head-to-head -head with Heroic. Nerds so active. Oh man, this is this is an amazing idea. I think to try first. If they if he, it's all or nothing, right? I mean, Alicia has been killing him inside of ladder, but he's let one go by. Uh, Grim, Grim leaning back. Right, uh, someone's gonna die because of this. You know, unless someone gets lucky and watches the flank, Nerds has sort of free reign to catch people off. But also at the same time, really waiting to make this move. He's now starting to get active. It's a long road if you're going to make zero sound. But because of the and utility they, usage they, outside of B, you don't want to do. You don't if you're. <gasps> let's say you're going B, right? You don't want to throw too much utility in this direction, so people are always facing forward. Let nerds do the rest. Floppy and JT are going to be the victims of this. Grim, oh. unfortunately, letting one slip through the net. Now nerds, he's going to wait to see what else. Gets oh. himself both. Wonderful rifle work from Nertz. What a time to get back in the game. Three players left on the A site, 45 seconds. They can still win. Sure, but it's going to take a clean execution and somebody to pick up slack. Double man disadvantage. Grim hands busy on the plant. That's an interesting smoke gap, though. Elise, he's in the middle of it all, right? These three smoke grenades creating the smallest oh. of pockets. But Tess has that game sense to shoot through. So bombs down, but it's going to be tough. Nertz still on the flank. Coming back at this ramp attack. Halzerk exposed, instant headshot. Nurts with three kills to be proud of in this round. And then disappears. Bomb's pretty far gone, but it's covered in the smoke and covered in the CTs as well. A flawless opening to the CT side of overtime. Oh, that's brutal. Thanks to the Nurts top mid yeah, push. Yeah, because they had a full default on A, B, and mid, and Grim just got up the ladder late. They used the spawn to their advantage. And listen, it looks like genius, but it's also a risk, right? When Nurts come out, comes out this quickly to walk by ladder, hoping that they aren't going to default here, Complexity have done a good job of conditioning Heroic to believe that they are going to be holding mid in the default. So, but it's the bravery that pays off. And I think overtime is where you do welcome aggressive pick plays like that after a whole half of being very thorough and careful and reading into your opponent to try to flip the table and change it up completely. Yeah, he's flipping tables and Complexity pounding on them because God, that's gotta be frustrating. You're trying to set up this B fake with two. And all of a sudden, this sinking feeling in the pit of your stomach when the three guys A know that everything is known to Heroic. A deflating start to their overtime endeavor, but... Two more to claw back. Alige, he's been good throughout the map, but there's also been a few rounds where he gets... He's getting countered now a yep, little bit. on ramp. This time, gets the contact, can't chase all the way forward. And then that next peak is actually caught out by Halzerk. So damage on JT and Halzerk. But at the same time, Complexity will take this 5v4. Yeah. Great body guarding right there. 5v4. And you can see that the squeeze on the B defense is loosened. Shush will go into a rotator spot up in heaven and wait and watch mid. 
See what Floppy or Grim can get going elsewhere on the map. Pressure on construction. You know, Shush right now, he's very far out of it. Found out in the bomb site, a leash. Oh, but Shush took out Grim at the same time. Wonderful grenade out of Kicksan. This is man advantage reclaimed by Heroic. The numbers on the A site spotted. Great spray control from Elise. You expect nothing less. And as Halzer plants slightly off default, Kixan tries to spray wildly and will not find any damage. No target hit. Another spray. And Halzer falling back. Catches the smoke oh push. Oh my god. Elise is making the difference in this one, right? Finally given a chance to stay alive late into the round. But a clutch attempt queued up from Kixan. You've got one stuck behind sandbags. And he is on the hunt, on the prowl, with a kit on his back and a flash in hand. Reconfirming Elise is stuck here, but Elise smells blood in the water mm. and comes through with an instrumental moment in OT. Yeah, the lesson learned. Don't let him live too long here for Heroic. And the times they could find him in the opening play, of course, they'll look back on Foundly because uh, a lot of rounds recently, Elise hasn't been able to get his impact as soon as he is able to stay around into this point. Past the 30 second mark, he continues to frag. But they were doing a good job of countering. At least complexity get one back, tie this up 13-13. What a reaction spray from Elise on the player boosted back A site. Just trying to get into the cover. Challenged when he wasn't expecting it Ooh. and recovers. And it nerds on an op, okay, so. They'll have Shush, they'll still give him free reign over the B site. Nerds doesn't have to move since he has this off. They're not coming in with a nade set inside of mid. They're just waiting back and letting Ramp do the rest. Okay. How does Nikodos stick around? It makes no sense. Not only getting that labored kill to Elise, but then the second no. sets up Tess And with that, Nerds can just stay stoic on the angle in mid. Never had to move. May not have to. How, how did Nikodos you know, miss half his spray, reset. Makes no sense. That had to have been missed shots from Complexity's behalf yeah. as well, right? Yeah, big time. And I mean, those are no chumps down there. You're, you're dueling versus a liege, the best Complexity have. Oh. Nikodaw's just glowing with the rifle. One and as Floppy tries to get into this B hit, the last attempt of Complexity to take a second on this T half. It's damage versus the opera, but he keeps his head down, and Shush is going to make sure that that door on the B site is closed. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy that we're seeing Nert on the op before you see Nikodaz on it, and it actually works out beautifully. And then on top of that, Nikodaz goes for what? A deep ramp fight? Yeah, he could have done that with the op as well. It's um, maybe a live evolution of roles. Man, who as is we're that? Watching it. That's a That's And JT right after, no bullets go right over his head. It's not the time to miss. What a contrast from the round prior where Elise no was looking good deep in the magazine. No kidding. No time to cry about it. Complexity Indeed. trailing by one. Into the defense and Heroic onto the side where they have posted big numbers here in Copenhagen. Vertigo T side has done them well. They're going to start slow and silently. There is nobody inside that B-site. Complexity go for the double lineup middle, and they get fully molotov off of the site. Now, there is the nobody there to stop them. These have to be... Just make sure they don't get picked off when the site, come, site hit comes in. Complexity can still pull off a retake. Little utility has been used from the CT side, and they'll start to come in. There that is helps. the one. This ominous mid lurk starts to come out. Floppy getting the better of that one. So yeah, you lost your bomb site, but now you've queued up a 5v3 retake. Tess S, Nerds, and Shush look to hold this one off. The construction players come in with the first, and this one seems to be going swimmingly until Nerds comes out and pulls one back. Tess S, it's a double kill. As Complexity get corralled into this funnel of a fight in oh. from mid. Total stoppage, unless Holzer can clutch it. And he's got this last one pinned behind box. He knows where you are, nerds. 
and Nurse holds, waiting for the swing. The close approach is key, <laughs> and Holzerk will make sure that doesn't slip through their my fingertips. God. Oh my god. There is an air of discomfort when you get a site that is completely open, and you put the bomb down knowing all the retake utility is still around, right? The reason why you default towards the A site, draw out utility so in the late round it doesn't exist. So you're careful about putting the bomb down, and you do. And then you have the lurk come out and it fails. And then you have another trade within the site that Elish finds, and suddenly Heroic aren't supposed to win this round at all. And then Tessas just starts chopping off heads from the side, and it feels like tragedy is about to strike once again. But finally, Halzerk has his chance to shine, comes through with the AUG, shaves down Nerds, and pushes Heroic into a timeout. And maybe the frustration can subside again a little bit here for complexity. A near two versus five out of nowhere with Tessas pressed close into the retake. Yeah. Because that is the beauty of that closest corner. When there's a lot of guys flooding off of the connector, it's tough to get you out of there. He's got support on the bomb site with him. They come rushing over the waterfall and it almost costs them everything. Complexity tie back up at 14, anybody's game. And for 2-0 nonetheless, to guarantee yourself three best of three opportunities to fight for the Royal Arena. This is a golden ticket, but we've only got one. Wallbang gets a bit of damage onto Grim, indicative of the numbers that Complexity have put inside of the A site out of the gate. It is indeed four defenders. And with a lot of utility pressure, they don't want Heroic to take this ramp for free. And that opens the door for Grim to take a bit of a gamble, pressing out around so Smoke. They, they peeled all the way back. This is actually kind of scary. The tease, they might think they have completely left instead. They're still waiting. The push comes down, it's punished. No, they have the wrong idea entirely. Heroic will absolutely punish after showing so many players and so much utility. Complexity can't believe their eyes. Smoke wall goes up. Late lurk from middle as well for Nertz. Cued. That gets cleared out. Elise is going to keep his presence of mind. And this deep boost on the backside continues to help the hold. Halzerk on the AUG presses out. Catches oh. them with damage, but they're both still alive. Oh my god. And Heroic will always keep fighting. Still though. 20 health between the two of them. There's another smoke for Kixan to try and set up Shush, who has been wonderful everywhere across this map, both sides. 15 seconds to the clock. They have to try to press this in, but it's also gonna be costly. Shush looking to go forward with the bomb plant. It's gonna be coverage from Kixan demanded. There's the pressure out. There's the clear of the okay. bomb site. And there's oh Complexity's 15. Yeah, it's a call out. It's beautiful here for Complexity after things go nearly. They went South African, okay, down that ramp with JT. <laughs> walking down there to get killed. And then uh, you'd think, okay, well, man, they have the wrong read. They get outplayed entirely here for Heroic who punish and then come up the ramp, but uh, they still are able to hold strong, get the trades. They have the high-low stack on the back of default as well as the back of the site. And the AUG does the rest of the work. This crisscross coverage between Halzerk watching short on the site box, right? Yeah. He has vision just over top of the site while combined with the boost on white. Heroic just walk into two separate angles and it costs them bodies, but at least they afford the full rebuy. Looking to challenge and push us to double OT. Again, you can feel this fight just oh, no. brewing. Grim oh, oh, oh. able to snap down on it. Kicks and falls. Nikodaz with the AWP has an answer. But there's a chance to depart if you're complexity. Grim will lock into this close corner and now no longer can he leave. Shush opens up the smoke, goes for the clear and takes him. That is big. That is right back to a 3v3. He's so good at that going fishing. Off the breaking open a smoke into the three on three. Anything goes at this point, complexity have to spread the map. They need to, I think this is the point of the round where you make either the blind gamble, stack towards the site and go for a retake, or you go for the reclear on an A ramp. But I don't know about spreading it just like this. They're kind of hoping it's A, keeping eyes on B at the same time. Floppy's got the smoke, Halzerg starts to come over. 
This is the fourth attempt that Complexity have had to close this map. That sea of utility bombards the B site. This could be Floppy's most glorious moment of the map through and around, but they pop open his cover. They take man advantage, and they could very well take the round with it. Halzerk survives the onslaught, but the frag grenade takes him out. And JT, how much can he do on his own? They've planted their bomb, they've pressed up against him, but they all do have half health. It's a tough one. It's a desperate attempt, but he has to try to fight forward. Close corner could be occupied. It's not. But as he inches closer, that op is already trained on him. One shot, oh. all they need. And Heroic, a fourth save in the face of a complexity win. And we have beautiful use of our new CS2 mechanics on display with the nade blowing open the smoke and the A ramp for Shush to get his first kill into a second one to expose Floppy, who was trying to phase it on the B defense in a situation where they obviously what we, they could have just stayed behind it and fought from there but they didn't expect a second nade to come out when they were trying to scale because that blowing that nade op that smoke open was optional for the T side to approach they could have gone in from the outside of the site but uh, heroic again really playing CS2 and we have seen teams play CS go way too much in this game oh nerd Bloodshed top mid. Grim sees it. Oh my god, he didn't notice it. What? He didn't see... Oh my god, this could turn into a full-on lurk if Nikodaz... This is really dangerous, obviously. Hulzerk's walking out right yeah, into the AK. Oh my god, how did he not see that? Oh, but it still might be okay. Oh god. Maybe not. Now it's a missed chance. You give away the boost as well, right? They know there's two CTs on lane. He goes for the shot and they all die with nothing. This is a calamity inside of the A site and it's flawlessness from Heroic. Oh, oh my God. Let's go! He was so hyper-focused down the ramp, just obviously it was still on his screen for sure. Nikodos walking right by that, creating a timing for himself that got Halzer killed. That is nightmare fuel. Yeah, it is. At least it didn't happen last round. We're still at the start of a new overtime. And we didn't get here because they're both playing perfect. Fair enough. It's a good warm up for the major complexity. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, you skip opening you, stage. You don't do the challenger stage. You got to get all your rounds in now. Yeah, getting their reps in, no doubt. Clean win versus pain to begin the day. You know, and the first day of every stage of the major is always gut wrenching for some. Everyone wakes up with a clean slate, wide eyes, and high hopes. Next thing you know, you're 0 2 and facing elimination three times. Or in the case of the winner of this match, 2 0. Imagine how great that would feel for Heroic. One round in the lead. JT, oh. bested by Nika Dawes again. Wow. It has been pure value on this rifle. What a ragtag group of gamers Heroic really is, right? The comeback of Nika Dawes. Finding Nerds in this lineup was almost like, oh God, are, are, is, he gonna, is he gonna have his potential wasted? Like there and was question marks around this Heroic when they formed. Yeah, but there was also intention. You know, they paid for Kicks End mm -hmm. to come in from Apex. Yeah, Saw handpicked him. Yes, and so grabbing Saw Saw picking kick sense. The scouting done for this team. Nice shot, oh. Shush. Elise is going to get bet. Nope, maybe not. Kick sense. He, he, he eats blind, a flash. Yeah. Nerds. He comes out from middle. A bit of a labored spray, but he will get there. And now Halzerk's flank may have to be huge. So really good timing on the flank, Nertz. actually. But what is happening right he now? It. He, he hears it. it. Yeah, he heard Nerds fall. Easy. No way Nerds says anything about this. But now we've got the two T's in sight on full alert. They're concerned that Elyse is still close, but he's given over that space. How will he play this with such low HP? With a fake plant first. He will have to squeeze water from stone from this position to be in the most normal rotator spot. If he gets a kill here. Hulzer trying to approach from an unorthodox side, jumping up over. What? Oh, Elyse snapshots down. Nikodos, your rifle's been hot, but this is a tough spot, and he's gonna <gasps> fall. Complexity, bring back this round. Wow. An instant headshot from Elyse in a position where he had to hit his first bullet. How was Kicksand flashed? When he comes around that corner into Elyse, Elyse has a grenade out. Yeah. I mean, it could have been CT or T-flash. 
After he got his first kill, maybe he was supposed to be turned. It's hard to say. I don't, it doesn't say in the kill feed, does it? Nope. Well, that means he wasn't flashed, Connor, so. But his arms are. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Counter-Strike, don't lie to me. Yeah, well, I mean, that would be a CT flash facing that way, unless it was, like, real early, mm. and then he continued to scale. And sometimes it is still best to keep running and uh, not clog up your teammates who are trying to get in behind you, but uh, either way, that was still around. Heroic could have won easily in that 2v2 with their HP and two CTs in known positions. Goddamn, with that, too, Elish sitting on the pretty 30 frags. Crazy to think that after getting this far into another overtime that this map could dictate your major. Mm -hmm. We already have FaZe and Vitality losing their opening game. I mean, we don't even know what's taking place on the other stream right now. <laughs> I have no Either clue what's blood, happening. The bloodbath that must be happening over there, so nobody is safe. No guarantees. We've learned that already. If you hadn't learned your lesson in the opening stage, Top 16's been just as topsy-turvy. Leash concerned about the wide swing out mid, which could very well be going down, but just Ooh, a little timid timing. Opens the nade, oh. but doesn't win the fight. Nika Dawes will come out on top. Seven health left over. Oh, who's beating him right now? Seven health, but he comes away with another 5v4. Opening duels for Nika Dawes. Flash in Grim, taking the fight. Tess full white. Interesting. I mean, Grim saw Tess leave. Oh, no. Bro. There's two players here. Grim, this could be huge, or... Oh, he walks in right. Embarrassing. Ugh. Another one Grim won't be proud of. JT toppled after his one frag. Nice shot from Elise. Second what? kill is three. Just like that. Everybody top ramps dead. He feels yeah. it. Oh. And he nails it. Tore through him like a piece of paper. What a spray down for Elise. You have to be able to spray completely blind. That's Jordan with his eyes closed at the free throw line practicing. He said you have to be able to spray completely while blind. And he did it. Johnny jabs with three knockout punches straight to the face of Heroic. Oh my god. <laughs> that second kill is ridiculous. Look at that laser you, focus. You can't even tell that he's blind at that, all. He is. That is a natural born killer. No, that's a trained killer. A champion of practice. And he goes again. A leash comes right back in. And it is just Nerds opping. It is just not Nikodaz opping in any situation so far this map. It's actually worked out quite well for Heroic. So we reset the energy. Double push down. How's there going to a good spot to hold this? <gasps> oh, he loses his duel. And As... no refrag. JT loses to kick Zan. And Heroic looking to take one back. Bomb in front of them. Floppy on the recovery mission. How much room do they give to him? He's concerned about the close corner and that potential sandbags peak. He's grabbed Bomb. But what are the options? Elise wants to move forward. The one player on Complexity who had the biggest individual boost when Elise showed up was Floppy, no doubt. And now the two of them looking to combine forces here in the fourth round of the double OT. Elise hits the ground, Nerd stoic on the angle, just sat back and waiting. And Floppy looking for some kind of an answer, some kind of highlight reel moment for him. And as he gets closer to sight, he's trying to piece it together. Good chance, as that short player's locked in. 15 seconds to the clock. And Floppy's gonna fake that plant one time, looking for the elevator kill. He had the right idea, but it's heroic with the win. Oh man, they kept up every step of the way right there with the opening kill into the Nerds op on short. So little utility left near the end of the round for any exec to come through. It's actually ridiculous how close this game is in terms of trades. JC's gotta get that one. You know, Halzerk puts himself in a good spot to get the kill, for sure. But then you think, 
if there's anyone else. That's That's got to be guaranteed. 19 to win it. Blind. 18 for another overtime. It'll need to be two straight for either team, and I don't know if you could predict that at this point. You get a lot of space given to them, but do you want to take this test to Shush again? Has he not taught you your lessons yet? A master of the B-Site craft. A jump up, oh. but he loses Nikodos. Shush is still in it, but very much alone. Nerd's trying to rotate out from CT spawn, and Shush will not let this site fall for free. Another volley of utility, and the nade's got his name on it. It's a bit of hesitation as they wait for the second half of their pack to show up. Another popped open nade, oh. and it is Heroic who thrive in those moments over and over. Halzerk with the wide swing, damage through smoke, and oh, what? again through! Halzerk pins him to the wall! And with Halzerk now back on quad, we get this creep out of nerds. He gets the best of the Norwegian, and it falls on the shoulders of Grimm, who, dare I say it, has left his team down oh in a God. few of these rounds already. They never got their plant. He will take his ticket and leave. Oh, I feel like his odds go down leaving the site. It makes it so scary, but planting at the same time would have been terrifying knowing nerds could push at any moment. So much of this match could come down to the way that this is played, and right now, nerds is hedging his bets, playing retake on the B site. He doesn't believe that Grim would leave, but he had the time to do it. So now Nurt, since he wasn't followed, can get this plant off and play it from anywhere. Are we going back to sandbags or are we going back to ramp? He goes are forward. We pushing forward with the bomb on default. He hears it. He hears it. Late reaction, but if Nurt isn't ready, Grim just hit the headshot. Oh. A few body <laughs> spams. All he needs, Woo. Grim with the around the world. And you know in those moments. Yeah, so it's so scary because you know you could be followed back to the A site if a gamble takes place. He has the site to himself, but he knows Nurse is right behind the smoke. It's so hard to know what the correct decision is, but he holds his nerve. That's the key, holds his nerve. The human psyche is a devilish thing. And as he rotated around with 10 health and four sets of eyes on him, knowing the moments that he has maybe let his team down already in this map, he had to pull up and he will. Guaranteeing 18, a sigh of relief for Grimm. In a map where he is still performing, 21 and 22, but that frag right there means more than all the others put together. It's been a forever war here for Complexity and Heroic in this matchup. and. Again, CT side has been favorable in certain spots. Are we going to get the Nikodos 5v4 opener with the rifle? That's been a consistent feature. The Johnny Jab spray down with this AK. In a clutch situation, are we going to have a Lurk pickoff on T side? How many ideas do you have left? This is the fifth round Heroic have faced the loss. And they have hung on for dear life in four. Man, Halzer absolutely saved them too. The two kills before Grimm. Laid the finishing blow. While Heroic opens smokes, it's Halzerk who shoots through them. A game of cat and mouse. As the smoke comes down behind JT. Oh, he, he snaps! Over to Shush of all people inside B. And JT's entry could be key. 35 to the clock. A CT scramble out of spawn flashes in the sky! Oh. And it's a leash to snap over while blind! Now just two left, a late mid play, and Complexity who walked into Copenhagen with question marks of five and with exclamation. Grim, two kills from top mid as Cole go 2-0. 2-0 for Complexity in this stage. And again, after an absolute journey, what a win over Heroic. They had to go through it all to nearly losing in regulation, to forcing an overtime and clutch after clutch later. Nikodaz on peak form. Shush with his B-side holds and Heroic ready to punish any mistakes. They still overcame it all. A huge signing, of course, for Complexity is a liege, and my god, worth his weight in gold. Stole oh, my line. That was exactly what I was going to say, Scrawny. And I'm sure we will be using a lot of superlatives to talk about um, that performance, uh, about complexity closing it out, but specifically about Elise Moses. Do you want to kick us off? Yeah, I mean, like, look, you can you can see what makes this guy such an exciting player and has made him so important for the North American scene. Every team he's been on Liquid and Complexity being really the only two, but yep. he's got it all. He's got good utility. He's got spray control, decision making. He's a playmaker and a clutcher. This this was a beast mode performance from Elise, and you. 
you had the supporting cast as well, which is where we kind of had some of our doubts in the pregame as well, right? It was like the shakiness of Halls or what we're mm. going to get, the shakiness of Floppy, the shakiness of JT and Grim. And actually, in regulation, I was sitting there, I was like, this is actually a cool game because if you're a North American fan, a complexity fan, you got to be happy at the fact that you're seeing it down the lineup, down the stretch into the roster. Everyone's playing some good Counter Strike. Yeah, I agree with you, but I do think once complexity hit that moment of intensity at 300 percent it was elite <laughs> sure, it was yeah. elite like, yeah i mean all the, the important spray, kills there's yeah. going to be a couple of highlights of spray that are actually mind-boggling and it's the fact that as the game prolongs and it becomes more and more intense he is the one that's going to have these snappy transfer multi-kill spray control i mean the guy ends up it's, with like 35 plus kills it's actually ridiculous it's actually one of his most endearing qualities is when he does something crazy even he is like oh that's crazy <laughs> we heard him shout it out in the arena when he got that triple kill spray down he was like oh that's insane did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You can earn it. You can have yeah, that one. You can take it. Uh, that's the, that's the one you're talking about? Yeah, and it's just, just like, that That should never happen. He's and blind. It, exactly, yep. yeah. That should never happen. Like, if you're a heroic, like, what? How can you even be upset about it? No, like, no. You had the right spacing. You had a flash. You had a I couple know. of flashes to swing on it, and then you get triple killed, blind spray. Like, great. Yeah. Why am I even trying? And, and I think Scrawny touched on it at the end as well, just clutches at, towards the end of it as well. Halzerk had some great late round plays. Grim wins that one on one against Nerds as well, you know, going from the B bomb site to the A bomb site. And uh, it's crazy to see. I mean, just, they just outlasted Heroic. Like, you can't mm. really pinpoint this loss on any one detail, any one consistent detail. This is just outlasting and always having a rebuttal to the plays that your opponent is making. Maybe one thing we could pinpoint is that before OT started, Nerds had five kills. Sure. Yeah, he had, he had a, a little bit yeah. more, but you're right. I think that was, a, that was a point. I just think that by his positioning and the decisions that were made by Kixen, he didn't get a whole lot of love, mm -hmm. right? He was playing middle, most of the time stable, not a lot of movement. He didn't see many opponents. Towards the very end, he had one multi-kill when he got finally challenged mm -hmm. by Complexity. And the next round, immediately you saw that movement coming through with the push towards T-Spawn. But yeah, it can be a... a I mean, I, I hope you have an interesting newspaper to read because middle sometimes is just boring. Middle sometimes does just suck. I think, he, I think he was just really uninterested. I uh, just had like, a, like one of those games where he was probably just frustrated because we saw him picking up the towards the end as yeah. well. He had the AWP a couple of times where Nikodaz was playing with the rifle. We saw him push mid a couple of times towards the end of the game. It's like, he's just like, you gotta call I've, been, I've been bored for 25 rounds. Can I can I do something? <laughs> I see. Okay, so that was kind of the cause of it. <laughs> that's, that's, I don't know. That's, that's well, what would be going through my mind if I got five kills going in. It's just, we're not we're not going to stand here and say, when you play middle, you're never going to get kills. That's not true. But it's a matter of how you play it and how you integrate it in the sort of a grand scheme of things. Like, Elish had moments when he was there, but then he's the plus one on well, the B side. He's got the rotation on the A. He, again, he had also a Movement. what your opponents are doing as well like if you're not getting attacked in middle like that that part kind of sucks i'll say this for complexity though too there was some there was some really good calling we were commenting on this towards the end of regulation it felt like complexity really straight away and went away from really messing with a ramp they got stopped like once or twice traumatized once yeah and they were just kind of like ah, you know we don't want to do that anymore and fair play to jt because he called some sick tactics and sick calls to hit the beat bomb site where shush was having a good game and they still came out on top and were able to kind of batter him back and take over that bomb site but i was real nervous towards the end of, of the game with complexity's t side feeling one like one dimensional but you can't mess with a win can't mess with it if it works yeah exactly and i mean i guess as an na fan and you know their ability to sometimes tilt i think that heroic won a couple of rounds that could have put complexity on edge if you're really thinking about some of the clutches kickstand has one on a couple as well on the b side and you were even watching and thinking no what are you doing these are moments where they could potentially just completely drop off and they haven't and i think it's worth a little bit of praise as well well, the again, that, that goes to the Elish factor, right? Because like I, I, remember one, I remember one round, like the three on three in like double overtime when uh, Floppy pushes through that smoke towards the top of the stairs. I was like, no, please just play together. Why aren't you all three like setting up a crossfire behind this smoke in the bomb site? It could be easier. And then the next round is Elish's triple kill spray down. So you forget about those little miscues. Definitely is gone. You forget about <laughs> those miscues real quick. Oh, we're going to see this one again, I think. Well, this is the Elish moment, right? Yeah. This way it changes completely. Uh, here, Grim. By the way, he just shouted very loudly a, a word that a I'm big, not allowed to a repeat. Big <laughs> a big well, F-bomb yeah. was dropped at this very moment. And you can see the spacing here on the side of Heroic is close to perfection. It's going to be a pop flash. They all, but they all walk into this incredible spray. Wow. Uh, okay. Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah, exa that's exactly <laughs> what it is. That's exactly what it is. Poor, I, don't even, I don't even know how to attack this angle. It's just like... Yeah, maybe the flash was 0.5 seconds too nah. late for heroics. Like, what am I even doing? And the guy who throws it is just like, now you're just being a dick. <laughs> He's like, like, come on, maniac. Really? Like, surely you have to accept that this was just great. Like, yeah, I guess you get a point. Yeah. It was just great. It was good. It was really, really great to see. And we don't need to or like to venture too much into like body language per se. But I do think Alicia is like one of those players that 
in the past. Sometimes you do see sure. when it is up against it, you, you see it on his face. And I didn't see that once when I saw it on the cameras in this game. Um, he had a few moments okay. where he was a little tense. I think I he did a good job at masking it. No, but that's a positive. Listen, yeah, every, player, every player in a double overtime is going to have a few yeah. tense moments in there. But I'll say that's that's kind of the story of Elise joining this roster is having to grow up and, and, and like really learn that when you become this figure within a team like Complexity doesn't have the experience of the Liquid mm. prior to this, yeah. you have to have a lot more emotional it's stability. More scrutiny on you have to be a little bit more of an example to the rest of the team. Well, uh, led by example, for sure. That means Complexity is on two and zero at the end of this day, so they will have a chance to directly qualify tomorrow playoffs. to the playoffs. That mm -hmm. is pretty insane. Uh, but we have some more matches coming up. In fact, G2 versus Navi after this. I'm my quad. Oh, you should talk now. You should do it now. Quad. now. And then Mike, we in like three seconds, so it looks yeah. like a big fake. And then we walk up the air, keep your arm on his quad. Yeah, I'm ready, Molly. I'm taking now. up now. Passion. I'm ready. The smoke from the ball. Molly. 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 I'm flaking window, I'm flaking window. Big vision. Out of the smoke, stream, stream, stream. 5v2, guys. Oh, oh, no! 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 Level up your gaming space with metal posters from Displate. Paint your Displates in seconds. Swap them whenever you like. Get official art from your favorite games on a uniquely designed metal canvas and choose from thousands of posters. Join over 3 million collectors now. Your wall upgrade is here. Shop now at Displate.com. remains the same. Victories with one x bet. Well, one of G2 or Na'Vi will move on to 2-0 and zero and will have a chance to qualify directly into the playoffs tomorrow, but then they have to, of course, win a best of three as well. This one is still a best of one, and I'm personally really, really excited for it. When you look into the history between those teams, though, uh, it looks like Na'Vi usually gets the upper hand, right? So w what does that mean? No, you're right. I think there were a couple of reference games early in the year where G2 was definitely not looking their best, and Na'Vi surprised a few people. Uh, but I do think that the situation is a little bit different now. Um, mostly because we've seen the resurgence of Nico on short term and also Hunter had this great game versus Furia. So I would I would say we have to be careful with the reference games between G2 and Navi then. Mm -hmm. It's small sample size, isn't it? We got to see if that's going to carry on into this match. But obviously you got to love what you saw earlier today. I, I love what I great. saw. I was just watching G2 get like a wanted the security checks. It was great. I, think, that, I think they probably missed <laughs> they probably missed a couple of stuff on Monacy as well. Like, are you sure you want to do that check again? Yeah, yeah, one more time. Oh, well, let's start there because Monacy did have a great game versus Furia earlier today. It was really that duo of um, Monacy and Nico, I will say, Furia let them have Inferno, and I did not know what they expected there, but it went just about how you would think. Yeah, absolutely. I think Inferno and just Monacy in G2 for that matter is the perfect example of how you are going to exploit the golden goose that you have. Mm -hmm. G2 know how to make the best out of a player that has been one of the most in shape individuals we have yep. in CS2, undebatable, and the amount of space and resources he's getting, but he's delivering good on it. It's like, it's the trade is fair. It's good 
good business. He's out there, he's taking space, he's taking duels, he's over-rotating. You see the defense is shifting and moving so he can have that kind of movement that he wants to, but he's delivering. Hell, yeah. I'd do the same. I mean, to be fair, I'm playing would my you career. Do the same? Kenny S, <laughs> I was like, going to say, yeah. Yeah. He, you I had a pretty good offer yourself. You, you want my shirt as well? <laughs> Just, <laughs> <laughs> take it all, take baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that, I mean, the nice thing, obviously, modestly, you've been able to level a lot of criticism over at G2 to, at the start of CS2 in a lot of different areas. Modesty's not one of them. Guy just no. picked up CS2 he's and incredible. he's been ready to go. He's one of those ultra nerds that's picked everything up as he's gone and he just continues rolling. Yeah, and he's uh, definitely the guy you're looking at in terms of if G2 is going to make a deep run at this major. Of course, we can't remember. It wasn't what they wanted last year. It wasn't what they wanted in Rio at all. In fact, they didn't make it. So we're looking to the future as well. And I think the same goes for Navi. Um, you know, y you want to see them make a deep run. Can they get it together? And to do that, who or what has to level up? Let's well, I, I think... Oh, I just wanted to listen to that for half a second. What they say? I really think... Oh, I will tell you later. Okay. Uh, I have no idea, actually, <laughs> here. But what I really like about this Navi is I feel like the, the conversation is a polar opposite to G2, which is in G2, we have assessed the individual talent and we say, hey, let's level up this, the, this playbook a little bit, you know, the map pool and all of that. Sure. In Navi, I feel like the conversation is the other way around. Mm -hmm. like you have a good basis, sound basis. We know the Counter-Strike LXB likes to play, but hey, turn some of these players into superstars. Like who are going to take over? Who are going to give us games which logic necessarily isn't needed? You just have someone that pops off massively. Wonderful, JL, Ime. I think the conversation is completely different than the G2 one. Yeah, and it's also it's also kind of like they're, they're still in discovery mode to a certain extent, right? Because there, there's two big things I think that hit Navi pretty hard. One of them is obviously the departure of Simple and the greatest player stepping down from the lineup, obviously not out of the organization at this point. But, you know, can how do you how do you actually replicate what he was bringing to the team in terms of fragging, in terms of production inside the server? And the other one is the big gamble they took after Paris on Ima, because that hasn't paid off. And you have to say it, as much as, you know, I, I enjoy Ima, he's not at the level he was at the Paris Major. That was a huge gamble to say, this guy was MVP quality. We think we can replicate that. We think we we saw signs that that can be there again in the future, and it hasn't quite happened yet. So yeah, you are trying to get people to give you a little bit more than they have previously. Maybe he's heard you. Yeah, probably. Cheeky tongue. It's possible. Um, they do have the Alexi B factor, and he has a special skill when it comes to playing his old teams. Yeah, he's he's been pretty dominant against his old roster. We've all seen these graphics kind of flying around, and obviously, depending on how far back you want to go, I think like the, the big number that's always pretty to look at is 18 and 2. I'm not a huge fan of yeah, that. What do you think about that, Jason? Just because, well, I mean, look with some of the old orgs, right? OG, NIP, these are teams that have eternally struggled to put together competitive rosters of constantly change. But in the context of this match, obviously the big one is the 4-0 over G2. Beat them twice in series play at the Blast Groups this year. Mm -hmm. beat, them, beat them back at the Blast World Finals in 2023. That was CS2 as well. And then obviously beat them once at the Blast Groups uh, in spring in 2023 also. So, I mean, they have their number. And Alexi B has had their number, but he hasn't had to play, as we mentioned earlier, the G2 where Hunter and Nico are starting to look comfortable in CS2. So there is that kind of added benefit where we are find, kind of going to find out if that is there, can Alexi B do it again? Well, I, w I will say I'm ready to give uh, Nico the leniency for you might have had a couple of rough weeks and then you're coming back to life. I think for Hunter, the conversation has been much deeper than that. Okay. Honestly, I yeah. think his 2023 is saved on account of Katowice and Cologne because these are pop-off moments right. and he is an absolute big game player. We know that is, but I think sometimes it masks the rest of the year, which was very quiet, too quiet for a player of his quality. So the game against Fury, I was like, yeah, I'm ready to get excited, but also should we? I, th I think we should. I'm ready to get excited. excited. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, yeah. I fell alone, I, mean, I, 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 I thought you were going to react. I don't know. Get in. I step on your toes. Anyways, uh, we're going to nuke, though. Oh, well, at least it's not vertigo. Let's say that. Yeah. That's right. That's not vertigo. <laughs> <laughs> we have that going for us. Hey, listen. If we're talking about hyper carries, Monesi and Nico, they can put on a clinic on you. Yeah. It is definitely a map where you're going to get exciting moments from these guys. Obviously, you want to see here on camera. Ooh, on the side of Navi, though. Hey, Ime had a couple of moments. In fact, in some of these wins that we're mentioning between G2 and Navi, Ime had moments where he put Nico in a box. He put him in his pocket. He stepped on it like your cheeseburger that's, that's waiting for you in the green room God, getting cold it's right be now. So cold. That's exactly what he did. He oh. let the fries get soggy. He had kept ketchup or mayo or no, something you didn't mayo. want. Ketchup is the superior. That happened a couple times. Yeah. What happened today? Well, that's 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 kind of half-ass Nico. We don't we don't we don't worry no, about we don't that. Want one. That we got anymore. full power Nico today. Yes, but mayo is the superior economy. <laughs> oh. On that note, <laughs> Navi versus G2 if it's scrawny and launders. <laughs> Actually, shocks mustard exists. Yes, I, I co-signed that one. Or chili mayo. We are yeah. in Denmark, where I that have is... seen shocks drink a whole bottle of mayonnaise, though. So I wouldn't yeah. do that with mustard. I can say that much. Yeah, that's a hard sort of bar the... to jump over. I think it's kind of gross too. It's disgusting, it's shocks. Disgusting that shocks. one you did that that one time, but uh, yeah. she is from Belgium or whatever. So yeah, it's one of those weird places. Yeah. Hmm. 
<clears throat> Anyways, shall we? <laughs> Let's G2, go. G2 Esports and Navi lock and horns on Nuke. That's right. We're going to Nuke. I think it's the perfect map for this one to go down. And after the, you know, momentum I saw on G2's start to the major, off of the back of some pretty impressive wins at the RMR, and we can't get blinded by RMR results, but today started excellently for G2 Esports and the promise of Nico and Monacy coming together at the right moment here at the Copenhagen Major. Yeah. Feels like the odds could be higher. And if they d if we didn't see Furia get better throughout the opening stage, mm -hmm. then we would say, okay, well, it's just Furia. Maybe they're playing bad. Correct. But they got better and better. So G2 thrashed through a well-practiced and battle sort of... Battle hardened. Yeah, hardened. That's the word. Mm -hmm. I got you. Oh, my God. Because of shots like this. Nasty little one-tap. Ooh, nope. You're not going to jump mm. on Nexa. He protects Nico. Alexi in the vent. Hello. Not going to happen. We do indeed get the double kill out of Emet, but we also have now two CTs stuck back sight. Meanwhile, I think Bomb made it down the vent. Yeah, it's running for the B plant. So Nico starts to hold off on vent, allows one player to drop down, and will forego control of vent. So we're going to get the bit versus hunter fight. Oh, it ain't pretty. Wait, what? But both take players any whiff. And Bit is trying to get his kill here, but it's looking a little rough. Hunter will get oh. the rest of what was left, and with one bullet in the mag, Emez dead. I can't believe Bit didn't hit a shot. He didn't hit one shot, right? Did, he, did he click? Yeah. Ah, he must not have clicked. I that's think that's the, the problem. only way that he could have missed that. Never seen Bit, Bit missed an entire mag of anything in his career so far. That's uh, That would be pretty surprising. But remember when the last time that that happened was? No. Kragen. Ah. Oh. And then what did we get? 139 ADR on the map. Life okay. Game. So let's see if that is the same thing that's about to happen a bit. In an inexplicable missed mag of USP bullets. The most pertinent stat, uh, of course, is Alexi B's record versus his old teams. Being up 4-0 and zero versus G2 since joining Na'Vi. <laughs> that's insanity. That was a really cool stat to have. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It is it is this really cool aura about him. As you know, far the as, numbers don't lie. And as far as I understand, um, Navi have had an extended boot camp um, after qualifying directly to elimination. We heard from James Banks, 15 days of boot camp straight to here, right? No go home, three days at home to kind of digest what's happened and then back into the action, much like a vitality formula. No, they went from boot camp to the battlefield. And while Hunter charges into the A site, Hunter getting back into form will be a welcome sight for sore eyes. I'll say that much. Oh, oh JL comes back. What? And, what? He doesn't turn? Monacy's trying to save this oh, bit. Oh, He's in the back of the Ooh. site. Okay, thank goodness Monacy exists. There's only six <laughs> seconds left on the clock, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody chill. You could have tucked and taken that fight on a, on different terms, but Monacy hit a clutch couple of kills. Literally just walked out. Easy. I guess Nexa, Nexa was preoccupied for good reason. Someone about to peek him in heaven. And I suppose Monacy is, you know, hot on the heels of the Zeus push from JL. Monacy just bought a Zeus back. Or rather, brought the... Actually, sorry. Remember that, oh, Monacy Zeus? Never mind. I forgot. Zeus's move forward. That's not his Zeus. He picked it up. Monacy Zeus out of heaven. What tournament? Was that Kato? Uh, yeah, when he like jumped out. Yeah, he jumped out heaven door. Went up the ladder, jumped out the back. Mm -hmm. That movement on full display. I think Monacy's top one this year is coming. Really? Yeah. Whoa, big words. I know there's a lot of... Amazing players playing insane right now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, though, we see the top player get bogged down by a poorly performing team. Yes, but it wouldn't be the first time Nicely that they done. still got number one. Hello, Hooksy. Oh. Nice shot. Okay, okay. Aye, okay. But then throws caution to the wind. All and good things come to an end. Bit will make sure that there is no more tomfoolery out of another local, right? We were talking about Danes here in the Copenhagen Major. Yeah, true. We didn't get the Astralis boys, but we do have Hooksy, a legend in his own right. Bit all the way back to CT, trying to lock horns with the top main player, but that garage distraction's coming for Nexa to flank out hell. 
JL is very elusive here. He's getting all the way back tucked behind main, but it's a G2 Esports 3-0 T-side start in a best of one versus Navi on Nuke at the PGL Copenhagen CS2 Major. Whoa! Almost betting my head off. The circumstances are the only thing that make uh, a game exciting, right? The difference between your matchmaking game, a scrim, an official, a LAN match, a playoff game, a major grand final. It's the same Counter-Strike game, just different circumstances. So that's why Connor just had to say all those words just now, because you better believe you're watching the first CS2 major and all the head-to-heads that Alexi B has had versus the old team with success is great, obviously. It's a great stat to have. But the one match that matters is going to be the one here. This one here right now. I'm sure he's not even thinking about the head-to-head -head necessarily, but simply beating the opponent that's in front of him. That's the goal of Navi, and that is also the goal of G2. Alexi B has never struck me as the kind of guy that gets too bogged down in those sorts of gimmicks. Nah, yeah. You know, I bet you he likes that aura about him. But I don't think he thinks yeah. about it. Yeah. I've always respected him. I mean, no matter how much you talk to him, he'll never really talk down his past teammates or anybody who he's had a beef with or anything Little like fast, that. Huh? Monacy, right in. You're going to chase down these pistols. You're going to be what? met by the Nova. They thought they had the oh. charge. JL. What is he up to? A Zeus kill and a double Nova. <laughs> and he's only got five kills to talk about. G2 chewing off a little more than, excuse me, G2 biting off a little more than they can chew. Mm. Tough to chew when you get your teeth knocked out. I'm honestly thought you were just going to ego rush out from Hut, and that Nova just wallops him upside the head like a baseball bat. There's a chance for Nexa to maybe recover this. He's got the time, but it's the fact that there's still three sets of feet on A. A slowly creeping flank. AK's picked up to boot. And that top hut player serving up a distraction. No. Navi get no. their first by way of double five seven, double yeah. Nova. Yeah. Uh, a great shots, by the way, from JL here with the Nova. Thought Simple left the team. They still got shotguns on the A side of Nuke. He's still here in spirit. Plus $1,800 in the bank off those first two kills. Damn right. That is an excellent way to just kickstart what was supposed to be a little half buy into all of a sudden full-fledged guns and a shaky economy for G2 to deal with. We, again, in a best of one MR12, a round like that, Nico tries to slip through main, eats a flash, still recovers. Gotta know the whole thing blind, that's what Alish said. A wonderful kill from Heaven. Emep pressing against the Tech 9's shoulder, but he shoots first, and that's gonna give Nexa all he needs hmm. to gun him down. Maybe don't use all your ammo in that situation. We get this walk around outer from Hell to main, comes bit with a peek off JL. The floor is occupied here by Navi. And Nexa keeping himself crouched with his head off the angle. Can't manage a second kill in this one. JL has been the recovery mission in so many of these rounds already. Bit hanging on. Gets the shadow advantage. And now it's going to fall onto Hunter in a 1v3 clutch. You get this frag, you fight for heaven. That's his next duel, whether he knows it or not. The player slips down to sight. Yeah, they've got Vent covered, right? Leave. So Interesting. I, I think... This much is known, though, that he left and went maybe squeaky. Oh. Timing. Oh, it's so damn close. Got spotted. But wonderful still. Knows that he's eventually going to go downstairs. It's only a matter of time before Hunter dies, Connor. They've already got one lower. Done. Just like that, Navi going to close out two alive for their second round win. All right. So JL walked. So the rest of the team could run on the full rifle rounds. Let's see if they can really do him justice in a follow-up. Tell me why Wonderful is a great choice for Navi. I think Wonderful is a Wonderful's a great player. I think he's a great offer as well. He's not someone who is repurposed to become an op. Um, I think that he's not he's not simple in the way that he plays at all. Uh, but they have talked about picking up someone with a a more sort of uh, 
passive playstyle. I want to use that word, even though it's like a little loaded um, in a negative connotation, but a more a jame like playstyle, more shiro like playstyle to try to work around. I think it's easier to structure for a coach like Bit, sorry, like uh, uh, a coach like Blade to structure around an opera that plays more in the back. You can play more chess with the map, and I think that's worked out actually quite well with Wonderful. And I think when he is comfortable, he's incredibly consistent. And I think the only thing they need to do is dive into more pick plays for him to get him set up and be more active in structured ways. Because okay. I don't think he would go out and do it by himself. There's no doubt he has the potential. That one I feel like we've seen time and time again. Harnessing it, weaponizing it. That is the new quest of this Navi roster. Like, no question about his floor. I'd say he's pretty malleable. He's ready to become and ev like evolve into a new player, which we've seen over the last six months. And uh, he doesn't miss easy shots. So I think all those things are really, really good qualities to get into a position with a team that's trying to grow together. And additionally, in the moments of his career where he has been sent back to a lesser team, he has very much made it clear that he is better than that tier two caliber, right? He doesn't belong down in those depths. So mechanically unquestionable. Hooksy has managed to get down the fence. He's got Bit to dance with downstairs, but it is a bit of a ruse trying to shake up the Navi defense. How far does he think Bit will go, though? He's a, he could actually get caught off here inside of the vent. No, Hooksy's safe from this side. Of course, that's why he's holding from here. There's one approach that Bit could use. Let's see if he clears him. Wow. Oh man, hunted him down. Mm. Bit will find you. Now that lower hook, it's taken out of the lip of Navi. They stand on full force with Alexi leaning back. We get this Nico challenge from credit card and he loses the fight to Alexi. Did a ton of damage. But still, unfortunately for G2, it's a 3v5 from this point forward. You've lost map control twice. Alexi B just gonna tuck in behind blue. Hunter cautious to come at him with this tucked hut player as well. Nima, however, doesn't win the fight, and Alexi B still concerned about Garage. Yeah, actually being very careful right here. Hunter was about to watch him. 30 seconds as they do come back for Alexi. He's gonna get swept away. But and the now, bomb spotted above ground at 25 seconds. They evened it out. Oh, oh, next up, pops up, rocks Wonderful's world, and JL's gonna have to lean back a site to try to stop this. 10 seconds left. Flash goes over top, and they have finagled this three oh. versus five. G2, oh. thanks to Hunter, so bring it back. Yeah, and also Nexus shot inside of heaven. The thing was that even though Alexi died outside, the bomb cannot make it downstairs. Spit is in vent. They have secret covered. It's too far away to get to ramp. There's no way they can do anything except go up or usually that should be the end of your round, right? But instead, Nexa hits this shot. Wonderful could have camped out both Squeaky and Mini or re-cleared Squeaky with JL and there would have been no way at all for G2 to win. So great shot to save the day. And they send Navi back to the drawing board. Nice to see that level of mechanics from Nexa because on previous teams with OG, he was trying to carry the tor torch and the burden on himself. And when we go back to the RMR for G2, right? We don't get to see a lot of them, but what we did get to see was a significant uptick in performance from Nexa and from Hunter. And those are the two pieces that suddenly start raising the G2 floor. Yeah, we didn't know if, if Hunter was going to be, basically if he was going to be good at, at, at CS2. At like, all. He was suffering for quite a bit. Um, and it was getting worrying that he really had lost his groove. There, I mean, there both... was a tension on the fact that Monacy was so good that yep. Nico took a little bit to get good and we didn't know about him, but then Hunter all the while was struggling sort of the longest. Honestly, kind of both the Kovacs lose their mojo at the start of CS2. And that's some valuable Counter-Strike DNA. Nico has found his footing. And while it took Hunter a little while longer, it seems like he is in that boat now. Or at least he was in Romania for the RMR. For G2's sake, he needs to hang on to it. Oh, that is close. <laughs> the smoke popped open, but the T still crossed. Yeah. Now they still might be suspicious of one getting by as Nico. Getting out of dodge and wonderful with the perfect timing on the approach. Top hut player in Emma is full blind, ends up dying. Wonderful, does the rest. Then Boots on the ground. Outside, they'll lose one. Hunter looking for the trade frag on the low HP player. 
Monacy makes a rumbling downstairs, but look at this. Hunter and Alexi not crossing oh. each other's paths. Wait. This game is a matter of millimeters, and does he get in? Oh. You're joking. Spotted. But what does he think is going to happen? But of course. Secret player is going to come for him, perhaps. Yeah, but no. Hunter's going to ramp, so they're, they're just going to go lower, and Alexi just has to make sure that he's not up in heaven. It's another situation where Hunter is tailed, and it reveals the setup entirely. Back on clock here is Bit. It's his, his round to lose, essentially, as Hunter comes up on the approach. He should be on high alert, and that's exactly why he is of two minds. Juggling between the positions, Monacy also his victim. So Bit stamps his name on the lower bomb site. You can come to expect Bit to do good things on B. For sure. Him and Monacy, obviously great friends from the Academy League. Both having uh, played for Navi Jr. at one point, and... Monacy, you know, narrowly not going to Na'Vi simply because Simple existed. Like, if there was, you know, one player that couldn't be replaced on almost any team in that exact role, it would have been uh, Simple. But, you know, they didn't want to let him go to uh, any team. Especially not one that could end up beating Na'Vi in the future. But he's been worth uh, every penny of that 600k. Alexi's been so elusive outside. Yeah. And I feel like it's a testament to his play style. It's no simpleton. What's Monacy up to? This Toying is, with Ema? This is why you should never live on a lower floor. People just jumping around on top of you. I literally live on the top floor. And when I drop things on the ground, I think... You smile. That's my right. <laughs> Honestly, as a Zeus, there's a small chance he comes flying off of the top of Mini. I don't know what G2 here do besides contact explode. Next, uh, okay, well, okay. Yeah, that's what you look for. He gets into main. He's got his Zeus out. Oh. Look at that. Into the AK, into the headshot. Wonderful has now fallen, and both CTs are confirmed. They've just got to get this bomb over. I swear to God, if they win this round, nice kill from Bit at least. Bomb drops down to B, and Monacy what? has picked up another. He jumps off main, chases Ema with the Zeus into the AK, and then doubles down. <laughs> The T-side Zeus, some say impossible, not for the flash. He's there in an instant. It is brilliant. <laughs> How does he even find a route? Let alone get the AK and get that much value out of it. <laughs> what an unreal play, man. And there's so many players that are as flashy as Monacy that aren't nearly as efficient in structured rounds at the top level. He's a unicorn in that regard. He's got the mechanics. Or as Tony would say, you know, he's got the brains and the balls. Truly plays like anything is possible. They steal that back from the Nexa Desert Eagle into the Zeus AK upgrade. Now Navi a little desperate to try and get their kills back. They've done damage to Hooksy, Nexa, and Hunter, but you've still got Monacy to deal with. In a 3v4 with lesser weapons. That's an electrifying way to get G2 back into the lead. And then Hooksy is the next one to fall. Still Monacy playing with the full health. A chance to chase Wonderful down if they really want it. But met by a smoke, they'll hold. And we already saw just last round, G2, very content to just take their hands off the mouse and keyboard, play it slow. This time they decide to challenge, looking to gun down the offer. Wonderful missing a shot. That one's going to be what costs them ramp control. Down to the B site, they shall sprint. And Alexi B tasked with the one versus two clutch. Yeah, and we'll try to come in inconspicuously through control side. No window broken open. I'm sure they would have had to think about this. Alexi, maybe there's a chance he catches one off, and they're falling back to some usual positions. 
grenade for the door, flash on the window, still trying to just get some kind of contact. It is Monesty locked into dark. It is Hunter further back on ramp. Sees nothing on the approach. Now suddenly that save seems a little too tantalizing, so they try to go tit for tat with G2 in an aggressive lobby punch. They throw out a couple jabs, and ultimately it's G2's sixth on this T side. Yeah, you know, have Wonderful just there as a turret, basically, inside of Ramp Room, waiting for the kills to come to him. He's playing it slow. I kind of like what he's doing right there. Um, but eventually he doesn't get away, and they don't have the material advantage just yet. So, man, there's a very interesting structure to this game. I mean, first of all, it's been zany. I feel like we're watching Lynn Vision again, like, <laughs> seriously, with the am amount of situations okay. that have taken place. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, we do have who's he on the screen here, so... Oh man, that Zeus round is going to leave Navi singed because they try to play the last with the half buy. Now they're coming in with just pistols. I mean, the fact that that's what reopens this door for G2. And think about how long they just sat on top of main waiting and waiting until Nexa catches somebody asleep at the wheel. Oh boy. But you know what? JL started this fight. He's, he got the first Zeus early on. Nexus survives it. This is what they were doing in boot camp, just looking for a Zeus angle. 15 days of practicing <laughs> Zeus spots. Yeah. Start your day with some deep breathing, cardio, and then Zeus lineups for an hour. All right. Something, need, but it's yeah. taken back by Monacy. Right place, right time once again. Who is very quickly paving the path to the 2-0 start in Copenhagen with Navi's dead bodies. Next has been used a pretty efficient lurker so far this half. I have to say, in the big picture of things, the thought of G2 just quickly running into the playoffs, you know, a swift reminder mm. that you can't count G2 out. Yeah, I mean... Listen, you never know what G2 you're going to get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you never know. All that matters for them is right now, they are having a great start, and they look very well prepared, and obviously their key pieces are on point. Today we're getting the one that I like to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's beautiful here is it's... It's one of those teams, again, like almost every matchup versus G2 is fun to watch. So it's like yes. you're always cheering for them to be good at the game because mm -hmm. the whole game benefits from it. You know, Monacy was up there in the starting best of one. He had Nico right with him, right? The two stars aligning, and it felt so good. There's no kit, right? No, okay. Just looking for the Zeus exit. I said it once, I'll say it again. A sight for sore eyes to see Hunter doing this well. 12-7 yeah, yeah, yeah. on the T side. You know, was, picking up the slack that Nico has left. He was trading very, very well um, on the map earlier today. Bit of a frustrating situation for sure for Navi. I mean, I, f I feel like because of the nature of the way they've lost these rounds, you'd just be angry just because, I don't know, like there's not much more you could have done about it, but you know you could have won these rounds with just a touch more awareness in a certain spot or with the way that G2 are playing, approaching these rounds in such crazy fashion and Monacy having his way with basically the entire map. Do it whenever he damn well pleases. Yeah. I mean, playing it back, it makes sense, man. Anybody falling back from main, trying to tuck behind CT vent, that's all Zeus territory. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the mind first goes to stationary positions that are close enough to get Zeus kills, but soon we'll watch that develop into the T-side aggressive Zeuses. You know, short on Vertigo, for example. I've seen a couple Zeuses running up that lane. But there's far more than electricity in this round. We've got M4s back up. We've got very little utility though for Navi and an entire volley of util about to come out from G2 to the A site. They'll hold off. That was the last smoke grenade that Navi had to throw. And already we've had instances of G2 burning down the clock to find success. Could be a good angle here for JL. Yeah, he mm -hmm. picks it perfectly. Yeah, he's been problematic for G2 inside of Hut. That sucks he executed. And uh, a trophy push all the same. So, I mean, uh, again, another situation where how do Navi let this go? Just got to hit shots. J2 
JL waiting for that hot push. His teammate's doing a great job, as well. is he. <laughs> okay, yeah. No nades needed. They absolutely That's stopped that one in its tracks. They all picked great spots. Yep. Hit some great shots. Good half from JL. This half was so individualistic, you know, more than it was sort of a team. I don't want to hand out team-based accolades based on what happened. There was so many highlights, uh, so many unique situations, and just <laughs> so many Zeus's. So many. <laughs> <laughs> wild that that round is what powers G2 to end up getting essentially three off of the back of it. Mm. The Zeus round was a robbery. The half buy and the follow-up wasn't enough for Navi to hang on, and then they got the anti-eco, so... Jail happy to grab one more before Navi have to start this T-side endeavor, but fair to say, G2 definitely did enough on the offense. Absolutely. Yeah, they're going to be the ones who are comfortable now. But nothing's promised. You know how Navi go on T-side. They're going to make this excruciating if they have to. Nico outside Nuke. It's a welcome scene. We'll see whether he can kick it up a notch because he was pretty absent throughout the success of G2's offense. Yeah, but he got the first kill on the pistol. Remember that? Mm-hmm. And now they'll call on him for the CT side. This is where Nico gets that record right back up to that of Hunter. Watch. Speaking of Hunter, inside of the vents. Here's the approach of Navi. Oh, E-Man, not being shy about making sound and so that's delivers. A tide, that's a tide changer right there. They got vent control, CT's guessing a bit. Another T walking out of the HUD and Hooksy doesn't find it. Nice. Monacy gonna shove them right back down that vent. That can be the bomb to go plant at B, and if it does, it kind of speaks of the desperation to get something out of this pistol. It's just that it can be chased so easily. Wonderful, we'll get into the site, smokes down, can't spam it. Monacy goes towards double doors. Oh, okay. And as Wonderful comes out of the smoke, his teammate upstairs will find nothing. Monacy, perfect place at the perfect moment, making yeah. sure that they can't come up and split A. And because the hut guy confirms Hooksy's behind CT vent, that's what drew them up into Monacy's waiting hands. Yeah. G2, still one of the most consistently impressive teams on pistol rounds. And I mean, I don't know if it's still true to this day, but we knew at one point that Hunter was actually the caller specifically for pistol rounds. I mean... I'm not even, I don't think that was even a joke, so I don't know if that's still the case, but great I, pistol stats, great listing players, of course, helps out a lot. I like to believe it is, you know, that like somebody can bring just something of that specialism to a table. You know, it's like field gold kickers in the, uh, in, in, in American football. Yeah, you sit like, on the bench, you, a kick? you sit on the bench for 95% of the game, and then you just come out to kick a ball at the same spot every time. And sometimes you miss. And those people should have their paychecks taken back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ninja. Forced by out of Navi with the bomb plant. The triple Galil, Deagle Mac 10, but already two smokes, two flashes. And Hooksy says to JL, anything you can do, I can do better. From the Nova to the auto shoddy. Are we at the major? Because with some of the guns I've seen tonight, the hell is going on? May the most creative team win. That's what I say. Well, Zeusing off the top of main, chasing down Vents players, I'll, that, that's creative, all right. And Nico looking like a laser beam here. Yeah. yeah. He's more of a robot outside. They have to concede ramp. Flashbang forced the player down. Didn't want to lose full control of B. That's Nexa tucked along the railing of the B site. Navi really hoping somebody gets I'm, active inside of Lobby. I don't want to curse anything, but I love it. gun sticks I, out, dude. Oh, yeah. That, that's, that's, that ain't how that works, Chief. That's a long barrel on that silence, them four. Good night, Nexa. <laughs> Bro, anytime. Damn, how did they know I was there? Oh. <laughs> Wonderful. Has to give up the spot. We get this late vent play from JL. He has waited in Lobby for so long to get a chance to shoot the Deagle, and he does it successfully into the back of Nico. Mm. Monacy trying to retake out from ramp. There are no guarantees, even with that freebie of a kill on Ooh. Nexa, because if Monacy is alive and kicking, then you've got problems. Wonderful catches him climbing through the window, and Hooksy forced into the clutch. 
With a shotgun. With an auto shotgun. 5H. No, he got he it. He sticks it, but he doesn't Wait, have the no kit mo, oh, so no defuse there. Oh, my God. I will never understand how professional players don't understand where barrels end. Oh, with the, yeah, that, that, was, that was definitely a little surprising. That spot is valid, but you don't, can't be looking out that way. So, yeah, that was giving Ninja. Look at that. Video. Look how obvious that is. Yes. It's like he wasn't even fully was, back in the corner. No, it's, it's yeah, he might have been that because I feel like yeah. you definitely. I feel like his all, angle was a fine, little wider. But he's also watching the far side exit <laughs> of the ramp. Sorry, guys. They just read me like a book downstairs, hey, They man. boot camped as long as Navi. You know what I mean? Yeah, 15 days. They would have figured that out. Days would get you out of that position. But so. all that does is make the game close. It's still G2 in the power position once they get back to rifle. So Navi, well, first of all, they want to survive this. They didn't get rid of Nico. He's got an M4. He's definitely taking a risk. Could get mollied in this spot in secret. But if they don't come forward outside, it won't matter. Nico can share a lot of information from here, though. If he just decides to take a timing peek to the side of red, sees nothing. They aren't mollying him out either. It's not a full default. You have to be careful with your default grenades in this situation because it will just tell Nico that you're actually not coming if you throw too many. Oh, this boost is big. Oh, the shot's not quite as hot. The as... idea was big. Yeah. It was a big idea. Uh-huh. Got to dream big. To make the most of those ones. Still something to stand on here with Hunter tucked in behind doors. Nope. Great coverage. Oh, hold up. Wait a second. Bomb is planted. Monesty has a scout. He is too far removed. Um, I was going to say it's still him. I think he heard you. He's out of there. You'll let this one go. That was cool. That was cool. You see that? That was some Tony Hawk business right there. This game gets a little dang. You know, that. <sighs> hmm. Oh, this is so relaxing. It's making me dizzy. I'm going to look <laughs> away from the screen, dude. Terrorists win. Oh, you said you wanted Tony Hawk Pro Skater. There you go. There we go. A little 50 50 grind in the T spawn. I like that he was on high oh alert. Oh my god. That snap, that snap is nice. Okay. Wow. It's not just Hooksy misses his chance to 5-7 spam, but god damn, Bit did not give him a lot of time to shoot. Oh, that was almost a full 180. Ooh, we're looking at a tight game, huh? Yeah. G2 not working with much now. All right. Time to sit up straight. Got a couple tidbits to work with, right? The saved Galil from Monacy could oh. be given a chance versus two. Oh, man. I mean, every time we see Monacy, he's doing something right. But then as he comes through the main smoke, at least Wonderful was far enough out. Hooksy comes out with the Deagle, doesn't get himself a second, still thins the herd inside of the A site. It's a quick move from Hunter out from heaven towards the garage. Not many outs beyond that. Uh, those couple of guns to work with. So calm situation for Navi as they plant and look to tie the game up. I said they make it excruciating here on T side, and they will. Draw blood at every instance. I think one thing Navi do for sure that's good is even if you can't win a round, you make it ex as expensive as you can all the time. Like that. Well, that's G2 doing it. That's good too. The chase is on. Everybody gonna hang on to the weapon, so we're all tied up. This Navi T side, has it been flawless? No. Has it been flawless? Huh, yes, indeed. Nice! Of course. Come on, boys, it's equal. It's equal. It's equal. Nice. Because we already did get. G2 win pistol. And then three straight from this Navi camp. Oh, yeah. So it's a double save, essentially. Well, it's the. No, no, no. Yeah, it's not eco. I don't know. If someone asked that, and that's why he said it about the last round, to make sure because there was maybe one or two guns. Right. 
Um, but they should, they, I mean, they should be aware that this is... Should be! ...a potential buy coming in right now. A little pressure on Squeaky. Whoa, dangerous there, Nico. Yeah, gets out fast. That's just the best way to do that. How much does he have to give up, having been spotted there? He can sit behind the molly and tie the secret, reroute if he wants to, but he doesn't have to leave, I don't think. It's still a good spot to be to start the round. They need a lower guy anyways. He comes up the vent by the looks of things. Oh, okay. And he'll go for the top blue peak instead. Over the wall. This is a good angle for Nico. He's got to show us something to be proud of. Oh, yeah. Actually, there it is. Ooh, yes. Oh. Surrey damage into bits. Another spray Ooh. through smoke. And this is feels like the best round Nico's had to offer. He's getting in like the flow state of yep. all the timings of where they're walking around. Yep. I mean, outer on nuke is his playground, wow. and he's proving it. Again, more damage on bit. Hunter cleans up JL, and uh, okay. that is five standing strong. All right, fair play. I was saying, yeah, he could stay in secret. That'd be a good spot to play. But their approach is based on maybe he doesn't move, and he ends up going all the way around the vents, up the vents, and then up onto the back of main and can see everything. No surprise that they weren't ready for that timing. And then just banks back into the confidence of the mechanics, going for the fight, spamming the smokes. You know, sometimes your outer nuke player really has to be larger than life, larger than their one life really has to offer. Yeah, and there's, there's a few players like that. Nico's one of them. I'd say Rain is another. So now I'll be having to concede this in the face of a powering up Nico now. Big impact as he catches up to Hunter. I said he would. And honestly, it feels like the CT side requires him to. If there's going to be any outer presence, it's Nico in the pressure position. And uh, this is a, a game where I, it feels like the last round does not tell you about the next. There's almost no continuity between ideas and what's working because they're just finding so many new situations all the time. And that's what I think is allowing the individual aspect of the match to blossom the most and create for moments like that. Well, Navi thought they had a clue last round about what was going to go down with the rotations, but G2 made it a little bit more interesting. Both pistols this game, but only one conversion. And that'll be the best round that they've seen so far on CT side. Just think about how it could have started when Nico was almost caught crossing over towards Secret. So he knows he signed up for dangerous games. Oh my god. Perfect grenade. Wow. And at this point now, Ima's getting bullied outside. He has died to the Monacy Peak. In a save round, he's lost to Nico two rounds in a row now. Mm. But even with that kill from Nico, two players do get down secret, confirmed by Monacy's death. Yeah, that would have benefited a lot from Nico spamming to draw attention. But Monacy was a touch too late. They were quick to shove themselves into secret, continue forward. Emma said, Go on without me. JL floating the idea of eventually crossing too, but for the time being, Navi's numbers are spread out. I have some ideas coming in from Alexi. This is a great option coverage position from Nico. He can see Saw if they that. lurk in through mini, plus get info if they back up or try to perform any kind of lurk. And information is king in this spot. He's not wasting the opportunity. He sees it. Doesn't believe that he can be spotted. Hooks, he's going to have to pick it up instead. But Oh, wait a second. Hooks, How was that not corroborated? Oh, my God. And will it even matter? Or did Hooksy just get into a position... I mean, no, 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 no. Yeah, he, he knows that he let this cross. JL's going to come in underneath Nico. <gasps> Just as he turned away. How in the world Just did this happen? Just as he happen? turned away, JL. He's going to double back into it, kill Nico. And now what? We're primed for the event pop. Up they'll go, but into the lying weight of Hunter, who now has to turn attention okay. to heaven. And he is the A anchor of A anchors right now. Yeah, the apex predator here in this match. Ooh, that got weird for a second. It really did. I can. That's inexplicable to me because. You, you see very clear as day that 
there is somebody crossing in front of Nico's screen on the side of Mini, but no response to the information. No information handed over to your mini player. You know, he's getting a little older, Launders. His eyes might not be what they once were. <laughs> Clean grenade. Got to give it that, Hunter. Wow, what a massive round from Hunter. Mm -hmm. Wonderful as he turns it around up to heaven. And Jail got that ball rolling by somehow getting the better of Nico. But did Jail is... see him back there and then assume that Nico didn't see him and I that was actually know, right somehow? Man. Is that what happened? And like Hooksy tucking in on this little bit of the arch. Yeah. If, if he had died, that's an easy road for JL to get up into yeah, the they're A they're going to pop up or a lot more stress on Hunter. That's a weird round. That's why this game is basically impossible to we uh, gotta, we summarize. Show, we show that one back to Nico and ask what's up. Obviously felt like they definitely had a thread to pull on, but now they don't have a gun to shoot with. The one AK changes hands, JL out from Squeaky is done for, and it needs to be Ema, but it won't be an op shot from Monesty to essentially seal the deal. And this is G2 now pulling ahead. What a puzzling round that was. What a puzzling match. Um, hmm. Fun, though. Very fun, for sure, yeah. I just... <laughs> Zeus's, Nova's, auto like shotties. Can't tell what anyone's thinking. Yeah, you know? I can't sure. tell what the IGLs are thinking. Like, <laughs> normally, I'm like, from a perspective of conditioning, like, you know what I mean? Like, stroking my neck beard. Maybe they'll do this next round. But then I'm like, JL, Nova into Zeus, into Monacy, flying Zeus, into yeah. AK, 4K, into Necro Secret event, to top main, to... <laughs> Like, I, I can't do my job right yeah, now. Know. <laughs> you know, people have to listen to you all the time, but I, I have the privilege of watching you work, yeah. and I can see half of these rounds, your eyes glazing over as you try to make sense of things. But you can't crunch these numbers, man. Yeah, 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 I can't. Like, uh, like what, what, are, what, what, what do Navi want to do this round, for example? Like, what do they want to do? Win. We don't have any upper pops. We don't have any ramp splits. We don't have any standard secret drops. Instead, we have... So much material getting traded on defaults going outside into massive individual play, usually from G2, stomping everything. 15 days of boot camp, bro. It'll true. get your wires crossed. Yeah, true. Ooh, but right. Bit keeps this one simple. From the top of Silo, knocks Nico down a peg. And that's a main challenge incoming. Problems for the Hunt player who's dropped out of this. Hooksy behind the vent. Double kill. And a little bit of damage on the follow-up. Now, Bit is pinned in behind Vent. Awkward from Wonderful, but Ooh. he still recovers the aim. And this is, needs to be the Monacy 1v3. Player yeah. down beneath him getting by. I don't know how he finds out that Emma has crossed back in a spawn. And here it is. Wait. Okay, there it is. Okay, now we will get that one. And this one, you know, this one's more fundamentally sound in the sense of, like, they get the Nico kill. They turn that into an upper split. It, it's very standard. They also shut down the trophy push and come through squeaky main and... Uh, and a round that almost opens up so quickly that there's no need to get convoluted. Yeah. And all the protocols that Navi clearly had in place were able to work fast enough to just pressure through, right? From the Nico frag to having a site under wraps yeah. in all about 20 seconds. But even a, a, a situation like this, there's no Molly opposite vent. Um, this, the entries into mini are staggered. The approach out of hut is staggered from the squeaky okay. play as well. So I, I feel like, you know, Hooksy getting two kills is even surprising in that spot. So, well, we'll see. Again, they're, you know, who knows? Maybe it's just that they um, are just all trying to get on the same page with what they want to do. But it works out for them right there. The game continues. And I know G2 don't think that this will come for free because, yeah, they've put themselves in some zany positions and, and come out ahead. But they themselves are not winning rounds in, like, normal ways. So... Let's see. Monacy will be picking up the op. There won't be one here on the T side for Na'Vi, but both teams have money, which should create for the most exciting situation possible. And another secret start here for Nico. Yeah, but taking the long road this time, and it gets contested quickly. Monacy does not see uh, that player cross. I think Nico might have heard him. Okay. Uh, maybe. The way he just fell back, it feels like that's the possibility. Yeah, maybe at least the timing was called there. Mm -hmm. So Monacy will peel back. 
But as he comes back in, Wonderful's right there. Maybe Ooh. steps ahead of what Monesty expected. Thought he came back fast enough to prevent this, but instead Wonderful's got an open road to heaven. And Nexa towards ramps compromised on both ends. Hunter doesn't feel comfortable. So him and Hooksy are going to go for lobby control. Joining up with ramp, in fact. Looking to make a play JL, to reclaim prime. something. JL has waited oh. back here, but Hooksy is going to win that duel straight up. All right, this round is all about wonderful. Eventually, this ends upstairs. They can get this split into formation. CTs can roam as much as they want to, but at the... At Navi's will, they can kind of approach and split. Is he top main? Yeah. Sitting duck. Wait, Ambit didn't hear this either. Easy. Hunter finds that timing. Hooksy, though, caught by Alexi creeping in through main, and so a site still opened up with support towards heaven. Nexus desperate to get up this ladder. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. And that's off the blade tack pause, by the way. This split comes to fruition. Hunter, Hunter. and Nico. All right. We got the Kovach side by side. Nade nails them both ever so slightly. And they're concerned about main, but it really is just two players back site plus the heaven support uh, now back in position. No molly makes this so difficult. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, Wonderful has a Molotov for the post plant if it even came down to it, but no attempt thrown out by wow. the brothers. G2 can see double digits and Navi take a 10. Yeah, once again, off the uh, blade tack pause, the instructions are wrap outside. They send Wonderful on a mission. He finds a great timing on Monacy, who's running in through hell after Nico starts secret all around. So the, I think Nico peels back, doesn't search out information, and then it's really on Monacy to be like, all right, I got to make sure they can't get into hell or get up into heaven at some point. So he comes in for a peek. Could have gotten the shot off, right? If Wonderful doesn't first bullet him, mm -hmm. Monacy could have reasonably um, hit it. But once that once that kill is down, you know Monacy's not doubled up with anyone with that off. So he goes right into heaven. And it's just a matter of time before Upper is taken over. And so Navi, Navi bring this one round closer. And again, as sick as some of the rounds at G2 have won, Navi are here still being tricky. Pressure for Nico. Of course, him and Hunter, those save rifles, right? We've seen Saini rounds. And as Zeus, no stranger to this scene. People need to start pre mollying hut for rounds like these. Yep. Or just make sure you come in two people, right? Zeus is never going to multi-frag. Nexa has nothing to work with here. Not a single piece of utility, just a stock pistol. He serves as nothing but a warning sign. Presence confirmed. Navi going to be thorough here because this is a tied game in their hands and one that has a lot on the line, right? We are talking 2-0. We are talking three best of threes to be played for top eight at a major. A packed Royal Arena awaits. And that M4 is a trap for Hooksy. He tries to go reclaim it instead. Gets caught in the act. Hand in the cookie jar. Monesty could very well fall to the same problem. But he has so little to work with that his time felt so limited. Navi, this one is perfectly played. Good risk assessment. Mm -hmm. Making sure that they don't do anything that could end up costing them. And while Nexa has reclaimed the ramp room, it is all for naught. Wonderful planting, safe front sight, and Navi to tie this game up at 11. All right, they're going to make this the uh, most explosive finish possible. Connor standing up. <laughs> Going to round 23 in round 24. Tell me who wins right now. You don't have to be held to it, but based on what you've seen so far. Navi. Navi, okay. Yeah, I think All this right. T side, you know, you kind of said like, I don't really, it's kind of weird to get a read on. And yeah. I feel like G2 are actually in the same boat as we are. Yeah, right. It feels like they're a couple steps behind. <laughs> right. I will do without yeah, we've got some 4D chess being played right now. But I'm also not a sucker. And I know that Monacy or Nico, if he can put another outer round like the one we saw. Yeah, I think that sort of encapsulates the whole feeling that basically anything could happen. Navi know that just as well. Well, one way to take things in your own hand if, hands if you're G2 is uh, get out there first. And we haven't seen a, a, a forward aggressive 
set up outside, which can lead into some kind of flank. They're just playing it tight. We have seen a uh, full-on rush upstairs from Navi recently, and they are constantly starting secret. Sorry, starting. Ooh, here we go. A little off timing on the A hit. Hunter's blind, and there's no defense here. Hoaxie tries to get out from heaven, but he goes down oh with nothing. God, that setup was crazy. What a sudden pop, right? Yeah, you could not even feel that one coming. And suddenly, both players down on the A site flashes with extremely high efficacy, and the CTs are just playing back, dying as they go to save. Navi, are they really going to steal 12 just like that? Dude, I thought we were still fully in the setup phase. It looked like a first-tier exec to get people off of top hut. They totally transitioned that into a full-on site hit. I'd love to see those nades back again. That's what it has been this entire game, a mystification of intentions from Na'Vi. It honestly, and now the execution is starting to line up. You know, it feels like G2 are trying to figure out this dancing partner, and Na'Vi just in the middle of some kind of interpretive moves. It's, it, there's, no, there's no read on Na'Vi right now. And this round is such a great example of it. And suddenly we're talking about uh, Hunter forcing down with an MP9. Nobody having that much money. We had a convivial G2 knowing that this game was basically over. Things were just going too well for them into this crawl back on the T side. When Nico ends up getting his big impact out around, that's when it felt like the, you know, the, the CT piece they needed to find its groove did. It felt like in that moment, one more of those and it's all they needed. But Alexi B on the brink of protecting this win streak over top of G2. He will not concede to them. Yeah, he, he will not. That's uh, that's four straight since he's joined Na'Vi versus G2. A third attack timeout, and these ones have just, I feel like, have been specifically dangerous with Blade. Off the first one was, I think, when things started to get really organized. Yes, sir. Na'Vi, I mean, this is... This has been some blue-collar Counter-Strike, man. They are putting in the work to bring back this half. Four straight. The upset in round 14 after the pistol comes back to haunt G2, perhaps. Four MP9s, M4 for Monacy. The utility is here, but it just feels like Navi are so elusive. And they are going to crank the pressure with an opening kill on Nico. His frustrations are going to boil over. Wait, he has been outdone again. And Bit on the chase versus the one rifle. This is Monesty oh. preoccupied. Bit so ready for this swing. They and Alexi he was up here. B calling some unique counter-strike. Unreadable by G2 at the moment. Steps ahead of them in a big ticket game in Copenhagen. He does not lose to his former teams. Two players left, both on SMGs. Scrambling to find a way out of this situation. JL literally at a minute 10 waiting and spawn for a flank. Anything that they want to try to do on an extremity to get cut off. G2 don't even know they're corralled in this spot. JL will come in now and oh my Perfect god, the timing. timing works out again. Dude, it doesn't feel like he can do what? any wrong. Into the headshot, yeah. into the 2-0 group. Navi with their own flavor of CS. You, that's the kind of convoluted counter strike. That's Blade smiling right there. That's why you boot camp for 15 days straight. Blade smiling. Unbelievable comeback. Weird CS, but at the end of the day, the results, the results from the from the boot camp to the battlefield, they don't skip a beat. Indeed, two and zero for Navi today in a game that wasn't easy for them. In fact, they had to find the solutions, but once they did, Alexi B called it to a T and brought it to a two and zero day for them and a chance for them tomorrow to qualify directly into the playoffs. So this could be such an important game in retrospect when you look back at it. I'm definitely agreeing with you. What a statement these last five rounds were for Navi and their ability to figure out solutions, their ability to simplify the game. I think. In a moment, they got caught into over, uh, or they should have simplified rather. They overcomplicated things just a little bit, but Alexi was able to ride the ship, simplify his Counter Strike, trust in his players, pick up the pace just a little bit as well, and that caught G2 off guard massively. Yeah, I think there was an element of like it felt like this towards the end, G2's defense couldn't really put a stop to a lot of the initial plays, and you gave that gives that gives Alexi B a lot to work with in terms of how he wants to call. Right, they started invading outside. We saw some upper hits. We saw them walking into ramp and just kind of teasing the idea and being able to pick off the reaction from from G2's defense. Like. 
like this, uh, you have to put this down. Obviously, a great performance out of wonderful on an individual level, mm -hmm. but yeah. you have to put the, the, the finishing touches of that comeback are all Alexi B's calling and his brain putting this together. Yeah, and uh, we talked about kind of the previous results that they had versus each other, and we said maybe that doesn't track as much because we're now in CS2 in a kind of a different situation, but Alexi B still doing it. And, and the boys gave us some hope. They gave us that hope, right? Nico, Hunter, you know, <laughs> yeah. they, gave, they gave us that hope was... that just gets ripped out of our hands. Although, Hunter had a good game. Monacy had a good game. Nico was hit or miss round to round. I think Nico probably took about a half to wake up. In yeah. the first half, we didn't really say his name too, too much. But this is why that victory from Navi is ever so impressive. Because we got to enter Nico's world outside in the defense. And we had multiple occasions where he multi heal He had a ton of damage through the smoke as well. And you have to realize when you're a Lexi B and you're trying to put together a game plan, when Nico is actually turning up outside. It feels like it shuts down a whole lot of doors. And you could see that he was trying to figure out, okay, how the hell am I supposed to play that position then? We also saw some miscoms outside though. I'll say that like Nico had, the, uh, had those those good rounds and everything, but we saw that round he fell back towards CT box where Hooksy was Hooksy exposed main, to yeah. many. We saw a few rounds later, uh, Wonderful get an opening kill towards lockers with like a minute and 20 seconds left on the clock. Some of those different like paces that, that Navi took towards the end of the game, it didn't feel like the defense was able to really catch on to exactly what was happening until it was way, 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 way too late. And what is also quite interesting, of course, we mentioned Wonderful, and I think he is very much deserving of praises, not only for the first half, but on the second as well. With the rifle, he played a whole lot. He took space outside. He was looking for his duels uh, towards Under Heaven a couple of moments. But if you look at his sort of counterpart, Manasi on the side of G2, I stated in the pre-show that G2 know exactly how to make the best out of him to activate Manasi. I feel like it wasn't the case in this no. side. And usually it is a map that is very apt to put your snipers in different positions, to have him be mobile, be mobile. and unpredictable. Yeah. I don't really... It's, we didn't really saw that. It didn't really come to fruition on this map. They got into some money issues later on uh, in the half as well, right? On the CT side, so maybe the op was hard to come by. 11-8 up? Yeah, yeah. You're not supposed to have money issue at 11 up? Yeah, well, they did. Maybe you're spending too much money out the there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On but not savings, you know? <laughs> on the most expensive weapon in the arsenal. Um, still, yeah, I think you have to give so much credit over over to Wonderful thriving in this game and thriving in the tactics that he's calling. This is that opening kill, 120 or a minute and 20 seconds left on the clock, and it's like, that's way too early in the round to have to deal, have to deal with that outside Rap. That's so hard. See, but that's when they picked up the pace, right? and this is yeah. why it's so impressive and so nice to see from just a purist standpoint. Prior to this, Navi overplayed themselves into a very complicated slow round outside where they try to play with two players secret, one in the heaven, one in main. You can see they lose track of the round, and it's a round that is very frustrating. What they do, they simplify, they pick up the pace, they, they call their own numbers in the duels, and that is where we give praises to Alex. And I think round 23 is, is the example of that, right? Where they uh, grab the A side quickly. Is that yes, the round? Yeah. Quickly and simply as well. It's just a matter of nice execute with a lot of utilities being put down. I think it's also a great read on G2's financial situation. Mm -hmm. This is where a hit like that works so well because no you're banking on the, on the fact high. exactly the, the counter util isn't going to be there, or G2 have had to make decisions. So this cult right here is picture perfect and also well executed. And I think it's a great philosophical change when you consider that the, the rounds prior to that were like the kind of tease towards ramp room, go back to lobby, mm -hmm. catch the people peeking in towards squeak door. And then you had like the round before that was the was the wonderful outside, you know, kind of entry kill. And all of a sudden you have G2 in a situation they're playing passively on the upper bomb site to kind of deal with those extremities and just no one in position to be in front of the execute. And surely if you're G2, I mean, it must go through your mind that ramp hasn't been exploited. And this whole time I'm waiting for a ramp exploit to happen. I mean, we know next side individually, not exactly the minus three kills type player, so he might just rotate fast. I'm thinking maybe G2 had that in mind too. Would we need a Monacy rotation fast? I don't really think they thought inside would be the play at no. 23, and that's why he hit so hard. Maybe not. Hunter was excellent up in the upper bomb side for most of that second half. He did a good job. We're going to talk about this plate though, and Okay, this was selected. Mean. This was selected way before like the situation of this game. It was actually just you know <laughs> going to come up at right. some point. Right. Sure. Uh, but you can take from it what you will if you uh, if you just watch that game. But these are of course our high grade metal posters from this played over 200 licensed artworks from your favorite movies, from music, and of course, very importantly, for Counter Strike, is that a goose or a duck? Well, uh, that's a mighty, mighty big duck. That is a it's duck. a mighty big goose. I feel as well. Yeah. If you want this one or others, you can, of course, head over to display.com slash PGL and up to 33% off for them. And, uh, you know, the mechanics, they're easy. Off, on, slap, oh boom, God. bang. Hey, that, was clean. that was clean movement. That was nice. It was. It was Zero clean. rehearsal. Exactly. Tuck, tuck. Yes. Unlike G2, unfortunately. <laughs> In that it was not. We ran away with it. We're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, our last game of the day, Spirit versus Imperial.
Defense. 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 I will flash for you late. Wait, wait, wait. I will flash for you late, 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 late. Because he cannot talk. Stop flashing now. The door, secret, secret. Drive, I'm behind. I'm behind. He's a baller, baller, bro. Nice, nice, nice. Nice. Let's go. Don't hit the car. Level up your gaming space with metal posters from Displays. Hang your Displays in seconds. Swap them whenever you like. Get official art from your favorite games on a uniquely designed metal canvas and choose from thousands of posters. Join over 3 million collectors now. Your wall upgrade is here. Shop now at Displate.com. Once more into the fray, this time for Imperial versus Spirit, which will certainly be a tall order for Imperial, but they beat Virtus Pro at the beginning of the day, and I don't think we would have uh, pegged them as the winners in that one. No, I certainly wouldn't have. Uh, but <laughs> that was a rough game from Virtus Pro, I'll say that. But obviously, still, you have to. I mean, Brazilian Brazilian teams came to this major ready to party. They oh. came in here ready to fight, and they're, well, they're maximizing. Well, but in a different way than maybe they used to. Yeah, but <laughs> right. Well, there is a culture of both. Of that. We can do no. both. If they want to do both, there's yeah. some players in there that know how to do the other Just type not before of party. grand finals. Just not before grand finals. Easy to say that. So uh, they do have a chance to go to zero here, but of course, Spirit is one of those those big names we have our eyes on. Vitality went one and one. Will Spirit be the other? favorite that goes two and zero they certainly hold all the cards here they beat cloud nine earlier yeah i mean uh, spirit so far part of the course uh one of the teams that has the highest amount of expectation and scrutiny on them uh, but i do think that is not just one storyline that we have to focus on and this is why this team is so uh hard to play against like the attributes are multiple of course you have the donk and the donk story in his first major is something we're going to follow very closely but i do think that they play close to the best counter strike there is currently they have quality and talent coast to coast as well. There's so many reasons why they have fail safes for that kind of pressure, which is why I don't doubt one second what they're going to do here. One of the best operas in the world in Shiro. Zoptix has shown himself to be like a really, really, really solid role player as well, who steps up in big games. Chopper's calling good Counter-Strike. Magix is still being impactful. Yeah, you go down the list. There's, it's a like list. There's, there's, not, there's not just one facet to this team, which is, you know, I also think this too, considering they won Katowice, 
obviously a beautiful win to have. I think it's actually beneficial in another way because every single team since then has spent like time trying to mm -hmm. figure out and trying to attack what they perceive to be weaknesses. And when you have the RMR, when you have the Blast Showdown to, to for Spirit to get attacked in that sense of people trying to find a weakness, they got they got like what like a month and a half, two months to really to really shore up those potential weaknesses, those potential weak spots. Now it's over, guys. Yeah. Well, it's like, dude, everyone... Almost beat them. It's all over. After Astralis, like, almost beat them on Vertigo, everyone was like, ooh, Vertigo. Maybe it may be a weak map for him. And they just, it got spammed for, like, literally a month. Everyone was picking Vertigo against him. And so they come to this major, like, yeah, we got Vertigo. Yeah, Vertigo is on the yeah, map right now, good. boys. Yeah, we're all Thanks. Fun. Thanks for the work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I appreciate it's, that. Yeah, they're just, they're freaks. Yeah, they, <laughs> exactly. Uh, we're going to see, because even exactly if you research them, you know, you still got to deal with the raw frag power that they have and as you laid it out it isn't just donk at all right um for zontix as well i i like his attitude a lot you know he's interviewed by oh donk this donk that and he was like i don't really care you can talk about whoever you want if i'm winning if we're winning tournaments that is exactly what we want this um group spirit from spirit uh, and on the other yeah. side in imperial i'm actually seeing kind of similar things there was um a big interview from zach with hltv where he <laughs> talked about his uh, experience before like with immortals and how they were winning but wasn't necessarily how a team should function, and I think that's what he's really trying to bring into this Imperial. Yeah, I mean, now they have a chance uh, to write a new chapter of Brazilian Counter-Strike as well right there. And I think on multiple accounts, the no way decency finds are yeah. diamonds, yeah. absolute diamonds. And I would like to just take a minute to pounce that very quickly, not just because they're fragging, because of course they are individually, they've already impressed us, but I feel like they have now this luxury where you have two players who aren't really hungry in terms of very resource-heavy positions. So you have Phelps and Henny who can still do whatever it is they want to do, take the risks, have these movement full positions. Any, of course, on the AWP, and you have decent team, no way, just happy to be here. Static <laughs> positions, humble as well in the way they play Counter Strike, but super efficient and vocal. How many times do we get camera shots of decent team talking to his teammate, trying to get them in the groove of things, calming them down? That is a huge attribute to have for such a young player. The, the big one was obviously yesterday when it seemed like, you know, Henny and Henny was getting into it a little yeah. bit with Vinny, and I mean, I think that might have been a little overblown, obviously, from the outside, you know, that, those things. Just was impressive in a to competitive watch. environment, but Decent Dude was right in the middle being like, chill, 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 chill. chill. <laughs> Guys, we're cool. We all good? Everyone cool? Yeah, let's keep playing. Yeah. Wow. Huge fan of the two, really. Yeah, cool to see. I mean, uh, Noe, of course, I don't know if it was the case for Decent as well, but by Zach and the Analyst just picked up because they were playing Pugs with BT, you know, the, the, the content machine over from Brazil, and just seeing the, the possibility there as you paint it in combination with the rest of that roster. Yes, and I think it's also about keeping the more veteran also on their toes, right? If you're Phelps, if you're Henny, of course you are what I like to call established in Brazilian Counter-Strike. You have had success in the past, but you've also arguably wasted a whole lot of years not having a whole lot of results. And then suddenly you have these two young kids with you and you say, holy hell, like, I, got, I gotta pick my shit up. You know, they're here, they're ready to play. It's, it's also a good story, but what are they gonna do? Well, Mirage, they're, they're gonna, yeah. I think, I think, I think so that's yeah, the yeah, you like that? white swing middle. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how I feel you're, about you're that. You're gonna though. take a lot of fights with Donk. You have Shiro waiting back there on the wings. Uh, but also, as well, I think you gotta say, Henny's playing good with the AWP right now. He Henny, is. Henny's also impactful, so let's not d discount that. And oh. in my mind, this is always, you know, for, throughout his career, this has been one map where it always feels like Phelps has had some special and unique plays and a unique angle of approaching this map. Um, so he, he can be super impactful also. And, and we'll just have to see how the young guys do against, you know, pr what is probably the best team in the world right now dare yeah. i say dare i say so if you if you're gonna play spirit on mirage you're just saying you know what when we, if we're gonna do it we're gonna do it with styles yeah nobody's gonna take that away from us right we're gonna take yeah. them down on mirage don't middle don't be afraid of those wide swings nah, nah, it's all good care. this is a team you gotta feel like I mean, brazilian teams and especially like henny with his history like he's fucking he's always loved wide swings he's always <laughs> loved getting into that stuff <laughs> so it's the best of one Ev everything can happen because it, because it's the best of one we'll give it a percentage for imperial Oh, a percentage. A percentage yeah. is what okay, my, my most generous offer will be 28%. I was, I'll take it. I was going to say 30, so we're not... Oh, oh, oh. This guy, what do we say? I was going to say... 30. I'll take it. Great we're, minds think alike. Yeah, yeah. 30% chance. Please All right, other. let's see. So let's see. there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Into our last game of the day. Uh, take it away, Scrawny and Lau. Lau, Lau. <laughs> lau, Lau, Lau. Thank you so much. Big Lau. All right. Um, I think they got a donk percent chance. Donk. Yeah. Yeah. He kind of do be that guy right it's now. It's just huh? about him. It's also a Mirage. I think this is a, it's a fun map for Imperial to take it to, but uh, you know, where I was left flabbergasted upon my, you know, my my discovery of Donk was just the way that he will swing for you at top mid. So are they fighting fire with fire tonight? What's the plan here, Imperial? How are you going to stop Spirit? Like that. It there he goes. Pretty well. He but, did an uh, ace on the pistol round. We got Shiro over towards... 
the cover of the boxes, and he's got mm. support from Chopper. Clean little crossfire. Ooh, y'all looking the wrong way. Coming around the corner, putting the back of your head to Chopper's position. He will get a second, what? a reload as well. Chopper's going for it. But it's going to be Phelps to put him down for the time being. Zontix? It wouldn't be his first 1v2 today, Zontix. Mm -hmm. Here he comes. Having lost track of the second player. Knows there's one locked into the bomb site. Quick reminder as to where they're at. He saw that. They're waiting for a timing. Oh, wow. <laughs> a little drive-by from the Glock, but... He's looking to get lucky. No kid on him. Trying to cross over quietly. Looking for the response! Oh. Zontix just zips it up! <laughs> oh my god. No. <gasps> oh. Wow. My heart almost just stopped. Yo. Certified killer. Oh! That was his last chance. That peak was his last chance to get that. Oh. And he is so happy to live in the shadow of Donk. Because of Donk, you forget. This kid's, this kid's also something special. Donk and Zontix coming up together. They feed off one another. Sickening kills that send a statement to Imperial. I wonder if Jason and Maniac would say 28 and 30% after that. Two 1v2s today. It's kind of nuts how many <laughs> side bets this team has. <laughs> Like, Shiro and Zontix at Cato had a 1.30 rating. Zontix had a 1.70, so he took all the headlines, but, like, wow. That was stunning. Wow, that was amazing. Well, luckily, just a pistol round. Yep, just a pistol just round. Just a start. Mm -mm -mm. The last game of the day as well. Looking to wrap up what has been an awesome opening day for top 16. And shout out Imperial for opening versus Virtus Pro because, you know, we were talking earlier today, a few of us at the hotel, just kind of like trying to flag the upset potential games, right? Because everybody's thinking there's no way all the favorites can win. And, you know, I feel like the majority consensus was kind of like heroic phase was flagged by some. Uh, Eternal Fire Vitality was getting flagged. We thought maybe pain over complexity. I didn't hear Imperial over Virtus Pro once. And yet they post that victory. Yeah, I mean, because they were supposed to be the team to like stomp everyone slightly below them. Mm -hmm. Consistent, consistently high floor. Questions about how they would face off against Vitality or something like that. But in the first round, you'd think Virtus Pro would be pretty safe. But Imperial powered up like crazy it's through that opening stage. And uh, I mean, yeah, like Imperial came from playing the Armars, doing a great job, not having any EU experience, now showing us what they can do versus the EU teams in the opening stage to now continuing to be underrated, obviously, being yeah. able to beat Virtus Pro. But it's also just, you know, most teams don't beat VP in their first outing. Yeah. you have It takes reps versus Virtus Pro before you can beat them. Even if you don't claim VP to be the best team here in Copenhagen, that little bit of doubt, first outing and you best them, yeah, I mean, it's true. You could be the best team in the world and still be worse than Virtus Pro. Yep. That's FaZe. <laughs> they have trouble versus sure. Virtus. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that's... So that was a very impressive win for Imperial to have. Ears probably still ringing from that first pistol round. Yeah, but luckily this, you know, this one's over fast once they decide to pull the trigger on the B hit. So clear the slate. Fresh mind, guns out here for Imperial. Yes, Zontix left a bruise, but you can't get bogged down now. Imperial been playing tons of Counter-Strike in the last week or so. Got to get right back into the heat of the moment.
the trouble they may have as time goes on is Donk's consistency in swinging top middle. And when he does it, it's usually with Zontix by his side. As if I have to tell you how good he is mechanically. Two absolute monsters in middle on Mirage. This spread out attack from Imperial. Imperial are just giving time away right here. Mm -hmm. I think they're just trying to figure out how to... Like, usually when you're doing this, you're you're ready to give the CTs mid so you can just take it back late with low utility. Or like, have an underpass lurk. But they haven't set anything up this round at all, so I actually don't think there's much... Like, it appears Imperial have this sick plan. I mean, I guess they've got this. <laughs> Maybe they do have a sick plan. They punish that push, but they are readying just a, a clean A hit, essentially. And really bringing it down to the wall. I mean, even jumping at the A ramp. And, uh, well, Spirit simply do not believe it. They just think it's... There's no fake in place, so... Ready for the hit. Three out the ramp. Magic's... No default volley. Trying to get back in and holds off, but he loses his teammate. Luckily, Donk's over in time. Pressure oh. is oh, still goes the wrong spot. on Imperial. Flash over towards Ticket. They're going to try to press Wait, into him. No it time. works. Oh. They plant just behind Triple, spamming through. That's damage and coverage. And somehow Imperial, in the late round hit, I, get away with it. Yeah, that's nuts. I mean, they did get the opening kill, so it was 4v5. But, uh, of course, all the CTs were basically there ready to fight against that. They even had a smoke in Palace. They got the kill versus the player coming out. Um, well... Clearly, Spirit knew what they were going to do. But I guess everyone's got a plan until they get hit. And Vinny hits it hard. Two headshots out of him. Sealing the deal for Imperial's fourth round and their first win. Then you're left scratching your head wondering, what was Zontix expecting? Man, there have been so many missed HEs in this game so far. <laughs> You know, it's like bowling. You just kind of send it in the right direction. True. Go for the split. Boost up for Phelps and sees nothing. But Sontex isn't too far off. He never will be. They're really just trying to kill him with patience, right? I think that's clearly the game plan. But this time they actually get set up. Yeah, that they actually get set up in a spot to punish something. I mean, they did last round two with Henny watching mid that late. Found out. Phelps, easy approach. And this one's going down real smooth. Oh, yeah. Um, but again, time is an issue. But in time pressure situations, that's when people make mistakes. So if Imperial are solid about their the way they, they attack the site, they'll have time to do it. There's three spotted. Mm -hmm. Jumping up into connector now with the molly. You know, and it's but, great to kill them with patience, but then what if the clock starts to play against you? Is Decenti has got the got the play right now. Oh, he's gonna be mauling out of Palace though. He announces himself. Magic's more concerned about Palace now, you'd think. Chopper can't hold off the stairs. Palace player sees it. Bomb gets stalked at least. Magic's a second. The nade will come down and find him. Bomb will get picked back up. And that threat, it exists over towards Cat. A reposition that was very important just now. Wow. This is like watching like 2016 Navi with the how slow basically the where the money's at for them is move so slowly the CTs just get uncomfortable and then exec and it's worked out for these last two rounds of course it gets risky with the amount of time left over but we see the bomb gets dropped a second player dies and they still have time to put it down to be honest if I was like, if I was speared in the situation, I would just crank the aggression to like a thousand to try, um, because they still have to hold every part of the map. Just because you have passive angles doesn't mean that they're gonna be able to counter you still. Sure. And I think they're probably not having fun waiting for these fights to come in slowly. Nice. And I feel like generally that's kind of when we've seen Spirit ever struggle on Mirage. That's exactly what they start doing. There's also some like massive gaps here where Imperial they're not like they don't even have a B hull lurker to cover a push. So there's a couple rounds where they could have got full flanked easily. So 
this could be the prep, you know, with Zach and and the team about thinking about what Spirit are not willing to do because they like to, as you pointed out, put aggression down in middle, top of middle. Um, but basically what we've seen is if they had pushed mid and upper B at the same time, they might have died inside of mid and got a full flank off in upper B. Sure. Because that's not being watched. So just depends on what Spirit are confident in. Because, of course, it's obvious to us with full map vision. But it can be hard to see the options when you're in the game. Easy couple kills for Phelps to kick off that round, right? We're talking about a close fight on the A site that was a 3v5. Just sitting around waiting for Donk to step into the crosshair. Main window smoke immediately. Donk's going to jump out. Looking to contest and challenge from underpass. Big nade stack coming out of the top of middle. So announces the early presence. That should keep Shiro preoccupied, and it also took Zontix down to little health. They're going to do it again. Worst guns this time here for Spirit. Got an MP9 in jungle. You have two fast rotations. Um, Imperial are going to be happy to wait out the smokes. It just doesn't feel like Spirit are letting loose as they have in the past. Smoke for Magic still to work. Frag Grenade on Zontix. But there. This chopper also has an MP9 only inside of A. Here it comes. Here's the hit. They're trading places. Magic's trying to run over as fast as he can. He'll be hanging on to Ticket as Chopper gets a chance and a kill. Goes up the ladder. Nice reposition. They're trying to chase him. His teammate's not here to help. He's doing it on his own. Then they press out. Magic's looking for his next fight. Vinny crossing towards Firebox. Opens the door for Shiro. And now the SMGs are starting to hit their shots. Henny softened mm. up. Down to 2 HP. The CTs line up. But the pistol gets the job done. Okay. I Of all the rounds that they didn't win <laughs> versus that A hit. Kind of surprised they pulled this one out. Chopper did a good job, of course, of getting two kills from underneath Balcony alone on the A site with an MP9. And his next closest teammate also had an MP9 in jungle or the Oppen connector that had no vision. So, I mean, of course, he needed to get everything he got right here. Then they had that push through from Shiro, the sh frag in from Magix. And, and the MP9 is very strong right now. But um, Awesome elusiveness from Chopper. Yeah. yeah. Getting yeah. up the ladder and then going for the wide swing, not just hiding in the corner. You know, oh, he yeah. never played that scared. <laughs> just want to know what he's thinking so bad. Donk from Tomsk. Tomsk? The middle, the middle of Russia. Like okay. very far. Mm. I think it played on super high ping basically to almost anywhere. Um, yeah, like just generally really remote area compared to like oh, anywhere in Europe. That's why he's so good at wide swinging. Exactly. He's a ping abuser. I mean, literally. It's the same way that Zentaris uh, playing from Turkey in early days mm. CSGO got good at swinging it as well. That's why I play on European servers from the east coast of NA. That's why I use fake lag just to play like a, feel like a European. <laughs> that's why I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Missed off shot top mid. No way. It's pressure. It is real pressure. But there's Donk. We've been waiting to say his name. And he's been hunting oh second God, servings what? over the top of stairs. Exactly, right? You start to lock in with Donk and he will shred you. Looking for his third on the round. Flash over the top of Connector. And okay. there it is. He's bored. He's bored right now. Yeah. You've waited long oh. enough. Donk is immovable. <laughs> you thought you had them where you wanted them? The first fast round you use. And Donk is still faster. It was a matter of time before he found a moment like that one, and Magic's gonna steal the deal. Team Spirit, 5-2. <laughs> that was crazy. Bro, he literally, that, I actually like, I'm, this is a hot take. I actually like being able to see your feet in CS2. Okay. I won't lie, like even playing KZ, it's been kind of fun to be able to see your feet, sure. like dangling in the air as you jump. And you can see when he goes in for the second kill, one foot is barely <laughs> on the stairs at all. He's like, trying not to slip off. Hardly balancing. There you go. That's a donk in the pocket kind of moment. Yeah. Where lesser men would shell up. Donk doubles down. Just that wide swing to clear beneath him. Like, the threat of ramp was real the entire time. Yeah. Didn't give a damn. No, he didn't. And that's what makes him special.
He knows everyone's scared of him. Shiro holding off the cross. This makes it interesting. Little deagle kill from Senti, but Magix oh. is clean. And that's all you need from him. Mm. He'll hold your B site. Ecos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the good rotations is a big part of why Spirit works so well. Like, it's easy to be fast on rotating, but you'll it's being extreme. You can look extremely silly if your rotations are super fast, but it's a fake, right? So the key part, of, I think, for Spirit in uh, a lot of their big wins recently on their Cato victory as well was like they were rotating fast, but they also weren't getting tricked. Going head hunting top middle. You know, that top mid wide swing is what I come to expect from Donk, but we really haven't seen like hyper aggressive top mid play yet. The one time is when obviously Zontix gets clipped by Henny late or halfway through the round. No way he's been given a cache of util. Imperial back to some patience, right? Trying to maybe again make Spirit board. Yeah, but uh, this previous round we saw, well, number one, they're still taking mid every round because it's been open. And then also, Magic's pushed B late. So, looks like some utility is going to come back into a fake, which is a nice development here for Imperial in their strategies Very cool. on this T side. But it's actually being called out on two fronts. They have this underpass play, they still have the mid rotations. And they can forego the A site if they find pickoffs on the other side of the map. So we'll see if Chopper, what he, how he responds to this pressure. Because he might not push and actually call a rotation over. Ooh, Magics though. Oh, never mind. Molly goes too far. Chopper gets spotted. But Magic yeah. served up an easy kill as Decepti is concerned about Catwalk. Yeah. Eight defenders in position. Shiro, the anchor on ticket, and a wounded Phelps trying to jump over Sandwich. This one is very quickly losing its gusto. Imperial will be limping into an overstacked bombsite. Look at Spirit reading it like a book. They got five players here, and Imperial with no time to go elsewhere have to concede it. And CTs are coming after time. <laughs> Henny, you better just take the ticket and die now. They're going to keep coming at him. Oh, he's hanging on. After time. Yes, sir. Time expires. Vinny's money gets cleaned out. And Phelps will maintain the only gun for Imperial. That's another danger of playing it down the clock. You you get some mistakes out of CT sometimes when you do that, but you risk dying after time. You risk not getting the bomb down. Um, I appreciate that Imperial are keeping a simple game plan and then like coming through with conviction behind it and executing. But I think the simplicity is going to kill them in the end because Spirit are smart enough to like know how to play against it. And basically in all this period of the default where Imperial are biding time, they're not pretending to do things. They're actually just sitting back and being completely silent, which uh, most good teams are going to be able to play against. Obviously, um, they might have some specific prep, you know, for the way Spirit have played their Mirage that leads them to play this way. But it seems like Spirit are just getting better versus it. Pistol wants to get close, but Rifle's trained on him and no teammate there to trade it, so it's just a free death against Vinny. Zontix gonna take no way's head off. At least Phelps has slipped down beneath, and he's got the gun, right? If anybody's gonna crack this round open, it should be Phelps. He's done good work in the window, but where there's one, there's more. And Chopper, clean turnaround for top middle to give Spirit that eight. Yeah, that kind of feels like they are treating utility as if it's like pure gold. You know, they don't want to use it unless they have that specific situation, the execs coming in or whatever. And there were some feel out rounds where Spirit were like, okay, let's see what you do with the space. Right. And now that they've understood that, they're like way more comfortable about swinging like crazy. They're like, oh, oh, that's all you've got? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the respect was definitely shown. So I think Imperial have to turn it up a notch. Like, you know, and when we watch Pro CS, I mean, people who are watching at a lower level, they don't understand why people use utility for no reason, but there's always a reason. There's always a reason. Whether it's giving your opponent an idea, covering a flank, duplicating your presence, it doesn't necessarily have to be attacking a site or... Ooh, nice nades for the CTs. Softening up Vinny. Feels like they're getting more aware of this underpass attack, and Donk is just sent in to deal with it. Good trade frag out of Shiro from Connector. Vinny reveals himself with the shots from top middle, so now he's kind of stuck in with the defense. And Chopper doing his job, man. Mm -hmm. 
You know, Chopper is somebody where you go back a few majors, his individual level just didn't cut it. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, his teammates weren't on the caliber as they are today. But there is no denying that Chopper, on a mechanical level, looked himself in the mirror and decided this isn't good enough. I love that you bring that up. I mean, we've seen Chopper at his best and his worst um, over the years. And I, I mean, as an English speaker, I feel like if we could know more about Chopper and his journey, there would be so many parallels to what we've seen from Kerrigan, you know? When we've seen him at majors, obviously get to majors, That's have a new comparison. teams that he's bringing up, but then get nervous, like get so nervous in really big moments. And everyone can be a victim to that and still be a great player. And we finally got a time where Chopper's got his Cato win now. He's got the roster with the most amount of individual potential. And now he's attracting talent like Shiro to come in yep. as a veteran to Spirit. This is the most strong they've looked for multiple angles. And I think it started with Chopper as you're bringing up and his evolution as, an, as a leader in the scene over the years. Yeah, and the improvements that he just kind of injected into young upcoming players from his region, the scouting that comes with that, no doubt. You know, he was spinning many plates, not just being inside of the server. Now he's given a test at A-Site. Nice flashbangs, but it's Donk to give the cover. Same position that we've already seen him pop off from. And you know he wants these fights. So him and Zontix will share them to a piece and leave no way scrambling through underpass in the final round of this T-side. You know, it started off with some promise from Imperial, some interesting pacing that looked like it could catch Spirit off guard. But Team Spirit have just kind of slotted into what Imperial have thrown at them and are on the brink of passing this test with flying colors. Two kills for no way. Three needed in this round. Grenades sailing in all around him. It's an artillery barrage and high pressure as we've come to expect from Team Spirit. This could have been a matchup versus Virtus Pro. Of course, Imperial beat them earlier today to get into this 1-0. I think Spirit are, are quite happy to not have to play against their, like, basically their rivals, even though they've, they're oh, winning now consistently. It's a real rivalry. Yeah, yeah. They, they can play close to them. I think James waiting for his opportunity to strike back versus Spirit. Um, but they avoid that, so I think they're pretty gracious probably for this opportunity to play against one of the lower-seeded teams. And um, and you could see that they did give them respect at first, but now they're just right back to play, treating them like any other team that they played against, which is basically no respect CS. You know, at a parallel somewhat between um, Virtus Pro and Team Spirit is I think that when, when they punch downwards, they punch really hard. Yeah, yeah, it's like bullying. Yeah, yeah, yeah like in a fun way. Yeah, exactly. Right now, Team Spirit taking it out on Imperial. A very clean start to the Copenhagen Major for a team that is coming in with high expectations. Multiple major playoffs in the past for Team Spirit as an organization, for Chopper as an in-game leader. Losing pieces of those successful rosters and coming back with young talent and that key final piece, right? The attraction of Shiro from Cloud9. Huge in their run to Katowice. The clutch factor he brings in. Big ticket player. Right now, a site Doesn't matter. It's B that's under wraps from Team Spirit already. They get this bomb down in an absolute freebie. <laughs> Shiro sends a bullet through the smoke. Taps out Phelps. And it just feels like Spirit can play without the shackles. Going for the frags on all fronts and coming out successful every single time. Henny's the only player to post anything. Oh Donk doubles down to close it. Bro. And it's Team Spirit on the brink of the fastest 2-0 route we've seen all day. Yeah. There's a there's a boulderer named Sean Rabbitou who... Say that one more time. Sean Rabbitou. Okay. He's the strongest... He was the strongest boulder for a second, just like uh, last year or something. I don't know. Don't follow the scene that way. But he had this line where he said, like, it's got to be like walking. You know, you've got to do it every day so that it doesn't feel difficult. You get on the wall, it's like the same thing as walking around, like using your body in that way. And that's what I see when I look at Donk. I'm like, I see someone who's so consistent because he lives in this game. He just like does this all the time. This is the only thing he does all the time. He's obsessed over the seven maps in the pool and cues them nonstop and knows every angle. Of course, he's going to be consistent with the way he moves around and aims. It's just like walking for Donk. And he doesn't sully that with things like Deathmatch, right? He's another one of those players that only plays matches. Yeah, it's like Zaiwu, actually. Him and Zaiwu, they both don't uh, play Deathmatch. I mean, the best practice is playing. That's it. At their ages, throw Monesty in that boat, too. How much of your life have you actually spent in the server in comparison to outside? 
CT stacked up on side connector, just gonna get torn to pieces. Donk hitting headshots like it's nothing, because in his world, it's all too easy. Yeah. Well, we had a five gajillion overtime game to start off the stream. Yes, sir. With complexity eventually taking down Heroic into a match versus Navi versus G2. That was very fun to watch. Went the full distance. Very complicated situation. This one doesn't feel like it's going to go 24 rounds. Feels like the outcome is inevitable, in fact. It feels like it's going to go about 15. Yep. First gun round comes through from Imperial, and it's nice to see, I think, a scene like this, because if we're asking ourselves who could come in and win this major, if it did really feel open beyond Team Spirit, right. well, the betting odd favorites coming in had FaZe, Vitality, and Virtus Pro as the three teams after Team Spirit. Mm. And after this first day of competition, I bet you those odds have dropped off. Spirit hit the ground running here in Copenhagen. And nobody runs faster than Donk when there are headshots to be had. Chopper, meant to be the weak link, is right up there with him. 10 and 7 on the trot. CT scrambled to the other side of the map. And albeit an impressive start to the day for Imperial, besting Virtus Pro, proving that they are here in top 16 to continue their run in Copenhagen. Team Spirit are here with a whole other set of goals. And those goals are winning their first major. It's a 2-0 kickoff, it's a nade to top con, and it is Donk to seal the deal. This is not a sweat for Team Spirit. It is a statement that they are here to win. That they are, we're right next to them, and uh, there wasn't even, I think, that much of an explosion in terms of the win. It was a normal day at the office, it felt like something they just had to get done because the goals are more lofty than this. Yeah, and also for an explosion of emotion, you need to be tested. That's you true. need to have a <laughs> semblance of competition. You need to feel stressed yeah. hey, in look, a game. Look, None of that happened. Look at the emotions on Imperial. They're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I we, mean, we knew this was on. a real possibility. We knew this was this was the potential. And uh, yeah, you don't you don't laugh, you cry. <sighs> It's like, listen, we, we can revel on what Spirit is offering in terms of Counter-Strike. It, it's not always the most sensical CS. There are some peaks that are debatable. But like, just, <laughs> just kidding, like, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, what are you supposed to do when you get someone like yeah, that? Bro, like, don't got yeah, bro, we just got deleted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just <laughs> kind of moving on, you know? It's, it's funny, there's a... Uh, we probably shouldn't get into it, but in, in, <laughs> in, in my other esports, there's big drama when players laugh after uh, they have uh, lost Ooh. a match. Oh, yeah, we don't care about that here. Well, we won't yeah, get into good. it. Um, yeah, we're fun. And also, they did never lose to Spirit, who just absolutely donked them. So right. At, at some point, I mean, th do? this was just a, a mismatch in terms of in terms of the firepower on the team and, and everyone who was making the plays. Like, yeah, we were we were cracking up like, well, like round six, Donk is like, yeah. hey, this one right here. That's, that is a ridiculous like, this one. Is so, like, none of these make sense. Like, that's not a great fight because you could be seen from ramp. That one, he swung to fight Catwalk and he adjusts down to Phelps. That one, he's got 10 <laughs> HP and he still wins it. And it's just like, okay, well, I'll see you in the next map. It's cool. I know. I, it is a bit problematic. I think Imperial probably had a better shot slowing down the pace. They try to do that in the early stages of the half, and I think they got a little bit stressed. Mm. Or maybe they psyched themselves up thinking, you know what, let's disrespect them, let's take some duels. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's exactly what Spirit wants you to do, at least on a map like Mirage. If you're going to try to take some speed out of ARAM, some speed out of middle, finding it to connect it, then Donk is going to be here, Shiro is going to be there with an AWP, having a grand old time. But Magix is getting tested on the B side, that's a 4K. Chopper is doing work with the SMGs as well. So who, who, where is it supposed to be liability in there? there? There's a lot of teams, like, like they, where Connor kind of went down the list of the teams that would be, be favorites of like FaZe and, and Vitality. You go on those lists and like amongst all five players, you can't really identify a weakness by name, but certainly Team Spirit of all those teams have the individual level and the cohesion it feels within the team where all five of those players are actually delivering, right? Yeah. Like you can't see the weakness in other teams, but there was something shaky with FaZe in their first game. There was something shaky with Vi Vitality in both their games they played today. So, I mean, you know, this is the one team that came in and it's just like, yep, we're, we're, at, we're at our peak, we're at our best, we're playing <laughs> well together. Now, yeah. And we're just going to cruise. Yeah, absolutely no reason to doubt, right? I think if you want to even start a conversation with Spirit, you need to be skilled and strong enough to punish what we label nonsensical peaks. You need to be able to do that. If you want to force them in a respective position, you need to, when Donkey's wide swinging you on the third time, just maybe just trade him. If someone is taking crazy peaks, punish them and then force them to second guess it. That was never the case here. It's like you're playing a, I mean, I'm, it's going to sound disrespectful, but it's not. You're playing with your friends, you're having a grand old time in face, you're swinging on everybody, kidding everybody. Why would you change? 
yeah. having a good time. Life is great. That's true. Yeah. Just thing is, we are the major. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. So, yeah. That's it's, it's, the only thing. That's a tiny difference. That's yeah. A just tiny a small difference. difference. And it doesn't change much for them. No, apparently not. <laughs> Seemingly, we're gonna run through uh, the results of the day in just a second. Just your two and zero team so far. Um, I'll talk about it in a second. Let's just look at the results. Well, it took less time from Spirit to win that game for us to create the graphics. <laughs> yeah. That, that's where we are right now. <laughs> that's that a good is the point. reality, you know. <laughs> yeah, By his yeah, time, yeah. they won too fast. Just, uh, <laughs> we're gonna need an eco round. <laughs> <laughs> this is, of course, first from the secondary stream. This is all from the second half of the day, right? So uh, Vitality, who had lost our opening match versus Eternal Fire, they bounced back versus the Mongols. Heard his pro bounce back as well. Um, so did Cloud9 and Faze. Yeah, VP and Vitality with very important bounce back, respectively. The Vitality yep. game, I will tell you, was not an easy one to watch. The scoreline, yeah, I would say it's a relatively close scoreline, but I did, do think it went on a knife's edge. It, didn't it, it also didn't pass the eye test. Watching mm -mm. that, you were just like... Mm -mm. I mean, even even Apex himself, like he was visibly upset even after the victory. Yep. So, but VP as well did it bounce back against Pain. Still one one. Yeah, let's take a look at the results that we've had here on our uh, on our e stream that we've covered. Which one was your favorite match of the second well, half how of the day? Yeah, how do you, yeah, complexity yeah. heroic just in terms of the level of it. That was that was awesome, and the intensity of a double overtime game. The heroic plays coming, <laughs> uh, coming out of guys like Elise, guys like Grim with the clutch. You like the little giggle? I yeah, 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 like it was good. yeah. Navi G two. I, I actually I also, I also kind of enjoyed that just because we were I, blessed on the a stream today. Yeah, yeah we, we were. We had we had a lot of Navi really good games. Navi G two was it was hype. Yeah. Ah, the Mao's EF as well, closing towards the very end. Oh, Close we games, and then the last game's quick, so we get out of here early. Yeah, yeah it's only That's 11 just a win, 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 yeah. win, 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 win. <laughs> so, how happy are you then? Uh, that uh, complexity, they went 2 and 0 overall, right? So Yeah, it's it's great. That's it's crazy. It's really cool, especially coming from an America's region where it felt like Brazil has really been kind of carrying most of the weight and how that region is performing out of the RMR. Um, good to see complexity, especially with the question marks around them, um, sustain against a surprisingly strong heroic team and in like a double overtime scenario where you, you got tested a number of times and you answered the bell each and every time. Fair assessment. I'm glad that Complexity were able yeah. to survive some of these very, very tense rounds because I feel like we have got plenty of narratives around them being frustrated, uh, Halzerk's emotions and all that, Elise as well, but not this time around. Not this time. So our two and zero teams, Complexity, Navi, uh, Mouse, and of course, Spirit that we just saw, that does mean that the one, one teams, those could be some spicy matches. We'll get them in about a minute on our graphic, but yeah. what, what is one you'd want to see, Vitality so, phase? I think if you're in the two, <laughs> Vitality, anyone, if you're working at Desk of Mania. <laughs> okay. It's really going to be great. What, is, what does that even mean, huh? You know uh, exactly what it means. We're going to have nerves. a fun day tomorrow. Yeah, that's makes the desk a more interesting when everyone's a bit nervy. But it all, he's gloating too much now. Like he needs to Yeah, but let, let him have it. When was yeah. the last time Complexity yeah, was the best of the away we, from the playoffs? We don't, we don't get a lot of wins in North America. Just let me enjoy the one night I might have here. Like, so, you know, let me chill. Let me, let me put that question to you. Okay. In the 2-0 category, what team could Complexity beat? Oh. To whom do they have to go to go to the playoffs? What is it? Let's take Spirit, put it out of the way. Can't no. beat Spirit, yeah, no. Uh, they can beat Navi. Yes. They, they can cannot beat, beat Mouse. They can beat Mouse. That's where we disagree. They okay, so Mouse. now we have a debate here. Yeah. Let's take a look. We have uh, first our schedule for the secondary stream. We start, of course, with two best of ones for the one and one teams. So we have Veroic having to take on VP and Imperial versus Vitality. And then uh, Pain Gaming versus the Mongols and Ecstatic versus Furia. Uh, two teams that are, uh, there's those, are, those are the 0 and 2 teams, sorry. Uh, best of threes, right. Best of threes, of course, because you can't go out unless you lose a best of three. What do we think? I think most of those games have an interesting angle. Like Heroic VP is going to be really cool. I think I think Fury is in some trouble against Ecstatic that I think looks stronger. And depending on which Fury you get tomorrow, Ooh. might dictate a lot. Really? Okay. Pain Mongols has a cool angle of it, which is how well Biggie Vera can play and potentially upset that one. The only one that might fall flat a little bit is the Vitality uh, Imperial. What well, do you think is going to be too easy for Vitality? Uh, there's, uh, it, it should. It, it was should. hard for you to say. Yeah, it was it, hard for you to say. It should be easy. Okay. Ish. Yeah, I don't. I don't really buy it. I don't think. But Vitality, with the way they're playing at the exactly. moment, they're they're not in a. Yeah state of mind to have an easy game. I think every round is going to be really harsh to win until you get to that point where you have a little bit of runway, 5-0, 6-0, and you can relax a little bit. They are far from relaxed right now. They need maybe a bubble tea. <laughs> What a nice Dubai I vacation. think that goes for uh, all the teams who come in with big expectations that are in the one-on-one -on -one pool. Uh, you know, none of these matches are going to be easy for now because you want to be sure that you get into that Royal Arena. So let's take a look at the uh, A-Stream matches, starting off with... G2 versus Cloud9. Ooh. Ooh. And uh, Eternal Fire versus Face Clan. And then Mouse versus Complexity. That's that the one the you one. were talking there about. And Team Spirit Navi 
Hey, this is pretty great, guys. Oh, I absolutely love this it. This is exciting. Yeah, we're getting a treat tomorrow. I'm excited for that battle's complexity, obviously. I think the Eternal Fire Phase Clan could be fun to watch. Oh, there's already a lot of tape between these two teams, <laughs> yeah, right? There's yeah. a little bit of a short-term rivalry <laughs> right. brewing, even though <laughs> Phase Clan had the best of them. I mean, Loki... Yeah, Cloud9 G2 is it's kind of hard to say because neither teams are exactly perfect, but I will say Cloud9 in this context here, I feel you can never really discard, discard them. Like they're warriors, they're ready to fight. Oh, oh but oh, also with like the added context of the whole. Yeah, but G2's upper. Make uh, do you think G2's they're actually upper. paying for Monster's contract? Is that what they're doing? I don't winner know. winner I'm takes just it all. I'm winner, just winner takes one seat. Winner takes that is it the, all. That's like the weirdest rumor in, in the pro scene right now. <laughs> yeah, it is now, a rumor. Like. That's just yeah, clear. So, but when, when it happens, how are you going to look like, huh? No, I'm not saying it's not. <laughs> it's I, I'm just. I have no always, idea. No, I'm just always so amazed because whenever like we talk with players or do content with them, they're like, yeah, we think Monasty's just going to go to Cloud9. And I'm like, what? Where's this coming from? Like, why does everyone think this? May I know your sources? please. <laughs> no. Source, trust me, bro. Yeah, That's exactly. The famous one. You know what? I think it's for the best of all three of us if we sign off. What do you guys think? I think we had a grand old time today. Yeah, we did. Some, there's more. The room. later it go gets, all. the crazier it gets. Yeah, the weirder it gets. Exactly. Can you just stay silent so she can close the show now? Please? That's been enough. All right. Take it away, Sean. Thanks so much for watching. All day we got some uh, incredible games and the Counter-Strike, the level, it's going up. It's only going up, which is good because we're getting deeper into the tournament. And tomorrow, unfortunately, we already have to say goodbye to two teams. Um, and that's it. I don't have anything more <laughs> to say. That was your big moment. I'm sorry. We tried it all. Yeah. Anyway, I love these guys. Uh, and we'll see you tomorrow. Get some sleep. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>